Getting the uh, final GDP growth rate print here for Q4 in the U.S. 3.4% comes in higher than expected. 3.2% uh, was the consensus on that. Again, uh, the final GDP reading there for uh, the U.S. for Q4, 3.4% versus 3.2% expected. Look at Canada up there as well, 0.6%. Uh, versus 0.4 on the month-over-month -month number for uh, Canada for GDP. Uh, the quarterly PCE number out this morning as well, 2%. Hey, we're there. Uh, that's a quarterly number, though. Remember, the month-over-month -month PCE number is more closely watched. We'll actually get that tomorrow, even though the market is closed. So just keep that in mind. PCE, the month-over-month -month number coming up tomorrow uh, for last month. Be aware, uh, 10 o'clock this morning, Michigan Consumer sent, uh, Sentiment that also has a inflation uh, expectation portion to it, so it can move the market. But a lot to talk about this morning. Palantir downside on a downgrade this morning. Uh, AMC downside on an offering, $250 million offering uh, coming through from AMC. We'll talk about that. GME as well coming off uh, earnings for that. Crypto, meanwhile, to the upside. It's uh, the day Sam Bankman freed. We'll find out how long he's going to spend in prison. It's Thursday, March 28th, 2024. TraderTV.live starts now. Uh, that is Sean's screen, I think. Uh, there's Palantir. Uh, back to the upside right now, but it was down uh, more than this. One and a half percent at the lows, bounced off 24 there, starting to move higher again. Uh, downgrade, um, cut the sell for PLTR. We'll talk about that. Just a recap, if anyone's just joining a little late. 3.4%, uh, the final GDP number there for Q4 in the U.S., higher than expected. 3.2% was the expectation there. So, um, yeah, the U.S. economy still moving right along as uh, we've seen over the past year or so. What a mark difference between uh, their productivity and ours at uh, three point, yeah, some odd, and uh, we're, we're under 1%. We're going to have to keep eyes on that. But to build on your point with uh, the Palantir downgrade, Monet downgrading them, calling the valuation egregiously rich. So we'll have to keep eyes on Palantir. Could be in play. Lots more to talk about today, too. Brendo, Anthropic, big investment by Amazon in that. Um, that's the second tranche, about two and three quarter billion this time around. Yeah. Uh, also, Walgreens reported, did a little bit better than expected. The former down name also on watch? Yeah, not really doing a heck of a lot. I checked out WBA before we came on, but uh, yeah, uh, earnings from them that um, you and I were discussing this before we came on here this morning. There was a note out the, saying that Claude, uh, Claude AI has taken over um, yeah. top spot from ChatGPT on a user basis. I, I haven't even tried the thing, but uh, apparently a lot of people are using it. 11.5% here right now for AMC getting crushed down to uh, 375 now. Uh, again, 250 million worth of uh, potential offering for AMC. Good morning, guys. I was going to say happy Friday, but it <laughs> only feels like Friday. It's Thursday. That's good good enough, morning. Guys. You know, close enough to Friday. Good morning, Obi. How are you doing? Basically Friday. Yeah. You know, you get to be a little casual today. We'll chill out. We had a good podcast last night. We're excited to release that on Saturday, so that should be a lot of fun. Uh, coming with Kunal yeah. yesterday. How was so that? that was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. What was that? What were some like main points? Oh, we just talked about, um, yeah, we, we talked about a little bit about his journey and stuff like that, and then how do we trade, you know, the current markets and the different, you know, if, whether or not we're, that's right, whether or not we're in a distribution phase. What is this? Keep going at, all right. Every day I'm going to be screwing up my mic. No, no. I'm giving you black start. No more TikToks for you. Um... Yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, you know, he was, was just exactly what you thought. Like a lot of energy um, and just, just great talk overall. Um, he's having his first uh, child as well. He let us know that. And so that's kind of changing him in different ways. So that's pretty interesting to hear about all that. And then just some stories from the wild, wild west as well. So uh, it was a lot of fun. We're really excited for that. So um, definitely, gonna, definitely gonna be on my watch. Good, yeah, yeah, have, have a watch, have a listen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if we have, where's that podcast QR code? Uh, hold on a second, Let me just do, if, what if I do this? There you go. Boom. Scan that, listen to it. We're really excited for it. AMC, I was just sitting here and I was like, Brennan, what, what happened to AMC here? And then we looked at it on and he was like, oh, 250 million uh, share offering. And I was like, 250 million, that's, that's, that's a lot. 
Um, and then I looked, and their market cap's only one billion. So we got to watch out. I mean, these guys are, 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 you know, potentially here, and we're gonna read about it. We'll find out why. Remember when um, Anthony Noto on SoFi claimed that the share offering was from a position of strength there, um, but or that was a dead offering. I guess this is a dead offering as well, right? So. We'll have to see what happens here with AMC. I think we could watch for a little bit of a bounce up here. Short flow, 14%. Nice move to the downside, kicking off 370 right there. Our Amazon's going. I saw Tesla. I mean, that GDP number was hotter than expected, right? 3.4 versus 3.2 gets going. But guess what we're failing at again? This 18.6 level, man. Like, we didn't get back there. That's a level that we've been looking at for a minute. And I emailed, I got to figure this. If anybody uses e-signal charts, I have too many... Um, I have, uh, I, have to, I have to edit this. I don't know if it upgraded, but you see I have too many decimal places here. You know, like I don't need to see that these oh, moving yeah. averages are at 78, 98, 76, yeah. zero, zero. So I got to get that all. It's not like we're, we're like quants or anything. Right. You know I mean? so, yeah, we're not. We're, 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 we're barely traders. <laughs> no, but 18.6 right here. Um, that's the level that I'm looking at. And until we break above that, I think we want to stay short. Oh, let's check out on NVIDIA. Uh, what that's doing here today. We had a nice little whoosh down there yesterday uh, into the close. And, you know, still a nice little hold there. I mean, it's just funny how that's a couple days in a row that we've seen some bottoms be made early and then revisited late, you know. Um, and then we did have a nice bump back up, so that's what we are just checking on right now. So we finished the day yesterday over 900, start the day today under 900, and I think this is a short breaking through 890 today. So let's see if Nvidia gets going. What's on your mind uh, stock-wise? Um, so Reddit was going down. Reddit was going down. And then uh, there's also uh, CCL, right? CCL had a trade on that uh, yesterday. Earnings day two for CCL right here. A bit of a bit of a nice little range uh, strong off the, uh, off the earnings reaction right there. You made a nice little low there. Nice little high. Let's see what we do in and around there. Nice little uh, flush into the end, right into VWAP as well. So uh, I do like that. Let's see what we do with some of these, uh, some of these prices, some of these uh, previous day one support and resistance levels on CCL. So that's that's uh, I got that one on watch for sure. Uh, Apple here. Just before we came on, there was a note about the uh, foldable iPhone getting delayed for the time being. Um, we learned. <laughs> Ray Ray's not uh, a fan. Ramin. Um, <laughs> Ramin's response to that was ew. <laughs> um, so 172.50 coming into play here for uh, Apple this morning, right now, down a little bit. Big day yesterday, back to the upside. But uh, there's this note on uh, the AI side of things coming for WWDC. Remember earlier this week, we learned, uh, what was it, June? 10th or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we got the actual date for the Worldwide Developer Conference coming up in June this year, but uh, yeah, the foldable iPhone getting shelved for the time being. Yeah, I want to see what that looks like. I mean, we all saw Motorola with theirs, and uh, I'm sure Apple's will uh, be as good. So three headlines here uh, today with Apple. The first is the price target downgraded. They'll get more to that. DZ Bank uh, announcing a $180 uh, price target and moving it down to neutral. Xiaomi coming overnight and saying its car, the car, the EV that it's producing there in China is well prepared to support Apple users. And then this headline coming in from Benzinga, um, this is the one that really caught my eye, Brendo, here, that the iOS 18 launch at WWDC is going to be Apple's biggest change to its operating system since the 80s. So I want to see what this is all about. Yeah, that'll be the, um, the big one, I think, uh, for WWDC. I mean, we've said in the past many, many times when they finally show up with something, it's yeah. usually the best version of said thing. So... Um, definitely keep an eye on that, but um, I, I mean the the Google Pixel uh, foldable version. Okay. I mean they they launched that I think it was a year ago or something like that, and it's just no, no one talks about it. No one really pays attention to it. It was like eighteen hundred dollars or what? something like that. A very very high end premium phone. So yeah, um, not much of a market I don't think for those at this point. Yeah, I didn't even, um, I kind of forgot that they were trying to do a foldable phone there. I don't yeah, know. That's kind of... You like that idea? I don't know. I don't know if I like that too much. Is it a thing? Like, they're, they're obviously, if they're going to introduce that, they've also obviously assessed some sort of demand or some sort of market for it. It is a little assume. strange. I, I don't, I mean, the thing is, they did, they did get rid of their head of um, iPhone 
development or design or something like that. They okay. actually saw a note about that a couple months ago. Um, so that's something. But I mean, they're down more than the market is today. Um, Apple's had a nice move back, you know, on the daily, just just in the last couple of days, you know, as we made made a move from 170 up to 173, four, I guess, yesterday. But we've already seen some sort of resistance up here in and around 175 to the high side. I mean, we broke it. I thought we were really rocking, like, you know, and then we all of a sudden got that DOJ coming through and investigating uh, Apple's competitive practices and whatnot, which is fine to do that. Uh, but they kind of shrugged that off a little bit down there at 170. I don't know. It's it's not it's not as exciting. Like it got going there yesterday, and we shorted this. This was the only trade. Apple was, I think, my second second best stock yesterday, and it was really just off one trade, and it was that short. But look at the strength into the close. We we told you Nvidia came back and retested the bottoms before going back up. I mean, this only retested it at noon, not really in the afternoon. Really strong momentum to the upside. So I I almost take the weakness here today as an opportunity maybe to buy Apple down here at 172. Uh, I think the story is fine. Like I said, a hotter GDP number. I, I feel like the market should be going up today. Retest at 18.6 and then maybe fail off there. So maybe that gets Apple back to 173.50, 174. I think Apple has some legs today. But I'm not, like, I'm not all juiced up today in this market. Like, I, I've written down Amazon here. I don't mind this idea down to 172. I don't know. I'm not... I think we maybe just have to watch NVIDIA today, like watch mm. some of these names and see if we can get moves um, in, in the direction that we favor and then figure out to jump on that trend or, or try to reverse it because I'm not getting a, a good feel. I mean, I feel, I mean, look what the NASDAQ did here. This is part of it, right? Hotter number comes back in, doesn't hold the bottom and, and now it's trying to go lower. Like, are we going to be testing? And this is right at 18.5. So like now we're dancing around 18.5 and then you have down here 18.450, uh, the pre-market lows. feel like that should be getting tested as well. Here we go. So here we go. See? So yeah, it's giving me, it's giving me a little bit of a negative feel, but got to find some short ideas. Maybe we just short NVIDIA. I mean, is that crazy to think about shorting NVIDIA? No, absolutely not. Yesterday we were down a couple percentage points and the market wound up being up. So that was interesting. We talked about that. NVIDIA was down 2.7%. Market was up 0.3 yesterday in the NASDAQ. And now NVIDIA is starting to lead the way down here right now. Yeah, that, that end of day no, bid want, was, maybe we could, uh, was maybe we could try interesting that. for sure. All right. Um, all right. Let's go back over to the desk here. And do we have Michael Noss today? No. Oh, it's a Thursday. Well, we could have still had him on. Wow, Ramin. Uh, all right, back over the desk. What? Um, it's a holiday, apparently, in, in Spain. Uh, we're supposed to have Lewis today, but um, it was a holiday in Spain. So he's enjoying a day off. Uh, good for him. Uh, Rumble here, uh, real quick, 7% downside. Uh, just b bumped its head against uh, 8 bucks once again. Uh, just hearing a note there on that GDP print, but um, we'll get to that in a sec. 7% uh, downside here, a miss for uh, Rumble. I mean, there was both good and bad in this report. The forecast was a little light, though. Yeah, Brendo, I like the, the fact that the daily active users increased, which is good, more eyes on the site. However, people were not watching as much, and we know how these uh, videos work. The more you watch, the more ads pop up. So uh, not good from a monetization perspective, but good to bring in users. We know that people are looking for alternatives to some of these uh, video streaming sites, Brendo. So shout out to Canada. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of competition in this space now, as you said, right across the board, whether it's YouTube or TikTok or uh, take your pick. But um, I mean, the, the daily chart still looks pretty good here, guys, for R-U-M. <laughs> yeah, down 6% um, today, almost, almost going a little lower here. We did have that on our sticky, on our, um, I'm doing the sticky note as we speak. Uh, trying to get the best ideas going through here. But um, yeah, so smaller loss than expected, which is nice, but the bad sales numbers. So, you know, when you're going to be a growth company um, and claim that you're trying to revolutionize sort of what's happening in streaming, it'd be nice to get a little more sales going there. 20 million uh, below the 28 million. So, uh, but decline in average minutes watch per month, I don't like that. Uh, growth in active users, but a decline in minutes watched. 
you know, I think that's what you sell on, right? Minutes watched. Who cares how many users you have if they're not logging on and participating? So that has to be a little disappointing to them. The thing that I liked about Rumble, and we talked about this on a couple podcasts ago, was the fact that it does have this 21% short float. And I like the idea that they're doing. And honestly, if you can grow users, I mean, this is the thing. You know, we, we saw many companies for many years take L's, Uber, while they grow yeah. their user base. We've seen Amazon. We've seen a lot of these companies Tesla. take Tesla. I mean, everything YouTube, like everything in the beginning, right? That's the Anything path. cloud. Yeah, yeah, that's the path. That AI. is usually the path. In 2010, NVIDIA was $3. 2010, Obi. Wow. What were we doing in 2010? Anyways, rumble down here um, with a market ago. cap of $3 billion. You know, it's not horrible. You're, you're, you know, you're getting kicked a little bit today, down a couple points. I still think that if you can get it into six, seven bucks here, which may fall in, that might not be a horrible buy. Just to see if Rumble can right the ship. You have a 21% short float. Let the shorts win here. Then they'll cover. Um, and then I think we can get back to these highs again of nine bucks, to be honest with you. So I almost like a six to nine here. If you can get down to six fifty, seven bucks, I kind of like that play back to the upside. I mean, you got to take shots, you know, you got to take some shots and they're doing that. Um, and let's just see what happens. And remember, with the presidential race coming and well, right. on right now, you know, there's going to be different videos that are going to get banned from different platforms, most likely. There's going to be hot takes that won't be allowed on certain platforms. There's going to be certain things that are going to happen. So that could push the narrative over to a rumble that kind of doesn't have that same corporate backing worry that they're not you know participating with mass media type of stuff so you know yeah. anyways no, i think i, like, I think I like rumble that. could go yeah it's it's interesting to the uh, to me that uh, just a couple of days ago on tuesday it caught that uh, really strong uh, bid to the upside with with some expanding volume as well and uh, we've been kind of fading off into this earnings so yeah let's see we've kind of defined uh, some prices or like a range a couple of days ago with, with some uh, with some volume and then now we're coming into earnings but yeah I think uh, Sean makes a good point it's always uh, it's always good to remember that uh, uh, a lot of these companies They've come, they've come from afar, but the, but the journey has always had a struggle. And obviously, as traders, we have to remember that. Uh, a lot of the journeys that are worth taking are definitely full of struggle, and you have to embrace that. And uh, some of these tickers, if you go look back at the history, you'll see some of that happening. Bro, you're going, you're going real deep. I like that. I like Thank you. That. I like that advice. These summits, man, these summits. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, back to the desk. Uh, I just noticed um, Wayfair up here a little bit this morning, 2.5%. This was actually one that uh, Kunal Desai from uh, Bulls on Wall Street. Check out the podcast coming up on uh, the weekend. Guest number one on the podcast, uh, Kunal Desai from Bulls on Wall Street, going to join us. Great conversation we had with him uh, after the close yesterday. This was actually one he mentioned, 2.5% uh, right now. There was a positive analyst note here, but remember still that uh, short percent were right Right now, there's not a lot of volume behind this, but right now at that high uh, from back in December. Yeah, Brendo, I mean, multiple positive analysts. Uh, today we got City with a buy and a price target of 85. Yesterday we had another heavyweight commenting about uh, Wayfair Morgan Stanley. They maintained their overweight rating with a price target of 80. We'll have to keep eyes on this company. I didn't see anything specific that they did to precipitate all these analyst upgrades, but uh, something obviously they know, so we'll keep eyes on it. Up yeah, to two and a half. Yeah, still, uh, I mean, I see 18%. We've seen way higher than that, depending on where you look, as far as the uh, short side of things is concerned here for Wayfair as well. Yeah, so shout out to Canal again. Make sure you definitely check that out. And um, yeah, I, like we mentioned, I asked him, you know, what are we trading these days? What are we looking at? Um, and, he, you know, a lot of people are looking at different ETFs these days. Mm -hmm. So the one that we had discussed on the show, and, and again, we've discussed it on here lots of times as well, was the Russell 2000, yet to really break out. Um, there's been, if, if you look at a daily chart, sure, it's nicely up here. But if you're going to look at the NASDAQ and some of these other names that have taken it out, and I think I got it, can I go over to, okay, this can go month. I don't know how this is going to load on my screen. This could, see? So here we go. Oh, yes, sir. Randy. I saw your uh, car down there. It's brisket Thursday today, by the way, and that should be really, really exciting. Found out that, I found out that Brendan, of course, scheduled. Do you need a coffee? I got mine right All right, then let's do a big cheers here. Oh. Thank you, Randy. Randy will be joining me tonight at 3 o'clock. 
Three to four o'clock. You're still good with that? All right, man. We're, we're, we're going to be called the Hoodie Gang. Hey, oh. It's the Hoodie Gang today at three o'clock as we give our man here a little bit of a rest. Obi. Obi's been doing an amazing job. And I say oh, come on. cheers again to Obi, the original Padawan. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, I'm not even, we haven't even talked about IWM yet. We haven't talked about Wayfair yet. I try to give my guys on the desk a break. You know what I mean? Sharif's working hard over there. I'll take, I'll take it for a couple minutes to give these guys a break. You know what I'm saying? Okay, um, so this is the IWM right here. You know, you're getting close to breaking out many different ETFs. Look at XLF, look at the financials, look at the industrials, um, healthcare, like whatever, gold. You know, many, many different areas of the market have broken out. It looks like we've had a great base here. You're starting to go. This, it looks better on a weekly chart. Unfortunately, our charting just has month unless I switch the days here uh, to 30. But you're starting to break out. So on that note, Wayfair has got what Kunal needs. Because this one right here was a look at this. And it looks like we could be possibly hitting this top right now on Wayfair, trying to break back out. So again, a, a, small, a small cap name looking to go higher with a short float. So this makes sense. I mean, the short float is 25%. It only has a 91 million share float. Um, and it's just a market cap of 8 billion. And we've seen it run before. So I like these kind of ideas. You know, um, on, on a show like ours, with a spread like this, hard to maybe make a call right now, but if you break a 70 mark, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with going long here on Wayfair. Any ideas? Yeah, okay, so yeah, no, I, li I like that. I li so the, the, I, I like that you pointed out that like IWM and, uh, um, uh, is like lagging behind on the, on the breakout while everything else. Right. I, I actually didn't notice that. I do like the, the weekly here, and you said, you said check out the monthly as well. Um, yeah, wow, look at that. Monthly a little bit more stark. So on the weekly, you can see it a little bit better. What I'm seeing right away that stands out to me um, is like this, uh, this kind of range, this, uh, this range that kind of formed right here, this consolidation above this previous, like that's, that's the, this is the COVID drop, right? This is, the, this is uh, March 2020. Right. This is when uh, when we had that uh, uh, the COVID fear drop. So that's that reference point from uh, from that uh, from those prices, and we've kind of consolidated above those prices after kind of getting that strong dip and rip. Right. So and then now we're breaking out of that consolidation. So that's a really interesting look. It's. Uh Something I didn't really see before, so thank you. Yeah, no problem. That's yeah, a good, good look there. Check out our podcast as we talk about more ideas, even better ones, Ooh. over to the desk with Brendan. Lots of interesting names here in the upgrades and downgrade side today. Grinder getting an upgrade here from TD Cowan. Estee Lauder trading up about 3.5% after an upgrade from B of A Securities. Carnival getting upgraded by Barclays a day after its earnings yesterday morning. So nice look here for CCL. And U.S. Bancorp getting upgraded as well here by HSBC Securities. Downgrades, big one here today. Uh, Apple here with a downgrade and a price record decrease to 180. We have Palantir getting downgraded by Maness, Crespi, and Hart. A price target downgrade to $20, so keep an eye on PLTR today. Bank of America, price target increased by $1, but downgrade by Keith Briette. And Weibo getting downgraded by Goldman Sachs, guys. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, you did you see any names on there? I'm going to talk about Palantir, but if you, I don't... Anything? I mean, Apple stands out right away, but uh, Car uh, yeah, Carnival, gotta... CCL, uh, that kind of stands out to me because I was already watching that, and now they get an upgrade. Um, so, yeah, maybe Bank of America as well. So we can take a look at some of those. Okay, look up CCL quickly, and then we'll go get Obi's opinion on that in a minute. Uh, I'll just quickly do Palantir. Like, you know, I got to read what's up with the upgrade or uh, with the downgrade. You know, I feel like it... We heard it earlier, it was a valuation. Just thinking that it was maybe a little bit too rich up here. Uh, Palantir's PE, which I should know off the top of my head because it's right here. It's still quite large, I believe. Where is their PE? Yeah, there it is right there, 74. Like that's, that's pretty ridiculous, right, at, at these levels. But the thing is, is that 
you you are paying up for this name, and it may be too rich. I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with that at this at this point, right? We've looked at Snowflake continuing. I actually bought some Snowflake on some of those dips right now. We've seen DraftKings yesterday get that downgrade and then down and downgrade and insider selling. Remember, there was um, I think it was not interactive brokers, uh, but one of them. Investors Daily uh, sold their shares yesterday um, in DraftKings. So you're just, you know, you're a couple negative stories away from people wondering why they didn't get out at 27. I didn't uh, either, right? So I think you got to let this name settle down a little bit. Honestly, I, I, I'm here buying this name if we can get into 23, 22 and change. You know, let's just let this name cool down a little bit. They're going to they're gonna have their earnings report end of April, early May. Uh, when, when is it? They're May 6th. So let this name settle down. We still got a month before earnings. They're going to produce on earnings. We already know that. We got a huge bump up their last earnings call. I, I expect to say from Palantir. It's just a valuation problem right now in the space. If you're going to start to see moves down in NVIDIA and some of these high-flying names, honestly, you're going to get some of these overextended names are going to get hit. And I think Palantir with a forward PE of 200 and a current PE of 75, it's probably on people's radars for a short. Yeah, so that uh, CCL with uh, with a little bit of a upgrade there. Um, so, like I said before, kind of defining some of these uh, yesterday's levels from day one earnings. Uh, we have that uh, consolidation high end of day around uh, uh, 1760s and some change, and then the lows uh, down here. You got a wick low down at uh, 16. What is that? 1618, and a little bit of uh, of a base here at 1640s. You can see how this is a 15 minute candle strong flush to the downside and then pretty much no wick uh, on the candle close. The next candle opens at the exact same price and then you get a nice little bid uh, with almost like a, what looks like programmatic buying just all the way into, uh, into power hour pretty much or actually 2 p.m. Uh, roughly and then you get that nice little flush off of, uh, off of that uh, market tailwind as well. So uh, th got those levels a little defined, maybe bringing in some volume with, uh, with that upgrade. But uh, again, I think the bigger picture is that this is earnings day two, um, and uh, there were definitely some good opportunities yesterday. So let's check out if there were, if there will be uh, continued opportunities today on CCL. All right, quick recap. If uh, anyone's just joining, we did get some uh, significant numbers at 8:30 there. That was the, if you look at the futures, that was a spike initially to the upside. Uh, we have since moved down um, beyond this. So uh, Q4, final GDP number, 3.4% uh, for the U.S., better than the expected 3.2% uh, on that. The GDP price index, 1.7% was in line with expectations. We also got initial jobless claims there, 210, 210,000 versus 212, uh, 1.8 million versus 1.8 million on the continuing claims as well, but that GDP still... So, so strong, south of the border. Let's get a check of, speaking uh, of the market itself, Shreve's going to have a look at the futures. 53.08, guys. That's where we closed out yesterday. The overnight high, 53.12. The overnight low, 53.01. So let's see if we can use that 5,300 level as that level of support. It was resistance yesterday to the high side. Let's go ahead and say 53 and a quarter. That's how high we got on the 21st. All right. If you have not done so, scan that QR code or go to watchlist.tradertv.live and enter your email address, you'll get uh, that for absolutely nothing. It's free every single day, so why not? Uh, 70, what is it? Yeah, 71,000, 70,500, 71,000 there or thereabouts. Uh, Bitcoin back to the upside this morning in a pretty good way after two days of uh, consolidation after that last move back above 70. So uh, crypto stocks looking good here this morning. Yeah, Bitcoin's been doing its thing, but ETH has also been quietly accumulating and Larry Fink going on, uh, I believe, Fox Business yesterday and making statements, bold statements with respect to Ethereum. He's saying that he sees uh, the spot ETF getting approved whether or not the SEC classifies Ethereum right. as a security or not. That's pretty bold. And he says retail demand is very bullish for Bitcoin and Ethereum. He doesn't see the SEC posing a, a real risk here to, to the approval. So let's see what we do. Uh, not that it's going to matter, but uh, as we were talking about a little bit early on this morning, it's SBF day as well. He'll uh, learn the fate of uh, what the sentence is going to look like. Some of the numbers that are being thrown around are insane. 
Um, I mean, they're talking, his side was talking five or six. Yeah, that's ambitious. And there's 150, I saw 160 this morning, years. Um, the only mitigating factor that I can think of here is he made a couple of investments, they panned out so some people may get their money back. That's really the only mitigating circumstance I can think of. We'll see. Again, not going to affect the market, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, I don't know where I stand on, you know, how many years that dude should get. He was on our show, of course. I spoke to the man uh, when he was worth $28 billion. Should have asked him for a loan. Uh, but... Um, no, I don't know. I, 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 so he got in on Anthropic. Uh, he, he dropped in $500 million into Anthropic. Apparently, that's worth close to $2 billion right now uh, based on what Amazon did yesterday. And so, again, it doesn't, like, like Brendan said, it's not going to affect anything here. And I just hope that everybody, like, like Sharif said, if, if, most of, if most of the people get their money back, then I think that is going to be a big factor here on, 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 on how that sentencing goes. So let's, let's find out. I think it will be five or six, seven years. I, I don't think it will be very, I don't, it might not even be that high. So we'll see. Uh, but anyways, there it is. I, I, I feel like you want to wait to see what happens today on that. Um, you know, Bitcoin, it could be a moment to sell. We'll, we'll keep our ear to the ground on it. But either way, this is a 15 minute chart. And those of you that trade, Crypto, I mean, a lot of dips have been bought, you know, especially on some sort of flash news like that. So we'll wait to see. But this looks great. No, 68. I mean, that should be a good move there, 68,000 if, if to the upside, uh, if you get a dip down. And then I really think a break of the high, we go again. Because just look, look at a daily chart here. I mean, 73,000. You've been bouncing right now off that 71,5, 72 a couple times. I think if we take 72 this next time, then we go. Because we've based out down here, 69, 68. I, I feel like the next leg is up to retest one more time. And then... What you know, if a stock was at $71, I would say it has a target of 75. So that's kind of where I think we're going right now. Kind of looks like some of those stocks that we look at, right? Like Microsoft or Amazon or something starting to coil up, getting ready to break out. So look, look at it like that. I mean, this is a daily chart. Seems like we've got really good support here in the mid 60s. And that's kind of where we're at. So let's see what happens. 71,000 right now. I feel like we take that 71.5 and then we get to 75. And it could be today. Obi, what do you think? Yeah, I like, uh, I like uh, that look on, uh, on Bitcoin. Yeah, it's holding up some of those levels. And we talk about how it's kind of like stair-stepping uh, uh, nice and slowly. Let's see if we can even get to that 75 in the recent future. But uh, with the way it's setting up. I think uh, maybe something to watch for. But I'm um, watching Coinbase as well. We got that strong flush off of the open yesterday. Uh, let's see what we got in store today. Again, in a little bit of a shortened week. And uh, this range, kind of a tight range um, after that strong move, right? It, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this move really, really strong and then pretty much consolidate within a, within a 10 point, roughly a 10 point range uh, right there. Uh, what is this? The highs being uh, 265 and then the lows being 250, uh, 256. 255-ish, what is that low, 54, 5390. Okay, so 5390 to be, to be exact. Um, so we got a little bit of that range, so let's see what Coinbase does today. Uh, relative to that range here, something that stands out right away is like this, this high right there, that initial uh, kind of uh, flush, you get a wick there, and then when, we, when you bid back up, you can't really get past that point in and around that 265 on Coinbase. So yeah, I think that if we can get past that 265, we may go in and visit some of these previous, uh, previous levels that we've had um, earlier in on the week. But see if we have uh, some tailwind from Bitcoin as well, right? Mm, still going. Uh, I don't see anything on it, but uh, DJT up 3.5% here and still going on decent volume. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out for anything on uh, Trump media. There's Reddit, meanwhile. Three days in a row, or setting up to be possibly three days in a row back downside. <laughs> There's some inseller, um, insider selling, I should say. The uh, CEO, the CFO, and COO all dumping some shares after a pretty good debut for this thing. Yeah, that's what happens when there's no blackout period for this uh, particular name. And that applies to uh, some of the other investors as well. We heard a lot about the mods getting uh, shares as well. There's no blackout period for them. So uh, initial volatility um, uh, to be expected. So uh, the uh, CEO, Steve Huffman, sold, sold about half a million shares 
to the tune of 41 and a quarter million dollars. As you said, Brendo, the COO, as well, selling for, to the tune of about 16 uh, and one fifth million. Uh, not a lot of participation here so far, about 200,000 shares traded, but um, DJT approaching a million uh, already, guys. Wow. Yeah, I'm not, uh, this is the first time I called it up, so we can have a quick look here at DJT. I mean, yeah, there it goes. We've, you know, it, it has muscle memory with DWAC, so we can, unfortunately, our charts won't show the merged symbol. But if you're just gonna look at what happened yesterday, again, like right off the open, every single day, there's very, very violent moves. So I would much expect that today. Yesterday, we open up in and around 69, or we get to 69 at 928, then we crank down $10. So like $72 down to 63 immediately, right? So that's 10 o'clock. That's in the first half hour, you're down $10. Then you make that move all the way back up and you can't break 70 again. You stop at 68. Well, that's kind of where we're stopping right now. So I feel like if you bought some of these dips yesterday in that 64, that was a great long down here, 60, between 62 and 64, and these have been great shorts. And that looks like where we're gonna open. So I feel like the best thing to do would be to wait for this early action. So either you get that bump up in here to 71, 72, and you sell whatever you're long, or you wait for that short up in this area. Because again, it's kind of where we closed before we had that collapse on Tuesday. We were up at these levels anyways. So I like this level for a short, 71, 72. And then if you get that early flush, like we saw yesterday, then I would say you wanna be buying this name, no? Like down here at 60, 63. So you have a $10 range. I think you're gonna get filled on one of those spots. Good, great day trading vehicle today, DJT. Yeah, I like that look on uh, on DJT. I'm watching Reddit as well, uh, of course. Uh, fresh IPO, right, uh, from last uh, last Thursday. There, nice little strength uh, to start start off the week. And uh, yeah, let's see what we do going into the into the close of the week. Here, we've still sustained a lot of that uh, a lot of Monday's uh, strength. A lot of those prices, yeah, that end of day pop. Not really, we kind of gave that back yesterday and held pretty much where that strength kind of came in going into the close there. So let's see going in today, uh, whether or not some of, those, uh, some of those prices hold or do we, do we kind of uh, dip right back into uh, some of this range right here. Earnings, uh, not earnings, uh, IPO day one highs in and around some of these levels as well. Not the wick high, but like that second 15 minute candle can't really get above this uh, 55, 54 mark there. And now we're holding that yesterday, coming in today, trading a little bit below that in the pre-market with a bit of a downtrend off of the 75. So we couldn't really get to 75 on, uh, on Reddit. Um, I think, uh, what was it? Um, yeah, a bit, of a, a bit of a failure to follow through into the 75, never really prints, and then we kind of have a nice little pullback. So let's see if we kind of continue that trend uh, for some opportunity on the short side. But if we hold some of these levels, I might be looking for a long as well. So I've got to stay flexible, got to be like water. On to Rumble here, as we mentioned earlier, just um, back to eight bucks right now. But um, earnings for Rumble, I mean, there was, there was positives and negatives. Uh, that was the major negative. Q4 revenue downside, but uh, users higher, uh, a little more traffic on the site itself. But yeah. as we were saying, there's so much competition now. It's a tough game. It is, Brendo, it definitely is, uh, and turning a profit's even harder. I mean, guys, the street was looking for 28.1 million in revenue. They missed markedly here, 20.39. So that's the bad news, as Brendo mentioned. The good news is that there was a lot more growth in the active users, 60 mo 67 million. Uh, average monthly active users, uh, which is a 16% year-over-year increase. 48 million of those users are from Canada and the U.S., so I'll have to see how it does, but also the hours of uploaded video per day were up 21%, Brendo, so some good data here, but mixed. Um, another one that's not terribly active so far this morning, only 200,000 shares so far, guys, here for RUM. Yeah, it's not super, um, it's not super exciting, but... It's kind of like what we talked about with Palantir a little bit there, is, is that you're gonna have to pay for some growth. And they do have the user growth, they just didn't get the minutes that they're looking for, and they had a weaker sales number than they expected. So, I mean, I like the Rumble trade because we do have that 20% short float. Um, I don't know why, maybe if I refresh this, 
Oh, it still was on DJT. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my daily chart here, but um, you can see that. Eh. All right. You know what? Let me, um, let me just call up another chart here because honestly, like my e-signal charts all changed the format like today. I don't even know what's going on with that. Um, but all right. So here's Rumble. Let's just go over a daily chart here that we can see. So the 200 period's at 650. So I was talking about buying dips into here. I think it's going to be worth it to do that. Um, like I said, with this current political environment, I could see Rumble being talked about over the next couple months, which is nice. DJT continues to go higher. Um, I, I kind of like the story here. Their sales was 21 million versus 28. Obviously, that's a big miss. People can't be happy with that. But only down 8%. There's a short float, so I could see this thing coming back in just a little bit and then trying to bounce. And in around seven bucks, six. I really think this is a good buy. The call that I like to make, and probably will do it, buy down here in and around 650 if we can get it, seven bucks, and then play it back to nine. And then if we break nine, then you want to have something on for this upside move. So I think Rumble's a, a, you know, a, good, a good level here, and I actually like the long on Rumble. So that would be my play there. Long back in, round seven if we can get there today, which yep. I don't think we do. Not enough volume for this name to be on too many traders' radars, I feel like. So Rumble, unfortunately, we're going to have to give it a couple days to get down to 7 bucks. I would think. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that look there. I'm always asking, like, if there's a, like we talked about um, a little earlier, uh, a couple days ago, it had that strength, again, with some, with some uh, Arvol as well. And then a few, few, uh, few weeks earlier, mid-March as well, some nice strength. So the question I'm always asking is, like, all right, if this bid with some, with some Arvol and some significant uh, volume, when you do look at, uh, when you do look left, some of these days doing some of the most volume uh, with the strong trend. So I ask myself, if the bid is real and we start to fade off into some of these prices, where will, where will the bid catch, if at all? So yeah, I do like that seven. I like that 750 as well. Uh, you can see that a uh, little bit of a, of a, of a downtrend off of, those, uh, off of those days. And then when you kind of break out, you see that that's a trend break and then you get that strength with some, with some Arvo and now we're holding some of these previous levels as well. So uh, yeah, Rumble, a great look in and around that 7, 750. Let's see what we do today. Uh, Let's see if the bid kind of catches in, in this range anywhere. You like hear an analyst for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. If it's that significant, but I don't know. Uh, PLTR downside here, 1.6%, 1.7 right now. Um, cut to sell by uh, an analyst that we've never heard of before, but it did move on it. So, I mean, obviously it's something. Um, I mean, the real level, probably a little bit further, 2350, 23 on the daily chart, but still looks great as far as the long term. Yeah, the sell and a price target of 20 bucks here, Brendo. Um, they're saying the valuation is too rich for their blood, too high, too quickly. Uh, here they, uh, you know, they, they go on and make their case. If you want to have a read, it's, uh, it's published by Benzinga. So keep your eyes on that. But yeah, we'll see Palantir if, uh, if it does well on the day. Uh, I'm, I was just hearing Bitcoin was moving there, but I don't really see anything. If you zoom in a little bit, maybe back to day highs anyways for uh, BTC, it would appear. Holy, we're going really quickly. Day one, so yeah, earnings yeah. on their last earnings report. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. We're talking about putting some anchored VWAPs down here on Palantir. Yeah. Um, okay, what was the story you want to talk about? Oh, Palantir immediately. Yes. Okay, yeah. uh, there we go. Do you want to show, uh, do you have that? Put the anchored view up on there, showing your Boom. screen right now. Right All right, there. so let, let's give OB, oh, there it is. So Yeah, shout out to, shout out to Brian Shannon. Yeah. So, what does that look like to you? You want to explain where you dropped the anchor or whatever? No, it's just uh, just off of the off of the day one uh, day one anchor, and it seems like as of right now, it's just holding it. Sure, it's not as clean, but uh, it kind of just hold, it's holding above that. So, what that kind of tells me is uh, um, uh, the volume that kind of comes in on that off of that earnings is uh, the longs are still in the money. <laughs> pretty much and it's holding holding up quite well uh, on top of that so yeah let's see if we kind of hold in and around some of these levels but uh, the thing about anchored VWAP or any sort of indicators I don't want to get too anchored to anything uh, in terms of a bias so uh, I do like to give it give it uh, give it some some reference some consideration and uh, yeah there's a lot of indicators that you can throw up on your chart and you'll be like you'll, you'll get that confirmation bias and be like oh yeah that's working really really well and then uh, yeah maybe uh, 
not 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 the best for uh, for anchoring. Uh, if you have if you have problems anchoring to certain things and not giving them the right ri uh, risk, right? You can you can't be like, okay, well, um, oh, I'm going to play off of this anchor, but it's not holding, and I'm going to keep on trying that. But regardless of what that is, it's been holding up, and uh, these 20, uh, 23, 24 area seems like the spot uh, to be for the long, so let's see if some of these levels hold going into today as it is coming down uh, from yesterday as well, quite heavily. Um, bigger picture, uh, we have made a high in and around that 27 half. I do have this alert here from before, kind of trending back down into this anchored, so let's see if some of these levels hold. Bit of a support on top of 23, 24 is, uh, or 23.85 is where that anchored sits right now. Trying to get a little bias to the long side now as the NASDAQ tries to rally back a little bit here. So I'm pretty excited to see uh, if it can get going uh, a little bit. So we'll see if that can go. Okay. Um yeah, just really quickly, I wrote down Palantir here down at 2324, uh, 2325. I wrote down 35 here by accident. Look, Ford PE 270 according to Benzinga, current PE 75. So yeah, I get it. It's, uh, it's very rich, uh, the name. But you gotta, you, you're paying up for growth. I mean, there's, if you're gonna trade in this space, um, you know, look, look at many names that are out there right now, UiPath or some of these AI names that are out there as well, and let alone um, cloud security, cloud names, anything like that. There's some expensive valuations out there, and this is just another one, so I'm fine with it. I really like the story. You just saw the anchored view up there from earnings. Where, I mean, you don't even need to have an anchored view up. I mean, look yeah, at what we're looking at right now. Stands up. This is just standing out on a daily chart. The 22, the 50 period moving average is at 2230. So I just want to buy dips in this name, honestly. But we saw DraftKings yesterday open up down one or two percent. We, we mentioned it. Then we looked back about an hour later and it was down six percent. So Palantir could be in for that move down into this $23 area. So we'll start to buy it if we see that happen. This very wick bottom, I think we should probably respect in and around 2480. So if we get back down to 2480, I, I, that's probably when we'll dump these shares. I'm not, I don't want to hold it all the way down here to 22 bucks. Like, uh, sorry, 2280. I don't, I don't want to hold it all the way down here because if you get into this mess and don't hold, then Palantir is going to be down 10 plus percent and that's not something uh, that we want to mess with. So let's start the buying low and then if we're wrong and it takes off, fine. We'll miss this trade and we'll analyze it on a pullback dip. But for me, Palantir, let it settle down. Like to, to sit here and take this pre-market bid here at the bottom is not a right, right play. If the market turns around, they'll go over and they'll hit Palantir, trust me. So um, Snowflake did release. So, oh yes, yeah, sir. All right, we'll take this one. Your boy has to win every once in a while. We just bought Snowflake the other day at 158. We told everybody that. Um, Snowflake today, 164. We'll take it, we'll take it. These guys, their, their pee is uh, just as uh, exorbitant, exuberant. Oh, did you know that the, I heard on the radio today, Brendan uh, 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 watches baseball. You probably do not. The Blue Jays uh, season opener is today. Nice. I didn't even realize that in uh, Tampa. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even realize that as here I am in my Raptors hat um, as the Raptors oh, vibe for... Where's your for, Blue Jay hat? I have Blue Jays hat. Yeah, I have one. I mean, I'll wear it. I said I heard on the way home in today. I was like, what? I actually heard it last night and then I didn't, didn't clue in. Um, but yeah, opening night and baseball's nice. back, baby, which is amazing. There's actually nothing better than going to a Jays game, grabbing a cold one, sitting back and enjoying the game, honestly. I mean, I've, I feel like... Um, that's the right thing to do, and that's where Neil is. Although, wow. I don't think he's there now. I mean, if the Blue Jays are not in Dunedin anymore, but he did go to spring training, so uh, lots of fun. Oh, it's pouring rain in Tampa. Yeah, so Tampa, that's been a pretty good rivalry, man. Tampa versus the Blue Jays. Tampa's done really... So Tampa Bay is one, are one of those teams where they play the small ball. Like, they'll, they'll um, pitch three or four pitchers at once. Like, they'll, okay. they won't have... The, the seven innings starter. They'll go three innings, three innings. They do different styles like that. They don't have a huge salary cap. So they kind of have like one of the best scouting systems. Huh. So like they find their traders young and groom them into, you know, millennial traders and then they trade them um, and gain more assets. That's un unfortunately Obi what happens in baseball. There's only a handful of teams that can afford the big players. You said traders. I know. You mean 
I'm, I'm bringing it back to ah, our okay, okay, business. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Where you bring in the young traders yeah. and you find the good ones and groom them into all-star athletes. Yes, yes, sure. um, but uh, okay, so they have a different play style than than the rest of the teams as well. Well, like for talking. example, the Dodgers just went out and spent 700 million on that Otani. Right, I heard so about that. So he's yeah. not right. So he was an angel. He came from Japan, but because the Dodgers can afford to do that, which is not no, Toronto was in that too. Yeah. We're owned by Rogers. Like we have, we're one of the richest teams in Major League Baseball. So Major League Baseball technically doesn't have a salary cap. They have what you call a luxury tax. Okay. So you can spend as much as you want, but I don't know what the number is. But if your salary is over, let's just say for simplicity, which it's not, it's way higher than this, a hundred million, mm -hmm. then you would pay like a ten percent tax on any dollar over a hundred million back to the league, which okay. then gets distributed to these lower market teams. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a revenue sharing. Nice. That's, uh, that's, a, that's an interesting that system. Way. That's good. All right, yeah. So that's uh, your little MLB talk of the day. More of that to come. All right. I was just saying, we'll have to let Neil know. I don't even know if he is going today or not. But No idea. Fun fact. The T <laughs> Tampa Bay Stadium is actually in St. Pete's for anyone who has not been there. So maybe he's close. We'll see. 3.8% uh, here for XPang. Uh, trying to get back to uh, the upside once again. Um, there was a few new models launched. They're also uh, entering the German market and talking to a few other countries over in Europe, which I think is a little maybe more positive than the, the new model launches today. So XPeng to the upside. We mentioned that NEO story. I threw it on the board there. Uh, NEO downside off the deliveries number that was uh, yesterday. Yeah, Xpeng uh, is uh, is doing interesting things here. So here's the car. Here's a G6. This is what they're launching. I happen to think it's a real looker. Uh, it's an SUV. It's got all the right uh, lines. And this is the um, the P7. This is the sedan that they're releasing. Both are going to be available starting in May. Um, it looks as if you know the, the first entrant country is going to be Germany. Then they're going to look to expand into France, Italy, and the United Kingdom. But we should really look at this through the lens of protectionism because the European Union has made no bones about the fact that they are looking to protect their companies and there could be these levies and tariffs um, on Chinese imported vehicles, Brando, especially electric vehicles. So more to come on this. Uh, it's worth noting if you uh, zoom out to the daily chart yesterday, Day was pretty ugly for all of these heavy, heavy volume for uh, XPeng. Um, tested that low from back in February and is trying to bounce here today, but uh, not too far away from that 780 again for XPeng. Yeah, no, I uh, I like that uh, that look. Bit of a bit of a fader off of uh, off of the earnings report that we had uh, just uh, mid uh, mid March, March 19th. Was, uh, was the earnings day. You can see that a strong sell-off right off of the open uh, come in on the second day, kind of tries to get back at those prices that we opened up at on day one, comes right back in. So, so it seems like that, is a, that, is, that was a place to kind of sell there, and we've continued to sell off uh, back to the downside here. A little bit of a gap up today. Uh, on, uh, on that, you can see kind of some volume coming in at these lows yesterday as well. Lo and behold, Looking left, right there, eight uh, seven eighty seems like a, seems like a little bit of a level. Uh, let me just look at this on the daily chart, and uh, we can define some more levels right there. So it seems like uh, whenever we get down in uh, in and around this area, what is this? In and around seven seven fifties, in and around uh, eight. So seven to eight, roughly, we keep we keep bouncing, uh, and that's been happening pretty much all year here. Uh, so the beginning of uh, sorry, since the beginning of last year as well. So uh, at the beginning of 23, you catch a bid, you catch a bid once again, you get a nice strong bid all the way up to 20s, and now we're back down in and around the, that same level here. So uh, let's see if we can catch some strength again. It might take a couple a uh, couple days, a couple weeks, but it seems like this might be a little bit of a demand area on XPeng here. Xpeng. Um, all right, let's go over to Tesla quickly because um, this, this is a name that we actually, it's at these levels that are giving me these feels again. What's going on with Tesla right now? Like, okay. Like, we just called it up. We're, so Tesla right now is breaking lower. I mean, I don't, um, we'll, we'll wait. Okay, I mean, here we go. Tesla, for some reason, now is really starting to get hit. Did the, is the market getting hit? Like, I just sat down. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, nice. Well, I was just talking with Mateo, by the way, and we were talking about blue skies ahead, and then I come down and see this. Um, okay, not on Tesla, just on the market there. Uh, but okay, nice move down to 177. What I was going to say is this. We yesterday basically lost our whole day on this move, 
and it was 940, okay? So that's what happened on that move there because I thought Tesla was going to be a buy in and around 178, this level right here. When we broke 177.50, we got out. It was an epic L. And that's another thing that we talked about on the podcast with Kanal. He's like, guys, like the way that we trade and the show that we have is unlike anything he's even seen before, period. He's never, he can't understand that, you know, we will be explaining and showing all of these trades real time and doing this. Basically, just watch the podcast. We talked about all that. I talked about frauds that were out there and everything. Um, and it was great to have a guy like him agree with that kind of stuff. So um, anyways, here it comes back in, makes that bottom at 176. Honestly, this move right now is giving me feels of that again. So we just have right now some of these imbalances coming out. Tesla's trying to dance around again. Long story short, I feel like a 176 is an area that we should be trying to buy. So that's going to be that play for me right now, 176, some kind of a buy on Tesla. Um, wor worth waiting down there, and we have to be patient. That's the one thing I learned about in my, definitely my last three, four, five months with this market volatility, I feel like, on the mm -hmm. names that I'm watching and yeah. a lot of us are watching is that you have to be very, very patient. Well, I'm looking for the imbalances. You have to be patient for the levels because they will come in. And as we graduate up and as we mature as traders, we want to use more shares and we want to make more money. You can't be sort of, the word I'm looking for is not appropriate, but it's kind of like messing around with these levels that don't really need to exist. Like that's what got me in trouble yesterday. It wasn't my 178, and we talked about this. Even if your end game was to have five, 600 shares down there on Tesla, I shouldn't be starting with 100 at 180. Like just be patient, as patient as you possibly can, so that when it comes into your level, if you're gonna lose on one of your ideas, lose on the idea, right, of it coming into levels that you were hoping for. You can easily be wrong. The market, I could be like, oh, I think the market's going to tank today and we're up 2% at the end of the day. It's, it's what Neil was mentioning. Don't, don't add to your losing trades. Wait, wait for them to come in. And if they're wrong, they're wrong. Kind of like a hit it and quit it mentality. So got to have that when you're trading, you know. Um, so we're going to do that with Tesla. We're going to wait for 176. But right here, I'm not seeing that much on the imbalances. I want to say good luck to everybody today. We have over three minutes to go right now. Um, nothing hitting on here. Sells and buys. I would say it's a nothing burger. That's Tesla. My trade to go right now is NVIDIA short 905. I'm sitting here right now. Right now with an offer at 905. So, I mean, I hope we don't replay this, this at, um, in five minutes or whatever and we wound up running, getting run over up here. But this level of 907 held yesterday. So I'll be damned if I'm not going to try to short that again today. This name was down yesterday. I'm uncertain of what the market wants to do today. So I have to test this level. So 907, 908 would be my stopping point on this one. Let's see, I'm ready to ride with Nvidia short 905. That, that's the only order that I have in right now. And then I have a Palantir. Uh, I don't have this bid in, but I might as well put it in. I'm gonna put a bid down there, Palantir low. I don't expect for it to fill. If it does, we're gonna take a swig of coffee or Jack Daniels or something and see what happens. <laughs> yes, sir. It is coffee, by the way. Yeah, or so they say. That's why Randy brings it, baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why he has an everyday spot on the show when he asks. Yeah. No, it's coffee. I don't, I don't think anybody should uh, trade with you know, feel like any kind of ways. Yeah. No, honestly, I feel like be comfortable in your own zone and everybody knows what that is for themselves. So, um, all right, are we going back over to the desk or? All right, let's go. Last day today of breakout trading. Adair and I are going to be talking about understanding continuation breakouts on how to trade. We'll be doing that right at 11, so make sure to join us. Your mediocre work is my best work. <laughs> what, what, what was that? I was talking with Adara. All right. Nice. Her mediocre work would be my best work. Okay. Yeah. No, Adara definitely I mean, worked. Trying, put, put, it in, put in the hard work for sure. I'm just trying to be real. Uh, okay, um, let's go. All right. Uh, about, what do you what, 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 Yeah, go, go over so, what you uh, mean. Yeah. yeah, no, I, like I said before, so I got, uh, I got uh, CCL on watch here as well. 
um, uh, and I got uh, WBA as well, Rumble watching, th watching that one as well. But a uh, uh, little bit of a, a flush happening right before the open, both on Tesla and Apple here I'm watching. Um, so yeah, like I've uh, been saying all week, I'm gonna stay a little bit patient, as patient as possible uh, for some of these levels to come in. And uh, speaking to the point that uh, Sean just mentioned, yeah, if you have a level that you're interested in and, it, uh, and you think there's a high probability of it coming in, uh, yeah, you gotta have the patience to kind of uh, kind of uh, wait for it, and that's what I'm gonna be working on today as well. Um, NBA. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna be gonna be waiting the first few minutes to see if any of those opportunities really arise. Uh, and with only about 15 seconds left, I see Adara running to the bell there. Um, Good luck, everybody. And here we go. The Here's countdown the is the now week. on. Um, we're going to get flat on mm -hmm. NVIDIA if we do break above 908. So we're going to watch out for that. Two and one, Adara. We hit it a little bit late. We are now open. So we'll put our stop order in and watch for NVIDIA, which is now bouncing at 900. So we're just going back and forth right now. It has a spread of about a buck 50. We'll wait on NVIDIA to see what's happening. There's the push down. So it looks like we might have been right off the short of 900 right now, uh, down touching into 897 and change is NVIDIA. We are not short. We are waiting, guys and girls and everybody watching. Hello, and thank you for watching uh, here at Trader TV Live. Told you we'd be back today. Oh, yeah. We're back every day. You know, this is what we're doing. Um, all right, Amazon. We're watching out for that one to come into 179. It doesn't look like NVIDIA right now will be the jam for us until it gets going. And trust me, you will see it light up uh, when, when I get short on that one at 905, if that does come in. Amazon, we were looking for dip buys. It only goes down to uh, 179.60. It's on the sticky note here at 179. I do have a bid there. We are waiting for that one. Let's go find out if Kathy's here or not and what's going on with Palantir. Looks like she tried to get it going early there up to 24 uh, 30 this was always going to be the problem with Palantir we were expecting a decent move off the open and thankfully for us shareholders it's to the long side but for us day traders we still wait for a lower bid right now to get going um, one more look on another name I'm not into anything yet so the market's coming in Tesla right now Back up to the upside, just touched 178-ish on a nice move for Tesla. So well done, up to the upside there, 178.50 for Tesla. Um, yeah, holding that bottom of 177. We said we'd look at 176. What is this market doing, Ooh. by the way? Um, yeah, we, we are starting flush. to go. Yeah, NVIDIA flush. is starting to go down to nine, uh, eight, sorry, nine, 895 right now. The market getting flushed just a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I'm watching, again, uh, a lot of the large caps, Apple flushing pretty is hard that what as it well. Is? Uh, it's, it's all of them. It's NVIDIA, it's Softy, it's Apple, it's Alphabet, uh, and Amazon as well. So a lot of the, a lot of the big boys kind of uh, coming right back in. Look at uh, uh, WBA, though, uh, kind of a stre uh, strength off of the open. I'm watching CCL, CCL flushing back down into those 16s. Uh, so yeah, entering into some of those levels from yesterday, like we talked about. So I'm going to stay a little bit more patient, see if some of those levels kind of come in there. Uh, uh, let's see how well this 1617 uh, area holds on CCL. We kind of talk about that uh, earnings day two uh, play there uh, with those defined levels on uh, on day one. And there goes WBA with that with more strength back up to the upside. Maybe that 21 oh, or man. sorry 22 coming in as well. That uh, pre market uh, high um, earnings reaction high as well on WBA at that 21 level. Um, some strength pushing into into there. So let us know what what uh, what your top ideas of the day are. We'll on. we'll we'll take a we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, Sean's saying he's got a big trade on. Yeah, because we got one. Apple on, okay, Apple, and, and Apple it's on a good one. Side. Yeah, it's a good one. We went we went into the short on Apple, so there it is. We'll go one for one on our first out right now for Apple. So we're short here at 70s. You can see the trades, and if you're watching us for the first time, thank you. Our trades uh, will be live trades. Um, we're both trading okay. equity. It's not options, um, and we can float between any market so whether or not it be nyse the nasdaq we won't trade toronto but there's over 50 plus markets yeah. here at real trading make sure you go find out about real trading in the platform that we're on so we're short right now i'm going to go short until 172 breaks let's see we want some more shares up here on apple it's down one percent the market's only down 0.1 uh now 0.2 and here goes apple to the downside so are there any areas where we now need to be concerned with I'm looking at that 18.5. We're already lower than that right now. Oh. Apple's 
starting to go to the downside. I like this trade, and I think it's worth holding on for some of these bottoms here into 171. That little top right there is 30s. We topped out on yesterday at 30, 171.30. So let's, um, let's put a bid there. Am I already bidding there? I'm already not bidding there. So we'll put a bid down there into the 30s and then again near 171. And again, we'll reload this until we're wrong up here at 172. But like I said, we've learned our lesson. Let's wait to make sure we get the right positions um, at the right levels and for the right amount of shares. I mean, look at this Tesla move. We, caught, we talked about 176. See, sometimes not being too patient can hurt oh, yeah. because it went to 176.40. We're at 176.10. So we just missed a $3 move up for 40 cents. You know, so there goes Tesla, nicely cooking to the upside. And look, Apple cooking now down. There we go. We get that, Phil. Let's bang. Yes, sir. We'll start the day off. Let's go, man. All right. Good move there as we're, um, you know, we're trading much more calm uh, than yesterday when we were trying to catch that falling knife in Tesla. Uh, but we will push this knife in to the heart of Apple as it goes down, Damn. as we should not talk that gruesomely about <laughs> Apple, which is one of my largest holdings. Uh, but here we go. <laughs> down to the downside now comes Apple, and I'm fine with that because we're making some money right now. Uh, all right, good move there. Uh, you're still looking at stuff. Yeah, I'm still looking at stuff. I'll let, on I think uh, I think there's uh, again. Ooh, here comes Palantir. Following uh, fo following uh, in, ste in step with you with that little bit of patience on the ideas that I do have there. Um, that 22 coming in on uh, on WBA yeah, 1680s holding on a CCL as of right now. So I'm going to stay patient. Yeah, I see the market doing a little bit of a flush off of that 185. But uh, yeah, a lot of uh, I think I think there's definitely a lot uh, a lot of potential for uh, for um, waiting and being patient uh, for some of those levels to come in. I'm just waiting to see what uh, what the tape does here in and around this 22. You guys can see here here. Let me pull up. I mean, the is there anything wrong with my mic? For you guys as well. Um, what? But uh, yeah, a bit of a hundred lots right there on top of the 22. Um, and did we just print that? I think we might have just quickly printed that. Know. Yeah, so that guy got Hold taken on. out right there at that 22. I was hearing um, so, earlier. Yeah, let's see. I'm, uh, nothing too significant as of right now. I do want to get on the right side of the move there. Uh, so a little patience, definitely. But if you had the opening drive uh, off of this, uh, even if you took it off the VWAP or even the 20 halves, that was, that was really nice. Right you got again. a point and a half, uh, point and a half right off the open on that drive on WBA. So uh, let's see if we can look for that back side move or maybe it continues off the 22 I'm patiently waiting and watching the tape here at that 22 that earnings reaction high as well with that confluence happening at this price for now but not enough confluence for me to uh, to me to for me to really execute as of right now but it is kind of slowing down here uh, a little bit of a stack right there at that 22 you can see let's see if the stack gets taken out and we start bidding above that if we do then maybe she's got a little bit more umph uh, left past that 22. So I'll be a little patient. Let that first 15 Come minute on, kind of candle print. We only have uh, we only have a few more minutes till that Chicago PMI at 9:45 yeah, yeah. as well. Oh, good and I uh, don't want to get caught offside on that one there. So let's see what that PMI kind of brings in. Um, Nvidia bouncing off of yesterday's low. Yesterday's low is kind of uh, kind of interesting. A double bottom low yesterday on uh, on Nvidia. Let's take a let's pull that up and take a quick look at that one. Um, and we are holding that right and as of right now so take a look at that real quick yeah. double bottom re relatively around the same price here let's check out that first low uh, 891.36 and then that initial low right there 891.47 so about a 10 11 penny difference between uh, both uh, both of those stark lows on the day on nvidia from yesterday and take a look at what the low today is as of right now 891.36 and we get that nice bounce off of that Apple, quite a strong bounce 897 is where we bounce off of so yesterday's uh intraday support yeah, kind of coming into here. play right off of the open and we're blasting to the upside into that 900 mark so a little bit of a dip uh, uh chips with the dip nice nice to start it off in the morning you ever Keep have that you ever dip uh you ever is dip this? apples into anything uh, peanut butter. Exactly. So oh, Apple yeah. with the dip as well, baby. Let's go. Let's spin that right now. We're almost a dollar in the money on this trade. Uh, it's the very first trade we put on today. It's Apple. It's not on the sticky note um, or anything. It's just we saw the market start to make this move down right there. And we were just like, okay, 
Um, we knew Apple was weaker in the pre-market, so we took it. We just take a piece out there at 117, uh, sorry, 171.15. Now I'm looking for lower. We have a bid. I think it might have just bounced off our bid. 170.80 was my bid, we just bounced off 88. So this is gonna go down. But the reason why we got out of this, it's pretty simple trade for me. It's because, well, we're not out of it. We still have 40% of this trade. We've only got out three outs. Um, is because of what Obi just mentioned. I mean, we have uh, consumer, is it consumer at, uh, wh wh which one is it? Oh, PMI. At 45. Uh, what did you say? Sorry, what was Chicago it? PMI. Chicago PMI, right yep. there it was. So yeah, so just showing here on our watch is Chicago PMI expected 46, prior 45, and then at 10 o'clock is the one that I'm more interested in, the Michigan oh, yeah. sentiment coming at 76 and a half. So yes, uh, we'll wait for that to come through. Um, and we're just gonna hold on to this one. Let's go back over and have a look at some of the stocks that we talked about. Remember what we said, Pat, uh, Big Patty Ice over there? We said that we were gonna wait for Palantir to do exactly what it's doing. You know um, what I mean? So why the hell didn't we short it, my guy? Damn. I mean, look at that. It hits the 200 period. It goes right into pre-market levels and then basically does as scripted. People say the NFL is scripted. You know, I mean, we wrote the script here for Palantir, but let's wait to see if we can capitalize on that anyways, because we're not in it. Um, you, can, you can write the movie, but if no one goes to see it, then who cares? Uh, let's see what happens now. This is going to the downside. Look at Palantir collapsing. When Palantir was down 1%, I said this could go down 7%, 6%. So we're gonna sit there in and around 23 um, and see about grabbing a bid down there uh, near 23. Now that I see this move down, I'm actually going to get it pretty much, if we can get it near 23 and then use this bottom here, 80 as my out, that's the trade that I'll put on there. Even if you put on 1,000 shares or something, you can get that down there at 23 and change, give yourself 20 cents worth of risk. I think that's probably worth it right there. The market is definitely battling back in. Uh-oh, let's get that Yo. party started, NVIDIA, yeah, because you and I Damn. have a date with the devil, and we're coming in right now. <laughs> so here we go, man. We're short at 9.05 flat, and pretty soon NVIDIA will not only take me on a date, make me pay for it, and uh, never call me me back because here we go <laughs> this is three dollars uh, if this goes against me we are out at 908 so uh we are also bidding 903 to take a piece out down there because if we're going to risk two or three dollars and here it goes um then we definitely have to take that bid as well the market's really motoring right here um i'm fine with this position it's not a huge one we had this in for the pre-market um yesterday on the same amount of shares we took nine dollars so let's wait to see what happens here. I think it's worth the risk. We're bouncing off 905. Clip it. Clip that. Let's see what happens with Nvidia back down in. We're bidding 903 and then no more bids after that. Actually, I'll talk about that if, if it goes through 903, first of all. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we're 50 cents in the money on Nvidia. Uh, take it if you wish. Uh, but here we go. Let's see if we get a move down. Yeah, I like that bit of a bit of a range uh, range respect to kind of kind of thing. Is that the idea there for uh, for that uh, short? Yesterday's range is kind of around that around that same level. Yeah, that is, that's, that's, that's the only reason we we, yeah. we were unable to get by this level yesterday. Yeah. So there it is right okay. there yesterday. Like this that. is why we're taking it. Obviously, the better short would have been to wait for the absolute best price. But remember, you asked me yesterday. Yeah. It, it, we, might, we may get whacked out of this. Um, it, it may be better to do an SMH trade or something like that at this level, even right now. Because yeah, if we like the NVIDIA the short, but are scared about taking a $3 hit because someone can just accidentally hit the buy key, um, you know, this move up there on SMH is only 10 cents. You see? Mm -hmm. So, uh-oh, come on, NVIDIA. Oh, damn, we are bidding 903, and boom, a mini boom right now. We'll take out $2. We'll take out $2 out of a third, okay? So there we go. So now it's okay. Now we can have, you know, now we can, we're, we're through the main course right now. We're just thinking about what we want to do. Let's see what happens now with NVIDIA, and let's see if we can make this date end in a bang down here to 895. This is where we're looking for NVIDIA. That just means that's probably gonna take 908, but okay, let's put it down here. Uh, 895 flat, how about that? Uh, we'll see if we can get that. Uh, we'll take that profit early on this name and okay. just enjoy our Thursday so far. Today, we chose peace, not violence.
Yeah, I like, I like that look. Um, a couple more minutes till that uh, till that uh, PMI oh, kind of comes out. Oh, um, so yeah, I pulled up. Uh, I, li I like the idea uh, of that short there, Sean. So I did pull up NVDL uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, easier. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I actually this this What's is up? not a great idea to be holding this maybe potentially through that number. Right, 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 right. So I, I think if people are trying to get in right now, it might not be a great idea. That slipped my mind. So yeah, so I, I did. I did pull up NVDL, and I'm like, all right, well, uh, I'm gonna watch this one. If that kind of uh, that that sentiment comes out, uh, I want to see what uh, what this kind of does. And again, NVIDIA, one of the one of the leaders of uh, of the market uh, market theme, and even the market right now. Uh, so definitely worth a watch there. Let's see what we do with that previous day's consolidation range. We pretty much consolidated in that range uh, for majority of the day yesterday. And yeah, I, th I think that uh, that first initial co uh, come in and test of that, a little bit of a pullback we're having right now. Apple down. Apple goes a dollar in the money. 71, beautiful. Nice yeah, choice. Apple is, we're, we're crushing. I mean, Apple just went boom. Our two trades on today, dollar in the money on Apple. We already took $2 on Nvidia. Uh, we're getting ready for this number. We'll go to Adara when we have it. Uh, or we can go to it right now. Let's go, Adara. We're just getting this Chicago PMI coming in right now for the month of March. Forecast and consensus of 46, previous of 44. Just waiting for this number to come in, should be any second now. We cut it 41.4, so lower than the consensus and forecast of 46 here. SPY ticking up a little bit here. We were flat, so up about 0.04, uh, 0.03%. So slight up tier, duck uptick here for the SPY, guys. Oh, um, bad number, good for market. It looks like Nvidia is going to the upside. We are getting out at 908. So we talked about that. If it does break 908, then go, come to my screen. Um, if if it breaks, then that's what we're going to do. We've already talked about that level. It basically came pennies away from doing that. So looks like we may may get that. So let's just be patient um, with all of that. So uh, that's NVIDIA. Looks like it's going to, here it goes. There it is. Yeah. So we are out. We actually got no slippage there pretty much. So yeah, you know, we chose peace. NVIDIA chose violence. What can I tell you? Uh, but right there, nice little upside move. This is why you do that kind of a, a trade, in my opinion. So we will be down a couple iced mocha lattes, uh, but it is making the move to the upside. Um, Roku seeing a spike right now because there is news that the Vizio deal is in trouble. So that's um, V-I-Z-O, uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, V-Z-I-O, is that what it is? Um, yeah, so here we go. So Vizio right now, yes, so there it is. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, rumors right now, Adara, that this deal is potentially in problems uh, right now. So Vizio, yes, sir, um, with that move down. And then again, if, if Roku, AKA um, another sort of potential target for Walmart, maybe. I mean, it, the deals with Vizio and Walmart. So that's what that is. Okay, Nvidia, did you just only go up to 90910 there? Um, all right, uh, that's, that's decent. Let's, let's try right now again, because you know what? I mean, we can yeah, be I friends. Like that. Try um, all right, so let's try 910 break, then we are out. We'll try another short here on Nvidia. We're back in this game. Um, again, we had to fight that number there. The market did like it and is starting to go back up. We saw Nvidia absolutely crumble yesterday. Um, with uh, again today, we're up on this. It's it's greater than the market. We understand that. Let's see if Nvidia will pull back just a little bit again here. We'll be able to take some profit down at 905, 906 again if it does hit that. And then if we're lucky enough to get a real pull, then that'll be good. Whenever you have a spot that you like, here we go. See, we can already take it. It's already one to one. Whenever you have a spot where you can take Nvidia with a dollar or two of risk. Um, that's, and, and you've sort of worked out those levels. Like we just saw 910 spike on a number. Um, so that has nothing to do with Nvidia. So right there, um, good volume spike to the upside. Like I could sit here and justify this short all I want to. I mean, the market's gonna be what it is. If it takes 910, it takes 910 and we'll get out. But I, I thought it was maybe worth it there. It looks like it just wants to go up and you know, fighting the strongest stock in the S&P, there it goes. In the, and we didn't even get slippage again. So that's fine. We got out in the 20s again there, and as it comes back in, all right, let's leave it alone now. It, it, it you know, we'll try some, we'll try some ideas. We wrote down 905. How we wind up losing the most amount of money around here is by continuously going into the same trades over and over again. So we are, we are very relaxed. We are just trying these trades. We took a winner, and right there, 
that was the L. So we just took it right there. Uh, that was out. We got we got 1020s out. We were short 888 or something like that. So about a buck 50, buck 70 worth of a hit on Nvidia um, is is fine by me. So that's what that is. My bad. Um, Palantir. I almost think of on any rip up like this in the market. This is probably a short. Let's short Palantir here against 24 bucks. You know, um, we talked about how low this name could possibly go today. I'd hate to get it on a rebound here, meaning like, look, as soon as, I, as, soon as we try to go short, really? Um, all right, so we're going to try to build this short position right now, and we are short now at 91. So let's wait to see. We have 94. I feel like this top of 24 right there, it's the 50 period. We just had a pretty epic move back up in the futures, and we just got to 18.5. If they fall back again, the futures, that is, then we could have a good winner here um, on Palantir. So it's already starting to cook a little bit. Um, you know, we do have some shares on this. We're going to have, so I have seven times the shares on Palantir right now than I had on NVIDIA. Just, 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 yeah, but it's not even, it's just because of the price. I mean, $900 versus $24. Yeah, that, uh, that, you know, it's just that's the kind of risk that I'm talking about when, when we're dealing with this, is that we have the ability to trade all these different names. Right. Um, and there is one of those things. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Randy. Um, as Randy does the universal sign for coffee, which I have no idea what that is. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll talk about your Walgreens when we get back from Madeira. So here's the, the Vizio story. This came out about 8.30, actually, from what I'm seeing. But around 8.30, it was reported here, at least what I'm seeing on Benzinga. Walmart looking to refile its acquisition papers to the Vizio deal. So basically withdrawing and and refiling them. So still interested, just had to withdraw first. Um, so interesting look, not really any specific news here though with regards to the VZIO that I am seeing. I will be keeping an eye on it, guys. Like right, so good, good news on Vizio. That, that was what we heard. And we, we have the Benzinga. Just to let everybody know, I'll, sometimes I'll drop that kind of stuff. I do have, you know, their kind of news feed in my ear. So, uh, but the problem is, is they kind of read everything. So we have to be careful with what we report. But that's why we go over there to Adara. All right. Uh, what's good on Walgreens? Uh, Walgreens kind of working out for now. Let's see, that 22 couldn't really get through. Um, so it did get a little short when that 22 doesn't, uh, can't really get through. Let's see, it's below VWAP as of right now. Does VWAP become heavy or do we get right back up? I'm still kind of patiently waiting um, it, it, to get more, right? I, I do want to. I do want to get more as the trade kind of confirms uh, a, a little bit more there. So uh, I did try that NVDL short as well, uh, kind of that similar idea on that uh, on that Nvidia, and we are kind of breaking out of that 90, uh, 905, 907 area, testing 912s, and then NVDL uh, in and around that 4230s. 4240s as well, but if you look left here on uh, on NVDL, wow. I'll take Nvidia a quick look right there. So there, there's a bit of a base oh where that strength came off of, and we're testing in and around that level right now. So I do I do potentially like this for that look, but uh, Nvidia, I uh, got to keep an eye on that tape as well. If Nvidia kind of wants short that, again. yeah, I I, I kind of want it as well. But that 915 is right there. But why um, do we do this? I have no idea. What's your, what's what are your thoughts? Well. My thoughts is, is, is what I just said out loud there is why do we do this to, our, to, to ourselves? Like, why can't we just play momentum and go long? Like, I look at this top and I'm like, hmm, yeah, maybe the that was out, top the, up Yeah, the break out 13. Nice. You know, I should go short. Like, I was just thinking to myself, let's go short 912, really. That's what I was thinking and I was just going to put the stop. So now that I'm thinking this out loud, it's probably going to be a banger. Uh, but yeah, I was just thinking to myself that this, this is a good level here. It's the 50 period on the 200 moving average. Uh, but again, like you mentioned, there's probably better tops up here and we can even get going more on NVIDIA. You're just now getting back to some of these levels right here. So I don't know. There it goes. Now it's into 910 again. That could have been the short. We just mentioned that up there. Do we want to? Do we want to try that if it, if it bumps again? Do we want to try that? I don't. I mean, I'm okay trying a nine thirteen. Yeah, I want to try that. Yeah. Uh, you want? You like it? I'm 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 gonna use uh, NVDL as the vehicle to to kind of uh, make that move there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I am watching the tape here. Why? I don't. I honestly don't think you should high. use NVDL for that. You know the what? spread on NVDL? Yeah, it's not too bad. It's Isn't about it? three, four pennies. Oh, that's it yeah, right yeah. now? Okay, okay. It's done okay. about 2.7 oh, million okay. so far. All right, that's so, yeah, it's, it's There must decent. have been another one. There was a $100 one. Uh, N NVDX. 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 I, think, okay. I don't like the spread on that one. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't Makes like sense. The on that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's perfect. I agree with that for sure. So that kind of solves our WIC problem as well that you were talking about. 
uh, potentially getting wicked out of a trade because yeah. you're just at the wrong spot. Um, and you know, and Nvidia because of options. This name doesn't have options. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't think, does it? Uh, but anyways, here we go. We finally got it right now. Let's start ringing some cash registers on this one. We talked about shorting Palantir. So we are short. We're short at 2392. Um, it's only 10 cents in. Uh, we only have one fill at 85. I just put another bid at 83. But hey, if we're here to dance, then let's dance because you know, why can't we get back into some of these levels a little bit lower? We want to be able to take, screw you, NVIDIA. We do want to be able to take didn't I say that because we're talking about this trade, this would be the one that works? We could have made it all back. Thank you, my man, Randy. We could have made every, we didn't even lose that much, but we make it all back in spades right there. Oh, look at the chart uh, of Nvidia right here. Wow, that 912, 913 OB. That, let's try that again, okay? If it comes back, promise me you'll take something. I, I, got, I got a little short You're already there. in it. Okay, but I, like I said, we were, uh, we were talking, it was in the 50s. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of uh, get a little closer to the 50s, but I did a bit of a chase on my part. I got 14s, but that's, uh, that's all right. Uh, si I just sized down a little bit uh, more than, I'd, uh, than I wanted up there. But uh, yeah, let's see if we kind of uh, bring that into fruition back down through 42. But before that, we're going to pass it over to Dara. We have RH here up about 14% on earnings. They actually missed across the board, but slightly more optimistic revenue projections for FY24 than expected. Also 10% short floats, and keep in mind with RH, guys. All right, thank you. I can't believe I'm going to, to, to short NVIDIA again if it gets back up there. All right, um, here it goes. Let's go. Give me those 77s. We are at 77, Palantir. We are at 77. We just bounced off that. So let's see if Palantir can get this name uh, or if we can get this name back in uh, to the downside here. Because, again, this is a sticky no reversal play. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so we had written down here long down. And, and look what we wrote down. Long 23.25. Do you know what the bottom of Palantir was today? 50s. So that was close, but it doesn't fit with the narrative of be patient for the levels that we wrote down. So unfortunately... Um, yesterday, I tried to get a little eager and here, see, like we just bounced off 77. That's hilarious. That's where we were sitting. Um, but we, we, we got a little excited yesterday buying those 180s, 178s, eventually getting stopped out at 177.50 on Tesla. So today we choose to be a little more patient with things and, and then that happens. All right, NVIDIA is trying to get back up. Let's check out AMD quickly here. There are more names on, on the watch. I want to go over to Amazon. I want to go over to Alibaba. I want to go over to lots of stuff. The market is trying to break higher right now. So yeah. that's a thing right now happening. Um, AMD, same ways, uh, but trying to get back through that 182. We looked at 182 yesterday, but if I'm looking at NVIDIA, we could stay there. But this is also coming into some of these top levels that they really haven't liked. I mean, we've gotten up here and got faded pretty good the last couple times we hit in and around 182, 183. And we do it again here today on AMD. Right off the jump, not even off the jump, 945. You know, when we were taking that on AMD, on NVIDIA, AMD gave you a, just as good of a short. So maybe this is the name. AMD's up 1%. Hold on. What is NVIDIA up? They're both the same, right? Yeah. So, all right. So I think you can choose either one of these as we are a dollar away from getting short on NVIDIA again. So let's wait to see if that comes through. Um, all right, Palantir. I'll bid some 85s. I'll bid some 85s. All right. Uh, we'll see if we, there we go. Um, and we'll still wait for some 77s and see if that one comes in. NVDL, you're still in that one. Your yeah, Walgreens trade is cooking. So we really, really like that one. Yeah, so uh, the Walgreens, again, it's, it's working out for now. Let's see how well it kind of works. Um, I like uh, again. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get some more in if if it'll if it'll uh, let me right. So uh, I just have to work with uh, whatever the price action kind of gives uh, gives me whatever I'm seeing. But uh, underneath this VWAP as of right now, still kind of struggling. Let's see how we kind of do. Uh, when is that next number coming out? We got about three more minutes for that Ray next Bork. number to, to to come out. And there goes uh, NVDL back through that 42. A little bit of uh, a, of a slowdown here. I'm looking at the three minute right here so take a look at that boom boom uh backing back testing the high of the range here it goes so let's NVIDIA see if we kind of bounce man we missed we missed that video by one dollar to have a, a six dollar winner damn damn no but that's fine i mean good that's that's kind of what we want palantir just gets us that ray bork action right down there at 77s so we wind up getting that so yes sir on that one and look at palant look at uh, nvidia we are at 9 12 85 
That's where we're at. It went to 9.11.90. So good trade there for anybody that hit that short. I know you've got that as well. Oh, I see some people talking about Disney. So before I look at Disney, I, I sold some yesterday at 121. I have not looked at Disney yet today. Um, so let's go over and look at that. Shit! Wow, what's, oh man. Come on. <laughs> It's all good. All right, uh, we're back. All right, we just had to. We <laughs> yeah, no, I we took so, a moment. Yeah, when I see a chart like that, I have the same reaction. I'm just like, damn. Come on. All right, Disney. I, nice I can upside say, move. I can Look, say that. We, we, I need a list go. of words that I can say and not slip up on. I'll oh, be honest. You say whatever you want. You don't listen to Ramin. You just say whatever you want, and we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll we'll, de we'll, we'll deal with that yeah. later. No, I'm not so, telling them to type that into the chat. That doesn't make sense. So you? do first, apologize later. I ain't apologizing for Disney because Disney <laughs> is a bang, 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 banger. We talked about this from day one of the wow. podcast. That's, I've been talking about this. I've been that. talking about Disney. Honestly, I had to listen to the go woke, Someone's go broke. broke. He told me to type F in the chat to everybody. So if you guys want to do that, that's uh, F for respect. Yeah. Is that true? Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like when something, something like, you know, something bad happens or something, uh, you know, disappointing or whatever, you can be like F. Oh, F it's also like a for, good thing, but it's a bad thing. But okay. I guess. Maybe. I I'm too old. But anyways. I don't really know what the, what, like where to it me, I, stems from, but that's just. I thing. get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. It's kind of like. It's, it, yeah. All right. Let's go over for uh, some Michigan sentiment happening now. Yeah, we have lots of numbers here to talk about. Michigan Consumer Sentiment Final coming in 79.4, higher here than the consensus and forecast of 76.5. Pending home sales month for a month also here 1.6% to the upside, so also a little bit higher than consensus, 1.5%, forecast 1.1%. Michigan expectations, current uh, five-year inflation expectations, 2.8%, slightly lower than the forecast of 2.9%. Consumer expectations final, 77.4, so higher than 74.6. Forecast and current conditions final, 82.5 uh, over this 79.4 area. The inflation expectations also lower than the forecast here, so 2.9% versus the uh, forecast of 2.3. So, bit of a mixed number here. The main number here, con Michigan consumer sentiment, higher than the expectation. SPY, jumping up a little bit on this, basically we've been flat all day here, slightly positive and slightly negative within a range here on the S&P 500. A couple earnings names on watch today. HUT 8, H-U-T, up about 17% now after reporting a 32% year-over-year increase in their six-month revenue. So, nice look here for H-U-T. We also have Rumble, R-U-M. This one... Trying to recover a little bit, but still down almost 5% on a pretty significant sales miss here, but they did beat uh, EPS estimates. So mixed picture here for RUM. All right. Thank you. Dan. All right. So market going back up to the upside yeah, there. Um, we, we actually been taking some out on Palantir. I mean, we said if this name could get into the 60s, that we would start ringing some registers. And that's, we just got a 66 fill there. So we are ringing registers right now on Palantir. So honestly, we will look at some marijuana stocks, but we're smoking right now. Um, and we're just smoking life because um, yep, we're really we're happy, uh, feeling good today uh, about some of these trades. Despite us taking this on NVIDIA, Yep. Which was fine. It wasn't even that big of a hit. Uh, but NVIDIA comes back in again right now uh, and tests that 910 area. Just to be into something, uh, let's go like 91050 here. And again, we're not, this is not a Tesla moment. I'm not like going to be averaging in all the way up to 915 until eventually it breaks. But we are starting to see some, you know, some kind of resistance up here. So we, you know, we want to be part of that. Uh, if at all possible. So um, we'll wait for that. But here we go. A nice move down on Palantir. We'll still grab that. And then honestly, Apple should be shorted potentially right here again. Um, it's just I'm right now like short and the market's up. So that's the one thing that's leading me to maybe not be averaging into more shorts here. Yeah. So let's be as patient as we can be right now. Uh, on all of this. So that's what we're doing here with the NQ and what we're doing. So um, nice move here today on Apple, potentially looking to reshort this against VWAP and the 50 period moving average.
Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a little short there on Disney when you did bring it up. Okay, you know what? It's, it looks like it might be coming right back in. So, yeah. Um, so I, I tried it a little cheeky, little short uh, near the near those highs, and then it, uh, I'm like, okay, I just want to. If if it looks like there's a buyer on this, very very distinct. I'm like, all right, I want to feel this buyer out. Get short when it starts to slow down a little bit. It wicks me out, and then comes right back in. I'm like, all right, well, uh, that's what I kind of like to see. Get short right back in. Let's see if uh, if that buying kind of persists here through that 23 halves. Um, but uh, I did like that reshort right there. As soon as I kind of, as soon as it clipped, it get it does a little bit of an exhaustive move, and I'm like, all right, well, uh, I like to see that paid for that little bit of information. Could have been a little bit more patient, but uh, that's perfectly fine. Let's see if we can get some more in on this Disney. A little, uh, a little strength off the open. Let's see how much of a relief we can get. Bit of a reversion, that's what I'm looking for. Let's see, view up around, in and around that 22 half as of right now. Here comes WBA back down into that 21. Oh boy, I guess I could have gone a little bit more here, but like I'm always looking for that half or like maybe an attempt a little bit further to really kind of confirm it. But uh, again, I gotta, do, I gotta do better with this and uh, definitely worth worth an add on that pop that doesn't really follow through and then comes right back into that 21 as of right now so uh yeah uh, nvdl uh nvdl kind of coming back up uh, let's see what nvda uh, nvda is doing um uh nvda uh testing that 910 level as of right now so let's see where we get from there ccl still not uh still not at uh, any of those levels that i'm looking for but if you had the short off of the open oh boy Take a look at that. It's coming right back into some of these levels from yesterday, and that's where I have my alert as of right now, just in front of that level. So uh, let's see if it can run over that level before I can, uh, then I'll pull up the tape to give it a quick watch at that, uh, what was that, 1640s area from yesterday. Great on, call on, uh, Disney, yeah. on uh, thing. I mean, it's working for now. It's only about I mean, 10 the, pennies. You know but, what, the uh, more impressive one is that... Um, uh, Boots Alliance, because I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a know. slow mover. It's like it's a little bit, it's a little bit easy, not easier. I, I don't like to say easy, but a little bit more straightforward uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the tape read. So uh, it, it can be nice. But the thing is, double edged sword. Yeah. I'm like, it's slow, it's slow. I'm looking for more to add, and it just slowly kind of just goes down. I, know, and I don't hard. have right. what I what I what I actually wanted in terms of share size. And I'm like, all right, so, well, you're almost a point in the money without the kind of size that you wanted. The, so that has to be reassessed. Yeah, we um, we were just a dollar fifty in the money on Nvidia short. There, we're short at ten fifty. Now we're a dollar fifty in the money again. Now we are two dollars in the money on Nvidia short. Let's call that a dollar fifty again, and let's go over to the desk with Adara. This one's pretty lightly traded so far, but keep an eye on BuzzFeed BZFD popping up on volume, really volatile here. Uh, the Independent and BuzzFeed signing a long-term license and strategic partnership in the UK and Ireland. So nice move up here for BZFD. Again, pretty lightly traded, but, but definitely gaining some headway here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for that, BuzzFeed. We talked about some of those names, the, sort of some of those, um, I mean, there, this is not that. There's that Buzz ETF uh, that had all those meme coins in there. I always think about that. BuzzFeed, of course, different than that. Uh, but here we go. NVIDIA, I just said, let's get to 900. Like, either it's going to be the top or we're going to retest back up here where we're going to get more, we're going to get shorter. We, we just have a starter position on, and this is what we talked about. If you like some of these trades, you can leg into them. Um, and if you want to start taking profit to make back sort of, you know, either what you've lost or not, what's going on with HUD-8? Um, okay, so HUD-8 moving now up 20%. Whoa, okay, Bitcoin Whoa. is at that level that we liked, I think. 71 half there. Um, isn't that what yesterday's high was? Uh, we're going to go over to iBit really quickly. We are really, really printing, man. 30 cents on Palantir when you're trading it properly is good. Uh, we are like, that is good trade. You can use a lot of shares. We like Palantir. Now it's $2 in the money um, on NVIDIA. So yesterday's level on iBit, where are we? Uh, yes, so we're getting close. So that would be 40, 40, 41. Let's call it 41. Let's see if we can break through $41 on IBIT. Probably put a stop order in there uh, to go long through 41. So not short in front of it. No, I want to play momentum in Bitcoin long. It's now $3. So there we go, man. On I, I, I turned to Obi and was like, this could be the one. But again, it's only the one when you look down and you're flat. Um, and we are not. We are still in full position. So whether or not um, NVIDIA goes down from here, um, we're trying to look at this 904. I mean, VWAP is generally, for me, been the trade. 
And then I do those stupid things where I'm like, oh, wah, wah, we, are, we got out for $9. Why is it now $21? You know, things like that. Uh, but, it, you know, if you're coming back into a level, this would kind of make sense here um, to get a piece out anyways, maybe at 9.05. Uh, if it continues to tank, then it continues to tank. I mean, what are you going to do? The market's up and pulling back. I feel like this is a good out. So I'm going to try it. I mean, I don't need to... We talked about this with Canal yesterday. I don't need to put up, like, you know, these, these things that we put up. You don't need to put up things like, oh, you know, $45 winner on NVIDIA or anything like that. Just, yeah, bro, I'm talking about it right now. We're $5 in the money, says the sheriff over here. Uh, but, yeah, nicely done. Right back into VWAP. We just talked about that. Uh, potentially get a piece out right now. We are now $5 in the money. It's going to be temporarily. We'll put up a trophy kind of number, but we need this to get a hell of a lot lower than where we are right now. NVIDIA, 5 bucks and getting lower. Let's get low, 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 low. Apple bottom, yeah, yeah, that's right. The whole market is looking at her right now, NVIDIA. And if Ja Rule was here, he'd be saying hold the line like he did on Bitcoin. Uh, but right now, NVIDIA is bouncing off that. And we can sing all we want and act like fools. But at the end of the day, I need to take some profit here because, you know, we, we, we just, we just got to respect some of the levels that we've marked down. And if, if we're going to be looking at VWAP, play VWAP pullbacks, things like that, then you kind of got to stick to your plan a little bit. And you can see right now, it does look like it's trying to hold Fort here a little bit. Where did, how low, how low, 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 low did we get there? We got to 905, basically flat, uh, and then bounced. All right, we'll take it out, 906. There it is right there. We'll take 450 on that trade. We just took that bid out at 906. You know, and this is where I'm going to, you know, get real upset when it goes down here to nine bills. But we just made that trade. We just broke that down in front of everybody. So, um, again, congratulations if you had it. We did. I hope you did. That's a good trade right there. Put it on the board. That's the most important thing. Because until you put something on the board, it doesn't really matter. So there's a nice move to the downside, and uh, uh, we got we got out again. I just didn't want to didn't want to give it back. So Nvidia is what it is right now. We still are net short everything with Palantir now getting into the 50s. Like my net is still cruising here, although we got out at 906 there on Nvidia. Let's see if that's potentially a horrible decision. But we made it yesterday and we, were, we, we survived another day. So that's a good trade there. Oh no, uh, there it goes. I said 900. <laughs> Um, all right, 70. So there it is, man. Right now, Bitcoin is falling back down a little bit. Uh, right now, iBit. Let's just see what's happening on iBit. Still holding out up three and a bit. MSTR. I mean, I've called this name a house of cards for a while. Um, and look what's happening right now. Bitcoin up, MSTR down 3%. If this thing falls on its face, there's a short seller report out. Maybe you can confirm that, Adara, MSTR, please. Um, there was a report out in the pre-market. It's making the move to the downside uh, right now. And if this thing collapses, it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will be fine. I mean, if anything, they're not going to liquidate. They'll probably wind up buying more. Uh, but the idea here is you could see a pretty dramatic move. This name dropped 30% when Bitcoin dropped 5% or 10% that one day. So we've seen the levered move up. You can see the levered move down. So watch out for MSTR right now uh, on that play. And then quickly want to check back on... Oh, NVIDIA is still 903. Damn, shorty. Uh, but here we go. Tesla, whoa. You want to talk about getting low right now. It's Tesla, and it's getting low. But so is my guy, Palantir, uh, which right now is trying to break through. It's day low. And man, oh, man, did we get that pullback. That's a pullback to VWAP. Shout out to my guy, Brian Sh Shannon, and shout out to Adara over at ZDesk. Yeah, so I can confirm MicroStrategy short report here from Carisdale Capital called Long BTC Short MicroStrategy, no one to HODL, no one to FODL. So um, big move down here for MicroStrategies off that Carisdale Capital uh, short report, specifically saying, mentioning that long BTC short micro, uh, MicroStrategy uh, strategy, guys. All right, all right. Disney up, down, down. 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 You have the short, yeah. Yeah. Look at yeah, NVIDIA. Get more, is what I'm <sighs> no real kind of, uh, pushes right now. And I think, I think 
Dude, I got out of NVIDIA 906. I got out 906. You're muted. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Um, That's fine. But yeah, no, uh, what did I say? I said, uh, yeah, so uh, Dis uh, Disney, Disney's working out uh, for, for now, but I wanted, to, I wanted to get more and it didn't really give me a chance. And I'm like, oh. all right, well, how, I'm trying to figure out like, how I can add without chasing and not oh. messing up my average at the same time. Because if I push oh. in heavier through that 23 break and I'm risking into, uh, into like above these 23s, my average is going to come in to right above 23. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, I don't like I don't I don't like my perception of probability of uh, of that average uh, kind of working out well. Uh, even if we kind of chop, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be a little bit uh, not in, not necessarily in a position of power when it comes to my average there, and uh, I think that can definitely affect my decision making. So um, I'm just like, all right, where are the better places to add? And that's something I'm really trying to figure out. There, VWAP is coming in right now. Is that going to play a part? Who knows? Uh, NVDL uh, is coming down as well. 41 halves. Where's the chart here? Uh, you know what? I'll pull up. Uh, I'll pull up this one here. So I'm, I'm uh, NVDL. I'm like well, I'm just watching the tape I'm not really watching I'm watching NVDA's chart and I'm watching NVDL tape so uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a different uh, different move there but uh, NVDL kind of coming in what was I gonna look at right here D uh, Disney we're watching Disney as well so Disney let's pull that one up and uh, get some uh, get some levels on that one uh, if we look left. So uh, yeah, VWAP kind of bouncing as of right now. Let's see if that holds as some support or we take a little bit of a reversion. You can see it had some really strong uh, uh, action right off of the open and we're doing a little bit of reversion here back down into VWAP. And uh, yeah, so uh, distinctly different kind of action there, especially on the tape. If you're watching this, uh, if, or I wasn't watching too much of it, but I did kind of see it when, uh, when Sean kind of men mentioned it and pulled it up. And we did test out some of those buyers. I'm I'm like, all right, well, there's a buyer on this tape. Let's see how strong that buyer really is. Uh, get a little short for a quick little cheeky test. And then when it stops me out, comes right back in through that 23 half, get short again for the reversion. But let's take a quick look left here on the 15 minute chart and uh, check some other time frames as well. So can't really see too much looking left on that. The hourly, let's go up one. Um, the weekly, let's go up one. All right, so weekly, we'll, we might find some levels here on the weekly. So yeah, so some highs there at that 26, uh, 20, 23s maybe, and then down here is the last thing I see, previous high at that 118. Uh, but yeah, this week started off uh, in and around, uh, what is that, 116, 117, and we've had some strength off of, uh, off of this week as of right now here on Disney. So uh, a little bit of a buyer on the last day of the week, shortened week as well. Let's see if this VWAP kind of holds. If that buyer is, uh, is, a, is any strong in and around that VWAP, that's what I'm asking. Uh, Carnival hasn't really gotten down to those lows there, but it did, did do a little bit of a wick uh, off of that. Uh, off of uh, off of just above that. So are we going to make a higher low? What are we doing here? I'm just watching the tape and uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, assessing that. Hasn't really hit my alert, so I'm not necessarily going to give too much focus to it. Apple kind of sideways there. Nvidia coming back in uh, into that nine. I did uh, I did take some off of this uh, as NVDL. Let's take a quick look at the chart here. NVDL. Let me pull that one up. All right, so I did, did take a little bit off here um, at, uh, at that previous kind of high. We were kind of, uh, that confluence with VWAP at the, in the moment. And I was like, all right, well, if we're going to hold a little bit here, I do want to piece off some of that. Um, just trying to make better decisions right there. And then if it can come back down to the bottom end of the range, we know that there's, well, I don't know, but with the limited information that's been printed on the chart so far, there's a little bit of a bid down there at, uh, on NVIDIA, what seems to be nine, uh, 891. 892s. Uh, it's been doing that uh, that wick dance there, and then that uh, on NVDL. That's that 40-50 level. So maybe a bit of a range here. That's what we did all day yesterday. So let's see. We let's see if we have some more in store for that. Uh, CCL still coming down. What are you guys trading? I'm curious can, to know I, I, what's I in play you, for you guys. Yeah. yeah, what's up? Yeah, so we just went along Google. So we're along Google right now at 150.70. We just took a piece out there at 82. Um, as again, just trying to find levels. 
Uh, that's really all. I mean, I'm looking at this 150 flat here, thinking that we had a move down. Google's already been up here to 151. Um, we could get a little retracement. We know Google's been one of the stronger names here in the in the market as of late anyways, if you're looking at some of these big tech names consistently. Somebody's got like these, I'm having problems with my e-signal charts, I'm having problems with these charts right now, I can't zoom in or out uh, again, but um, all right, so here we go. We'll watch out for Google uh, coming back to the upside now. I'm not looking at a daily chart for this. Uh, it's been pretty choppy here. If we could just keep getting them out, fine. We do have a bottom here of 150.50 that we're gonna try to oh. respect. Um, and you know where Nvidia went? That turned out to be a $10 winner. We took four on it. Um, it bounced clean off of the 200. They're at 900. So that was a great trade there. I think Sharif talked about buying that dip as well. So that was a good trade uh, coming into 900. I feel like now we'll probably fail off VWAP and we could break this and then start to really uh, get, get low on NVIDIA for sure. So great trading over on that side, Obi. Um, Palantir, man, we nailed the top and now we're nailing the bottom. Uh, on this. So we just got 45s uh, right there. So that, this one is honestly, we're planting, we need a graphic for this one. I mean, I know we're busy filming amazing TikToks, but could we get something, uh, <laughs> could we get something that is planting flowers? You know, like planting purple flowers, planting red flowers, something like that uh, would be pretty cool. But de definitely go check out our TikTok account ASAP, uh, YouTube shorts, and all of that as well, as the fun never stops here at Trader TV Live. Oh, absolutely not. You know, so that's, uh, we're very, very exciting, excited about our new direction in social media. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great. I, we kind of, uh, I guess, is that, is, that is that video that we took in the morning going to be on TikTok, Ramin? Okay, all right, cool. What, what, yeah. So, uh, uh, does it answer this, ask yourself this question. Does it have something to do with trading? Um, it's related, but I guess it's more of like a, just kind and of. It's in, on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, 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 cool. So there you go. Um, something we did miss, I do want to point out here, Sean, real quick. Right here. We talked about this name yesterday. That range break, that two-day consolidation in and around that 42. Is what we do, yesterday baby. that came in, and I was like, "The chips are running. What is Nvidia doing?" And it kind of, kind of a little suppressed action, and then we get that range breakout on a multi-day level, and it has a two-day continuation off of the open, looking a little different from some of the other some of the other chips there. Look at that. Once that 42 range kind of breaks, 42 uh, quarters. Off the open, you get that strength. You close at the high of day. Why am I not looking at this one? A little bit of a miss on my part. Intel really raging to the upside off of that 42. Again, raging in relative to how much Intel normally moves, but a little bit of a continuation. You get a leg up, you get a consolidation, and then you get that second leg up, and that continuation as well, pushing towards that 45, 44 halves as of right now. Another opening drive on Intel, successful as the one yesterday. So uh, I like this kind of pattern here. Let's, uh, let's kind of continue observing this. I was not involved in it. A little, uh, a little disappointed at myself might be might be a little disgusted as well but uh, a little bit of a range break trade with that kind of strength opening at the lows closing at the highs with that strength and expanding volume take a look at that closing volume right there that bar being one of the highest bars on the week what is that wednesday that's last wednesday not even monday so one of the highest bars on the week let's see if this one is higher off of the monday open nope so yesterday's close very, very strong after a hold in VWAP as well. Look at that shelf, that consolidation and the continuation uh, happening on Intel. Very, very strong. Let's take a quick look left and uh, see if there's, uh, see what's, uh, what's, the next, uh, what's the next stop? What's the next trade potentially here on Intel? Uh, it seems like uh, selling kind of started uh, or it did start up, up here, but uh, a little bit of a strength to the downside off of these levels in around 45. That, that, I like that 45, a bit of a psychological level as well. Disney kind of popping off of that, uh, off of that V hop. Let's see if we make some, uh, make some lower highs, but before that, we're gonna pass it off to the big screen with Adara. Just be aware here, guys, that SBF, uh, Sam Bateman freed sentencing hearing is currently underway. We don't have a sentence yet, but there are some comments from the judge with regards to the defense's argument being logically flawed, also saying that SBF perjured himself, so that could impact the sentence as well. In terms of the small cap, 
names here. We do have the IWM Russell 2000 making slightly lower highs, but holding up in a decent area of support here for the IWM. Some other names to discuss, including AVTX, by far the small, uh, strongest small cap of the day, up over 430% on a couple catalysts here. So announcing the acquisition of this Almada Bio, which also led to the acquisition of a phase two ready treatment. They also announced a, a placement of, a financing placement of up to 185 million. But the main story here is the float of this one, 800,000 shares, so very small float for Avalo AVTX. We also have here Opco, OPK. This one trading higher after selling a wholly owned subsidiary to um, this lab corp for uh, $237.5 million. So selling a subsidiary here has OPK up about 10%. Last but not least here, Biodexa, BDRX. This one up, uh, initially up over 100% here, basically with this positive cancer-related treatment. They also have a, a float of about 200, two, sorry, 2 million shares, so pretty small float here for BDRX, guys. All right, thank you, Adara. Yeah, a couple of good little small cap names there as it's 1023. We'll wait to hear uh, about that SBF decision. I mean, I mean, obviously, going to be a topic. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it will affect markets uh, at all. I mean, we'll, we'll watch Bitcoin. We could watch Coinbase. I mean, I don't, they're all, it's all just a matter of time. We'll see whatever the judge says and um, we'll go from there, right? I'm sure there'll be appeals and everything and all of that. Coinbase today, just kind of chilling and doing nothing. This is not exciting to me. So we will probably pass on any kind of random movements there on Coinbase. I, I wanted to talk about ARM because we've been looking at ARM for a little bit, especially with you being here, Obi. I know this is a name that you like to look at as oh, yeah. well. Another oh, no. possibility here as NVIDIA is just dancing we basically you can call tops and bottoms which boom i mean we talked about it retracing remember i said 900 I like, like here we one. go 900 that was the bottom but again you know sticking to rules we take a little bit there now nvidia is not super exciting to me uh but doesn't mean that we can't look at it still so we will uh we'll look at nvidia uh i still waiting for a, a bump back up let's see if it takes vwap gets going then we'll short momentum back to the upside i like that play uh we i was just talking about another semi two seconds ago and i can't remember oh arm um but a uh just quickly here amd looking like it wants to get back to that side i don't know if that wick just happened or not but i feel like that up to 183 is that something that just happened there because this is not a horrible short either the only thing is is that to get in the way of it might not be the right thing either so yeah, some of these names going, that's why I wanted to go over to ARM. If there's going to be a short potentially anywhere, maybe this ARM at uh, 128 is something. We bounced off there the other day, yesterday, uh, or a couple days ago, at 128, made the move up, and then now today that looks like it's kind of been the high. So this is not a horrible opportunity if ARM comes back in. So maybe, uh, sorry, comes back up to 128 short that. So right now you're at 127 there on ARM. Okay, so just as we mentioned, here goes NVIDIA back. We, we got another fill. We got that fill down there at 43s. We are now into 10%, less than 10% left of Palantir now. So that's what's happening there. Google keeps on trying to go. I guess we should put something at 90 now. That's where um, the 50 period moving averages and VWAP. And then that tick right there is 85. And we're going to put an offer there now as well. So let's see what happens. Happens, but so far so good here on the Google long it's just not really super exciting now as the market we wrote down here uh, right on the sticky note and find uh, I haven't advertised or mentioned the sticky note in a very long time right now uh oh someone's messaging me I will not show you who that is because I do not know uh, but there it is right now could be a slow day GDP 3 4 versus 3 2 so that got the market going then it came back that kind of gave me an indication that you know if it wanted to keep on going then I could see some excitement in this market but when that came out and we had this, you know, like it's kind of the same thing again, all the way to the upside and look where we land. We're right where we finished. So let's wait to see what happens here. Nice little move right now for the NASDAQ uh, on the day, but we're still flat. So, you know, I don't know, unless you're playing the futures, maybe we'll hop into the TQQs uh, if we go. We can look at some marijuana stocks, Obi. You're still in all yeah, you've three had of some, them. Yeah, you've had some bangers on the TQs uh, over the past couple of days, I've noticed. i got to pay yeah, closer remember, attention to that. Yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> the, the, but, but remember, I was sort of looking at it on, like, more of the dramatic moves. Yeah. So like when it's kind of doing this right now, we'll kind of hold off on it. But I think we liked it in the afternoon. 
So we'll yeah, we'll we'll, we'll hold out uh, for some afternoon trades on the Nasdaq when we can find some bigger levels because I noticed on that TQ because it's only a sixty dollar name similar to what you're doing there on NVDL. Um, you can I can take more shares yeah. and then scalp it out because if the market's going to be like that and we can find our range, to me it's kind of like just using one contract on the ES or the NQs, where you just kind of scalp in between levels. That's what we were doing on the TQs. And then holding a piece for the dream, which it was very dreamy uh, the last couple. I like it for the risk as well, games. right? Like, yeah. like, you, you like okay, so if you, if you have like a, if you have a smaller uh, uh, daily here. shutdown, like I do, um, and you're like, oh, well, damn, that NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA looks beautiful, but uh, I don't have the kind of risk to appropriately kind of uh, push into that NVDL, or even uh, if, you like, if you like the Qs, if you like, uh, uh, like a market move, I think the TQs are, uh, are a great, uh, great option as well. And I, and I have to remember that, right? In the heat of the moment, I'm just like, so a lot of times uh, I find myself being like, all right, well, uh, damn, I missed that move. But there are vehicles that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, reflect those moves and uh, you can give it the real risk, right? right. Like if I want to risk in a situation, I'm not, just as an example, if I want to risk like five points, I'm going to get out of that WBA with that strength pushing back into VWAP. We'll take a reassessment uh, if it has lower highs. But uh, yeah, I think I think I'm. Uh, I don't want to ask for too much. I'll take what she'll give me and uh, uh, a nice little one. Uh, what. Rejection off that 22 comes right back in through that 20, uh, 21, and now we're testing that 21 once again. So we'll be a little bit more patient on that. But uh, yeah, no. If I, if I if 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 it's a situation where like, all right, well, Nvidia, I like the way that this is setting up, but I want to risk like the trade re- deserve. If I feel like the trade deserves like five points worth of risk, right? Ideally, you know, maybe you're looking for a high probability one to one, or maybe you're looking for a two to one, three to one, whatever it is. If if I think the trade deserves like five points of risk, more likely than not, I might not be able to be able to risk that on a on a on a smaller shutdown. But I can size accordingly and use NVDL, giving that giving that few points of risk on NVDA. Don't have to give as much at all on NVDL and take the same move uh, for that trade. And I think uh, I have to be uh, I have to be more adamant about remembering that and being like, all right, well, the trade is still on. How can you execute on this move with the right vehicle? And stock so that goes back to stock selection and opportunity selection as well. And uh, again, these are all things that I'm uh, you know I'm learning along the way in my trading journey. And uh, I think uh, I think that it's great that Sean is pointing that stuff out there. Yeah, stock, stock, stock selection, uh, pretty important. We might have chose oh, yeah. a bad one here with Google. Um, they did fall in here a little bit. Well. We're, we're still flat. So our That's price cool. right now is 62. It's at 60s. I was trying to play it off 50 here. It, I mean, this is not even really that key of a level. So if we have to wind up losing 20 cents or so on this one, then that's probably what we're going to have to wind up doing. All right, Bitcoin looks like it's trying to bounce off some of those bottoms right now. And in what could be an important day for crypto? Maybe, maybe not uh, with SBF sentencing happening. Let's go to Adara and find out what is happening in the crypto market. Yeah, we definitely are going to talk about uh, there was crypto related news and also the SPF sentencing hearing but for now just quickly as well we got this eia natural gas stock change number so negative 36 bcf versus the consensus of uh, negative 28 bcf so slightly lower than expected here for the eia natural gas stock change of course we do have to talk about that the sam bankman freed sentencing hearing the judge now says that he could face a maximum of 110 years which judge Lewis Kaplan decided because he also uh, he deemed that SBF perjured himself so because of the perjury addition here they've raised the maximum amount of years that could be faced up to 110 we do not have a sentence yet the sentencing hearing is still underway but I'm hearing reports that SBF's parents are in the courtroom and currently they're hearing from victims of the FTX fraud I will let you guys know if we see anything here but the we, we don't really know when this hearing could end or when the sentence will be delivered. Of course, Bitcoin, though, here popping uh, back above that 71,000 area. Nice look here. After a couple days of, of being stagnant, we have a nice pop up here decisively. For BTC, Bitcoin now nicely above 71,000, 71.1, up about almost 2%. Ethereum just below that 3,600 level, so a good look here as well. Basically, all of these cryptocurrencies up on the day. BNB and Solana both up about uh, 2 and 1% respectively. Dogecoin up over 20%, and Cardano up about one and a quarter percent We also are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout.
All right, so uh, we got, yeah, we got hit there on Disney as it broke through 50, so we will take that 15 cent hit. But look at all these, we talked about this, I heard Sharif mention it the other day, like the, all these ones and everything like that, they just keep on, um, I feel like forcing this name down. I, I don't know. I mean know. Google. On Google, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see what happens right now. Uh, just keeps on pushing to the downside, Google right now on the futures doing nothing. So we will not be re-looking at that long. I mean, that was no good uh, right there. I was just fine. At the end of the day, it's fine. But uh, no winners there. We only got it once. Um, Palantir, good move. Obviously, we still have that one. That's 50 cents in the money. I was just telling Obi, like, honestly, okay, maybe this is a good idea here because 176 was the level that we talked about for Tesla. And we just bounced off that level as well. We talked about 176. The lowest it went was 175.5, 175.70. Then with a nice move up to 177 and change. Uh, anyways, I was just telling Obi, like, it's gonna be it's gonna be a flat day. Like I'm very flat today, like flat on Nvidia. We took an L on Google, but the number one stock, I'm up more on Palantir than I'm down on anything else. So that's the key. And then we just have chilling out Apple, which is which is again putting me in, at that area. So it's kind of like we'll go win with Google, or sorry, loss with Google. Win with a good win with Apple for sure, really good win with Palantir, and then because of share sizing and things like that, we'll wind up still red, but not by much on Nvidia. But as an honest trader, I mean, that's what we're going to try to do, right? So, um, we'll, we'll talk about where we are. That was 11050, 91050. I told you we could be coming back up to that level, and this could be another area to look to reshort it. The problem is AMD, we're in a little bit of a different environment right now because AMD is going upside like crazy uh, right now. Nice move for AMD as we continue to climb high. We're so high, no lie, and you know this. Ball in. Right. Chip game. Uh, it, chip game chip strong, strong right now, man. You, some people could have strong kick game, strong whatever, man. But right now, those chips with that dip is hey, saying oh. no dip for you. Just like Seinfeld, there will be no soup for you today because this move is, um, you know, walking out the door without me. Nice move. What? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. You don't know you. the no soup for you? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I was going to I was going to say I, sorry, I didn't mean to in, you interrupt, didn't interrupt there. I was just like sometimes I get these uh, get these thoughts and I'm like, "Oh, you know, um, Apple." Uh, no, what, what was that uh, what, there was a song that was like um, uh, uh, something like Whip Game Strong. What do you remember that one? I'm trying to remember. That's what I remembered with that. I was just like Whip Game Strong. All right, all right, all right, all good, all good. Uh, That's why I was like, no, 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 keep going. <laughs> so it doesn't really chat, matter well, what I have to say. probably know what, what you're all about, <laughs> um, Okay, so... I did get out of that NVDL. Oh, you're like, out it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, it came all the way back. I did piece off. Uh, here, I'll pull, I'll pull up the chart here. Uh, I'll take WBA off for now, even though I kind of like it here. It's slowing down underneath that, uh, underneath that VWAP there. Uh, let me pull up that NVDL for you guys. I just tried to get short. NVDL on, uh, oh. on NVDL? So yeah, so okay, so got a little short there. Uh, stopped out on the initial entry, got right back in, and then uh, when it kind of holds some of these levels, that previous range we were talking about, I get out uh, for for a good chunk, and it comes all the way back in. So I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of uh, let this run me over, turn this into a loser. So I do, I do take it at that 42. I think the average was 42.14s, and we're testing that, those right now. So if this is going to continue to the upside, um, I'm going to piece off for now. Let's see. Although if it slows down once again, I'm I'm more than willing to get a better price, right? I I was at the 14s, we're at that 14, so it doesn't matter. I'm trying to trade off this pr uh, price action uh, as of right now, um, but price is yeah, pushing past where my entry was. So uh, yeah, I don't want to really fight that. If the market is going to push to the upside, you can see the NQ and, and the ES kind of raging up as well. And take a look at this. That's the NVDL, right? So we held Google that bar, range right. from yet from pre-market. We held uh, we didn't really hold the high of the range from yesterday. We did dip down a little low uh, to some of these uh, some of these intra uh, these supports within the, within the range, kind of that chop or whatever you want to call it. But the, the level does kind of show up in the pre-market and then we kind of bounce off of there. So I don't want to get in the way necessarily of that one. Disney working out for now. Um, but uh, yeah, that NVDL, maybe maybe we can find a better place to get short. But uh, I kind of, uh, I want to walk away from uh, from that for now. Uh, the, I think the bounce off of that VWAP, off of that range was, uh, was pretty nice there. Decent uh, reasons to cover or reasons to buy, not necessarily cover.
after a short recover, we're had uh, decent reasons to buy uh, uh, in and around that 41 half. What's up? What's up? Let's go. Uh, we're in Nvidia again. All right. So we were just we are short at 909.65. So we get a 909 fill. We get a 910.50 fill. Okay. Each of equal proportions, giving us this average price right here, right now. So let's see. Anybody could get this right now with us. My stop, I want to give this one a little bit of room. Um, we don't, again, because I want to get more at 912 with, with some kind of a stop up here. I mean, that high of the day is 913. You want to give it a little bit more room than that. Uh, up breaking through 915. Like I said, this is a little, okay, well, now we're in the money 50 cents. I mean, we could take that. I'm bidding 907 right now. So let's see if we get that. That's 907.60. I'm bidding 907 flat. Let's go to, let's go to 907.50. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Oh, we nice. are right there right now. We are moments away from another $2 winner here. Did it, did we just get that? Did we get it? No, we did not. It's literally bouncing. Okay, cancel, 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 cancel. Okay, we did get a fill right there. All right, let's go. Nice. Let's spin that right now. I just canceled the rest of my bids because I realized I did have one at 907 flat as well. We will take that fill. That fill just happens right in front of our face at 907.62. So good fill there, good cancel. Look, we just talked about this to everybody. I said, we're short right now. I'm short. Join if you want. That right there, 907, 90960 to 90760. That's a two dollar winner. Let's wait to see what happens now. We've been greedy on Nvidia and it hasn't worked. Right? We were a little greedy here when we had this winner, then we had to get out of it, then we got short and lost, then we were not greedy enough uh, to the downside. So honestly, let's just put another bid here at VWAP at 905. Maybe it whooshes down and we do get a 905 bid. So let's just uh, be very quiet about it, although it doesn't seem like I'm being that quiet about it, and put a bid down there at 905 and see what's good with that, what's good with you, Adara. Tet oh. Okay, sorry, sorry for, for that, guys. Um, Tesla here and some of these other EV names definitely on watch. We're seeing here that Xiaomi received 50,000 orders for its SU7 models within the first 27 minutes of sales. So lots of demand here for the Xiaomi car. Keep an eye on some of these EVs with relation to that, guys. Get aggressive. At Disney? Yeah. Are you like the Disney short? Okay, ask, you can ask the question out loud. Yeah, no, okay, so, no, I'm, I was asking Sean, I'm like, all right, well, I was waiting to add more onto this position, and, and you know, a little lucky, it's working out, Google. it's working out a little bit right now, um, but, uh, yeah, that Disney short, I was asking Sean, where where do you think was uh, was one of the better places to kind of get more involved? I was looking at this 23 consolidation, kind of popping off of that VWAP, not really getting back through uh, some of those highs, and then coming right back in. We've done about a 50% retracement, so that's what I was asking. Um, where potentially uh, do you think are areas to get a little bit more shares on this name? Right, so I, I would have said to you initially, I mean, you got a great top up there. That, I mean, there's no doubt about that. Obviously, you had some accumulation right there. I think on this pop back up was an easy trade to get more at 23 because you had that consolidation, yeah. a nice bounce up to there. Uh, you yes. could take more short at 23 against basically 25s or that wick higher of 33s, giving you 30 cents worth of risk, which now would have paid off, obviously, down to a dollar. But why not? If you like the low, I mean, you know, you could take view up with a 50 period out. That's 30 cents. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's already come down. Like yeah, the market's starting the to go now as well. So I would say, yeah, I like I've liked the short. You're a dollar in the money, so let's go on that one. But I would say to answer your question, I think that 123 would have been a great spot, and then now a pullback into 122.50, I think is worth it. But I mean, I don't know if I'd let that go or even average into it. You sort of got a nice, yeah. uh, nice trade on there. That is for sure. So we'll go one dollar club winner there with Disney. We'll go another dollar club winner right now with Apple, because Apple's at the low of the day and it's another dollar in the money. This is the same. Then we still have twenty percent. 
So the only mistake was, and we talked about this right here, I hope some of you, shout out to Daryl Flinch right now, um, because we are right there right now. We talked about reloading that Apple at 170, did not do it. Mistakes abound uh, right there. And just joking, we're, we're doing fine today, uh, as you could see. So right now, it's a nice push to the downside now in the market. Um, and then, hold on a second, let me just look at something right now. Um, I am not sure who right now um, is in first place, but Obi and I are both on the podium, Obi. Nice. So congratulations, Congrats. it's been a good one. You're in second, I'm in third. So congratulations on Obi with that. Three bangers today, right? Just trying to make good decisions. Damn Doesn't right you're trying to make day. some good decisions. And that's exactly... Day. Consistency look, is what I'm trying to work on. There's 15 traders right? behind us. You're hosting a show and trading and on the in the leaderboard. I mean, let's Thanks. go. This is what Thanks. we're doing. This is what we're doing, baby. And I'm, I'm glad that, and I'm glad that everybody guys. can see that. You know, this is what we're talking about. I told you, you know, I, let's see what happens with that video, but you know, we could, we could get off that board real quick as well. Um, so, you know, from one trade to another, this is day trading. And either, no matter what, I was still flat. I'm still pretty flat here. My day right now, in the, at least the next 15 minutes, will probably rely on whatever happens with Nvidia as we look for more opportunities. I do not think, I do not think it's worth stepping into anything unless you see something. Um, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but honestly, it's no, like... No, it doesn't. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, I, I just mean like you don't need to average into your trades or do anything like that either, right? So let's, um, yeah, you're right. That doesn't sound ridiculous. That makes sense. I, 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 like, the, uh, I like the philosophy of like, you got you to gotta be a sniper. When, a, uh, when, my, uh, when I first started trading, one of my uh, first mentors, his, uh, I, found, I found the guy on, uh, on, uh, online. Uh, he, uh, he was like, come, uh, come join my Discord group, really small Discord group. Um, um, but uh, yeah, we, we kind of uh, we were, kind of worked on that and built it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, he he always used to talk about his name was Sniper. Oh okay, okay. Right? He, like lives in, he lives in he lives in he lives in Cali. He's been trading for for quite a while there. Uh, shout out, what's up? Go, what's going on, man? Um, but uh, yeah, no, he he used to emphasize the 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 importance of being a sniper. Right, and and I've I've heard a lot of traders kind of kind of say this as well, kind of, uh, kind of being patient and waiting for it to come in. Right, and if it's not really there, you shouldn't be taking shots at just like the bushes are rustling yep. and you're trying to hunt. You're just taking shots in the bushes. No, you got to see it. You got to be like, all right, there's weakness there. I'm going in for. Yep. I'm going yep. in for uh, going for, for the, the shot. Kill. Right, yeah, so it's kill. like. I mean, look, that's exactly what... I like, what I like that. There's, I, I, like, so I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's no, perfectly... No, 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 perfectly you're right. You an right. analogy right there. No, I'm just, you know, I, we'll, we'll look for some more opportunities and, um, you know, that's the end of the day there. So, all right, guys, what else you guys want to talk about, man? I mean, Mara, we can look at Mara. We had talked about Mara for a minute, man, down there at $16, $17, $18. What a great buying opportunity that apparently was down there as we continue to go higher. And we actually had Chris Brecher on and talked about how um, all this Bitcoin having all the talk was bad for the Bitcoin miners and he was right I mean all that talk right now all of a sudden we make this move to the downside they had an offering on earnings I believe Mara did uh, there that same day or the or the very very day after and then today part of the reason why we're starting to rip up here was a name that I was in before like what is exactly wrong with these charts honestly like now I can't even zoom in or out on my daily charts anymore I wonder if it has something to do with this RSI that's down here that I put on there because, yeah, I got you. I've, I've heard every single time. Uh, all right. So, but anyways, HUD 8. This is the funny thing. So Fabian asked me in my ear, what about HUD 8? And then, and then as soon as I start talking about it, he's like, go to Adara. It's like, okay, so I got you know, to gotta do one or the other here, my guy. Uh, HUD 8 right now up 21%, but at the same time, let's go to Adara. Yeah, HUD. Yeah, we have a, a bit of a mixed picture here in, in the market. Some strength, actually, some of these names in finance. Eli Lilly popping up here for health technology. Amazon pretty strong in retail trade with, with that announcement yesterday of the $2.7 billion investment in Anthropic. But Walmart and Home Depot both a little bit weaker in the sector. Home Depot announcing uh, an acquisition and Walmart's acquisition of Vizio potentially in jeopardy here, um, as rumored by some M&A blogs, especially after it had to refile 
its interest here. So in, interesting look there for some of these retail trade names. Tesla, the downside in consumer durables, but the sector are pretty strong other than that. And of course, we do have to talk about these tech names. Bit of a little bit of um, breaking apart here from these, uh, for some of these chip names and electronic technology. AMD and Intel to the upside, but some of these other ones weak or to the downside. We also have uh, Netflix breaking down this group a little bit in technology services. But other than that, pretty flat here for some of these uh, mega tech names, guys. All right, thank you, Adara. Yeah, that, that softy looking a little gray. I'm, I'm looking at that as well, a little bit sideways. I, I was looking at it and I was like, all right, well, you know, maybe, maybe something there. I did get out of that Disney uh, as it is kind of maybe slowing down. Um, like I said, I didn't have everything that I wanted, so I don't have much, uh, uh, much uh, movement in terms of just like, I, you know, I'd, I'd rather just take some out here as it's kind of slowing down uh, as well. I don't know, it could continue to go further, right? Opening price is 121. 25s, but uh, we've we had that strength. We've pulled back about 50%. Let me pull up the chart here so we can talk about it a little closer. Also, CCL almost coming into that uh, into that level there. Let's see if previous day's consolidation kind of holds there on CCL. But yeah, let me pull up Disney and we can talk about that one. Oh boy. Okay, so it is making some fresh lows. So yeah, that's the thing. Was there a reason to sell as of right now? No, not really, but the tape is kind of slowing down. We had a little bit of a strength uh, uh, in, in a previous candle and we're slowing down in and around that area as well. So, uh, and also about a 50% retracement, right? Like what is, the, what, what is the measurement of this move here? Just asking myself, two and a half points roughly. So the measurement from the top, let's take that quick. Uh, two and a half to uh, one and a half. So it's like, yeah, okay, so uh, a little, a little bit over 50% of a retracement. Yeah, thank you. Come again. I will take that uh, more often than not. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not very often you get a full-on 50% retracement. But uh, when, with that kind of action, we got, a little, we got a little lucky. Did I have enough? Absolutely not. But uh, let's see if we can make some lower highs. And maybe that 23 might be coming back in for a potential trade. We were going to take a look at Softy. So let me pull that, uh, that one up right here. Softy. What you up to? Okay, so, uh, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Okay, so that 420 AO uh, coming in from yesterday's lows, 419, that consolidation being just about, just about 419 half. Look at that kind of nice, beautiful range that we made yesterday. You come back in, uh, you pop, come back in, and then you hold that level with that, uh, with uh, this today's right now uh, range kind of stepping up above above that end of day, uh, mid to end of day consolidation range right there. You can see how kind of clear that is. For uh, 420 halves holding as of right now with, con and then it has a confluence with VWAP as well. And then now we're pushing or attempting to push at least uh, towards those highs. But uh, something I am observing is uh, is uh, that this uh, this area can maybe maybe a potential uh, it, is, it is showing up, up as a resistance as of right now. We had that strength I mean, uh, into the close and then off the open. So those same prices kind of have that strong sell off. And then we've kind of only been selling only uh, off of those levels. 421. What is that? What is this double top? Let's just identify specific prices here. Uh, the high is 421.74 on that one and then 421.76 oh boy that's a two penny difference uh on those wick highs so uh yeah that softy let's see if that resistance if uh, do, do the buyers win and uh, we push through that resistance or do the sellers win and we kind of hold that resistance down and maybe retest the, the lower end of this uh yesterday's range there i have no idea but as of right now vwap is holding some bases are holding we're building up into into said resistance in that area on softy so that could be a nice little setup maybe not right now we'll let that cook a little bit there but let me know in the chat what you guys are trading. I'm not necessarily in any positions as of right now looking for the next trade. What's the next trade? I have no idea. Um, actually, maybe CCL, right? We were talking about that CCL. I do have maybe an idea, but uh, that's got to come down a little bit further um, and we'll see what it does. Does it break? Does it hold? I don't know, but uh, I'll, be looking for uh, I'll be looking at the tape to see if anything interesting does show up. WBA pushing past that VWAP, so it's a good thing we got out at that 21. If this VWAP wants to chop around, I don't want I do, do not want to get involved um, on the short for too early. Let's let's wait for it to kind of uh, to see if it has a leg back up or and push through that 22. What's going on? Oh, well, before we go to money talks, I just want to say that this Nvidia trade that I have on 
it keeps on bouncing. We're short at 910. It keeps on bouncing off 0750. It's over and over and over again. Um, we already took one out at this exact level. I have no idea how we knew that that would sort of be uh, the bottom there, but I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. I'm waiting down here at 904. Like I'm, I'm saying VWAP for this and then we'll go lower. So I'm waiting for that trade. I just want to bring that to everyone's attention that right now you should, I mean, it's 250 in the money. You can get it. It's just a matter of, um, you know, it, it keeps on holding this level. So if the futures don't want to get to the downside, I wonder if Nvidia is trying to find a base right now. So just a quick little update on that one. I'm going to try to roll with this. So there it is right now. Now we're down into the money now, $3 and change and going lower. Let's go Nvidia, man. Here we go. We're at 904. We just talked about that level and I'm good thing we did. So there it goes. Yes, 905. Do we just take a 905 bid right now um, on this? Because we are, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm at 904.50 basically. 905.50 on that move back in. I'd hate for it to bounce off the 50 period. Moving average, man. We'll go green on Nvidia. We just talked about the kind of day that we're having. We need to get that fill right there and then we'll still hold more. Let's go to the downside on Nvidia. Damn you, man. Hopefully we can get that uh, as we dip into 905 in change. All right. Hopefully when we get back, we get that fill. Congratulations if you're rolling on Nvidia with me. It's $4 in the money. Let's see if we can get more and let's see what Adara has to say about that money as Nvidia is going to print us. Hopefully. What's up, Adara? PXY more than or less flat on the day here, guys. We were just red. We just turned green. We had a little bit of a wick upwards, though, into that uh, 104.70 area. We've had a slew of economic data today. So we did get that Michigan consumer sentiment number higher than expected, 79.4 versus 76.5 expected. Chicago PMI lower than expected here, 41.4 versus the estimate of 45.9. U.S. initial jobless claims, 210,000 versus 212,000 expected, so also lower. And GDP a little bit higher than expected here, 3.4% to the upside versus 3.2%. Up, up percent to the upside expected. Tomorrow is a market holiday, so no trading, but we do have the PCE print to watch out for. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, so definitely something to keep an eye on as we head into Monday's trading session after a long weekend, guys. Oh, nice oh, short, oh, John. Beautiful. Yeah. Damn, Daniel. All right, um, so we went from having a pretty flat day a pretty good one right now is we'll hold, we'll still hold a bit. We're a little under a third of this position right now. So again, the reloaded position, there's the out right there at 906. We talked about that, 905.70. Um, so there it is. It's a nice trade out uh, for Nvidia. Um, that's what that is. Oh, uh, I have to tell you, I don't have to do anything, but I want to uh, tell you this. Uh, hold on a second, not now. I'm just going to go find it because you can follow uh, my trades and Obi's trades, whether or not we're in any or not, um, during the midday show as well. Where's the more Trader TV? You know what? I go, I feel like the more Trader TV should show up on our Trader TV Live uh, homepage. Maybe it does. I just can't find it. Okay. More Trader TV Live. I'm just Googling this right now, so bear with me. There it is right there. You can go find it. Here we go. It's its own YouTube page. So I was on the other one. Here it is. You can find it. Uh, thanks for showing that up. Click on this. Um, you can comment on here if you want. Bears vs. Bulls is here as well, but most of the comments, of course, will be on the midday show. But there you go. You'll be able to see. Now, again, I've talked about this. These, my last trades are going to book incorrectly on here. The positions are correct. So you can see here on NVIDIA, we are short at 9, 10, 41. But we just didn't sell more there at 10, 53. So um, that part's incorrect, but the positions are right. So for Obi and myself, I can't speak to Obi. I think his are right. There's something wrong with the calibration yeah, of my right ins now. and outs, but the positions are good. So that's been really good. I want to say a big shout out to everybody here at Trader TV Live uh, for doing that as we work on getting it bigger and better and growing larger than what we're at right now. So again, a big shout out to everybody, man. We're, we're now... Um, you know, we're on that, we're on that leaderboard and we're pretty happy about it, Obi. So, um, congratulations to you as well. Um, you know, well, on that NVIDIA trade, we talked about, you know, that we would still be there and we're still there. So let's wait to see. Good call there. Um, as Disney's starting to make the move back to the upside. Yeah, it's going sideways. Anything? The, the Momo is kind of dead. That's yeah, yeah, that's so good. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to hit my, uh, shot clock on that one. 
<laughs> uh, um, splash page. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure all that stuff out about more Trader TV Live. Okay. Um, quickly, anything that um, the viewers might want to look at that you're possibly looking at here? Is there any levels that you're looking at to come through? You mentioned CCL. Was, was there a level for that? We're I mean, now $5 in the money on NVIDIA. Nice, nice. I mean, it's holding up. Uh, I was just looking at this previous day low, right? Previous day low, this, uh, this like wick, that's where kind of that strength kind of came off of and we're holding on right now. So I'll let that consolidation kind of happen. Let's see what we do, what price does with this little consolidation right now. We can go down to a shorter time frame here on CCL uh, so we can take a closer look. It's short. Oh boy, has that been working out quite well. So uh, yeah, looking back at it, retrospect, you had that strong sell uh, that happened going into the close, that consolidation, and then you come in, and yeah, I guess I missed this, 17, you wick, wick, can't really get past into that 17, and then you start to sell off right back into those lows, and now we're starting to slow down into those lows. So let's see if we're going to continue, or we kind of uh, just consolidate for the rest of the day. Who knows? I have no idea, but I'm going to be patiently waiting to see what price does with this range right here. So the range right now is uh, about 16, uh, 1640s to about 1670s. Um, let's see if any, anything uh, interesting shows up on the tape with that. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't have too much else on the board. I'm watching, uh, I'm watching the, uh, the, the full uh, set of... Uh, Semis, there goes, uh, there goes Disney a little bit lower there, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wait around uh, to see if that's going to have a, a little bit of a bounce to get more involved. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm thankful for what, what, what we got. Um, Could have held a little bit more, yes, for sure. But uh, again, decision-making process, right? If I had a little bit more here, I would feel comfortable kind of uh, holding, on to, uh, holding on to some more for, for some further push or even some of that sideways action. But uh, I'm just going to cover it all and uh, reassess there. But I'm watching the whole slew of, uh, of chip names there with that NVIDIA, ARM, Intel, AMD as well. Uh, Intel looking interesting. Okay, hello. Let me just pull that one up. I'm... I gotta keep an eye on WBA as well, so I'll pull, pull that up on a different chart um, while I change this chart here. All right, um, just real quick. So right yeah. now, thanks, thanks for all that. I mean, Obi, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, will be joining me back at two o'clock, and then at three o'clock, we have a special guest uh, joining me here for the last hour, as it will be the automotive maniac, the man, the man himself, the one that everyone loves. The one that people come here for. Mr. Director of IT or something like that. I don't think that's what it is. Something like that. The man that talks energy. The man that told me to buy Rivian. The man that told me not to buy Fisker. Randy. Hey Ladies yo. and gentlemen. Let's go. Man, we like Randy around here. Uh, okay, so, uh, oh, shout avid, out. Avid fisherman as well. Avid fisherman. I like that. Avid man about nature. Yeah. He built Enjoy a boat. Builds stages. Build the stage. Build, built this desk. A man of many talents. Wow. NVIDIA allowing us to do this. Apple allowing us to do a lot of things. Um, what's up to my guy, who I haven't seen in a minute? Shakib, what's going on, my guy? One of the initial Hydration Nation members. What's up, Shakib, my guy? This guy, talking about buying Neo immediately. I can feel that idea. The 52-week low on NEO is right here. We just made it yesterday at 450. That, I, I, could, I could understand that. I could understand why you'd want to go long here, Shakib. I mean, coming into 450, or well, the low was, I guess, it was this low was four, let's call, sorry, 445. You know, we just bounced off 450 today. I, I actually like this trade. Nice fall back in here, down 1%. Um, you know, are things as bleak as they were yesterday today? Maybe not. Um, I, you know, yesterday downgraded. China was a little bit beat up. We actually didn't even look at Alibaba yet today, but I don't mind this trade at all, um, Shakib, especially if you do get something a little closer. <laughs> I'd rather get closer to 50 than where we are now um, and then use 44 as your bottom or whatever that last week was. All right, if you can't tell, 
that we're having fun around here, then you're watching the wrong channel. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to get you guys to go over, hit the like, hit the subscribe, all of that. I promise we'll bring Obi back at 2 o'clock. Great day today, man. Good morning. The podium kids are here, baby. And right now, over there, is Sharif and Adara. And we'll check you guys at 2 o'clock. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif. And today we have, obviously, the last day of breakout trading, as uh, tomorrow, obviously, is a holiday with Good Friday. The markets are closed. Pleased to have you with us. We already have a couple of early birds in the chat. We got the toilet brush. Chase Bands, hello to you as well. Martin Lawrence, oh, Martin Lawrence, okay. Oh. Uh, Darwin, we got Papa Powell in the chat. Close that door, baby. We got Charon J. Thank you very much for that super chat. Chase Bands, right off the bat. Happy life, happy life. Mara, you go, girl. I always talk to BPI about Mara, and he's saying all sorts of stuff about her. Some good, some bad, by the way. Mm. We got Atif Tibet. I, I, I love that name. Uh, Andrew Chow. We got Kanye East, Eddie R. Pitchbull, Rational Analysis. You rock, sir. We got Arsenal Adam Baby, and uh, sorry, Aaron and Joanna Brewster, Monty G, Callum Mitchell Miller, DT Dev 17, James Dell. What's up to you, sir? We got Big Kyle Burdett. What's up, my man? We got Terrence Black, Miss Bastion, and John H. All tank as well. I like that. All tank. You must be a, you know, a yeah. happy, uh, tank looking dude. Um, good morning, Adair. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm all right. Nice. You know, we've been doing our thing here, 21, with uh, some NVDL, some T Triple Qs. We'll be talking more about that as the show goes on. Uh, we're talking about understanding continuation breakouts. I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm still long right now. The T Triple Qs, as you can see, it's been a range trade for me as we've been doing the dance here with the NQ June contract right above 18.5. And that's precipitated me to play the range. It's kind of like an Adara Panera trade today. You know, she does it a lot better than me, but you know, we'll dabble in it when we can. And uh, it's been multiple entries, multiple exits on the T triple Qs. Happy with the trading day, but it can get a little bit better. Hopefully uh, there'll be more opportunities that present themselves as the show goes on guys. But let's get right to the crux of the matter, we are talking about understanding continuation breakouts today. We've been talking about breakout trades all week. So today we're going to be talking about how to keep that momentum going, baby, that continuation breakout. So imagine driving down a highway. Sometimes you hit a rest stop and catch your breath, but then you get right back on that road, continuing on your journey. That's similar to continuation breakouts in trading. So let's talk a little bit about it. And uh, first, Let's define, <laughs> this is something, I had to put this on here, because the Ob, the One, the Kenob says this often, right? The trend is your friend. Sometimes he whispers it to himself. Uh, you know, sometimes he'll say it aloud. One of his many sayings, shout out to Ob, killing it on the morning show. But for real though, the trend is your friend, bracket sometimes. That's the caveat here. So technical analysis relies heavily, heavily, on trends, if you haven't noticed that so far, which are sustained movements in the price. But trends don't always go in a straight line, sadly, right? Sometimes the market enters a period of what we call consolidation, where the price moves sideways within a defined range, AKA an Adara Panera trade, right? This is where continuation breakouts come in sometimes. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's talk about the power of these continuation breakouts, because they're giving their, their you know, foreshadowing something here. And that's what we want to use to our advantage. So a continuation breakout occurs when the price moves decisively or the price decisively breaks out of a consolidation pattern in the direction of the prevailing trend. Here's the breakdown. So in an upward trend, after an upward trend has happened, there's a period of consolidation. You'll remember on our week on accumulation distribution, this is typically where accumulation starts taking place, right? You get that big move up, a lot of people have eyes on it, right? And then you have that sideways period of consolidation where it doesn't seem like anything's happening. 
big money's positioning at these levels, typically at the lower end of that range, right? That's why their traders are judged on how well they do on the day based on VWAP. So that's what they're doing usually that at that time. That's where the accumulation starts taking place and that's why we get an eventual breakout. So the upward trend after an uptrend, there's a period of consolidation. A breakout above the resistance level of this consolidation suggests that buyers are back in control, potentially leading to a continuation in of the uptrend. And the downtrend, similarly, uh, the same thing kind of happens. Following a downtrend, consolidation typically occurs where we move sideways for a while. A breakout below that support level of the, con of the consolidation area will typically indicate to sellers uh, or will typically indicate that sellers are regaining strength, hinting at a continuation of that downtrend. Here are great examples. I think it's Mark back there okay, in the... Yeah. Uh, in the podcast room. So here's an example. There, you have an uptrend followed by a period of consolidation. You're going to cut that double bottom, a defined, a defined lower level, a defined higher level, and then bang, you get the breakout through the top end. And that's what we're kind of talking about here. Period of, of uptrend or downtrend, then a sideways period of consolidation, and then a continuation of the uptrend or downtrend. Whatever the trend that preceded it. Here's an example. We have a downtrend, a period of consolidation, and then you get the flat bottom break, babe. That's what we talk about right there, okay? But not every pause means a change, right? So not every consolidation area that happens subsequent to an uptrend or downtrend means that it's gonna continue in the direction of the trend. That doesn't always happen. So while continuation breakouts can be powerful signals, it's important to remember that not all consolidations lead to trend continuations. Here's how to be a more discerning trader. Again, I've, I've mentioned this three times, I'm gonna mention the fourth. Look for volume confirmation, right? Look for a surge in trading volume alongside the breakout. So if it was a, a breakout to the high side, look for that big volume candle on your volume bar chart to coincide with the breakout. Did it happen on above average volume? Well, how do you know it's above average volume? Well, look at the preceding days if you're looking at the daily. Look at the preceding weeks if you're looking at the weekly. See what was the average volume bar size. Does the volume bar that coincided with the breakout exceed or is it part of the average volume bars that are already with it? That's what you're looking for there. A very easy to use tool, but good for confirmation, all right? And look for look at the time frame. Time frame matters here, guys. Um, a longer consolidation period means a stronger break move. So I just wanna go back to this area over here. How many times did I say this yesterday? When you have the longer the consolidation period, if it takes place on the daily or weekly, the more important the top end and the bottom end of that range is. So the more uh, credence you give to that level of resistance to the top side, the more credence you give to that level of support to the downside, okay? And again, the more touches as well at those levels, the more important that they become, all right? Just wanted to mention that real quick. I mentioned it yesterday, but I'm gonna mention it again, okay? And so here is a perfect example of volume on, an inc on the breakout. So look at this one over here. So you have the eventual breakout of the level right here, and it's on above average volume. And then you get that monster continuation, which is already above the level on this candle. But it's this candle that we want to look at. And then look at this candle compared to all the others that preceded it, right? So that's what we're looking for there, a candle to coincide with the breakout that's higher on volume than its, uh, its counterparts, okay? So how do we capitalize on the move? What are we doing here? How do we get in, get out? Where do we take profit? So let's talk a little bit about that. Your entry strategies. Again, because we're talking about breakout trading, you got one of two options here, in my opinion. One, you can get out, you can get in right on the breakout or breakdown, whether it's a long or a short, okay? So if it's, again, gonna go back to Apple, 200 level on Apple, you could be sitting at that $200 and one penny uh, on the bid. That's up to you. Others will say, no, 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 that's a little too risky. I could get faked out. It could be a fake out breakout above that 200. I'd rather wait for 200 for the price level to exceed 200 and then you know, I'll sit there, 
um, you know, on my own time with an order sitting at say 201 or $200 and a half. So essentially what you have here are two schools of thought. One takes the breakout right away and the other person waits for the pullback to come in to prove to them that that $200 level is the real deal. And then at that point, they'll punch long or short. Stop loss orders, equally as important, always use a stop loss order to limit potential losses. For bullish breakouts, you're looking at putting your stop above, below, sorry, the broken resistance level. For bearish um, breakouts, you're looking at placing your stop above the broken support, okay? Easy enough there. Profit targets, very similar. When you're going long, you're looking for another key area of resistance above your, uh, above your entry price or above the current price, and you're looking at that area to see whether or not you should be taking profits at that area. Similarly, for breakdown of um, a, a breakdown trade, you're looking for that key area of support below the price where the price might bounce to take profits. All right, and here's another excellent example. Thank you, Adair, for adding these in. All right, so you have that horizontal move, right? This is the upper trend line, and you're gonna place your stop loss right below the bottom area over here, and your beak wetter, your beak wetter will have to be based upon where the next level of resistance is here. We can't really see it on the chart, okay? And remember, continuation breakouts are probabilities, not guarantees. Always do your research, both technical and fundamental. Manage risk effectively and never invest more than you can afford to lose. And here's a little bit of bonus tip. Combine these continuation breakouts with other technical indi indicators like RSI or MACD. Again, we talked that week on um, about RSI and MACD, about indicators, about looking for divergence between price action and the indicator itself, okay? So keep your eye on that, and that's really it for, for breakout trading, Adaro. Yeah, that, thank you so much for uh, for going over that there. Lesson du jour, we will be repeating it a couple times in case anybody comes in yeah. late. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I got into a couple bamboozling trades here. I got involved in this Tesla long. Initially, we held this area really well. We're falling below as long as we stay above this area here was 90 area, which I like because of that doji candle. I'm gonna say it and honestly, I should probably be reloading here, but I really wanna see Tesla have a little bit more oomph, a little bit more, mm. you know, spring in its step before I, I decide to add to this position that's already a skosh waffly. So that one I got involved in the five minute. This Microsoft though, I got involved in on the one minute because I liked what I saw on the one minute chart here. And that is uh, this little baby range that we had here, right? So we had these little kind of uh, 30 cent ranges. We did fall out of this a little bit as I got in, unfortunately. And we are having a bit of trouble with that 90 MA. So I, I want to see us really break above that 90 MA. If we can't, I'll take like a 10 cent loss on this because I don't want to take more of a loss. Uh, the initial goal was just kind of see what we did at VWAP. We held really well at VWAP. I just wanted to push that 90 MA aside and say, hey, you are not in my way. I am my own maker. Yes, I want the stock to talk. But yes, we'll have to see here. I see that you were also in um, yeah. a Tesla long. Yeah, yeah, that was a dip trade and it may not manifest the way that I want. So I'm going to keep this one on a tight leash. Yeah, no, uh, oh. yeah, so I'm not ready to... Okay, sorry, I was, yeah, yeah, I was... <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so that, this is my... I, I honestly, I'm going to get out of this uh, Tesla because uh, my area of entrance was... Like, you had a much better um, entry point than I did. I got involved a little bit too aggressively. So I'm going to try to get out of this um, if I am allowed to exit the Cybertruck. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Tesla, Tesla, let me out, please. Um, and then Microsoft is... We're still holding up at, at VWAP. I have no words... But um, Kyle, thank you for, so much for mentioning Amazon and Starbucks. Let's take a look at these ones here. Uh, we're out of Tesla. So Amazon here. Oh, this is a nice. Okay, I really like this on Amazon, Kyle. Thank you so much. Shout out to Kyle as well yesterday. Hey, um, Kyle. You know, giving me some some advice and feedback on Amazon. And also, you know, too, I, I remember Kyle earlier this week as well was saying in the chat, like, you know, pay attention to what Sean does when Sean enters these shorts. And Sean said something to that effect earlier today with Obi, saying that, you know, those TQQ shorts he was getting involved in was because he was seeing something with that aggression, with that viciousness, I guess, to, to use a word I use sometimes, <laughs> that, you know, was the impetus for getting involved. So that's the type of stuff I'm trying to pay more attention to. And so I just really always appreciate being able to learn from everyone here. This Amazon, though, lower, very much lower highs here. I love this topping tail candle. We tried to break into that earlier area of resistance at 180, shut down to the downside. So <laughs> I think we're having a really hard time getting above this area. I'm going to watch and see what we do here. If we, uh, this might be a dip. Instead of like a dip buy, it might be a rip short. 
a rip sell into 181. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. I want to watch how it moves a little bit longer. The other one Kyle was mentioning here, S-Bucks. So let's see if we're... I actually had some Starbucks this morning. I had some matcha this morning, so good times. <laughs> this look, I <laughs> failed. That wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> that was Ram Ram. Oh, that was, that was a Chilean nightmare. But yeah, this one, um, we have lower highs. This, this I feel like is a really clear look too, because with Amazon, you did have uh, that VWAP around that previous pre-market area of resistance, right? So there was still a little bit of confluence here, but to me, this Starbucks is like, this is a, a, a really nice setup of at the, the pre-market low or the, the pre-market trough and churn area, we have these lower highs with that flat bottom. So this is a nice look. And actually, I think I am going to step into this. The spread also is great, I have to say. As someone who occasionally wrangles Eli Lilly around that's got like a 40 cent spread at a, at a good day, uh, I can do a one cent spread. So we're going to try to get involved in this around 70s. So let's do 69s. Because as Sharif sometimes says, when punching in at this level, what's life without whimsy? Yeah. If we break above the 75 area, I'm out. Also, uh, Microsoft is doing nothing. So I also, I'm gonna have to assess that position as well. How are you doing over here? Good, took some profits on BDRX, nice. small cap gapper du jour. Tesla though, not looking good. So there I'm out. So I have to draw my line below the break of 176.80 guys, chart. Um, the idea here was, guys, chart. Uh, the idea here was to take that 177 defend. There was a consolidation area here that I liked earlier, but yeah, Tesla, bamboozle central. Very, oh, wow, went right back up. That's okay. That's no big deal. Let's see exactly what we're doing on BDRX. Right back into my entry. I'm looking to defend that $1.70 level. Um, let me show you exactly what I'm looking at here on BDRX. So this one was awfully strong to start the day. It kind of started its life in penny stock, penny, uh, yeah, penny stock territory, 86 pennies there or uh, thereabouts. $2 HOD breaks down below the volume weighted average price. So didn't really respect VWAP on this occasion. And I didn't, don't really feel like it respected VWAP uh, a, a, a whole lot earlier either, to be quite honest with you, uh, as it was making its way up, it was, it was really hard to tell what it was respecting, but the point is it bounced off a buck 50. So there was definitely a buyer around there. Brings us above the volume weighted average price. This one didn't really have all those uh, kind of things that we look for uh, on a small cap gapper, you know, a definable pre-market high, trading above the pre-market high, et cetera, et cetera. This one kind of just marched to the beat of its own drum, started moving at 815, and then you can't even really tell the difference between the price action between before or after the bell. So we'll wait and see if this one can hold up above a buck 70. I have a dip trade hanging out at that buck 70 area. We'll see if we get filled, and if we do, whether it holds up or not, because I'll just cut it if it doesn't. So we'll look to see exactly what BDRX does on the day. I had some other small cap gappers. Uh, AVTX, we'll talk about that. I mean, everyone's been talking about AVTX. This thing's a monster, oh, about 400%, 391% coming to the volume weighted average price. This could be an interesting area here. So we, now we know the first candle respected VWAP, the second candle sort of respecting it. So this could be an interesting area here for our AVTX trade. But whoa, 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 BDRX is tanking and I gotta get out of that. So that's a lot of trouble. So that ends up, I end up giving back everything that I made on BDRX there. So yeah, that's how it kind of works. If you don't have stops and you're talking on the show, it's gonna, it's gonna do that against you, these small gap gappers, but that's all right. Well, I'm gonna look now for AVTX as this one is holding the volume weighted average price quite nicely. We'll see what we get on this one. Yeah, no, that, uh, th those small caps have been like very all over the place today. Like there's been like some, um, a lot of that had some nice momentum and then just kind of petered out. Petered out. Sorry, yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting mixed look. Right now, I am looking at something that also can go uh, much like a small cap from bang to bust in two seconds. Nvidia. I like though. I've been trading lately. I want to say as well. I've been trading Nvidia pretty much exclusively off the 90 MA because to me, or sorry, not the 90 MA, the one minute chart. I, I'm obsessed with the 90 MA, but that's a whole other story. I like the, the one minute chart when I'm going to trade Nvidia because if I'm going to scalp it, I want to look purely at levels of what we're doing right the heck now. Do you know what I mean? I want to see this previous candle. Did we have any wicks down or wicks up? Suggest potential direction. That's the type of stuff I want to see. Right now, the target is to go long off this 90 MA, which is, I think, why my brain had 90 MA on it. I like that 908, 
dirty area. I don't know if we're going to get it again. So I don't want to, you know, have a dip by that accidentally gets filled. And I'm like, ah, because it's NVIDIA. That is not, that, that is not the vibe. That, that gets you lost in the sauce real fast. Shout out to Obi there with lost in the sauce. But I, I do want to be cognizant of this. I think there are some dip by opportunities here, though, for NVIDIA. And I like this subtle little dollar range that you get in the uptrend if you're looking at the one minute. Also, S bucks. We got like a dollar, or not a dollar, we got a cent away from being filled here. I was looking for 91.54, so I need to go back to the five minute four. Um, this this 91.54 was, was, was the goal here. We got to 91.55s. I'm staying in this though, unless we have that decisive break above VWAP and into that higher high, 91.75. So pretty tight risk reward here. Happy with this one for right now. And again, shout out again to, to Kyle for, for pointing this one out, much appreciated. But I, I don't mind um, I don't mind this look at all for Starbucks. Let's see if we can sip some of those profits. Instead of please as punch, I am pleased as a peach refresher or a caramel macchiato or insert Starbucks drink here. <laughs> so we're gonna, yeah, happy with this right now. I'm gonna probably start playing that NVIDIA range in a moment, but I saw a little tiny fist pump. So do yeah, you have some profits took, to talk uh, about? AVTX. That we just had to act quickly on that because it was on the volume weighted average price. I didn't know how long it was going to hang out here. We'll see if this one holds up. I already took the bulk out of that. That's a nice uh, 40 penny winner right there as it broke 24, but now coming back below my entry. So it's going to have to hold up above the half dollar on the ask. Otherwise, we'll cut it and then we'll look to get in at a better price. I'm thinking maybe exactly 23. That looks like to be, whoa, hold on. Where's the volume weighted average price? 22.87 or so, so now it's coming down here. Uh, if the bid or if the ask, sorry, breaks down below 50, I'm gonna have to cut it. But there we go, right back up into that general 24 area. The spread on this name is not great. Okay, it again, you know, you're gonna have to kind of take the good with the bad here. Uh, the good is it's up 400%. The bad is it's awfully spready, right? So right back in, uh, and the. Now the spread tightening up a little bit. Right back into that 24 area and above 24 we go. All right, AVTX, if we can hold above 24, that would just be aces, but we're having trouble with the whole dollar level. So we'll keep eyes on this one. Doing well on this name. Uh, just made up for all the that I lost on BDRX here. So I was kind of happy about that um, with this name. All right, there we go, 24 and a half. Now almost a dollar in the money on this name. Let's see if this one can keep pumping here. The spread though, when we break above 24, gets super spready. So the, the bidders are not following up here. So you can you feel like the bid is not moving up with you. It, the ask is moving up, but not really the bid. So not, uh, not entirely uh, comfortable with this trade quite yet, but who could be comfortable with a name that's up 404% uh, and that nobody probably heard of yesterday. So we'll keep eyes on this one, Adair. Yeah, no worries, yeah. Um just, just, uh, yeah, good times here. Just uh, talking here to, to um, some people in the chat. Always, always happy to be here. But yeah, this NVDA, we have a dip by sitting here at 908. 30s. I think we might have to switch it to 908.40s. But this range is still, this range is still working. So I, I want to be able to take advantage of it. And we're gonna do 45s. Cause what's life without whimsy? No, there's no reason to say what's life without whimsy there. I just I liked it with that okay. area. But also uh, I'm pleased as punches for you for Thank your ADP you. trade. That's awesome. Yep, yep. Um also yeah, nothing to report with my Starbucks. If anyone has any names they want us to look at. Let us know. Um, yeah, thank you. Hold my beer. We appreciate you as well. Um, always, always a good time. But yeah, this Tesla, I want to look at Tesla because Tesla is flat. Uh, Tesla, well, it's not flat, but it's kind of been doing a whole lot of nothing to use that, you know, Sharifism over here. Look at this top and turn we've had at this 177 for many moons. And it was really bamboozling too. Like I got involved because we did have this hold there for a little bit. We tried to eclipse VWAP and then Tesla was like, <laughs> uh, so we got pushed. To, uh, to the downside a bit. We're still below VWAP. There could be, actually, if I, if I was really looking for it, we could have a couple penny scalps there, but I don't know if that's in the stars for me right now. This NVIDIA range to me seems a lot more fertile. I need to stop using that word in relation to trades because I did this as well a couple days ago and then Randy was, was laughing at me for it. So we'll have to see here though. I like the Starbucks. I like the Tesla. Oust, says Sebastian. Yeah, I know Sharif was was in Oust yesterday too. That mm. was a, a, a multi-day small cap runner. Let's see what we've got going on with this one. Not bad volume either for a two day small cap runner. This one, three million volume. And this is a chart pattern that I really find interesting. So look at this, uh, just shy of $8 top. Oh, I'm not even drawing my lines, look at that. Also, thanks again to Sharif for teaching me how to do these lines where I don't have to like draw it myself, it just like <laughs> puts it there because I know it, it makes everyone's life a little bit easier. 
<laughs> so look at this. We have this eight top. We're struggling with this eight dollar area. Look at these failed wicks. We get it the first time we try to break this flag. Try to have some top and churn uh, around VWAP consolidation. We break below VWAP. Come up. Try eight again. Knocking on the door of eight, and then eight says no. You will not be allowed into the party. So continuing to fall. Um, also, I'm just laughing at Kyle's comment. <laughs> continuing to fall to the downside there, um, off that eight dollar area. But yeah, I mean, honestly, this one has a lot of. There's a lot of oomph in this for a second day runner, right? Like we we fall below view up, but we reclaim it just as quickly. I just think it needs to break the eight dollar area for it to get really spicy and interesting. Let's see what we did yesterday. All when all was said and done here. Oh, this is, we didn't even really give up much of yesterday's move. Okay, I was just, I was just looking, looking pretty. In terms of, I was, in, in terms of long term, oh. yeah, like for, for a small cap gapper daily chart, this is not bad at all. Let me see uh, what Ouster's deal is. Ouster is the name of the company. Oh, they got, um, oh, they just got reiterated overweight and $8 price target uh -huh. from Cantor Fitzgerald. So no, nothing new, but maintaining that, that strong rating. Massive support here, I think, uh, around this four, 60 area because we had a little bit of resistance there earlier so some support a little bit of resistance so i think that area to me 460 is interesting for a little cushion uh and this 840 area if we can break above that look at this massive bearish engulfing candle in the daily that would be a nice look for now though ouster needs to be able to hold with a viciousness uh that eight dollar area on the day also we're in nvidia so i'm probably gonna have to deal with, with that yeah, yeah, go ahead. she is a, a spicy feisty creature so i will deal with that but yeah sebastian i hope that helps also we just go to super chat as well from papa powell oh there. okay i'll take care of it Thank you do you. your thing over there papa powell drop in a dollar 99 super chat thank you very much sir can you look at cron next breakout cannabis name all right let's have a look at c-r-o-n that been on my watch list, I'd say, for maybe four years now. So not one that I keep tabs on every day, but here is the look on Cron. Let me just pull in the ticker. It's a perfect name, I mean, for, for yeah. weed, Cron. It's apt. Come on, bro. It's quite apt. Uh, let's look at the deets. All right, Cron, down 0.67, billion dollar market cap. The float on Cron, about 200 million shares thereabouts. What's the uh, the wider look here on CRON? Okay, it's a recovery off the bottoms. As you can see there, the COVID highs, um, you know, that's when weed was running. We ran a couple of times, right? Once in 2018 when we had federal legalization in Canada and then again in the run-up to the election, the previous election, the 2020 election when Kamala Harris was debating Mike Pence and that whole legalization thing came into play, federal legalization down south. So since that time, as you can see, it's been down into the right, but looked like we formed a bit of a base here, at least earlier this year at a buck and two thirds, a buck and three quarters thereabouts. Since that time, we have been putting in higher lows and higher highs, not amazing, but not bad either, okay? So every subsequent trough is a little bit higher than its predecessor, and so are the crests. So look at this crest over here, 265 H, the high. Now this one, 295. So incrementally making our way up, not a bad look. I don't know anything specifically about the company. I know it's Canada based, it's Canadian. Um, the technicals are a little tougher to read. Um, eh? It is up today? No, it's down points. Oh, well, on my chart it says down 0.67. Let me uh, load it up on the side, though. Thanks, Chile Nightmare. Yeah, actually, you're right. It didn't update. Thank you, Fabian. It's up 2.4%. Just my, uh, I have to scroll onto the actual name on my watch list for whatever reason for it to update. So not a bad daily chart. Uh, kind of hard to see the areas of resistance. I'm, I'm really inclined to say something at three and a third. Uh, owing to the amount of tops that we had over here. But as you can kind of move back a little bit, let's see. Well, look, uh, the other thing that I neg negated to mention is that we actually broke and took the 200. The 200 is a solid line on my chart, the blue solid line on my chart. All right, and then look at what happened earlier at the 200. Every time we'd come in to the 200, we would reject. And then again, over here. And then even when we broke it, Earlier in, uh, in th this past September, we, re uh, we retraced below it quite quickly. Now, we've taken the 20, sorry, the, the 50 and the 200 on a closing basis, and we have been above them for some time. So this is quite bullish here, especially because of the trend of rejecting out the 200 for almost a couple of years. 
So good call out there, Papa. Um, I got to tell you, I, I like this, but, you know, just be ready for bamboozlement, right? Because that's just how these wheat stocks are on the intraday. Let's look at the intraday now. Yeah, I mean, you're not getting a whole lot in volume. You've got, it's a $2.75 name. You've got 1.84 million shares done on the day. So the, the volume is just not there. If you're looking at uh, trading this intraday, I'm, I can't help you there. It's just not enough data off which to base my trade. So, but good luck otherwise, though. Maybe for, your, uh, for a swing trade or for a long-term hold, obviously not financial advice, but doesn't look bad at all. All right, let me go back into AVTX here because we're getting a nice little base there at 22 and a half. Look at that. So we troughed out there, and then we couldn't make it quite as low down as we did earlier. Now, what I want to see is number one, do we hold up at the volume weighted average price, which on my side chart is 22 mid 80s, thereabouts. So we're a little bit above it right now. That's number one. Number two, can we get above and hold above this $24 area, right? We had, we used 24 initially as uh, support over here at around, what, 1040 or so. Then we gave up the goods on 24 and then we started using 24, not as support anymore, but as resistance. So let's keep an eye on AVTX up 385%. I wanna see if it can, number one, hold the volume weighted average price. Number two, break and hold above 24. I mean, it's presenting us with opportunities. We just have to be able to figure out how to take them. Let's see what else people are yapping about in the chat there. Let's go Uber, says Alex. All right, let's go Uber. Yeah. Haven't had a look at Uber for a while. Yeah, let's, let's pap Uber. Uber. Ooh, bear. Um, but yeah, so um, I was going to say, yeah, so Starbucks, I did take out some profits here. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy with this look. I'm going to cancel my my, uh, my rip sell because I'm not going to get it. Oh, I like that button there. Thank you. Ooh, nice money happened, rain baby. there. We dipped into 45s and then we dipped back out of 45s. I, I'm still saving a piece of the dream here. So again, shout out to Kyle yes. Burdett for calling this one out to me. But yeah, I was pretty happy with this trade. Um, Always just trying to take advantage of the opportunities. We did take an L on Ven sure. NVIDIA. So it was it was not a win video here for me. Um, but honestly, I should have been more cognizant of what we did at this bottom here in the five minute instead of trading this purely off the one minute. So that is a, a lesson that I need to learn. On that, this range did kind of slope a little bit. Where's my one minute chart? There we go. So I was really just trying to take these pops. We didn't have enough of a pop here when I got in. The range decided it wanted to take a little bit of a sick day, sick day and that's okay. You know what? It's a holiday weekend. I understand. It's got ranges have to take breaks too, but I do want to keep a, uh, keep an eye on what we're doing here because there is some consolidation in NVIDIA that I think if I really have my eye on it and I'm very scalpy about it, I can play. Also, I attempted to uh, scalp the SPY. We did lose on it, but I'm, I'm really proud of myself because we did have super tight uh, risk in mind, I was only going to give this. Did we, what did we scalp this off the one minute? Yeah, here we go. Uh, I was noticing we kind of had th this really hard time breaking above the 60s initially. Mm -hmm. I gave this like five pennies, immediately got out when we got out. Okay. So I didn't lose I too much on this trade. Carry. Definitely nothing, um, you know, to cry about because I, I'm really proud of just being able here to, to, to have the plan. Although now we are dipping lower in the spy. So it might have been one of those like, things where the concept of it was not incorrect, the timing of it was. And it's okay. Uh, the SPY to me looks more like potentially a long anyway with these higher highs, higher lows. We're near, we're near the high of day, so I'm gonna keep an eye on the SPY. Uh, I'll, I SPY is I guess a better way of putting it. So I'll, I'll keep doing that uh, because I think that there's probably some scalp opportunities for me there. Microsoft, if you take this with a lot of shares, when I say you, I mean me in this case, because this is, as Sharif sometimes calls it, Nadera Panera trade. I think that might be what's happening here in Microsoft. Look at this range, it's such a little tiny range. Uh, 420.75 bottom, 420.120 top. So you're, the thing is with this though, is this is on the one minute, you're not gonna get all of that movement in every single little candle, you know what I mean? You might have to be a little bit patient, which as we know is not my strong suit. But if I can pack the patience, and Sharif will be packing patience and also for his safari soon, so that's exciting. Woo. But um, woo. But yeah, I think if I can pack that patience, I think there's something here potentially in a Microsoft scalp. I would have a lot of things here though. Although Hog Rider, mentioning one of my favorite little stocks, uh, Eli Lilly, Lilly looking for a breakout. So let's see how she's doing. Oh. She is below a milli, but she's just 100,000 below a milli. So like, you know, 100,000 shares, girl. I will see you. You were still on my side chart. And Hog Rider is completely right. 
Look, this is, mm, this is beautiful. I get above a milli, Lily. Look at this bottom of 487.40. Oh, sorry, 787.40. And this top uh, of these, more or less the, the same high here, the 792. This is beautiful. And I see what you mean. We do slightly lower highs here, Hog Rider, but nothing, nothing super significantly lower. And also we have this big flag pull up. A lot of this to me looks very bullish. So I'll be keeping an eye on Mademoiselle. And if Mademoiselle would like to get another 100,000 shares so I can feel more comfortable going long, because I've tried going long, Lily, or try to trade Lily in general, below a million shares, and it just not is not a vibe. But if she would like to be a vibe, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> also, now the spy drops. So the spy, a uh -oh. little bit of spiciness in the spy. Also, Monty G, thank you so much for your member chat here. Member for seven months. Made my tape take up my full 36-inch vertical screen and show three colors from trades that ass bid in between. Small caps, early morning, learning lots, money face emoji, money face emoji. So thank you so much. Also a small cap trader here as well. And you are, right now, you're with the big boys here in the Fuge. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, oh. <laughs> I love how you pointed out. It always puts me on the spot. Oh, sorry. I'm not trying to um, I'll focus on something else. Uh, let's Sorry look at that. TSLA uh, at the moment because it is really curling down at the moment right now. Look at that break of 177 on the way down to 176. 175.70, technically a low of day at the moment. But, you know, where do we find uh, where do we find support here? I'm going to have to look at that whole dollar level first for Tesla, and then maybe we'll look at low of day. We tried to draw a bit of a trend line there, but it really wasn't holding up at it at the moment. So we'll keep eyes on TSLA. Also coming down into the closing print uh, for yesterday is NVDA coming into that 902.5. That is also another interesting area. Uh, this area, we bounced off it aggressively, but it did have aggressive wicks below that 902.5, but all the closing prints were a little bit north of that level. Uh, so keep your eye on NVDA if we were to make it back into 902.5. Another way to play this is NVDL. So that would be an interesting look as well. So keep your eye on that. Uh, let's flip back to some of these small cap gappers. Let me bring them in from the side over here and have a look at what we're looking at for small cap gappers. AVTX continuing to hold that 23 or thereabouts area, that 22 and a half, VWAP in general. We were criticizing this one earlier that it wasn't respecting the volume weighted average price uh, owing to how it traded in uh, the pre-market as well as at the opening bell. But now it looks as if it's given VWAP a lot of respect. Look at all the support that it's getting at these levels. So AV. TX here as well. And then ORTK trying to really reclaim the volume weighted average price. Nice surge uh, there. Volume candle coming and breaking above that 80 penny area on its way to 90 pennies. High a day though, a buck 07. So good luck for that one as it comes off that 20 period moving average, holding the 20 period really well here for ORTK for whatever reason. BDRX also breaking down now. So we traded this one nicely for a little win, then it huadumped on us. Uh, big drop below the volume weighted average price and now it is coming back into that 150 area. We're talking about the dollar fifty being an interesting area of support on BDRX. Keep your eye on it. It's about four pennies away from that level right now. So could present you with another possible opportunity here. Not not much going on for Donald John Trump on the day. 69.87, essentially a $70 high, breaking down $7 below that right now, trading at 63 and a fifth. Low of day though, 62 and a quarter. There's been no uptrend. I don't see any higher high or higher low off this name. So it's been a bit of a retracement. But when you look at the price action, we're still within yesterday's range. We're still uh, holding the lows from yesterday, which is at 62 and a fifth, and we're definitely below yesterday's high. So a bit of an inside day, and the range is getting tighter and tighter. Look at the, the previous day on that. So if you were to draw a bit of a, a trend line between the two days, you can see the price starting to compress a little bit on DJT, and when you zoom out, you see what preceded that. It was a big uptrend, so maybe we'll get a big pop through 70 uh, maybe not today, maybe sometime next week on DJT, but keep that, I'm keeping that on my side chart here uh, as it presents uh, good trading opportunities. And last but not least, Reddit. We haven't said too much about this. Uh, Adair was mentioning in the morning that we had insider selling by both the CEO and the COO. So that's precipitated some, uh, obviously, 
some selling on this name. Also, the, the individuals who, were, who got shares, not just the mods, but everybody else who was uh, participating in this IPO, none of them have blackout periods, right? There are no blackout periods here for, uh, for this particular name. So we could see a lot of volatility. You don't have to wait six months. So I'll keep my eye on these six. I think they're all presenting us with interesting opportunities. Oh, AVTX just broke aggressively below the volume weighted average price. So this one not tradable in my book anymore. We'll see what it does if it's able to reclaim that level of Dara. Yeah, no, there's a, this is a, it's a really interesting day here in the markets, trying to find some opportunities wherever they may be. Out of Starbucks, maybe I did get it a little bit early, but just I, I wanted to make sure we had some out as we get to this low of day. Shout out to, I know um, Coin Clockin, I believe, said they were in the Starbucks short, and Kyle Burdett's in the Starbucks short and pointed this one out to me. Shout out to you. This is my only positive name on the day right now. I'm going to be really real, but I am working on risk management, so we're not down too much on the, on the other names. Uh, just trying to one trade at a time, do the learning, and, and try to find some opportunities here to get involved. Tesla, a little bit of support here at that earlier drop. Let's pull this up here. I want to say double bottom because it's not a perfect double bottom. This is slightly higher low. But look at these five-minute candles. We close here at 176, and then we pop right back up at 176. I want to see another candle of confirmation, especially because we're coming into that previous area of resistance there at that 176.42. That was the area we had support. So support can become resistance. And uh, we don't know if it will until we see what happens, but we, it can. So we want to be aware of that. Microsoft, here's just, Microsoft's just hanging out, honestly. This is so rangy, but I also oh feel God. like we could break down at any moment. And I say that because we're kind of seeing these, these slightly lower highs and a bit of a flat bottom. I'm not going to go long against this, but I'm going to, you know, we're going to have a resting order at like 421s. Because I think um, 421 could be a decent area here. Just get short. Not taking a massive position, uh, but I just, I do like the idea of being able to take some off at the bottom uh, around VWAP here. There's, I think there's some opportunities on that. Also, we have the SPY, which I was involved with briefly to the downside and then briefly to the upside. I will admit me trying to go long here in retrospect was yeah, probably I more. I did, but it tells me. Of a revenge trade than I you know, I'll be honest, it was probably a bit of a revenge trade because I went, I went short here. We immediately popped up into 70s. And again, my risk parameters were probably a little too strict. So I got out. I was like, oh, no, it'll, you know. And then we dropped like a good 20, 30 cents. Then I went, tried to go long because we were holding for a little bit at this uh, 5.23, 40 area. And then again, set my risk parameters, set my stop a little too conservatively, and then we get out. So that's one of my biggest issues. I just need to really work on A, timing my entries correctly, and B, having good entry points. Because sometimes the idea will be right, as was the case with actually, you know, bo both of these trades inherently. Just the timing and the motivation is very awry. So I need to work on, on writing that and correcting that, and then uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more you know, uh, success here with some of our trades. Because that's what we're, we're aiming towards, how to trade, trying to take these, these baby steps and working towards something. So that will be what I am working towards. NVIDIA, also, this one, this is a bit, it's bamboozling. I should probably be looking at my NVDL. Shout out to Sharif mentioning that one. I know Obi was involved in that one as well today too, so shout out. But yeah, I want to see what we do here. At this 906 area, we're currently knocking on the door of. So let, let's see, we have this uh, earlier little trough here around VWAP, 906, then we break above VWAP here now, and will we, will we do it successfully? Will we burst the door down? Uh, will we, Jerome Powell, close the door? We'll have to wait and see here, but NVIDIA, <laughs> I think there's something spicy brewing around this area, and as I say, that it breaks above, so we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Really, I'm just kind of looking for some trades here, because I think there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff happening and not a lot of good opportunities. So Microsoft, do you want to go back to that 421 so I can get short? I'd be pleased as much. Um, I was going to mention, sorry guys, I got logged out of my account for the chat. So on my YouTube side, I won't be able to participate in the chat. It's not letting me log in for whatever reason. So just wanted to point that out. But uh, we'll, uh, if, if it's, you know, I'll try to keep my eye on uh, the chat, but I won't be able to, to respond. All right, so let's see exactly what we got here. I just got into this. Whoa, the market's coming down here. Amazon is really coming down, guys. Uh, wow, what a big move down by Amazon there. I was keeping an eye on this level here on AMZN. We tried this. We just lost 10 pennies super quick here on AMZN. But I was looking at this pre-market high, this 180.50, to be an interesting area of uh, support. But it blew through that all, all the way down. It just lost a dollar there in about, you know, Less than 10 minutes here on AMZ. So let me look here, see if exactly what's going on. 
Is there anything going on here? What is this? Amazon bets $150 billion on data center required. That's Bloomberg. I don't think that that's it. That's not going to be... That's not going to be it for me. That came in 11.39. That's no, not market moving like that. Maybe it's just regular price action on AMZN. But this was the strongest Meg 7 name on the day until about five minutes ago. It was up about half a percent or so, a little bit more than that. Um, followed by NVIDIA, which is up a third of a percent. Everything else, including Netflix, is in negative territory today, uh, down red. So we'll keep eyes on this one. It had been holding VWAP quite well uh, at that, let's just say, 180, 75-ish area. And that had been the case for the entire morning. Uh, and you weren't even really putting aggressively lower highs. I mean, with this one, you pop back up into that 181 and a quarter. But that one really heading down. Now, break even on the day. Uh, the closing print from yesterday on AMZN hanging around 179.85 or thereabouts. Let's see if this one makes it down there. I mean, I don't have any other support levels here for Amazon except this closing print from yesterday, which is still about, you know, about 65 or whatever pennies away from that area. Let's look at Meta. Meta is coming down almost here into that uh, support level one on pivots, which is at around 487 and a quarter. This also used the 20 period. The 20 period seems to feature into a lot of my analysis lately. Uh, many, many different rejections here off the 20 period today on Meta. And now it's coming down uh, at its lowest point on a closing basis, right? So it did wick down a little bit below that to 485.80 but it quickly retraced uh, and closed above 488. This is as low as it's closed on the day. Uh, the first close below 488. Meta giving some back here after being strong for many, many months, down one and a quarter percent, Adara. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm just um, babysitting NVIDIA. But I, I'm, NVIDIA's really nicely rejecting this 907. As I say that, it breaks above 907. So NVIDIA, like, oh yeah, Adara, we're gonna, we're gonna make you to be a little bit of a liar. That's okay, that's okay. Um, I should have taken NVDL, and the reason I didn't was because I'm trying to figure out like my share size situation. So maybe maybe we should have done that. But um, you live, you learn, you grow. I did not grow in this trade, and uh, but as Sharif says, you know, you you either win or you learn. And so with that in mind, uh, we learned. We did learn. Uh, thank you so much, though, and congrats to Willis Addison. $2 super chat. Thank you very much for the support. Let's go. Tesla puts 178.76, 175 strike. Um, April 5th expiry, GME uh, to the downside. So look at both of these for you. And congrats to Willis Addison for those trades. Um, yeah, this, Tesla puts here one step. Oh, yeah, this is this is a nice look here to the downside. So that would have been around this 178.60 area. Swoop to the downside uh, goes Tesla. You are about a dollar, $2 plus in the money. So this is a, a massive, uh, massive move here. And congrats to you, um, for that trade, that's that's an excellent look. Let's look at GME here for Willis Addison as well. Yeah, GME GME is weak uh, since those earnings that we had uh, yesterday. They no, not yesterday, Tuesday night. They did miss across the board there. But yeah, I mean lower lower highs, lower lows. Let's look at the daily chart. See what we've been doing since those earnings after close on Tuesday. That Sean brought to you on his market recap show. Yeah, I mean, look at this. We, and it's interesting, too. We, we could zoom off of those earnings at that 15 level, which is also really wild because 15 was clearly an area of previous resistance, at least in, in from what I can see here on the daily. And look at that support we had in this earlier. Like, this 15 level has some weird magnetism here for our pal GameStop. So the games stopped at 15, and now we're heading to the downside. Congrats to you, Willis Addison. Also, I'm seeing some um, some stuff here in the chat on Sam Bankman Freed. I'm going to confirm that before I say anything on that, but it does sound like the sentencing has uh, been completed. I'm just going to make sure, though, I'm going to check some stuff to, to make sure we're all good on that. Thank you. Keep an eye on, uh, I was keeping an eye on Amazon here, but uh, I don't think I'm going to take a trade on this because I don't like it at this level. This is not the level that I charted for an area of support, so it could be a dead cat bounce, and then we can watch Amazon continue to head down. So I'll keep eyes on that. Uh, where are these small cap gappers that were plenty oh plenty on the day that all of a sudden disappeared? All right, I see another one. What's up, Katina Man? I'm seeing 20. The Katina Man said 25 years. Uh, but Adair is seeing 20. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what he gets, man. But uh, yeah, I don't really feel that bad for him. So, oh well. A CERO, let's pull up that bad boy. That one just showed up on my scanner. Let's bring it the side charts. 
All right. CERO, let's pull that up. You guys can come to the charts, yeah? CERO. Let's look this. Okay, so a lot of topping tail candles here. I don't know exactly how I feel about this looking uh, chart over here. Up into 269. The range per candle is just too wild. What is the volume on this? 3.36 million, uh, a $35 million market cap. Uh, half a million share float, about 539,000 shares. So this is this is interesting. It's not a bad name. Is there a catalyst? We'll have to check real quick. I don't actually see a catalyst on CERO. Is this a multi-day runner? All right, let's go back into the daily. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a multi-day runner. This ran March 7th. Look at that. It popped up into 28. I knew I remembered this from somewhere. Anyway, CRO showing up today, but I, I just think the volume is a little too suspicious, and uh, I'm not really liking the way it's trading. So we'll keep it on the side chart. If it changes its tune or its look, we'll get involved with that. All right, Apple coming into the volume weighted average price here. This could be another interesting area to reinstitute a short on Apple, especially because that the volume weighted average price and VWAP are very near that 171 whole dollar. I'll need a rejection first off the level before jumping in, but you've had lower highs on AAPL. It hasn't really exactly respected the volume weighted average price. There's been a couple of perfunctory breaches here and there, but right at that level. So I'll be watching AAPL here for a possible uh, rejection trade off that level. In fact, let's just pull it up on the side screen here and, or the trading screen and have it ready in case it does do that nice rejection. We'll be ready to punch in at these levels. I don't want to sit at the volume weighted average price waiting for a dip. I'd like for it to prove to me that it's going to reject off that level first. Great bottom there at 170.50 on AAPL. Very predictable. The half dollar. Now we're dealing with the whole dollar at 171. Uh, the future a little sideways today, too, if I could uh, say so myself. A very, uh, very, very zigzaggy. Ooh. It kind of almost looks like an audio wave, right? A yeah. little bit of this, a little bit of that with um, the top end of the range. I mean, I know we had this breach into 18.538, but in reality, really, it's been more like that 15.10, 18, sorry, 18.510, 18.515. Look at all the, the wicks. A little bit below five, a little bit above five, a little bit below five. Yeah, this is a futures trader's nightmare here, unless you're going to trade these ranges, uh, but you're not getting direction either way. You're not getting a direction on the breakdown. You're not getting a direction on the breakout. So the future doing uh, sideways things today. And there's a lot, again, there's a lot of overlap between the NVIDIA chart and the futures chart. And we made that observation yesterday. Let's uh, show you side by side here. On the left screen is NVIDIA. And on the right screen is the future. I mean, like, look at this, right? Very, very similar, zigzaggy. They're both super sideways, except where pivots is, is going to be a little bit different because that calculates the uh, high, low, and close from the previous day. So keeping guys on the, the NQ and uh, NVDA, let's see what else we got going on over here. Donald John Trump on the way down, baby. We're about to see 60 soon. If we can break 61, looks like we got to that 61 and a quarter, down almost 7% on the day, but doing volume, baby. It's about 10 and a half million shares on the $60 name, and we haven't even hit noon hour yet. So the volume's there for wh whoever can get the shorts. Uh, I. I I don't have it on my platform here, but I can definitely get them from uh, real trading. I was about to say day trade the world, but I caught myself there. Uh, Tesla, nice. Finding that support at 176, now on the way up into 177. However, still lower highs, right? So we haven't printed anything above the, uh, the crest that we made here at 177.80-ish. So we'll keep eyes on TSLA. What's going on over there, Katina, man? What are you wowing about? He's going through charts, sorry. It's NVIDIA, it's just not inconsistent. Lower highs? Yeah, it's sloping down. The Katina man says NVIDIA is sloping down. He's still short 9, 10, 50. And I have to agree with that because look at these lower highs that we're putting in here 9, 13 top. And then we crest out at 9, 10 and a third. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, NVDA. But, you know, when we look at it, it's awfully consolidative on the day of Dara. Yeah, I mean, I, that consolidation makes me interested. That's why I'm trying to get involved in every, like, we're always get a couple pennies away from my area, and then NVIDIA's like, uh, maybe not. NVIDIA wants to keep me out, NVIDIA. And you know what? I wish it wouldn't because we had some um, ill-fated and probably, honestly, ill-conceived scalps in this earlier, but now we are in NVIDIA, and I'm going to actually try to stay in this a little bit longer for a win, NVIDIA. I definitely do not have as good a price point here as Sean, but I did like these lower highs. 
I'm going to be seeing what we do into this 908, 909 area. I do not want to hire high in NVIDIA. No, I do not. If we were Jack 908, I'm going to add to this position, though. And I want to be kind of taking it out in certain areas as we slope to the downside. But for now, I'm actually going to be patient, which is not something I do often or well. I'm going to be a little bit patient in this trade. We're going to have some stuff out, though, for that 906 area because I did like 906 earlier. Took a short off that 906. I think it's, for whatever reason, an interesting area for NVDA. But uh, right now, pretty much flat in this trade, which for NVIDIA is not too shabby. I am down on the name, though, when all is said and done. done. Also, um, yeah, that Q chart is looks beautiful for uh, I, at least from like a, a range perspective. <laughs> so I like I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Q short. Um, although maybe because I know the TQQs have they're, they're less expensive, so maybe we'll do the QQQs. Um, yeah, we're gonna do the TQQs. We're gonna take the, the TQQ short here. We're gonna get out if we break above. Um, oh, Sean, are, Sean, are you short the Qs? No, that's right. The trade. Oh, right, the TQQs. Thank you. Appreciate that. Also, I know Sharif was trading these earlier, too, right? The TQQs. Mm -hmm. So, um, T TQQ gang over here nice. I'm back in. In, um, in the market. So, we're going to take this short 95s, hopefully, here. Um, also, yeah, so I did see, uh, I was checking on uh, CNBC initially on the website. They said that Sam Bankman fried got... Uh, 20 years, but he did get 25 years. They corrected it. So that's why I wanted to wait and make sure. 25 years for Sam bankman fried Thank you to, to Sean for telling me that one immediately. But yeah, so that, that is how many years Sam bankman fried has. 21. So he will be in prison if he serves the whole sentence until he is over 50. I just met, He's like imagine early 30s. people showing up to his parole hearing. There's going to be like an army of people wanting him not to get parole. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, that there's going to be a, a parade of people who are going to come with victim impact statements and keep that dude in jail. So, uh, whatever. That's his problem. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. All right, Meta coming down yet again. So, all right, so we're selling off aggressively here on META, guys. And, um, you know, where do we find support? Here we go. So, we're at pivot level or pivot level support one at that 487 so we'll see if we can curl up off these levels i was about to get into an amazon short uh and then i missed my entry so i, I canceled it and what i liked about this one is that it broke below the 50 period came into that 50 period then started rejecting it so i was like okay this looks like a dead cat bounce so it looks like amazon may be on the way down here keep an eye out for that 180 20 break if that makes a new low we could easily see that 179.83 area which is uh the closing print from yesterday. Apple also at the volume weighted average price. We kept talking about this one, 171-ish area. We'll see if Apple rejects off these levels. DZ Bank giving Apple a downgrade today, but uh, Dan Ives uh, on uh, Squawk Box this morning pounding the desk about Apple and Tesla, actually both, uh, making his case for what how he feels um, both those companies are going to do in the next couple of years. So we'll take Apple short here and we're going to give it a short leash, maybe above to 15, Adara. Yeah, no, I think um, Apple, hopefully yeah, you, Tim Cook, on that trade <laughs> in, in a good way. You know, like, uh, I, I hope it goes really well there for you. Also, we were saying, too, uh, Sharif was saying that Dan Ives, who, if you don't know who he is from Wedbush, will often wear a very colorful shirt. I'm going to actually Google so we have some visual images here. But apparently, Sharif was saying today he wore, um, like, a, a Pepsi Blue, so Sharif's favorite color, Pepsi yeah. Blue shirt, which for him is is very not not um, his, his normal look here. So here's, yeah, I think this is a really good example. So I'll just pull this one up. So this is, um, oh, where he is? There he, here he is. Um, there is Dan Ives in, oh, I just got rid of him. But yeah, in like a, a very pais, uh, paisley pink shirt. So this is the type of normal look. So I was joking. He was very sad. He had to, to drop the price target there for Tesla by $15, so it was a little bit more of a somber moment for him, hence why he wore that, that um, not pink shirt. Yeah, all, all jokes aside, um, yeah, he, Dan Ives, very bullish on Tesla, so for them to drop the price target, even $15 is pretty significant. Yeah, he was trying to make the case. He's like, look, the numbers, I think we're going to get the delivery numbers on Monday. I think there's a lot Monday of um, brokerages like changing that. there. Yeah, yeah. There's a, we're, I think we're getting deliveries uh, on Monday for Tesla specifically. Sometimes it comes out on the weekend, but his point was that this is going to be the trough of delivery, so it's going to be as bad as it gets, according to him. So we'll have to see whether or not he's accurate at all about that. But that's uh, that's his little precision there. What's that? Oh, oh. yeah, Randy moved him <laughs> yesterday. So I wanted to, yeah, Randy moved trend. Sorry, that's her funny. trend of the trade uh, that trend of ticker the trading turtle. 
And um, yeah, and Randy made her like a little bit of both. So we're going to fix her. Now she's all happy. <laughs> she is instead of the bulls and bears we have trenda who yes. she is not biased she is not bullish or bearish she likes trending tickers hence her name trenda ticker all right yeah. good good also shout so out real trading. around yeah shout out real trading Maybe. what do you got over there yeah i mean we have this nvidia trade i am being patient which like i said not a virtue i often possess so this is fun for me just kind of wait and i don't even say that sarcastically also i, I can't really do sarcasm so so again yeah, not sarcastic but but it, it's kind of fun to, to test my boundaries a little bit right we're we're being patient we're waiting on this trade we added to this trade so i'm gonna wait and see here i know sean's been short nvidia since 9 10 so i mean great that, that shout out to him that's a great look and I, I really want to be able to take advantage of these lower highs and lower lows that we have. I added it at 908, and we just held it at 908, and then we dropped. So I was like, uh, pretty happy with that. We are about two cents out of the money on TQQs, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. Also, Martin Lawrence, thank you so much for the 199 super chat. Just saw this one now. Either Biden or Kennedy will legalize cannabis with a little picking time and a bomb. Yeah, but look at let's look at MSOS. I know. Um, shout out to Fabian and my and our, your earlier saying that MSOS was on the move. And I know we talked about Cron earlier as well for another super chat. I yeah. believe. Um, but yeah, MSOS. Yeah, volume on this about five million. This is interesting, actually. These levels. I try not to use. I'm trying. I'm, I'm not very successful at it, but I'm trying. Not to use levels as much for my ETFs. But I do like that we have this continued area of this 1018. We have this rejection of 1018, another little rejection, and once more, a rejection at 1018. So I think there's something in the water here at 1018 for MSOS or something something in the pipe, maybe, for MSOS, something down the pipeline. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this is an interesting one. Danny Lyon saying NVIDIA is bullish. Yeah, I have to admit I am a little bit um, hesitant with this one right now, with how we are chopping and turning along that 9 EMA. But honestly, like we have had these lower highs and that I cannot dismiss. And that's why, you know, I'm trying to take more advantage of stuff when I see it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We're gonna be getting out above uh, if we break and make a higher high. But really my biggest issue is I see things I like and I don't get involved because I'm too skittish or I'm too scared. And I'm trying to curb that. So that's why I wanted to, to get involved in this. That being said, Daddy Lines, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing you are, and it does give me a little bit of pause, but I have no reason to exit the trade yet because my impetus for exiting the trade would be a higher high, which we don't have yet. Yeah, so I just, yeah, I wanted to address that. I do definitely pick up what you're putting down there, though. But right now, we're not going to be out, Vidya, unless we get our little uh, pops into that 906 area for my beak water, or we break above that 909. But we're really struggling with 908, which does give me a Scotia a confidence here to stay in this trade. How are you, how are you doing? Not too bad. A short AMZN looking for this to come back down. Nice rejection off that VWAP retracement for Amazon. I missed my price though there, so I was a little disappointed. I had to get mid 40s. I was really looking for that mid 50s, uh, low 60s area. And look at this one come down here. So here comes uh, the third of a dollar. Let's see if we can make it down into that trough area. The trough area on Amazon for me is the, that low 120s. Uh, maybe, you know, 180.22, 180.25, thereabouts. This is the area I'm talking about over here. I'm looking for a lower low. So we came up into a key area of support, that being the volume weighted average price. Also, it was kind of the bottom end of this VWAP hold range. And this is what I mean by that. So look at this over here. So you have this hold here at VWAP, holding, 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 right? You come back into that level and reject. So it's nice when they flip resistance, oh, sorry, support becomes resistance and got short on this, doing well on this one. Uh, let's see if we can get a bit of a bigger move down into that quarter dollar, maybe a fifth of a dollar on AMZN. We'll have to wait and see. This one was a strong one on the day. I don't know what's going on with it. And now it's getting a little weak. So that's too bad for it. We'll uh, maybe we'll sit at the quarter dollar. So I'll sit here at 25s in case, uh, you know, it comes down there and I'm not noticing. But yeah, nice big red candle there. Got stopped at Apple and I'm a little annoyed by that. I want to get right back into Apple here because I still feel the trade is valid uh, at these levels. So we'll see. We'll look to get short Apple again here because I feel like we are wicking through the uh, VWAP area, but it looks like we are rejecting that VWAP area. So short Apple again. Let's see if I can get a good, a better print. I was about to say gooder. Uh, a better print on uh, AAPL. Here comes one and a quarter, sorry, that quarter dollar level on AMZN. So if it crosses that quarter level, we shall get filled. Uh, 26 is showing up on the bid. We need 
you know, 25s or 24s or something thereabouts to come to cross because we have to cross over uh, and then we'll get printed there. If, if we get printed, we'll have to wait and see. AAPL, where are we here? Okay, so all right. So Apple coming into that 170 area again. I guess decisions to be, no, I'm going to let Apple cook here, do its thing. Apple, mm, I know, I heard it. <laughs> I promise you, I heard it. I didn't actually mean to say it that way because I know you I, all I hear is these like high school kids at the gym that I, because you know I go to the gym right after work. And so they yeah. always come after, after school as well. So like, yo, I was cooking, bro. I, I cooked on that, bro. So I hear that and then you just, you know, you absorb it and you start saying it. And it doesn't sound that good, but Yeah, anyway. kids, kids at the gym are like, one of the most specific <laughs> types of people. All right, I'll we're put printing here. Sorry, I got into Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, on AAPL, nice breakthrough 171. I knew that this was the right trade, but we're going to get it cut up on it. This is a VWAP rejection, but you're not going to get the exact rejection. You're going to get these wicks here and there, and that's just the nature of the game. So it got right back in, and it's paying the price, baby. Nice. On the way down, 25 pennies in the money on AAPL here. I'm going to let this one go. I covered whatever uh, I had left on AMZN at the quarter dollar. Please, with that trade as well, let's see if Apple can Tim Cook. Yes, I like that. That was intentional. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very happy for you that you got um, that that Apple trade. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> live entertainment TV live. I love it. Um, it's very bullish on that saying. Let them cook with 10 million O's and... Um, a plethora of 100 <laughs> emojis. Big Kyle Burdett. I can see you at the gym giving, the, uh, giving them youngsters lectures on whipping the equipment off and what the best TikToks are. Bro, I can't tell you how many of these kids I have to yell on a monthly basis. Stop dropping the weights. They're not for you. They're not yours. And it's very distracting to people who are doing real exercises and who are trying to concentrate. <laughs> All right, I am. <laughs> I am. I'm doing the real exercises. All right, covering here on Apple Adair. Yeah, I'm covering yeah. here on NVDA as well because this market had a nice little pop and I want to take advantage of it. And I think we might, uh, NVDA might have a little bit too much of a bounce. If we get below that 905 nicely, I will be getting out here. I think the thing is too is I just should have had a beak wet already. I just not prepared for that big floosh that we had in the market to the downside. But that was, that, was a, that was a fun one. I have to say I was a little bit invigorated and not at all my type of trade because I know some people in the chat were, and I think understandably, kind of like, oh, like this NVIDIA short looks like it could be a little bit dicey. There were, you know, we did have this really hard time getting above that 90 MA. Some people were also pointing out these lower lows with a flat top. And yeah, I mean, I, I do see all of that. And that's why I wanted to get out here. I honestly should have had a, a, a gotten everything out at 905. Then we broke below. And I was like, you know what, Adair, you still have, you're not going to get 904s. And we still might get 904s, but I just wanted to get out because already this is not the type of, of trading I really like. We did have that bull pennant in NVIDIA. And if we pick back up here at 905s, I might go long, but I'm going to want a lot of confluence. Shout out to, to Obi there if I do decide to, to go long on this. But yeah, pretty happy with this trade. Also, I took the cues short TQQQ. And uh, we just took this really on a range basis here. I like the top. I got out when we had that that bottom of the range. We did break lower on that nice swoop down in the queues, but still happy I got out. Tesla also, a little bit of a short opportunity. Showed it again to Willis Addison, um, killing it there on those Tesla puts with that super chat earlier. So shout out to you. This 177 area, or no, eh, 176.80. We try to pop back into VWAP and VWAP, and Tesla are not besties. We have, they're not Besla. Yeah, that didn't work. Uh, we had these uh, failed kind of wicks here into 177.10, and then nah, -uh -uh, we continue to fall to the downside. I don't want to say flat bottom break, but we do have flat bottom and lower highs, so I'm seeing some of the makings of that. Also, very happy you got out of NVIDIA when I did, because NVIDIA popping back up here. I, like I said, I have no qualms about a 905 long, but I want to be cautious before I get involved, because honestly, like, I feel with NVIDIA, you know, Neil says wait in the back end, and I, I, do, I do agree with getting it in the back end for sure. You want to make sure you have that confluence. But sometimes with stuff in video, if you get involved mid-time, the mid, midway through the move, it can get, um, you can get a little bit, bit hairy, at least for myself, because I do not have the experience to kind of understand the timing as well as I would like to, right? So I do want, I want to be cognizant of this. I, if NVIDIA bounces off that 905 again, that's something... I would probably be interested in. But this Tesla short here, testing that 176 bottom, is interesting to me. Um, the TQQs.
trying to recover a little bit here uh -oh. at that 161.69 uh, is interesting to me. But yeah, I have to say, pretty proud of the NVIDIA trade. And I'm not going to try to trade my PNL. I'm not going to like hold off just because we had that trade. Because honestly, like we didn't have that many shares on it. But I'm proud of that trade. And I'm going to use the way I felt in that trade to motivate me for, for hopefully some, some more cool positions. Because I was... Pretty pleased as punch. Uh, Louis Tortoro saying, be cautious with stops to me. And I totally agree. My biggest issue, too, is I find I actually give myself not enough room with my stops. I'll have them way too restrictive, and then it, it won't really work out. That's a hell of a trade, though. Thank you. That's a hell of a trade because it was a predefined range, and you yeah. stuck to your guns. I mean, how many times are we going to bounce off this level? And I know you're on the TQQs, but obviously we know what's yeah. moving the TQQs, and it's, uh, it goes by the name of the NQ. Look at this. You bang on every single time it bounces off pivots here. And then, yeah. excellent trade, Adara. Thank you very excellent much. Excellent trade. And you know what? This is kind of like the nightmare scenario for the wick shimmy dance analysis. Because yeah. what we look for, in, especially, well, not after an entire day of trading or an entire morning of trading, but initially when we reclaimed 500 from the north side and we started bouncing off 500, I'm like, okay, great. We're doing the wick shimmy dance from the north side. This is gonna be a long. And then you get this bamboozlement to make you feel like you're on the right track. Okay, we defended 500. We're, we're popping up into almost 18, uh, 18,550. Not exactly, a 38, obviously. And then the big boy, Hwadum, came and then we really ranged here. So this is kind of, uh, the, the, I don't know, the antithesis of the wick shimmy dance, right? I mean, this is kind of going to put you uh, broke if you were to use the wick shimmy dance in this particular yeah, the Yeah, they're dancing too hard. <laughs> they're like, they need, you know, like they, I don't know what they're doing, but they're like at a saw cop or something or a prom. I guess, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have saw cops in like Toronto or America. Hmm? Like that? saw cops. I don't know what that is. Okay, it's like this type of dance that I think now I'm realizing only exists in the 1950s or Winnipeg. Okay, but it we was need like, to Google this. Oh, we need to Google it's this. Not specific, it's not like, it's just more of like a, a, a type of event. How do I spell event. it? Um, S-O-C, I think it's S-O-C-H-O-P, sock hop. Is it one word? No, it's two no, words. No, it's two sock words. Hop? Yes, oh, sock hop, there you it. go. All right, Graham, ma'am, don't put it yet, right, because you know. It could... We don't. <laughs> All right, char, char. <laughs> we don't dance like this, but it's like this type of thing where you go in like a gym or a basement. Right. And you um, you dance. So yeah, I just I, I, I guess it. that's the wick shimmies. They're dancing. I like think a I know hop. exactly what you're talking about here. I just I don't know the word. Yeah. Well, uh, we I don't, don't do like these types of dance, but right. it's more like the the, the type of. <laughs> Hold on. Is wait wait Ram Ram. We have to confirm. It's like younger it. kids too. This is the type of. Is yeah. this it? Well, we don't dance like that, but it's like the, the whole idea of a saw cop is very <laughs> much antiquated and it's stuck in the 1950s. Okay. Well, it seems like they're having a great old time. They're having a great time. Yeah. Seventeen. Is that seventeen magazine? What's going on? Uh, I, we, we don't. <laughs> Jag and, and uh, what's his name? And Josh are chiming in back there. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm sorry. We're having but yeah, a good sorry, time. sorry. But anyways, that's what, I guess that's what the wick shimmies are doing. Yeah, They're having like a good time tangoing. They're a little bit too lost in their own sauce of having um, mm -hmm. their dancing time. Yeah, shout out to OB on, on the NQ there. But yeah, I mean, in, in NVIDIA, I don't want to get back in this range because okay. I feel like we're getting tighter. I am happy. I'm happy with this short, though, and I don't want to do anything to, to jeopardize the feeling. But I want to use the feeling of that and the TQQ trade to motivate me for um, hopefully so, some more wins. How are you doing over here? Uh, good. I'm reading what people are saying in the chat. Why is it depressing, Tammy? I think it's okay. You know, they're having a good time. Maybe we <laughs> don't really like their style anymore. But Big Kyle, that video definitely lacked diversity. Yeah, well, whatever. It's all good there. It's like the 50s. Old Canadian show, says Ron Miller. I don't know. if that is that actually an old Canadian show? I don't show? know. I don't Neither think so. Do it's I. probably yeah. American. Yeah. That's very interesting. All right, guys. Let's get back in some trading here. Let's see what's up. Guys, Meta is awfully weak. Oh, my goodness. This is what we... I guess the NOS boss would call a round at top because, you know, you got a big boy, Hwadunk, right at the bell. There was like no ands, if, or buts about that. But then you look, you get that big bottoming tail candle and a plethora of green candles to follow. So you're like, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll have uh, a retracement back into 494. Yesterday's closing prints are there about. But no, it does the dance with no pants with that 20 period moving average. Look how many times it rejected the yellow line, the 20. That's why I say, you know, put them out there. Put your indicators out there. See what that instrument is jiving with on that particular day. It's not always going to be the same thing. One day it'll have respect for VWAP. The other day, maybe it's the 50 or the 200. Put them there. See where uh, what's uh, what's 
you know, working on the day and then use it. Now this one I completely missed. I gotta tell you the truth. I did not notice this at all until uh, ex post facto, after the fact. So we'll have to wait and see if we make it back into the 20 period. I'll want all the smoke on that one. But uh, yeah, something tells me maybe we're headed lower here. Now did we print a new low of day? Technically, what was the low of day on this candle? 485.80, that's the IB low. Shout out to Dan the Man Emmons. And then we printed here, 485.75. So we broke it by five pennies. So we did make a new low a day. Um, now let's see if we continue to print that way, We're getting a bit of a doji handle here, but not too much, make too much of that. Let's see what else is popping off. Holy cow, everything's super consolidated. You can tell a lot of these traders took a, a long weekend or a little bit early. Let's flip back to some of the small cap gappers, see if they're doing things. All right, CERO has been, I look, I. I I'm really reluctant to trade this name. I don't like the range per candle on this name. I hate this top waking candle. What I do like is the fact that it is absolutely magnetically retracing into the volume weighted average price. On every retracement, it does seem to be respecting VWAP for whatever reason. I'm talking about CERO. It's up 56 points on the day. It's at the half dollar right now, and it is continuing to stay above the volume weighted average price. HOD. 284. I gave you guys deets on this earlier. I'm going to repeat it. $38 million market cap or thereabouts. And the float is minuscule. 539,259,000 share float. Let's check trade ideas and NOS boss's crew to see if there's any short float on this thing. CERO is a ticker. Let's go, bro. Uh, no, no share float there, and the float uh, is a little different than what I'm seeing. It looks as if uh, Trade Ideas has it at nine and a third million. Let's go ahead and look at the daily to see if they did a split here, because sometimes there's a bit of a variance because of the split. No, it doesn't seem like they split at all, so unusual stuff. All right, well, whatever. Let's pull up uh, CER on a trade screen here. It behooves us to do so. It does. It does. Right? A good word. Word of the day. <laughs> We could hit it, um, but uh, I think we've used it. Maybe maybe we'll save it for a different. That's true. We gotta CDR. we gotta give it some time to percolate. Right, yeah. all the words. <laughs> percolate wins, says uh, Ram Ram. Uh, I don't know. I think percolate's okay. Uh, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep eyes on this because it, right now it's holding up at VWAP. Uh, what's the spread on this? Now I'm looking at a six penny spread on a two dollar two dollar name. That's awfully ugly. Look at this. So guys, when you see the green up here, that's level one. Sometimes it's not gonna jive with the first line you hear. So you see on my X, how it says 245, and then there it said 244. Right now it's a two penny spread, that's not bad. I saw as high as seven. So the you know the spread does open up a little bit on CERO. How many shares has this thing done? Seven million on a $2 name, and it's almost uh, 1215. Oh, crap, I forgot. We have a lesson to do. Uh, but I got signed out, so I got to sign back in for all this stuff. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, that's not what I want there. All right, we're going to restart the lesson, guys. We've been talking about uh, continuation breakouts all. Um, we're talking about today. We've been talking about break, breakout trading all week. So let's get right into that, Ram Ram. All right, continuation breakouts. Imagine driving down a highway. Sometimes you hit a rest stop to catch your breath, but then you get right back on the road, continuing on your journey. That's kind of similar to continuation breakouts in trading. Uh, let's explore how uh, to help identify when the prevailing trend might pick up steam after a little bit of a pause. And that's what we're talking about today. So the trend is your friend. Bracket, sometimes. So technical analysis, as we all know, relies heavily on trends, right? Which are essentially what they are, sustained movements uh, in, a, in price in one direction, okay? But trends don't always go in a straight line, sadly. It'd be great if they did. Sometimes the market enters a period of what we call consolidation, where the price moves sideways within a defined range, as you saw Dara taking there on the Qs. That's exactly what we're talking about, okay? This is where the continuing continuation breakout comes into play. And so let's talk a little bit about that. The power of the continuation breakout. So a continuation breakout occurs when the price decisively breaks out above or below a consolidation pattern in the direction of the prevailing trend. So it's incumbent upon you in these circumstances to look at what the preceding trend was on the name before the consolidation happened. So when we move sideways, what were we doing before that? Were we coming down 
or were we going up? And try to look for the general trend. Sometimes it's going to be zigzaggy and you're not going to see a discernible trend preceding the consolidation area. In those cases, I would suggest you to you know, not take the trade on this basis. So an upward trend. After an upward trend, there's a period of consolidation. A breakout above the resistance level of that consolidation uh, suggests that buyers are in control, potentially leading to a continuation of the uptrend. I'm going to show you an example in a second. Downward trend, conversely, same thing, but in the opposite direction. Following a downtrend, a consolidation area will occur. A breakout below the support level of that consolidation area indicates that sellers are regaining strength and it, it's hinting at the continuation of the downtrend. Thank you, Adira, for adding these in. Perfect example here. You've got an uptrend that precedes the consolidation. So you need to look at the trend preceding the consolidation, whether for a long or a short, all right? And then, more likely than not, okay, the, it will continue in the direction of the trend. It is not foolproof, it is not 100% accurate all the time, but the chances are that it continues in the trend. Now, this is an example of a downtrend. We had lower lows, lower highs, then we had a period of consolidation with that 91 and a half acting as a top, 90, let's say 91, uh, or yeah, 91 and a quarter maybe, acting as a bottom, and then Huadunk went the dynamite and we broke the low, all right? So that is exactly what we're talking about there. But not every pause actually means a change. So you saw Adair in a, in a great range trade today on the T triple Qs. Does that mean by necessity that it's going to have to break out or break down below those levels? No. It could range for the, until 4 o'clock and it could be that way. I'm not saying it will be. I'm just saying that there's no necessity to break above or below the, the range, okay? So while continuation breakouts can be powerful signals, it is important to remember that not all consolidations lead to trend continuations. Here's how to be a more discerning trader. Look for volume confirmation, right? I've been mentioning this a lot on uh, both the breakout trades uh, this week and uh, the, uh, the range trades prior to that. You're looking for a good amount of volume to accompany the break of the consolidation area. That's what you're looking for. High volume in these particular circumstances suggests more conviction behind the price move, increasing the likelihood of a real continuation, okay? And time frame matters as well, right? The time frame of the consolidation pattern can be relevant. A longer consolidation period might precede a strong breakout move. And here's, and I wanted to mention this as well. So look, look at this area over here. So imagine we didn't have just two touches at these tops. We had six or seven. I would say to you, I would suggest to you that a, a consolidation area with six or seven touches at resistance weighs more in my book than one with a couple of touches. That may not be accurate every time, but for me, that's what I'm looking for. How many times has the market tried to break it above that level and failed, right? That shows you the consistent uh, belief in the sellers or the short sellers at that level. And so that, to me, weighs a lot. So not just the time period at which it consolidated, but the amount of times that it touched that key resistance level, okay? On time frame matters. And this is an example of the, the break on volume over here. So there you go. You have this obvious top here at around, what is this, the Dow? No, there's BTUSD, thank you. Um, I just thought 30,000 was the Dow. Yeah, right? that would make yeah. sense. Yeah, but 30,000 was the price of Bitcoin. It's crazy. Yeah, like half the price now, it's crazy. Um, anyway, so you get that big breakout on volume. That's the point of ex explaining uh, that chart right there. Now, capitalizing on the move. Once you've confirmed the continuation breakout, right? So you have that trend that preceded con uh, consolidation, and then you actually have the consolidation itself within definable levels, both high and low. Now you actually have the breakout. Here are some tips for entering and exiting the trade. So we talked about your entry strategy all week. You have two options for a breakout trade. The first I would suggest to you is to actually take the breakout of the level. So if we talked about Apple having that $200 level or Nvidia having that $1,000 level, you could be sitting there at $1,000 and one penny or $200 and one penny. So once it breaks through, you get filled. All right, so you get the best price. That's the pro. What's the con in that situation? You subject yourself to a false breakout. 
you, because you haven't confirmed that that 200 level is gonna actually hold now as a level of support or that $1,000 level on Nvidia is gonna hold as a level of support. You're gonna guessing that you're getting the break, you haven't gotten the break before and you think it's gonna hold this time. You subject yourself to false breakouts. The other school of thought is you allow that $200 level to go, that $1,000 level to go and then you wait patiently for that retracement to retest the level of uh, 200 or 1,000. I gotta, t I gotta tell you guys something. This doesn't always work. I'm long Caterpillar from a long time ago, all right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say where I'm long, but it broke through 300. Right, I wanted to add more, okay? So I said, look, 300 was an obvious top on Caterpillar going back almost a year. And it broke through 300, it never came back to test 300, it came close, 310, I don't, I don't even remember exactly, but it never came back to 300. I had a resting order to add more shares on 300 and it never came back. So if you choose to take that retracement entry strategy, you may miss the trade or you may have to get in at a way higher price later on. So keep that in mind, okay? Stop loss orders. Always use a stop loss order to limit your potential losses. For bullish breakouts, your stop loss should be placed above, or sorry, below the broken resistance, right? For bearish breakouts, place it above the broken support, all right? Profit targets, much of the same thinking. If you're long, obviously, there's no, it's a blue sky setup on Apple above 200. It's a blue sky setup on NVIDIA above 1,000, so there's nothing to chart, but they're not all like that, right? So if you're along a stock through the break of a range, what is the next resistance level above the level that you got in at? You should be taking profits there. Conversely, if you got short, say the 165 breakdown on Apple, which we know has been a level going back to October, when you take that 165 breakdown short, where are you covering profits? You're gonna have to chart. Where is the next support level on Apple below 165? You should be taking profits there. So that's, that's a look there. And thank you again, Adara, for adding that bad boy on there. This is a bullish rectangle. You have your stop placed right below that and there's your breakout level right there. And remember guys, Continuation breakouts are probabilities, not guarantees. Make sure you do your research and never invest more money than you can afford to lose. And I just wanna you know, kind of compare continuation breakouts. Uh, you know, essentially, they can be valuable tools for identifying potential trend extensions by understanding how they work, using confirmation techniques, and managing risk. You can become a more informed trader and trade these a little bit better. So yeah, give that a shot. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for going over that that lesson there, um, Sharif. And I think one thing, too, I want to say with regards to, um, I, I just have, you know, a real-life example in the wild um, here of how things can break down at any moment, but also they can't. And this is kind of a weird analogy. I, I don't know how to do this transition. Let's talk about AMD. Because this is an example of me, like, honestly psyching myself out of a trade. We, we did make about 10 pennies on this, though, but the initial plan, we still would have been out of it, but we were trying to make, like, 30. Let me, let me explain this. I got involved in this long here because look at how many times we failed to break below this 181 area. This line should be slightly higher, but, yeah, this, look at this 181 area and how beautifully it holds, right? Like, we have these continued wicks down into it. We test it. We hold it. We go back up. So that's why... In addition to the range here, and that was also why I wanted to get out at that 180, 160, 180, 170 area, is because we had a very clear, defined, and beautiful range on AMD. And then I get in, and we're taking our sweet time at 180, 130. We're having a really hard time breaking above. We test. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we do have this nice bounce off of that 181 area, which should have been reason for me to stay, because my, out was gonna, my stop was going to be if we broke below 181, but we really didn't. I ended up psyching myself out. I took 10 pennies, and the second I get out, this thing blasts about 50 pennies, right? So the point I'm trying to make is, even though I was I was discouraged, we were taking our time, I really should have been patient and stayed in because I had no reason to leave the trade. We didn't break below 181. So I know I sound like kind of, you know, a little bamboozled here, but I really am. But as Sharif said, you're always going to be angry as a trader. I can't be too upset because I did make some profit on this, but more I'm just upset at myself because I didn't adhere to my own principles. Do you know what I mean? My, my principle said, Adara, you get out if it breaks below 181, and it never did, so why did I leave where I left? But that's okay. Where's the next trade, as Obi has been known to say? And honestly, I'm going to use this as a learning opportunity. AMD, you will not AM destroy me. I, I am the master of my own AM destiny. And I did psych myself out of this trade, but there's always going to be 
more opportunities on the horizon. And if we reject this 182.18, that means the range is still alive and well. I'm going to take her to the downside. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my only trade I've had this whole time. AMD and the emotional reckoning. That was AMD. NVIDIA's getting, honestly, more and more rangy. I did take another 50-penny scalp off of this earlier at that 906.50 area. I, I, uh, part of me is tempted to get back in, but the other part of me is like, Adara, NVIDIA is, is literally dancing with danger. But if we stay below 907, I do think there's still some fun to be had in the short. Shout out to anybody who's involved in this name, because I think there are opportunities to go long here on some scalps as well. Uh, not advice, just, just my take on, on this chart, but I do think the shorts seem to be winning out. We just did dip below, or dip mm. above, sorry, that 90 MA. So could there be a turning here in NVDA? We'll have to wait and find out. But yeah, this is an interesting one. Microsoft looks like there could be some opportunities as well, range-wise. But yeah, AMD... Trying, trying not to get um, too hung up on that one because we did win. We just, just a little. Honestly, I'm less upset that I, I, I got less than I wanted to, and I'm more upset at myself for not sticking to my principles. Yeah, I hear but you. There we go. Yeah, how, yeah. how are you doing? Good. I'm looking. I just went over to talk to Obi about Amazon, and I was talking to Big Kyle about it as well in the chat. And the reason I was looking at Amazon at these levels is because we came into yesterday's closing print, and uh, we started doing bottoming tail candles there, which means, you know, typically means buyers. Uh, like this level and you know usually we have a lot of uh, not a lot sometimes we get support at, at the previous day's closing print hence why I chart it but it's not you know a line in the sand by any means I mean, it's going to have to prove to me that it is going to be a level of support right now it's dancing with it the closing print on my chart is exactly 179.82 so we're right there, we're printing right there at the moment. It's gonna, you know, I personally would rather wait for it to hold that level, prove to me that it's holding that level and then print and close above 180, which it hasn't done since, uh, well, this candle over here. Well, this candle over here, actually. This one tanked. So keeping an eye on AMZN, not one that I typically trade all that often, but uh, I like the levels for it today. Wow, Meta, man, Meta he just keeps going down. Uh, Apple very much has become a range trade, a little bit above VWAP, a little bit below VWAP. And ever since around 11.45, so we're going on 45 minutes or so with that 171.18 or 20 to the top side and essentially that 75 penny area, 170 and three quarters to the downside. It hasn't decided what it wants to be when it grows up, as Adara <laughs> likes to say sometimes. You know what I mean? Like it hasn't been breaking above that level or breaking below. So Apple dead money on the day and we, we often ch uh, chuckle and call this one the dead one, and it's been doing that uh, lately. Oh, who is messaging me? Brendo. Okay. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll I'll keep looking. All right, let's see what else we got uh, here on the future. Okay, so the future now coming down into that lower end of the range. So this is interesting. So you saw Dara take that fantastic trade on the T triple Qs. It was, uh, I think she took it short, but this is exactly kind of the same thing. We come into these levels, 18.479, thereabouts, and then we seem to find support at that uh, four and three quarter level, 400 and three quarter point level. So we'll see whether or not we get a move right back up, but it's been super zigzaggy on the future on the day, not really surprised by that given that tomorrow's a holiday and we have an extended long weekend let's flip to tesla let's see what tesla is doing it's putting in higher lows that's what it's doing so put 179.70 as the low and then for whatever reason here we defended 176 quite well and we've been putting in higher lows and higher highs uh it, that is if we can break and hold above this 172.82 so not a bad look here on tsla obviously sold off aggressively today but yeah, keep your eye out for the weekend, I think, maybe, or even Monday, as Tesla will de uh, report deliveries for the this past quarter. Let me just look at my blotter, see if I can tell you exactly when we are expected to deliver deliveries. Let me type in deliveries. Oops, I typed it wrong. Uh, yeah, okay, well, maybe I'll look at that a little bit later. But yeah, keep eye on Tesla here. It looks like it's, you know, trending quite nicely off the bottom there, above two and a half bucks or two bucks off that bottom on TSLA. So not a bad look, not a bad look. But uh, yeah, what are you looking at over there? Yeah, I'm in this. I'm back in AMD. We're going we're gonna to master our own AM destiny and take this like it. bad boy short here to use a Sharifism um, that is sometimes used here as well, taking, <laughs> taking this bad boy longer short. So the, yeah, like I said, this range was still valid and I psyched myself out, but no more psyching myself out. Swiper, okay. no swiping. 
Um, apparently, we're quoting Dora the Explorer. But um, <laughs> yeah, if I want to see what we do here at 182.20 is the earlier pop. If we get above that, eh, I'm out. I have a profit taker set. 181.70. I have another profit taker set. 181.30 at the bottom of this range. I'm going to wait and see for a rejection of 181. If we get that rejection again, I will be going long. Just trying to take the bull by the horns. Uh, shout out to uh, the Breakfast Club. And just take advantage of these ranges as they pop in. Because uh, and thank you for talking about that TQQ trade. I, I really appreciate it. Because I think it, that was just an example, too, of having to be like, Adara, there's a range here. You like ranges. Trade the freaking range. And so, um, you know, just, just, you know, the snapshot of my internal monologue there. But you seriously, in all seriousness, you do sometimes just have to take advantage of the opportunities because if you don't, they'll just pass you by. And, and you know, as Eminem says, this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. And with trades, sometimes they'll come a little more frequently. But, but you, you know, you really want to make sure that if you see something you like, why aren't you taking it? And that's what I'm saying to myself, which is why I got into AMD. NVIDIA still really rangy, though. I'm a little bit tempted to dance with the devil, <laughs> um, whose name is NVDA. Uh, someone in the chat was saying, too, like, you know, like, like I guess asking uh, about the, the, the scalping, like, 50-cent moves and something like NVIDIA. I think it's a valid point. I think it's something I'm trying to think about as lo a lot, too, especially as I do, you know, consider... Um, like I said, I'm trying to go live at some point soon, so I think trying to be cognizant of that as well. But the thing is, I, I think, honestly, having those 50-cent scalps does help kind of alleviate some of my stress as a trader. One of my biggest issues as a trader is I do, as, as w has evidenced by that AMD trade, I'll psych myself out and I'll get out of stuff too early. So if my plan is to take it really, really small, I, A, feel like I'm able to negate some of the FOMO, and B, feel a little bit more in control. So I do need to obviously think, because I am still in the sim, think about how that translates with real money. But I think for right now, it's a strategy that I'm finding helpful. I like that. Uh, thank you, Jonathan Canny, saying uh, you would be a great freestyle rapper. I don't, I don't know about that, <laughs> but I appreciate that right now. I also appreciate AMD dropping to the AM downside. Ooh. So down. Um, how are you with uh, the your? Just got into the triple Qs as well. I'm I'm sitting here as well on Amazon, waiting for a dip trade. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to chase Amazon at these levels. If it comes down into the bottom end of the range here, we'll look to we'll look uh, to get in on AMZN. I really am staring at this 179.82, which is the the closing print for yesterday. I decide maybe it's not a good idea to uh, to chase this one through 180 in case there's a fake breakout here. So we'll keep eyes on that. We'll see what else. Flat right now on the T triple Q is looking for maybe a move up back into 18.5. We've been ranging, like I said, on the future in between, let's just say 18.475 thereabouts and about 18.520. Oh, hello. Don't you have uh, a segment to do? Yeah, um, money, talks. <laughs> money has a mouth and it, it speaks. It's like an animated uh, finger puppet named Money. Oh my god! I don't know. I that was really bad. I I was put on the spot there. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I mean not you. I, just, like, I feel like I put myself on the spot. That's all good. Yeah, because that's your segment. That's why you obviously oh, know. Yeah. That's why I did that. Apple's yeah. breaking out of the range for whatever reason. Finally, here, uh, have a look at this. Um, we were talking about Apple, you know, being definitely stuck within that range a little bit above VWAP, but a little bit below this, that, and the other. Now it's making its way into the 50 period. So it's above the volume weighted average price on two closing basis now. This candle and this candle. Uh, now it's looking at taking that 171 and a third possibly here as it makes its way back up uh, off the lows. All right, we're going to wet our beak here on uh, some. Uh, oh, wow. I almost put double the shares again, Adara. Oh, like no. Like I did yesterday. Yeah, I was telling uh, BPI and uh, and Raj and them today uh, yesterday that I I put or oh, Raj, sorry, <laughs> Jag, my bad, bro, my bad, my bad. I'm thinking of the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> he does no, he does watch it. <laughs> What's that? I was gonna say. Oh, that's yeah, right. that's why because he did. Yeah, Uncle Roger sat there. Yeah, yeah, I actually forgot about that. Um, I was telling them I put like double the amount of shares for NVDL today, so I had to uh, make sure I got out of that real quick. But we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. Sorry, Jag, my bad, brother. You know I know your name. Uh, <laughs> no, he's good like that. Not everybody's uh, not everybody's super sensitive. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so we'll see what we get here with these T triple Qs of there. You know, this would be a second, too, because I was thinking in my head, I was like, wait, is Raj back? Because Raj did used to sit there. And, you know, Raj and I would like, because I used to sit back there as well. So Raj would walk by and say hi and stuff like that. So I also, it took me like a couple seconds. I was like, 
But yeah, I know also too, um, in addition to the fact that Raj didn't used to sit there, Sharif does watch a lot of Big Bang Theory, so yeah. it's probably My bad. Um, a mix there. But yeah, uh, shout out to Jag and shout out to, to everybody in the back here. AMD, if you would like to, uh, you know, fill some jersey, that, that, that'd be great. We got um, a literal penny away from my out. I do want to scalp out some of this earlier than intended because look at this 90 MA bounce. Not something I want to deal with in my life. So we're going to have to change that a little bit. We're going to move this up um, a few pennies. I'm going to take out some of this early because I think we're trying to chop and turn for a move up. And as someone in a short, I do not like that, Sam, I am. AMD's moving so, up. Sorry, NVIDIA's moving up. NVIDIA's moving up. Okay, that's yeah. probably, you know, Neil mentioned too, sometimes you have to use NVIDIA as your future for these chip names. And this to me, like, the, the, if, my, if my chip futures are moving up, it's a little bit dicey for someone in a chip short. So I think I probably need to make some decisions here. Because you're right, we, we're coiling up here now on NVIDIA. Yeah. It's a, it's a little, little uh, move up here. So that's something I do need to be cognizant of. Also, Microsoft keeps doing its thing, 21, to the downside. Uh, this kind of kind of petering out here, almost a flat bottom, not a flat bottom break, but we certainly did have these kind of slightly lower highs with these giant candles. These are both bamboozling candles. You've talked about these big candles. Um, what do you, th there's something, you, large one? range candles. Th these oh. Uh, the range per candle. Range per candle. Yeah, I was big, trying to think of the words yeah, yeah. for it. I yeah, what thank you, mean. you. But yeah, the range per candle on Microsoft, this is a five minute, is kind of um, a lot. 420 to uh, 420 55. On a week basis, we get up to 420 80. So yeah, range per candle on Microsoft, a bit bamboozling. But if I want to range trade, there, there's maybe something there for me in, um, in MSFT. So I'm going to have to keep an eye, uh, a, a close look on Mr. Softy. How are you good. doing there? Yeah, still break even on this TQ T triple Q trade as we kind of just move sideways a little bit here at the low end of the range. It's I don't want to call it predictable range because the second I say that, it's going to tank on me. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what we get here. All right, I'm, I've got a beak wetter sitting at the three quarter of a dollar area. If we can move somewhere in the 18,490s, I think it'll trigger. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see here exactly what we get. But WP, WBP saying sounds like a rune. I think what you're referring to is my propensity not to get short so I don't have to uh, pay for short so that I don't have to uh, use them. And that's what he would say all the time. And there's plenty that I try to take from a rune. The Wick Shimmy Dance I've talked about, that was his explanation to me about that. It's not my own concoction. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff as well. He's one of the, you know, the traders that I um, definitely... Uh, you know, want to base, sorry, one second, uh, base uh, some things around. And did I ever tell you about the uh, Arun story? So I had ne never met him here. I would always see him doing the future on okay. the show, right? And then I saw him at the gym and I'm like, Arun? And he looked at me and he's like, who is this guy, right? I'm like, I'm, like, I'm such a big fan. I watch you every that's day so on the cool. show. I love the way you trade the futures, yada, yada. And then yeah, that's how we ended up being friends. And then I applied. I, I really? To be here. I did yeah, not like two know months this. Later, two months later, I applied to come here. So Arun, I actually met outside of um, of of the show of work. So that was, uh, was yeah, it was interesting. Sorry, he was. Uh, it was funny, like the way that him and I. Uh, he was just like, who is this stalker guy? It's like destiny. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> that's that's really cool. I had no idea. Yeah, he's a he, shout out to him. He, he lives in my area. We're trying to go to the gym sometimes, but his schedule is a little bit different than mine. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Look at this Amazon hold. Beautiful area, the hold at uh, the yesterday's closing print, man. I want, I insisted on the dip trade, and yeah, that didn't pay off for me. Here comes 180. It's printing a little bit above 180 right now. Let's see. It got, I think, it's a 180 and a quarter almost, right? So we'll see. Decent move here up for AMZN. I'm also seeing Apple curl up, Tesla's curling up. Even NVIDIA trying to dance with that 908, it's still stuck in a, in a range though. So we'll see if we get anything there. Nothing really triggering on the T triple Q, sadly, but uh, we'll pack our patience to see if we can kind of hold uh, this low end of the range. We haven't been above VWAP now for, I don't know, almost 45 minutes or so. So we'll see what we get here, Adair. Yeah, there's, um, I, honestly, I wish I could tell you guys that I've been looking at some stocks beyond <laughs> staring at the AMD book like a slightly, um, you know, upset individual, but no, I've just been, I'm joking, I'm not upset, I am calm, I just, you know, I'm staring at the book, and, and Neil said this before, and I need to not do this, he's like, you know, like, you always think if you stare at something, it'll make it move faster or in the it direction won't. you want, that's not the case, <laughs> AMT also is behaving really well, so I don't know why I'm putting so much pressure on this little stock, we've 
been within my area of, of entry, within 10 pennies of my area of entry since I got into this trade. So I don't know why I'm acting like this is like the hill I need to die on. Uh, you know, we're not AM dying over here. So we're gonna, gonna let, leave her be. Uh, because you know she needs some breathing room. She's not gonna. She's not gonna run. Just like, stare at her. You know what I mean. She's not. Or I guess drop because I'm in a short. But yeah, Apple is curling up. Also, I, I saw this earlier. I forgot to say anything. We were talking about Apple being the dead one, and then Ponzi Fonzi goes R.I.P. Apple with a little tombstone <laughs> emoji in the chat. So yeah, forgot to mention that earlier, but I really liked that. Yeah, Apple. This rounded bottom is is really. You you were an Apple earlier, right? In the long. Uh, was I? I think you were. Because you were Tim Cooking. my blotter. I think you were Tim Cooking. Yes, I was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm break even on it. Not nice. positive on it, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah but I, because I, I remember you were in it. I was like, oh, yeah. But yeah, we're curling up. This is not something I have any uh, vibes on, though, so I'm going to leave that be. Is the spy still rangy? Because I did have some meh trades on that earlier, but I'm always willing to uh, redeem myself if the stock will let me into the wing, ring. Now, nah, we're, we're kind of sloping down there, so not anything I want to get involved with. Okay. Microsoft kind of rangy. Yeah, if anyone sees anything that's that's looking nice and interesting, definitely let me know. It's hard on this holiday Friday. They were saying that to oh, yeah. Elon in the chat. Um, it's With these holiday Fridays, there's a little bit less like pep in the step of the market. You yeah. know what I mean? So you have to like squint to find opportunities, and then <laughs> you'll find like one or two, right? Tesla, though, if you want to reject here, it's a spicy short oh, at yeah. this 177.80. Um, Oof. I like this. Yeah. What are you? What are you looking at? Yeah, I was looking at Ciro, C E R O, going here, guys. What a nice hold at the volume weighted average price. I was hesitant to trade this only because of the way that it was ranging and the spread was tight. The liquidity is not great on it, but you can't discount the fact that it's held every single VWAP dip. The white line on my chart is the volume weighted average price. You know you. Didn't really have to give it too much room here uh, in order to, to get that VWAP dip. I mean, this is probably the worst area you could have got in. Uh, anywhere else, you didn't have to give it too much room. Here, you have to give it about 49 pennies. So, yeah, so you have to give it about 11 pennies, but that was just one one off area. Anyway, CERO doing well on the day, 65% uh, of the good. Who can complain about that? So we'll see exactly what we get on that. Maybe we'll, yeah, I'm not inclined to, to try and take this trade. Um, it's just, it's not to my liking. Anyway, keeping an eye on the TQQs here. I saw Tammy in the chat saying she was losing her patience with the TQQ. Tammy, are you long or short? Uh, also, where are you entering uh, exactly? Are you trying to play the range? Are you trying to uh, play the breakout? Let me know exactly what you're thinking there. And uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Big Kyle, roundy bottoms. <laughs> Joker. Shout out to Big Kyle Britta. I can't wait just to watch the Big Short on repeat all weekend. All right. Sounds good, Kyle. I mean, whatever you got to do to keep yourself entertained. Uh, shout out to Michael Burry. Uh, good movie. He, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it was a great movie. I haven't watched it in a minute, though. I got to tell you the truth. So maybe it's worth a refresh. Yeah, definitely still hanging out at the bottom end of this range of Dara on the future. So nothing really to report there. Let's Amazon continuing to go eight and a quarter uh, is where it's trading at right now. I'm really disappointed for myself for not having gotten into this. I went over, I talked to Obi. Uh, I, I should have been put in a dip trade before I did that. By the time I came back, it was already gone. Um, anyway, good good look here on AMZN. Let's see if it can curl back into the volume weighted average price. Well, hold on. Last time it actually rejected off the fifty. Let me just see quickly what we're doing with T triple Qs here. Nothing. Okay. Last time it just rejected off the 50 period moving average. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about there. Uh, last time we moved into the 50 period, we rejected off quite aggressively. It was this area over here. Uh, it didn't quite make it up to view up. And then we've been putting in lower highs and lower lows since. So Amazon, you know, to kind of continue with this uptrend, uh, it's got to make a higher high. And I would suggest to you that's going to be a re VWAP reclaim for that to happen. Uh, Tammy says she's long 61, 62. Where are we at here? 61, 62 on uh, the triple Qs. It rhymed. Yeah, well, you know what? You got a great entry there, it's Tammy. A great yeah, entry. you're you four pennies below me. You're you're chilling like a villain right here. I mean, I would I have my stop below the break of the low, so it's gonna have to hold up on the end. Otherwise, you know, we're just we'll look to rinse and repeat on uh, on a at a different price. But 
Yeah, I think you got a good price, Tammy. Just make sure that you know you've got this top placement and everything's kosher there. The boring man, Sharif Adera, what an MSTR tank. Got in for a bounce at 16.65 and managed to get out for 17.70. What a good Friday. No pun intended there. Shout out to you, the boring man. I haven't had eyes on crypto all day since I turned back uh, to big the BPI. I was like, what is your girl Mara doing? And then he, he used an expletive that I can't say. But, I think uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to BPI, Big Patty Ice back there. But let's look at MSTR. There was a short report on this one. Oh, was there? Yeah, Carousel Capital. Okay. Also, the name of this short report. Everyone always laughs because I get really into the name of the short reports. Um, but it was uh, okay. This one was the um, oh, what what do they what do they call it? Okay, long BTC short micro strategy. No one to H O D L. No one to F O D L. So it's a pun of no one to hold them and no one to fold them. Got it. Which is just I really like. I yeah. like it. There you go. Uh, oh, but yes, sorry. that's the short report on MSTR. Uh, which is that big move stop, to the downside. Sure. Also, AMD bamboozling me once again. This time we had a legit reason to leave where we did because uh, we did break above that 18220 area. Again, probably a bit of a conservative stop. Then the girl drops 40 cents. <laughs> MSTR. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 my bad. I didn't know you were th setting me up there. My bad. Yeah, MSTR, uh, Ram Ram, is doing a thing here. Tried to retrace back into the volume weighted average price. Good for you for getting it like that, boy man. That's one hell of a trade. Let's go. So we're going to spend the money for the boy man. That is one gutsy trade there on a very expensive, very volatile name. This thing has dropped how many dollars in one day? So on MSTR today, we're down $204. So we're down 10 and two thirds percent, completely counter market to actual crypto, to any of the mining. <laughs> Put it back. Put it back. No? Okay. Hey, Randy. <laughs> Randy. Randy doing things, baby. He doesn't just deal with cars. Randy, are you a foodie? He is a foodie, confirmed. Shout out to Randy, baby. What are you eating up there? Is it the uh, salad? Brisket. My man has got a brisket. Shout out to Randy. There he is. It's on oh. the Katina Man's Twitter. Anybody wants to see it? It's on the Katina Man's Twitter. Oh, did you guys go there. for the brisket? I guess so. I guess they went for the yeah. brisket, yeah. <laughs> Ram Ram's just trolling him. I like Shout the reality the TV Katina style, man. like yeah, shot, yeah. Paul Brassi shots of Sean there. And the Chilean <laughs> Nightmare is, uh, is controlling that uh, camera, by the way. This is great, eh? This is, this is how it would be if we actually had a camera like that with a cameraman. Yeah, that's like that. that it, eh? Yeah. That's fantastic. Start the is podcast, baby. It's time for the podcast. <laughs> I love working here, bro. Yeah, this is. It's good oh, time. Oh, brisket. Is that a brisket too, Katina man? Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, Sean. Enjoy, my friend. Never uh, a dull moment. Here. <laughs> what are you looking at over there? Yeah, no, I honestly, shout out to anybody who had that AMD short. I got out too early, but at least this time, unlike where I psyched myself out this first time, I had a reason to leave. My reason to leave was we got above 1D220. Are my stops still too conservative? Probably, um, if I'm being really honest, but I can't get too upset. I tried to get back in at 1D210 area. And we weren't able to get back in. That's okay. Congrats to anybody killing this short. Couple people in the chat here getting excited about that one. So, congrats to you. This is a really nice move to the downside here on AMD, as Sharif will sometimes call it. Speaking of AMD, let's look at his cousin. I'm joking; they're not at all related. But let's look at AMC. AMC. AMC with a 250 million dollar offering, I believe. Yes. Um. So. Uh, they said they entered an equity distribution agreement and may offer and sell from time to time Class A common stock of up to $250 million through an at-the-market program. So AMC is, yeah, I mean, it's a little, it's a little sad. Uh, we do have that sort of um, double top here at 390 and then these lower, you know, kind of lower highs, just kind of riding the 90 MA. Almost 23 million shares, though, 22.7 million shares uh, traded today. So lots of volume here in AMC, lots of attention here. But yeah, this uh, nice, nice little stutter step to the downside here. Uh, not stutter step, mind you, we did have that massive drop at first, but I don't want to call it a bull flag or bear flag, but we did have that massive move down and then some consolidation. 
Overall, weak look here though on this stock. Nvidia moving pennies, AMD trying to bounce maybe. Oh, AMD is not an NY stock, so. But um, but yeah, AMD, a little bit of a bounce off this VWAP, maybe. I'm not getting back involved in this. Brad Gober, I'm just going to take out some of these lines, there's way too many. Brad Gober was saying earlier, too, like, yeah, AMD's a really hard one. You have to time it perfectly. And and yeah, AMD, I, I like, if I, I honestly find it better with this name if I just scalp it on, like, a one-minute chart with, like, pennies. I think that's usually kind of the better look for me in AMD. So not something I should have tried. That's all good. Happy I didn't get involved in the Tesla short impetuously because Tesla continues to be struggling to maybe break above that 177.80. I love this as a double top, but Tesla was like, maybe I'm not a double top. I should have gotten in. Maybe, you know, we did have that move down, so maybe it would have been a good short. But the reason I was hesitant to get in the short in the first place, which is what I need to remember, is look at this very bamboozling candle. When we go to the upside, sorry for yelling that, but it was very bamboozling. We dip into that 176.80 and then close at like 177.80. So to me, this $1 candle, uh, it's, you know, it's not, the range per candle isn't bad because a lot of this is range per wick, but it still made me think there might still be some bullishness on the horizon in Tesla. Looks like we're trying to crack above 178. So I'll see here. I'm not against the idea of a Tesla short, but I'm also not like ever pro jumping into the Cybertruck without doing my D my due diligence, dotting my I's, crossing my T's, and checking in on my P's and Q's. So you have to do the whole alphabet before dancing with danger in that little Cybertruck. Um, yeah, AMD short is, uh, is, is, yeah, some people are saying AMD short's looking good. Yeah, I, sad I missed it, but I can't dwell on it. Where is the next trade? Well said, well said. Um, I was talking uh, to Phil back there. I won't give his full nickname because, well, it's a PG show. <laughs> Shout out to you, BPI. Um, but uh, anyway, he was telling me about his AMD trade, oh. building on your point. Uh, he, he took it. It was zigzaggy for him. He tried to take it long. He chased it, tried to flip short, and then it ended up zigzagging him out. So we were just talking a little bit about that. He it's telling rangy. Me, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, exactly. I mean, you love the range trades, but I think it's like the antithesis for a momentum trader because it keeps showing them things that they look for, but that don't manifest. That's hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, you just it's really tough to be like, oh, well, today is an absolute range day. I'm just going to range trade uh, and shut off my brain for momentum trading. It's easy that makes sense, and, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway... Thing. Uh, I had to take out a piece here on um, T triple Qs just because the range is getting a lot tighter and I feel like, you know, we're, we may be poised to break down here. So I, I took some out there just to de-risk and then we'll see what's good. Now, let's go back to AMZN because I've been really looking to get a dip trade off yesterday's closing print. And we got awfully close there. We dipped into 179.90. I'm sitting at 179.82. So, you know, you never, you, never, but I've, I've triggered dip trades before, but not yet anyway. So we'll see what we get on AMZN. I'm looking to defend quite nicely earlier. There were a lot of bottoming tail candles showing buyer interest at that level. Uh, that's, uh, that's kind of uh, the jam there. We'll look to play the range, if any. Now, Apple, we talked about Apple reclaiming the volume weighted average price, and it looked like, you know, it was going to print new highs then. It encountered a line known as the 50 period exponential moving average. And now it is having trouble breaking through the 50 period. So, uh, you know, eyes on Apple here, especially if we break through the 50 period, then I don't want to say it's a blue sky setup, but the next area of resistance is either this 200 period here on the five or the bottom end of the range, consolidation range in the pre. And that's at 172 and a third. We're printing 171 and a quarter. So if we break and hold above the 50, this could be an interesting Apple long. I'm really surprised that we're even talking about Apple long on the day, uh, given you know what's happened to this stock lately. It's being sued by everybody. Yeah. Everybody wants to get a piece. Right? You know what I mean? Like uh, the European Union, the Department of Justice. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe Egypt will get in on the action and start suing Apple. I have no idea. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's so <laughs> random. Yeah, I don't I know. Why not? Why but stop you're right. there? Right? You know what? You, you really don't know. Really no, happen, right? right? Everybody, well, let's be real about it. I mean, a lot of these governments are, are strapped for cash. They spend a lot during COVID. They need to recoup that, whether in the form of tax or what have you. Fines. It doesn't really make a difference. All right. We're coming into the lower end of the range here on the future. So my eyes are 
uh, fixated on this level on the T triple Qs. This is exactly why I got some out because I was worried you were at the lower end of the range for far too long here. Let's see if we can make a recoup. Yeah, I also am noticing the Thieves doing um, things trademark. So I want to see if we can get out. I'm joking, it's not trademarked. I'm saying weird things. If we can take 30 pennies on Tesla, I'd be pleased as punch. Really happy that I just took the move here. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I, I didn't want to be too impetuous, but at a certain time, nice. you have to get involved if you see something you like. We're really struggling with this 90 MA, though. Initially wanted to get out 177.41. We couldn't. We're going to switch to, like, mid-40s. I think that might be a better area. Also, now, with you saying, like, you know, everyone wants a piece of Apple, I weirdly have Britney Spears' Piece of Me in my head, which is the song that Apple is definitely singing. I feel like I missed something. Uh, yeah. People in the chat, like, I'm suing next. Oh, I'm yeah, coming for more that. money. Like, yo, Apple's giving it out. Apple's d doling it out. Yeah, on they're next, like, we'll right? take some. Yeah. I love they, it. Everyone wants, you know, some of what Tim's cooking. <laughs> they all want some of Tim's cooking. But yeah, so I'm um, shout out to Randy uh, and Sean with the actual cooking with their brisket. They did go. Sean uh, was talking earlier yesterday with Ra about Randy and brisket. Yes. And now Randy and brisket and Sean wow. have all come together. Um, to be you know, nice dynamic trio there, terrific trio. But yeah, Tesla, if you want to get back down to 40s, I'd be pleased as punch. And we could be punching out then, that would also be nice. Um, let me see here, some other comments in, um, see what else everybody is uh, seeing here. But yeah, um, yeah, GME Long says Sandy Beach. I'll look at this one. Also, shout out to Sandy Beach, Joanna Brewster, everybody else in the chat, short AMD. You, you guys are in the dollar club for that one if you got involved in that 182. Um, congrats to you. So, okay, see what you mean on, on GME Long, Sandy, because this is one, two, three, five-minute candles of upside. I would be cautious, though. This one, you know, super down on the day, and the short float on this is pretty significant. GME is kind of known for a, sh a short squeezes. So I would be uh, very cognizant of what we do here. That being said, areas that I would be looking out for for potential resistance – and again, not advice, just, just me looking at a chart. 1270, we had this little baby curl earlier, baby pause in the move down. That could be an area. That 1275 was a very weird flat little bottom. Tried to curl back up. With that in mind, too, you have 1285 and then 13. So always kind of looking at any areas. We have little pauses in the, in the movement down and say, hey, you know, like, where could be some areas? Because the support can become resistance. Okay. So all these support areas I would be looking at for potential resistance. On the move to the upside for GME. Tesla is still kind of doing nothing, which, you know, Tesla, if you want to I think out. it's curling down. I think you have a great level Thank there. You. This 178 ish level. Uh, it's an area that we obviously had trouble with before. All right, that's it. I'm going to get out of this futures trade. So I had a little bit left there. We'll look to get in if it comes back into that range. Uh, it's actually a profitable trade. Okay, not bad. Uh, now what I'm looking at is zero. So I put in a dip trade here at that 285 level on CERO. It is the 10 period moving average, but it also happens to conflate with this level over here, which we have, um, you know, a crest on. So this is an area, of previous area of resistance. If we come back, I'd like a dip trade at these levels. So we'll have to wait and see if it makes its way back below three. It's above three now, man. 88% to the good. Great look right now on T or C-E-R-O. So we'll keep eyes on that. But it's, it's going away from three. It's like up to 310. It's going to have to retrace a bit more aggressively. This is what I'm looking at at the five. This is the one over here. Oh, that's so nice. This is what I'm looking at. This is the dip trade right there at the uh, the uh, 10 period moving average. But I figured, you know, by the time it makes its way down there, this line will be a little bit higher. So that's why I put it there. But it also happens to have some confluence with this level over here. So we'll see if we get filled at 285. Uh, what else we got going on? Eh, small cap gapper is not really mu doing much here. Uh, NQES. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. We are at, yeah, the ES is closing print yesterday. We haven't traded the ES in a really long time. But we are at the closing print right now on the ES. So, yeah, we'll see if we get a range there. Wow, zero's going there. 316, it's really leaving me behind here. That's fine. We'll check to see what's going on. Yeah, I don't really have anything else at the moment. But, uh, yeah, what are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, um, NVIDIA, we, the, these, uh, these wicks here really did mess up my lines. I'm going to have to delete all these, these lines I drew in NVIDIA. I have a habit. I like drawing my micro ranges is what I call them. Um, and I think it comes from someone in the chat once asking, like, how is the micro range trading going? And then I was kind of like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to reclaim that. I'm going to call them my micro ranges. My micro ranges. But, yeah, so uh, my micro ranges have gotten a little bit, 
you know, th strewn up here. So I'm going to have to fix these. But we're still seeing that seven, 907 rejection on NVIDIA. That's the rejection I like. That's the area I've been kind of looking at all day. We did have this, um, I think this is like a $3 winner in the sim earlier today. Um, with the, the bulk of the position, not all of it, but we did keep some piece through the dream there at uh, nine, basically took it 908 to 905s, but I initially entered the position around 907.20s, right? So, so to me, that's an area I like. It's a friendly, familiar area, but beyond that, it just really is proving itself, so why not? Um, I did get out of Tesla. Tesla's bouncing back up. I was talking to Patrick Langlois about this. There's definitely people fighting on both sides, longs and shorts here, doing uh, put their dukes up, getting into a battle here at Tesla. <laughs> Tesla, look at these struggles with Tesla and VWAP. We've had so many, uh, we, these wicks now into VWAP, where the, the sellers are losing. They're taking the L. So the buyers are like, nah, -uh -uh. right at VWAP. Still happy with this. This is about a 30 penny scalp. I, I'm, I'm not going to be upset about this. You know what I mean? You have, to, you have to take the W's. And I think my biggest issues are when I overstay my welcome in trades. That video, I wasn't there a little bit longer, but I was like staring at the tape until my eyes bled before getting into that, right? It's a bit of a weird analogy. But I was really like focused on the tape there, right? So I was okay saying that a little bit longer, but I mean, with this Tesla, I was, I was pleased as punch to get my 30 cents. AMD, I, I, the biggest issue here is me working on my stop losses. If I had said this, like, like we literally got out top wick, and then she goes whoosh to the downside. Whoosh. So, um, yeah, whoosh. I don't know. But yeah, so I, I really need to work on having less conservative stops. Because even if I'd given it to this previous, I don't want to say shoulder, but that previous pop, into 182.35, I would have been fine. So there we go. I need to stop using arbitrary levels and use levels that make sense. We all need to be eating brisket. Well, honestly. With um, Sean and Randy. Sean looks like he's in heaven with his brisket, <laughs> and Randy is also <laughs> too much brisket. Really? Oh, he's getting tired. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is what, what I, I, I love being here. We, we, always oh, have yeah. a, we always have a great time, always <laughs> learning, loving, living here, but also... Speaking of learning, we have a lesson. Oh. Um, so. Forgot about that. Yeah. So, um, well, Randy and Sean ate. Um, we have Sharif and Hunt ate. <laughs> and I will be um, giving our last lesson of the day. Yeah, that wasn't, I just, I wanted to say it. Oh, so good. I'm just going to get the pun in there. But let's <laughs> talk about understanding, uh, understanding continuation breaks. So imagine you're driving down a highway, another you know, fun driving related analogy here in these lessons. You're driving down a highway, and then you sometimes you have to hit a rest stop to catch your breath. But then you're right back down the road, continuing your journey. You're down the road. Um, so this is kind of similar to continuation breakouts in trading. So we're going to talk about how these breakouts can help identify when a prevailing trend might pick up steam after a brief pause. The trend is your friend, sometimes. So technical analysis will rely really heavily on trends, which are sustained movements in prices, but trends don't always go in a straight line. Sometimes the market will enter a consolidation period where it gets a little rangy, chop and churnish, and that's when the price will move sideways within a defined range, and that's where continuation breakouts say, hey, look at me. That's where they come into play. The power of continuation breakouts is worth talking about. A continuation breakout is going to happen when you have a decisive break out of a consolidation pattern in the direction of the prevailing trend. Here's the breakdown of breakouts. Upward trends are going to be happening when you have this uptrend, a period of consolidation, and then a breakout above the resistance level of the consolidation. That just basically means you're going to have a potential continuation of the uptrend. Downtrend breakout, the exact opposite. You have a downtrend, then you have some consolidation, then we have a break to the downside Down. through support, which indicates that sellers are regaining strength and there could be a little bit more oomph in the downtrend. Here's an example of an uptrend. We have that uptrend, some consolidation, and then we break out above. Then uh, here's a nice example of a downtrend. This is actually um, USDJPY, so you could also do this with Forex, I guess. You have that downtrend, then we have some chop and churn. We break decisively below that. 90, well, let's say 91.25 area, swooped the downside, Ooh. the continuation breakout, and the downtrend does keep going on. But not every pause means a change. Continuation breaks can be powerful, but it's important to remember that not all continuations lead, or not all, cons not all consolidations lead to continuations. Here's how you can help be a more discerning trader, right? Because you can look for your volume confirmation. Look for a surge in trading volume alongside the breakout because high volume suggests more conviction behind the price, which suggests the likelihood of a true continuation or at least that we have a lot of interest at that level. Time frame also matters. 
the longer the consolidation period, the stronger the breakout could be. And Sharif's talked about this as well. The more tests you have of a level before you break out above it, suggests you could have a little bit more pep in your step Bang. when you do have that breakout. Look at this. This one, you have one, two, three touches of that 30,000 area on BTC USD. Remember the good old days? No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, we're well above 30,000 now on BTC. But it pops above. And now it has that viciousness that it can and kind of continue its move, right? So, and it does so with this massive volume. Look at this, the range on this candle with that strong volume. That suggests, hey, we're here to stay. Like Capitalize, that. Capitalize, thank you. Capitalizing Very on the nice. move is also really important. Once you have that, yeah, we're, we're here to stay. <laughs> Once you have that continua uh, confirmed continuation breakout, here's some steps for entering and exiting your trades. Some traders are going to want to enter right after the breakout. Um, and others are going to wait for a pullback where the price will briefly revisit the broken level before continuing its move. So this is going to offer a lower entry point, but it does come with the risk of missing the opportunity. Stop loss order is also really important. You might want to put these below your trend line if you're going to be bullish or above the trend line if you're bearish. Again, use your own stop loss. You know, you're going to want to come up with your own strategy, but here's just some tips, right, to kind of make sure you're mitigating your losses and maximizing your gains, which is what we want over here. Taking profits wisely is also really important. You want to make sure you're looking for those support and resistance zones based on the prevailing trend to clinch some profits. Here's one example, too, that, that I found here that I, I liked because it kind of shows some potential areas that you might want to be setting profit takers or beak winners. So you look for that low. Uh, that's going to be your low area. Then you have this rectangle. Maybe if you're trying to go on here, your stop is going to be a break below this earlier low. Then you have your breakout, and that's you know where you might want to have some entries and profit takers. So it's all planned and all, all figured out there, which I think is uh, very cool. Yeah, that's, oh, that's the, the last that's slide. The last slide. <laughs> Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I got <laughs> bamboozling myself. But yeah, you also want to remember that continuation breakouts are probabilities and not guarantees. You always want to do your due diligence and your research to manage risk effectively and never invest more than you can afford to lose. We're getting the old man finger back out. Yeah. Megan. Um, also, you might want to combine uh, continuation breakouts with other technical indicators like trend lines or moving averages to confirm the prevailing trend and strengthen your trading strategy. Like uh, the youth at Sharif's gym are trying to strengthen their arms. Yeah, um, you know, it's, they're more than welcome to do what, you know, ever exercise they want as long as it's just keep it quiet a little bit, bro. They're gonna. They do already film TikToks. Ram, ram. You're gonna come. Oh no. <laughs> no, you can't do that. That that's not good. Ram, ram. All right, we're we're long zero three oh one. We got some out already at three eleven. I was sitting there as a dip trade to defend that three, but I still like that two eighty five level. I've got negligible amount left on this trade, so I'm just going to let it hang uh, as it is. I had a really good trade already on HUD 8, but it's nice. coming right back into my level. I just want to see, I'm going to leave it a little bit here. I just want to see if it's going to defend the volume weighted average price. We're at that VWAP. I already have my 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 uh, stop below 55. Again, tiny little piece here left. It was more like I was going to add to this trade rather than uh, what take it out if it breaks that area because again it could be multiple touches at the volume weighted average price but if it breaks 55 that's where we have the double bottom over here and over here and i'll just end the trade there i can use the flat key so we'll keep eyes on that all right so zero didn't come in in my 285 so i'm holding a negligible amount here as it makes its way back into 310 but uh that's not the trade that i need concern myself with at the moment you need to keep eyes on hut and this one yeah okay so it's holding above that 1155 area or so it did make its way up almost into 80s it got the triple sevens there we're long 65 so if it breaks below 55 that's the end of the trade but it's putting them yeah it's putting in some lows here so now i'm seeing 55s coming in on the bid i need to see 55s on the ask and then i'll look to get out of this trade again very very small amount already took the majority of it out so uh this piece here was more like let's keep it to add to it type thing all right there it is we'll flatten out that trade now let's focus on cero this one now doing the dance in front of three got a little bit above three got the three and a quarter and so i set up my trade at 301 because it didn't look like it was going to come into that 285 area so that was my thinking i'm like look you know there, there's a whole dollar in front of three dollars maybe you can scalp something off that and then if it breaks down below three <laughs>
Love him. He's having a good old time. All right, let's go back and talk about this because we did break below three on CER. <laughs> you were pretending? I thought you were actually out, bro. Oh my God. Come on, bro. I thought you were resting a little bit, man. I got bamboozled we don't here. Sleep. We don't sleep around. <laughs> No, no sleep for the weary on uh, the, the the floor, baby. Guys, the um, the spread on CERO is opening up. It was like one or two pennies. Now it's four pennies on a three dollar name. That is not what you want to see. So the liquidity, mm, a little suspect at on this one. But I still like my dip trade at two eighty five. I'm leaving it there. I'd rather take a dip trade with full size and you know nurse this. Uh, with the tiny amount that I have left currently. Let's look at some Meg7 names now. We haven't been looking at them for a little bit. We've been focused on, on the small caps and that's all good. All right, what do we got? Do we get that Amazon dip trade? No, not yet. So let's flip back to AMZN here because that AMZN trade is still valid in my opinion. I think I'm just a little too aggressive though with my with my dip trade because we're putting in higher lows. Like I'm, I'm fixated at getting it at 179.82 because that's a closing print. But right now, you know, we're, hmm, interesting. Maybe this trade is no longer valid because we're making lower lows on the future. Maybe I need to be careful with this Amazon trade here uh, and what I want to get filled or not. So I'm sitting still at, at the um, you know, 179.82 area, but I'm starting to wonder if this is the right level to get in. Maybe I should allow it to come into that level without getting filled, watch for defend of the level, and then get in a little bit higher, maybe in that 180s or so. So I'm just thinking out loud here, guys, but you know, I, I feel like I missed the best trade on Amazon, which was that initial dip into the closing range. So uh, I'm gonna leave it be for now, and then uh, we'll figure out and see what happens. Still doing the dance here with CERO at the whole dollar at three. It hasn't made its way down at all into the 80s or even low 90s to get that uh, dip trade fill to defend this crest over here. That's a previous area of resistance, so we'll continue to watch that. What are, what are people in the chat talking about? I like that. Great work, guys. Adair Sharif. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Elon. Hi, Sharif. T on the T on the tear. Nice swing for you, as I know you like swinging. Come on. <laughs> Was that loaded, or do you actually mean swing trade there? <laughs> Let's load up the AT and T. I haven't had look at T in a while. Okay. What's the T on T? Yeah. What's the? There you go. This is why you're good at what you do, Adara. Thank you. Like, look at, look at this. We, yeah, you know, it's not the range that we like as a momentum trader, and you can tell it's very sparsely traded. Uh, but let me look at the daily, because you said something about a swing. Yeah, you know, off those July bottoms quite well. But yeah, at and is one of those ones where, you know, they just spend a lot of money. And yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Look, I'll have a look at that later. Thank you for pointing that out, Elon. Kyle Brudette, that is the kind of stuff we want to see. Hilarious. I think there, everyone's talking about the Katina man. Uh, um, Colin Clock and Tax. I like Adobe Long here. Let's have a look at Adobe. Why not? It's ADBE. And we'll flip to the five on Adobe. All right, so you like it. Okay, so it is curling. Okay, I see what you're doing here. You're getting it off 500. That's exactly what you're doing. Let me know if I'm, uh, if I'm accurate on that, but that's kind of why, why I see you're in this. It dips down 500 and a quarter, exactly to be 26, and now it's curling up a dollar and a half off the lows. Well, a dollar and a quarter off the lows. It's retaken the uh, 10 EMA on a closing basis, and now we're working on the second candle. You're gonna be really light on volume on Adobe. Kinda of goes without saying. But uh, yeah, this is a counter trend trade. It's not a bad look though. I gotta tell you, call it. I, I, coin? Yeah, coin, clock, and tax. I called him Colin. <laughs> I'm sorry, I misread that. The point is though, it's a counter trend trade, but I think you're getting it off a key level, that 500, the whole dollar, that $100 level, I should say, sorry. Um, so I think it is a sound strategy there with a good defendant. You don't have to give it too much room, re really. Just give it a little bit below five. So yeah, maybe we'll look at Adobe. Good look here. Roland Joe got faked out. I'm not sure on what you're talking about, Roland. Let me know. Uh, what else is below Roland? Um, Adobe, okay, he already said that. Day Trader Cut, what up, my man? Thank you for the $5 super chat. 
Uh, I'm finally able to donate again. Shout out to Bears versus Bulls for resolving everything. The world's greatest moderator is not just here to look pretty and to, uh, you know, occasionally uh, drop a hotline in the chat. This man absolutely kills it. He's the best around, and we couldn't be uh, happier to have him as part of our team. Shout out to Bears versus Bulls. Appreciate everything you do, because I know you say that to me, but I, know, I don't uh, say it back to you enough, so I want to say that to you live in front of everybody. Thank you for doing all that you do, my man. Uh, what's going on over there on your side of the screen, Adair? I see triangles. There are, there is a triangle. Yeah, I mean, shout out to, to yeah, shout out to Birds vs. Bulls. Honestly, always killing it. We really are so grateful for um, for everything there, uh, and because moderation is is very important. You have no I have to do everything in moderation, but also we need moderators to do everything. So, mm -hmm. so very appreciative there. Also, uh, the spy. I like this short here. I got involved. I should have probably waited for another test of that 523.17, but I like this. And um, shout out to Kyle Burdett here for pointing this one out to me. This previous close here, 523.17, right? So I think this is clearly a key area. We dipped into that below that 523 area. If we dip back below 523, I'm going to take out some profit here. I have enough of a, I have a hearty enough position that I feel comfortable depositing the shares there. So I, I like this. I'm pretty happy with this. I have to say, as long as we kind of stay, and I'm trying to use these levels uh a little bit more like on the book than what I see in the chart with the ETFs. I'm not always successful at that, mind you, but that's something I'm trying to do. So I, I would like to see that VWAP projection. That would make me please this punch, but also I'm trying to be less reliant on it because ETFs are going to do what ETFs want to do. We did just break above the, that area, so we'll be watching the tape to see what kind of vigor we get that move up, but I did like that nice little flush there on the tape. That makes me happy. So okay. happy with that. Uh, shout out to Kyle killing it on that short, I am sure. Also, Tesla. Let's see. Um, I am in Tesla. I'm back in the Cybertruck, and I'm Bang. really happy with this. Initially, I think the Adara of a couple months ago, not saying that I've like improved that much, but the Adara a couple months ago would have absolutely panicked and then moved down to VWAP. This Adara sees the bounce and adds some shares. Nice, so, Adara. Thank you. I, I was pleased as much. I was pretty proud. Uh, if Tesla wants to stay above that 90 MA, that'd make me even happier. But this is just a range play. I, I don't really know if we're going to get back above that 177.80, but I'm going to take everything out. Let's do 75, 76. Let's do 76. What's life with that whimsy? One cent is whimsy in my books. So there we go. Spy dropping back low, 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 low. So uh, that would make me uh, pretty happy here. I like that we're both in one long and one short. Yeah. I, I like it. We're, we're, li we're, we're living the fast life over here. All right. I'm taking profits here at zero at these highs. I'm happy with this trade. I didn't get the dip trade that I wanted at 85s, but it makes its way up into that, that quarter of a dollar. Now I have to worry about this AMZN trade. Uh, it looks like it's rejecting off the 10 period moving average. I tried to go long 180, but I saw a lot of selling coming in. So I like the short here, possibly as it curls back down. I could be a little bit late to the party. Uh, so I am a little bit worried about that. I'm going to give it to the top end of this candle. So I will give it to 180.11. So we'll see what we get on AMZN. But I'm really happy with this trade on CERO, especially because I was really hesitant to get into it. Again, obviously, you're always going to be mad as a trader. Just broke through the high again, got to three and a third now. But the whole idea here was, you know, to get a little bit more size at that 285, it just wouldn't give me uh, that move back down. So we'll have to make do with what we can get. But good trade on CERO now up over 100%. Wowzers. This one continues to pump to the high side. Um, taking a couple of beak wetters there. The first at 11, the second at a quarter dollar. But now we're going to have to keep eyes on this AMZN trade. Uh, because it is uh, doing the dance here with the whole dollar level. Adara. Ooh, Adara. I like that. Sharif. <laughs> Sorry. Sharif the No, I like it. I'm just trying to say Sharif the sheriff. Yeah, baby. You're going to be um, the sheriff of um, of the safari soon. Oh, I can't wait. You have I'm no so idea. excited for Sharif and his safari. And also, I'm very, you know, um, congrats on that zero trade um, from zero to hero. <laughs> um, but yeah, so ni nice look on that. We're going to try to, um, we're going to try to get some out here if we break below the 523 area that will be a profit taking area yeah i was just talking to kyle as well here who's been scalping this one um all day on the spy so, so nice look there but also uh he was saying that you know like he said good job identifying where your entry point could have been better and i, I appreciate that because it's one of the biggest things i've been trying to do is work on my entry points i am aware that my entries leave like so much to be desired. And I, I'm still not gonna get perfect, but I think working and, and being open and having, you know, these areas to reload just 
embedded into my plan has been really helpful. And that's why, you know, to flash to a trade from earlier, I was really proud of this NVIDIA trade because I got involved here. My initial entry point wasn't great. We did get involved initially, sort of these dark pool wicks here. Uh, we got, where we got, yeah, we got here at like that 907 uh, 20 area. That was my initial point of entry here, right? Then I was like, you know what, as long as we stay below 909, we're all good. Let's have uh, something ready to go at, at to add to the position at 908. So we did, didn't immediately set it, but we didn't break above 908, so I was happy to stay there. And then we dipped below and it ended up um, working out and I was pleased as punch, you know what I mean? So I think the, the point is, and kind of a, I guess, not super direct kind of roundabout way, is that I'm trying to have areas where I can like build on the trades, right? You have your initial entry point, but you have room to grow and, and room to improve from there. And so the spy entry wasn't great, but you know, it's just kind of about staying with it. We're not above it. We're basically at my point of entry. So I can't complain, but it would have been better had it been a bit more patient and waited for that nice drop. Also, Tesla's still dancing at VWAP. I have no reason to leave unless we have a decisive break below VWAP because look at all of these wicks down into VWAP. VWAP and Tesla are besties right now. Um, there are BFFs less. So I think that's not something I want to mess with. We are looking like we're going to test my patients there and break below VWAP, which is not anything I want any part of. So we're going to have to see what Tesla does here. I, have, I am happy I added, though, on that initial bounce. I just, and my initial entry point wasn't really good enough. Like, if I would gotten in just on that, that VWAP bounce, we probably would have had 50 pennies. That's okay. I can't dwell on what I could have done. Could have, would have, should have. All I can do is dwell on the trade that I had. Um, some AMDs mentioned here. Joe Schmo saying AMD is a great trading stock. It is. My timing on this left a lot to be desired. I psyched myself out here and got out too early before that nice little long here in the range. Then the short, I had a stop set way too conservatively. And so I missed that beautiful move down and got out a cool top wick on the short. But, you know, what are these if not learning opportunities? That's what I'm going to say here. Sandy Beach saying long AMD. I see what you mean. We do these slightly higher highs in the five minute, and there's certainly a bit of a range here at that 108, 180, 50. So best of luck to you there, Sandy Beach, uh, which sounds like a really great place to go on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Sandy Beach on this on this long weekend. But yeah, I mean, I, I happy with these trades, though I think I might have to hop out of the Cybertruck like a Jason Bourne movie <laughs> over here because I'm not loving what, I'm not loving, she's tossing me around a little bit. The turbulence in this car is a little bit much, so I think I'm going to have to say bye-bye to uh, the Cybertruck, but not bye-bye to the spy just yet. Sharif is singing a song, so it sounds like Amazon's going well. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's actually not. I was singing bye-bye Miss American Pie. But, oh, that makes know, more sense. Know, whatever. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, Amazon is starting to put higher highs. So if it breaks up a little bit more, we're going to get out of that one. Keeping eyes on Tesla as it's now making its way back down into the volume weighted average price, looking for a possible dip off here. But we're going to have to get out of Amazon here as it's just awfully strong. So maybe the initial idea was right, was to go long. So we'll keep eyes on that. And uh, what else we got over here? Not much going on. Not much for me. So, you know, we'll keep looking. Ba -ba -ba. What else we got? What else we got? Let's see if TSLA comes into that 177 again. Let's pull it up over here. All right, let's zoom out a little bit and bring in the side chart. Yeah, so 171, I said, sorry, well, I said 177. 171 coming in and breaking down now below the volume weighted average price. Not a definable level for me to get long or short in here, but you do have this obvious uh, higher low, higher low, higher low, but I think we need to retrace maybe a little bit more before we get involved in that. I really don't have anything else. Meta's curling back up now. Okay, so this is interesting. Now you're getting Amazon and Meta both curling up. You got Apple still looking short at this level. Tesla looking short a little bit. Google also putting a bit of a top here at say 150 and three quarters. So there is that. There's not much else for me to, to trade at these levels on the day. I, I feel like I feel like uh, this meta trade might be interesting here, curling possibly into that 488 and a half or thereabouts. It just broke through, let me pull up meta. It just broke through the 20 period moving average. So that could be interesting here on a closing basis, except, oh wow, these are wicks. I'll have to adjust these wicks. Obviously it's on the current candle. 
But uh, yeah, interesting look here on META. Now, if it rejects off the 20 period, that could be an interesting short down, maybe into 485. The Fuge still headed back down at 18460. I think Dan was saying something about, um, what was Dan saying? I think he was talking about his levels there on the Fuge. Let me go back and see if I can find it here. Up, uh, yeah, Dan, I'm still looking for NQ 18540 today. So, wow. Plus, so he's looking for a move back above the high of days because the, uh, the IB high right now is 18538. So that could be a really good look here for whoever uh, gets involved in that. All right, let's uh, see if we're going to go long meta here. Let's give this one a try, Adara. Yeah, meta's been, meta's interesting. I, when I initially got in, I was trying to take that short at uh, that break of VWAP, but I was not able to get filled. It went to the downside. Certainly that was a nice short, though, and I think that long is a beauteous look there. So happy trading. Two, three, I don't want to say good luck because it's not luck, but I will say happy trading. On that, I did take out um, a, a very specific amount. We took slightly more than half. What did we do? Like, we took out like... Um, three-fifths of the SPY position. Uh, I want to add a little bit more if we get back into what 523 20s, but I took out as we got into that 523 area. I'm really happy with this trade. I'm happy I decided to take it. And again, uh, shout out to, to Kyle Burdett for, for helping me out with the levels on this because this is not something I, I know a lot about trading, but I, one thing I've been watching too um, is th these volume spikes, right? So when you have those volume candles to the downside. So I'm happy with this trade. We just broke into the downside on the SPY. I'm going to save a piece for the dream. Let's see what we do at 523. If we keep breaking down, I will stick around in the spy. So let's see what happens here. Um, PLTR23 break says D Loaf. Also, shout out to D Loaf for acting, asking some questions in the chat for the podcast yesterday. Um, I don't know what the questions were asked or not because I was not here when we filmed it, but we'll all find out on Saturday at 10 a.m. or whenever you want to listen or watch to the podcast because uh, we do have our podcast coming out. First guest ever on the pod, Kanal Desai, coming out as well and dropping some hot lines. So check that out. Yeah, this, ooh, this Palantir is just like a heat-seeking missile to the downside. We have these uh, continued lower lows. This one going to downgrade from uh, Crespi, Moness, and Hart. So um, that, they are like, eh, 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 eh. got to gotta give these ones a, a downgrade to the downside. Palantir down about 6%, and they actually also announced a contract. So initially they were moving up a little bit on the contract, and then that downgrade came in, and I was like, what happened to Palantir? Yeah, that happened to Palantir. C Crespi, Moness, and Hart happened to Palantir. So a little bit of a, a continued roller coaster to the downside here, rejecting off that 9 EMA. Thank you for pointing that one out. D. Loaf. Where is Mara going, says Aaron Scott Matthews. I don't know if Mara even ever knows. Mara, Mara really does listen to her mother, Bitcoin. Um, you know, Obi talks about mother market, although he got that from a trader as well. But I know, I think Mara listens to mother Bitcoin. However, look at this kind of, this is a really bamboozling area for Mara. You know, say what you will about levels. And I say say what you will because I often say what I will about levels on, on crypto stocks is that I kind of am often skeptical. But honestly, look at this. We had this earlier kind of, Pseudo Doji here at tw uh, 2283. Look where we start chopping and turning and curling here on Mara. Same level. So I, I don't know if that's a coincidence or, or what, but you know, sometimes in trading, there's maybe not coincidence. There's just like interesting areas. So I think that it's the level I would watch. I want to see what we do with the 9 EMA. But also, I, I say that knowing that levels like 9 EMAs are often going to be a little bit more tricky or a little bit harder to, to follow there for Mara. Also, someone bringing up Microsoft, which is maybe the most fascinating stock of the day. And by that, I mean it is so range-bound, it's not even honestly tradable. And I say that as someone who likes ranges. And I mean, if, if you're able to trade Mi Microsoft, like, you know, honestly, seriously, congrats to you, because I feel like this one is so bamboozling. I got involved in this earlier because we held that VWAP area so well. Lost about 20 pennies, no big deal. We fall to the downside after continuing to consolidate in that range for another hour. Then we fall below view up, and then we have some more consolidation for a half an hour. Drop lower, then come back. Uh, we really like this 420 area. Shout out to 420 Bud Monster in the chat. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that this, this Microsoft chart for me is just very much, you know, we usually call Apple the dead one, but I don't think that'd be fair to Microsoft today <laughs> if we didn't call Microsoft the dead one. So Microsoft hitting the snooze button a little early for this long weekend. I see you are in a long, speaking of long. Yeah, looking at Meta, looking for that curl back up, it seems the most directional of the bunch right now, whether we get a print on it or not. I haven't put in 
any uh, entries. Already got cut up a little bit on it getting in, getting out. So we'll see what this one does. But it looks like it has the most uh, intentions of uh, the Meg 7s to uh to move to the high side so we'll see if that ends up happening or not a lot of bottoming tail candles coming in right now on the future at this uh let, let's say let's just say it's the 18 four and a half level or thereabouts so interesting look here let's uh look to take some profits on met i'm gonna sit at uh, 43s over here we'll see if we get that print um moving up what are we sh what are we so showing here so meta off obviously a little bit spready Right, we're showing 41s on the ask, but 33s on the bid. So it's got to cross in order to get filled. But this is what I'm talking about here on the future. All right, nice, we got the fill there. But this is, I don't know what you feel about this, Dan, because Dan is looking at a move all the way into the highs, right? So I, I love that ambition, Dan, no question about it. But my question to you is, how do you feel about all these candles over here coming in and getting bought up, especially with the IB low being right at this level? Because I know you chart the IB lows and highs, and while well, we just we keep getting into these levels and we keep keep getting these bottoming tail candles, showing what I would interpret as uh, you know buyer uh, enthusiasm. So we'll see. You know, let me know exactly what you think there. Meta back into 487 after getting the print there at the half dollar. A bit of a a topping tail candle at the moment. I don't have much size left, so I can let this one kind of go and float and see wherever it ends up. Maybe we'll uh, we'll take the print. At 488s, I see the volume weighted average price at 488 and a third. So that's not beyond the realm of possibility here. If it continues to curl up in the in the manner that it's doing at the moment, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen such a consolidative range on Nvidia. What are your thoughts on this? I love this. This is super tight for a stock that is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Look at this. I mean, the higher low, the lower highs are coming into play big time over here, but so are the higher lows, right? So it's like the most pointy flag ever. Oh, the pointy ever. flag. Yeah, I mean, like, look at this. It literally is ranging, ranging tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. I don't know which one. This is going to, like, pop to whichever side here. We'll have to wait and see, but... Um, anyway, so we'll look for the continuation up there. You guys are so jokes. <laughs> back there. I don't even know what's happening yeah, back there. Yeah, well, I do, but it's all good. <laughs> anyway, what are you looking over there? <laughs> yeah, it's all good, baby, baby. Yeah. Shout out to the Notorious B.I.G. And I mean, honestly, this NVIDIA is such a juicy look here. That was, yeah, that was a pun. But, um, but yeah, I've been looking at this. Someone else was telling me, who was it telling me this was a bit of a bull flag or bull pennant forming on NVIDIA? Um, Future Eddie was saying this. Yeah, I think I do see what you mean, because Sharif is right. We have lower highs, lower lows. But NVIDIA consistently working within this 907, 907 five range so you know what i'm gonna get involved enough talking more action here adara talking to myself okay. apparently. yeah so we'll see how this goes if we break decisively out of this range i have a clear way to exit and i've been watching this tape like a hawk so i'll know if we break out of the range right and um it looks like i might have set my area of entry a little bit too ambitiously at 906.75 we'll see i don't want to chase nvidia you don't want to go chasing waterfalls but especially you do not want to chase a stock that moves like the monster that is in vda also thank you very much to Hayden Ponish for the kind words. Um, really appreciate the shout out there. Shout out to everybody here who comes and watches and uh, engages. This is, you know, always so fun to be here. We're always just happy to be here. And yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Hayden Ponish, I, I'm sure you will get some asking for some more puns before the end of the day. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can almost bet that there will be more puns, knowing me. It. But yeah, so if NVIDIA wants to let me in, NVIDIA, that, well, there we go, it's just another one. I'll be happy. I think we could be testing this, but I'm going to wait and see what we do here. This 90 07, uh, 65. Last time we tried to break above 907, that's as far as we went. We're already going to get beak wetter set because NVIDIA waits for no woman. Um, and you cannot wait for NVIDIA because if you do, you will you will get chopped up. I'm just going to take 906s. I think we could get down to 905s, but honestly, I, I do not need to feel that alive right now. I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with the amount of uh, mildly stressed that normal NVIDIA engagement already <laughs> entails. So there we go. Also, AMD continues to be uh, the president of Bamboozlement Nation. We have that move down here at this 18040. Shout out to, I think, Sandy Beach saying that they were taking this one long because you would be in the money, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. depending on where you got in here. I want to see what we do with this 9 EMA because it looks like we're butting our heads. We're knocking on the door of this 181, but we're having a little bit of a hard time getting there. I want to see what we do with 181. 181 was a massive area here earlier. That was my impetus for getting involved in this long. 
was this continued failure to break above that 181 with Bang. the viciousness. Or break below that 181 with the viciousness, right? So then we did, and that was a nice look. Congrats to anybody with that short. But honestly, I think AMD, if you play it right, has been really rewarding both to the long side and the short side. I just have not been playing it right. I'm going to be really honest. It had the range. My timing was very bad, and my uh, short, my stop selection was negligible. So there we go. That's all there is to it. All I can do is look at this, be like, nah, uh, uh, Dara, and hopefully learn. NVIDIA trying to pop its head above that 907. If it breaks above that earlier high of 907, like, what, 60s, 70s, which it looks like I might want to do, I'm going to be out, but oh, we're going to see what I'm trying, trying to be a little more loosey-goosey in my trades. Nice. How are you doing in We just took out like uh, 75 pennies there at the top, 50 pennies initially, then 75 pennies there on that last little move uh, on META. Uh, it's, look, it's headed up. I think, uh, I think you're right, Dan. So here's what Dan wrote, by the way, for anybody who's, uh, who's interested. Uh, we are currently trading at a price that is the price target for short pattern that occurred around 9.45 a.m. Central, so 10.45 um, market time frequently. Um, I think st frequently still see profit takers at this distance from around 18.520, says Dan. Shout out to Dan. Oh, my God, Meta. No, you didn't. Oh, killed, killing me, bro. Uh, just popped up way more. That's all right. NQ trading at a price. He goes on to say, NQ trading at a price that is a price target for short-term pattern. Okay, he, I already said that. Uh, so, yeah, I like it. And then you got to pop off right on the future there. Uh, this is the area that we kept talking about on the futures. This is the area where we IB load. I'm making like a, a noun and a verb here. Like at, uh, at In the, uh, the implied balance high right at 930. So we came right into that level. And then, look, we're trending to the high side here. But let's see if we can continue to print higher highs and higher lows here on the NQ. I've been looking for signals from some of these uh, – mega cap names i'm talking about like the metas the amazons etc to kind of indicate you know what the uh the nq may be l looking to do at this point i like this um i like this hammer candle here on google but yeah it's done nothing on the day so i'm not inclined to get into that look if the market's gonna pump up here um recent price action tells us that it's going to be nvidia typically that leads this market so Keep your eye on NVIDIA, and if you want to trade NVIDIA in, in conjunction with the market, maybe a, a good trade for you guys would be NVDL. It looks like it's breaking above this little trend line that we've drawn now, but it's not printing any newer highs, right? So it's not like, so what? The trend line is your own concoction. The market may or may not respect that level, but what it will respect is previous price action because that is indicative of buyers and sellers. So let's see if we can get above this 908, man, on a closing basis on NVIDIA, especially if we start to curl up on the future. Could be an interesting, you know, mid-afternoon breakout. I don't know. But uh, yeah, good luck. I'm sorry about all the wicks. I see everybody complaining about these wicks on META. You can't see the entries and exits because we're getting a lot of dark pool prints for whatever reason, the last little bit on Meta. So yeah, anyway, we made a move into the volume weighted average price on Meta. So this could be a VWAP retrace and tank. So keep your eye here on a closing print above VWAP and then look for a possible five minute candle to make a new low after the, the one that we're currently on right now, which has another three minutes, I think, um, closes. So right now, it looks like it's rejecting off the volume weighted average price. Probably better if I show you this uh, chart. Yeah, this shows it a lot better. The VWAP is the white line. We make it up to VWAP, and then, lo and behold, we encounter a lot of selling. Not surprised on a day where Meta is decidedly negative. It is down 1.18%. So, you know, not uh, totally surprising that these pops are getting shorted. Right, so I'll have to wait and see if they uh, if that ends up holding out. Let's go back into AAPL and see what AAPL is doing. So we we're talking about taking that short off the 50, so that would have paid off nicely. But the thing is, we made another higher low. So this trend is obvious here, guys. Now it's going to be about whether we hold and close above the 50. We could see a nice retracement on Apple. We've been talking about this all day, possibly here on AAPL. 171.85 is where the 200 period is, but I'm less inclined to base it off that level and more inclined to base it off either the whole dollar level or the bottom end of the consolidation range in the pre-market. And that's at 172 and a quarter, 172 and a third, and obviously the whole dollar level is 172, but that's all predicated upon 
b breaking and, and closing above this 50 period because we came right into that 50 period and we reject it. And that wasn't a level, that wasn't a price action level that we rejected at prior. Like, I mean, if you were basing it off the crest, it would have to be around right here, 171 and a half. We didn't make it all the way up there. So Apple putting in higher lows could be looking to break the top here. We're gonna have to wait for that on a closing basis to see if it actually uh, ends up happening. The Fuge, Dan, looks like uh, you know you may get what you want here. Got a big green candle. Let's see if this one can close decidedly above it. Maybe I'll join you on that, Dan. Dan's looking for an entire retracement of from where we were at the lows, breaking through the highs. I, uh, I'd love to see that. I gotta tell you the truth. That would make this range day, obviously, into momentum day, midday like that. So who knows what'll happen to Dara. I mean, honestly, I'm loving, like, you know, call me McDonald's because this range day is, has me. Ba, 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 ba. Um, I am honestly so happy. This is this is my time of day. We didn't have perfect rates, but I, as you can see here, I am literally tickled pink. I am slightly blushing here with how excited I am by this market. Um, NVIDIA, I, I wrote. Okay, I'm literally kicking my legs under the desk in, in <laughs> excitement. I'm not even going to lie. I, I just outed myself there because no one obviously can see. But I was I was really happy with this. Um, and honestly, this was, again, to me, this was more of, a, of an accomplishment, not because I took profit on it, but because I packed my patience. You know, Sharif is packing his bag for his, his safari. <laughs> but I was packing my patience, you know, in NVDA. And, um, and so I got involved initially, like I said, my entry points are not always the best. Got involved slightly below 907. I was watching, and I totally agree with Sharif when you said 908 being a decisive level for NVIDIA. Uh, we, that was gonna be, my line in the sand was gonna be a little bit more conservative as I tend to be with my stops. It was gonna be that 907.70. We didn't even pass 907.50. I said, Adara, you have to add a little bit. You gotta put a little bit more in the pot here. You gotta stir a little bit. So add a little bit at 907.10. Got part out at the 907.50 or 906.50, sorry. It was a little bit early on this. I'm not even gonna lie. But it was because we were really struggling with that 9 EMA area. So I wanted to have, you know, some beak waters ready. Initially, we only got part filled, which I think confirmed my theory at first that this was a very hot level. I know uh, Sharif has also mentioned to me as well, which is something I appreciate, that when you have these partial fills, sometimes it shows you this is a level people want. They're really interested in. So I was like, okay, Derry, you got something going here. Keep keep chilling out. We took out the rest at 906. So about uh, roughly a dollar winner for w when when everything was said and done. Pretty happy with this. If we keep bouncing off this level, I will keep trading this range because I honestly feel like I've been neglecting this range. This to me has been the range trend of the day, Nvidia. Although not to say that that was the only opportunity you had. Sean was killing it on this short from 910 earlier. There are other opportunities, but I think Nvidia has been so stubborn. Nvidia is so stubborn. It's like I don't want to leave this range. So if it's if it's giving you the range, you have to take what the market gives you. In this case, the market gave me this Nvidia range. I'm gonna play it. Also, shout out as well to uh, once again to Caliber Debt with that spy short. Uh, we did bounce back up here, but I, I was pretty happy with this. I took out some at the 523 area, looking to add because I didn't love the area I got in at 523.13, could have gotten about 10 more pennies. That's okay. That's okay, we lived with it. We got out the rest at 523, so bouncing back up here is the spy, but I was happy I was able to, to get involved in that movement. NVIDIA also trying to bounce a little bit back up into 907, so I have my eye on that. Also, Todd McLean watching in our other stream um, asking about Tesla, because we do, I have the, the, char, uh, the chat up for our other stream as well, our mobile stream. So Todd McLean asking about Tesla, which I will cover quickly before passing back to Sharif. Tesla has been on sleep mode. Honestly, I have to say, Todd McLean, it wasn't all day. We did have a nice move down here. Um, Dan Ives noted Tesla Bull lowering his price target by $15 from $315 to $300. And you could tell he was somber because he did not wear a paisley pink shirt when he did the interview with CNBC. He was wearing Pepsi Blue. Uh, Sharif's favorite color, but definitely not Dan Ives's, right. I would guess. So we have a couple of rejections here of that 178, that yeah. bit of the double top there, kind of top and turn around VWAP. Honestly, not much of a look here. Todd McLean, right now we're in the part of the Tesla day where we're kind of stuttering towards the downside. I would be, but we do have slightly higher lows though, which is actually something worth noting. Um, 17580, 176, 176, 30, and then 177. So we do have slightly higher lows. Tesla though, definitely not moving with the same kind of vigor as a meta but not moving with the same type of range as an NVIDIA, which to me makes it really hard to read. I agree, yep. Good look there, Adara. Um, Elon, I am leaving tomorrow afternoon, so I will be gone until not next Monday, but the Monday after that. Hey! Um, Papi Cabzon? All right, bro, I don't know. 
Um, all right, so his initial question to me was, I had it here. Oh, dang, I think I might have lost it. Um, okay, we'll have to look after, sorry about that. Like people often say to analyze the volume and not only the patterns, VWAP and stuff, I don't really know of like, yeah, that's what we were talking about today on the lesson. So if you were looking to take out that breakout trade, you had one of two options, right? You could wait for the actual breakout itself or you could wait for the level to, to give way then to come back uh, into the level and take the dip. But on the breakout itself, you should be looking for above average volume that's accompanying the price action break too, right? Because that's kind of how you can confirm that there's a lot of interest in the name. And it's not just the fact that there is a, you know, a bit of a, an, a liquidity vacuum that's helping propel the, the trade higher. And so that's what I would say to you there. I mean, uh, look for the volume to confirm that there are a lot of eyes and a lot of other participants uh, joining in the trade with you. One easy way to do that is to look you know, on whatever time frame you're trading. So if you're looking at the daily, if you're looking at the four hour, pop up the volume bar, like just like we do here, Ram Ram, with uh, our charts and we have the volume bars on the bottom. And what you can do is you can, guys, chart, uh, what you can do is um, you can look to see which volume bars are the biggest and do they happen to coincide with the price breakout? And so if it is, then you know that you're breaking out on above average volume. And so that's what I would say to you there. Look exactly for that and then also look for that level of resistance or support if you're taking a long or a short um, to, uh, to have uh, have been defended or rejected multiple times. So if it's a resistance level, you're looking for multiple rejections at that level. If it's a support level, you're looking for multiple bounces at that level, and the more the merrier, right? The longer that re resistance level has been uh, you know, in play, the longer that support level has been in play, the more valid that level becomes. And so that's those are the two things that you're looking for there, just from a, you know, a, an, a chart perspective. With some other stuff, you can use RSI and MACD to kind of see what the price action um, and indicator divergence or convergence is. So what you'll be looking for in some cases is for the RSI to make lower highs, but the, uh, the price to make higher highs. And then you can see they're diverting from each other. That usually indicates that it may, uh, the price may start coming back down. Conversely, if the, the RSI is making higher highs and the price is not making higher highs, then that may be a leading indicator that the price may pump. So you'll have to be looking at that. So those are some, you know, just regular easy ways uh, that you can kind of incorporate confirmation into your trading. It's not easy, it takes some practice obviously, but they're not the most technically complicated ways to do it. So that's what I'd say to you. Give that a shout and uh, let me know how that works out for you. I hope you kill it while I'm gone on vacation. I haven't seen you in the chat before, so maybe when I get back, uh, you can let me know exactly how it went. And I hope that the market absolutely is great while I'm gone. I will not be opening up any charts of any kind while I'm gone. I may have to do like one uh, video conference uh, like meeting, and uh, that's really it, Adair. I'm gonna be Yeah, like it's just MIA, you maybe. and all the animals. Yes, and the people that are coming. I'm not making TikToks, Ram Ram. I'm taking a lot of videos. I'm taking my DSLR, so I won't take any videos oh, on nice. my phone. So my phone will be like at uh, the house all day or whatever, the wherever I'm staying yeah. all day, and I'll just take the actual camera. So completely incommunicado, baby. Yeah, he does Sharif and the, the, the safari animals there. So yeah, shout out to Sharif. We will miss you while you are gone, but I hope you have an amazing trip. I, I shall, hopefully as well. Yeah, Thank and you. it will be Adobe back. I know some people call us Adobe, Obi and I, um, <laughs> back there. Yeah, people, I mean, because you wouldn't know because you haven't been there, but yeah, no. people will call it Adobe. And also uh, one time, literally, Obi did analyze the Adobe chart because That's he's like, hilarious. we may as well, people have said it so much. Speaking of Adobe as well, Coin Clock and Tax getting $2 in the money here with their Adobe Ooh. trade, so. Uh, you're definitely clocking some coin there. You're, you're making some money, so shout out to you. Also, um, some people oh, asking about go. AMD. Oh, yeah, so Sharif will be up at the big desk now. Um, I'm still covering, right? Yeah, okay. okay. So, guys, I'm going to say bye to everybody. I shall see you not next Monday, but the Monday after that. I can't wait to, for, to show you guys all the videos and stuff like that that I take. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys kill it while I'm gone. So I'll see you guys at the top. 
See you, Sharif. Hope you have a great trip. Um, and we, we will miss Sharif on the How to Trade show, but he will be learning how to hang out with animals and, and you know take cool photos and stuff. So we're very excited for Sharif there. Also, what would be exciting is if AMD and some of these other chip names picked a lane. But here's the thing. AMD has like the clearest, some of the, I think someone earlier was asking, what are the support resistance areas in AMD? And this is the type of stuff I, I'm really fascinated by. So I, I like to, you know, wax poetic about these for a bit, if you don't mind. Uh, so look at this bottom here at 181. So I'm going to start with this 181 because to me, this is like the clearest of the levels. We have this 181. We kind of pop up earlier into 183, which has not really been a level since. Then we pop back down. We bounce off this 181 with one, two, three, four, five, six, six candles on the five minute at different moments. So this is a massive area of support here. We do not want to go below 181 at that point on AMD. Look at also these, these earlier candles closing here on support, closing and opening saying, hey, this is a level we like. So th this level to me was screaming. I tried to take the long, I psyched myself out of it and took about 10 pennies and then it went up about a dollar, but that's neither here nor there. Then we get into area number two that I find interesting, which is gonna be that 182 level. Areas like this aren't always going to be the levels that are like, you know, whole dollar levels like 181, 182. In this case with AMD, they happen to be, so it makes it a little bit cleaner. But this 182, what I like is we do have this pseudo topping tail candle here. We have another topping tail candle that I accidentally ended up putting my stop loss on this short. Um, but basically the whole point I'm trying to make here is that 182 was screaming to you a couple times, much like 181 was screaming that it was support. 182 has been screaming resistance. Do, like, do not touch me, get away from me, I'm not going any higher. A couple times here we have this resistance, then we, we continue to fall to the downside. Then this is interesting, around this one o'clock area, we break below to the downside on the 181, and now we're starting to see it form as resistance. Look at again, we're knocking on the door of that 181, but we're not allowed in, you know? Jerome Powell saying close the door on that 181 level. So to me, like, and now the new bottom on this range seems to be 180, 180.50 actually. Uh, so again, another like half dollar level. So 180.50, 181, and 182 to me are the pretty clear ranges. Sorry for that kind of long winded explanation, but I hope that helps to anybody interested. Also, I think it was Desi in the chat asking about Meta shorts at 490. So, you know, we're not we're not here to give advice, right? But I can I can definitely tell you what I think is happening on the chart. I don't know if Meta is gonna go back to 490. Shout out to Sharif for killing it on that long earlier on this little rounded bottom on Meta. Meta was, you know, at this point, and look, we even like switch on the, the nine EMA from resistance to support on that curl to the upside. And then we have these two five minute candles having a battle and a half trying to get above VWAP. It's like, no, uh -uh, we don't want to, right? So to me, the resistance might actually be a little bit above that 490. It might be more here, this VWAP area around 488.50. That being said, I think 490 area um, is also clearly an area of resistance earlier. We had this pseudo flat bottom break at this area to the downside earlier in the morning. But I think to me, honestly, the, this 488 area might be a, like a little bit clearer. We did have that area earlier coming into support right off the open. That's where that candle closes uh, on our opening candle at 9.30. Then we have another candle starting off from there, clearly forming support, now forming resistance. So to me, I think 488 might be a little bit spicier. I don't know if that helps. I hope, I hope that helps. But yeah, to me, I think that 490 might be a little bit out of reach right now for META. Any other stocks people want to look at? Hertz Scrabble are asking about NVIDIA and VWAP. Um, yeah, I think... I think maybe people have different VWAP and different charts. For me, I feel like, I, I, at least on my chart, NVIDIA has been dancing around VWAP. But I think you're like, a decisive claim of VWAP, I think, would be interesting. Initially, this one was looking a little bullish. And I was even worried while I was in one of my first shorts on this because we were holding that 9 EMA pretty well at 907. But honestly, NVIDIA, like, we've been seeing these slightly lower highs to some extent. Some higher lows, but mostly at, at least, you know, if we look at the wider picture. Sorry for these wicks there, guys. We've had lower highs. We initially, bless you, we had that 910 area earlier than 908, then 907. Uh, 907 continuing to basically be that high. The highest we could get above 907, and this is when I was involved in this short, we got to like 907.50, then we continue to Kordunk. So I think, honestly, to me, the range in NVIDIA kind of continues to be that 905 area to 907, sometimes 907.50. I think if we break above that 908 decisively, that could be an interesting look, but NVIDIA is really struggling with it. We've been struggling with it, honestly, since um, this area here at 12. I added to the short at 
908. And I was like, if we break above 909, we're going to cut it. We didn't even break above 908. Like, I got involved, I think, 907.99. And that was about as high as NVIDIA wanted to go. Like, it is so stubborn at 908. It'll hang out there, but it won't go above. So, to me, I think the 908 break is going to be the best case for a long for NVIDIA. Um, that would be my look. Also, CompSRX talking about RH. Let's look at RH, because RH was really hot in the morning uh, to the upside. Still up 17%. Shout out to... Um, to Sean on that short, 91050. You know, I was just talking about NVIDIA, and like, unless we break above 908, that's gonna be a bit of a, a move to the downside. So shout out to Sean, killing it on that. Yeah, RH, this is a really nice one. This is this um, kind of, you know, uh, I guess a bit of a bull flag type move. We break above here. We have a little bit of trouble breaking above that 350 area. We kind of wick into that 354, but not in a closing basis. The spread on this is not like my favorite thing in the world. It is just under a dollar, but honestly, um, sorry, about 50 cents, it depends. But yeah, it's, it's definitely, I would even say it might be a little bit more of a spicy spread than something like a Lily. But yeah, this RH is a nice look, a bit rangy. Is the last trading day of the week, a shortened week, guys. The NQ currently in negative territory, about down one fifth of a percent. It was quite consolidative on the day. The ES faring a little bit better. So you're down 0.19 on the NQ, but the ES, real, the overall market faring a little bit better, essentially flat at the moment, up 0.19. 0.1%. Uh, we've been keeping an eye on crypto as well as Bitcoin finds itself right back above 70,000. It danced with about 71,550 earlier in the day. It continues to uh, recover off that $64,000 dip. We have been talking about a lot of stuff today and uh, specifically we're going to build on crypto as there were multiple headlines overnight with respect to micro strategies and uh, that precipitated a huge drop uh, there in the stock. It's down over 10% on the day right now, losing about $191 in value. That is after uh, Larry Fink, who went on BlackRock yesterday, made comments about Ethereum and uh, his confidence that uh, a spot ETF for the, um, uh, the, for the, uh, the cryptocurrency could actually find its way on uh, these markets quite soon, even if it is labeled as a security, guys. So uh, crypto in focus today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. All right, what's going on there? We were just uh, discussing some of our positions. We still got $8. You guys can't see right now, but we're still short right now on NVIDIA as that continues to go to the downside. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sharif. Sharif here. My mic is... My mic? Oh, pointed wrong. All right, I'll be going nuts. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, how's uh, how's it got, how's it going, guys? I still I still got to pull up this uh, pull up this chat. So uh, we're gonna be talking about crypto, I'm assuming. So let's go back to that coin uh, Coinbase. I did have this on watch uh, uh, in terms of a crypto name for the day, and uh, let's see what it has yeah. been up to. I haven't really been uh, been watching it too much. Was watching it off the uh, off the opening session there, but we've been doing pretty much sideways uh, for majority of the day. But we were kind of talking about um, uh, what was this? Some some of these some of these lows here, 250s uh, as well. Nice little strong, uh, strong flush off the open, but today is just sideways and choppy. So let's take a quick look at what Bitcoin has been up to here. Uh, last I remember, around 69, 70s, and uh, yeah, okay, so we're in and around that uh, that 70 mark still. So yeah, a little bit of volume uh, uh, on the day there, but pretty much sideways over the uh, over the whole, uh, whole session, it would seem. I'm just getting in and out of position, so now people should be able to see what I'm in. Okay, here we go. So we're starting to roll. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, we looked at crypto there today. Did you actually just pull up a, coin, a Bitcoin chart there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. So, um, yeah, not much action there. I was going to look at maybe Coinbase. There were certain levels that we wanted to, to hit there. Something seems, something seems weird right now. Everything all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's I don't know. Weird. No, I feel like my ears, like, your, are your ears popped at all or anything? I don't know. It feels like... No, it's having weird, weird uh, echoey, huh. echoey sounds in there. Um, but no, so I was just thinking that Coinbase right here, uh, 269, 270, was just thinking of those as some potential tops uh, coming through, 268 and change, 269 all the way up to 270. Um, you know what it might be? We, me and Randy went and got that crazy brisket, and I think I'm all like... Oh, you, yeah, how was that? All, that looked pretty good. Yeah, I posted it up on... Um, Here's, this is my Twitter yeah, that, feed. It has Sam Bankman-Fried just chilling out right nice. here. 25 to life. 
No, just 25. Um, so there he is. Oh, no, wait a second. That's a whole bunch of people. That's my actual... I, I did tweet that out. Oh, yeah. So here it is right here. This is me and Randy. We went there. You know, this is he and I. We're here. You know, busy place. We got the brisket. Yada, yada, yada. Just me talking. Who cares? Uh, and then at the end of the day, this is... It was really good, man. It's just a lot of meat with onions, and it's just... Oh, that well, sounds great. Just like... Next time, we're just going to get it for everybody. We're just going right. to get it for Ab, because Ramin was like, yo, where's mine? And then there was this whole thing. So, oh, man. All right. So, you oh, know when man, you get the oh, itis, man. it's just like you're just like chilling out and everything. I'm not even in the right chat uh, here. Uh, I, meat I, sweats. I don't even know what day it is right now. Happy Good Friday to everybody tomorrow. Do we have Frank Caberna coming through today? Yes, hey. sir. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so that's what that, that's that. Coinbase, I think around 270, we'll look for that short. We'll figure out what's going on with the rest. Oh, you know what? Here, instead of just uh, being completely useless, let me just call up right now. Can you believe I get paid to do this? Isn't this great? <laughs> um, so just coming through here, Bitcoin right now, let's hit a little bit of a refresh and see what's going on with some of these other coins. Solana up to 185. I mean, that high was in and around 211, I think. So still holding pretty good, not just today, up 2.6% this week. I feel like there's been some nice battles back. I got to give a big shout out to my guy Nimit because he mentioned Dogecoin and I mentioned Dogecoin on the show I think it was two or three weeks ago, 40% in a week. Like, where did this guy get this information from? Shout out to my guy Nimit in the chat if you're still there. Uh, tell me about Cardano. It would be nice if this one got going a little bit as well. So a few things that we're looking at right there. But overall, week to week, a good week for crypto. Uh, Bitcoin up 7.7. .7, Ethereum on possible ETF filings and whatnot up three. So good, good week so far for crypto. It's only Thursday. Let's see what brings the rest of the day. But it's nice to see it holding in and around 71. Reddit on watch today, guys, as it had a great couple of days. Not so much today. Down about 12% right now. Uh, yeah, yesterday we got wind that there was a lot of insider selling. CEO Steve Huffman and CFO Valero Andrew both sold aggressive amounts of shares. Uh, the CEO selling about 41 and a quarter million dollars worth. Uh, the CFO, the COO, selling about 16 million dollars worth. There was no blackout period for this IPO, and we know that they only put about 10 percent of the shares uh, available for trading here, guys. Did you guys have a look at Reddit today? Did not. Did you have a chance to look at Reddit? Yes. Obi did. I, I, I'm just trying to find out. I'm trying to get into the right. Uh, I'm just trying to get into the right chat over here. Um, yeah. So what, what was uh, what was it saying? Straight there? fader. That's what it was. Oh yeah. Thank I just you, got Randy. a coffee too. But thanks, Randy. We we just talked about our uh, our. Oh, I'm gonna need it. No, I'm feeling. I, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. I was just saying we're feeling. I'm feeling a little like slow you know like well mm -hmm. that brisket was oh that was so good oh, yeah, right good good recommendation randy i'll see you how in far an hour. was this place how far oh it's just yeah. a quick walk man just by the subway oh nice oh, yeah okay. we walked up there we'll by, go uh, let's go next time man it just yeah, yeah. randy and i had sort of planned that and it, it was just one of those things uh we knew it was going to be pretty busy there so um all right let me just get this all figured out i'll move this coffee out of the way because now we have two of them nice. and uh we'll Double work trouble. from there all right, so uh, Reddit, yeah, uh, we were talking about this one uh, actually uh, in a little bit in the meeting as well. All day fader, right? And like, okay, a bit of a bit of a, a miss on uh, on my part uh, for sure, where it kind of comes into previous days levels in the pre market, and uh, you try, you attempt to push right back up off the dip. And it can't really get even past that uh, that that opening uh, opening price or even this uh, cons uh, this uh, price action that happened off the open or in the pre market into the open and uh, straight fade from there. So definitely a consistent uh, selling happening right there on Reddit. So missed a little little miss on my part back through that uh, uh, some of these levels here. So we saw that uh, on that this was the. Yeah, this was the uh, day that where options kind of came out for Reddit. Right. We saw that it consolidated sideways. The next day, it broke the low of that consolidation, and we've been selling off since then. So a little bit of a continuation uh, 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 sell that I definitely uh, was not watching until later on today. All right, um, we have a quite, quite, a, quite a big announcement to make here, so we are going to clip that because right now we just hit 
a banner number. Put a four and a four hey, and another hey, four, hey, and that is 444,000 damn subscribers. So I want to say a shout out. Good job, Obi. A shout out to everybody out there that made this possible. Um, that's that's big, man. We're, we're, we're really happy with that. We're almost at 500K. I didn't even, wow. Yeah, man, we're not, 500K is just like, that's, you know, we'll get to that. Yeah. And then bang, bang, bang. That's the breakout. Bang. That's the breakout. We're not, yeah, man, that's, like, that's the breakout level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is like, um, you know, that's NVIDIA 1000. <laughs> you know, we get <laughs> to NVIDIA that. Or NVIDIA 500. We get to that. Boom. Well, no, but NVIDIA 500 has to get down to 500. We're, we're trying to get up. No, 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 when we got through right. that 500. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. In the past, yeah, Right, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So thank you, Obi. Shout out to Neil. Shout out to Brendan. Um, someone named Ramin over there. Fabian. <laughs> Shout out to Sharif Adera. And honestly, shout out to all of, we've had Max in the back, like Yannick, everybody, BPI, everybody, Brankles, Wayne, everybody that's been on the show because past hosts, we can go on and on. Um, and just want to thank everybody for getting us. Um, and of course, I make that announcement as I'm dressed like this. But hey, we got Trader TV. We're going to hey, make merch great again. We talked about that as a slogan, so we possibly will do that uh, as well very, very soon. But hey, a big shout out uh, to everybody out there. We're talking about Reddit. Maybe uh, there needs to be a TTVL IPO. Hey. You know what I'm saying? You, hey, you want to go on the NASDAQ? You want to go on the NYSC? Where, where would you choose? The DAC. The DAC. I'm going with the NASDAQ as well. Yeah, let's get those NASDAQ. I like how you just said DAC. That was just like so cool. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Like this guy's the best over here. Um, maybe we'll pick the pink sheets first. Uh, all right. So what are we talking about? Reddit. Reddit. All right, um, fifty dollars. Uh, yeah, we slept on this one today. I mean, I don't know uh, how else to say that. Down thirteen percent, and I mean, boom. There's the two hundred period. Come on, you gotta, you know, you, we gotta be part of that one, and we're not. So, not a great opportunity there. But yeah, Reddit still breaking lower. Look, I wrote down Reddit today, and it's funny because we just mentioned about Sticky Note Nation um, and some resources that we had on Twitter. But you can see right here, we wrote down Reddit right here insider selling, let's look at $60 for a short. You know, like that's what we wrote. It didn't get up there, we didn't get anywhere near 60. But we're gonna have to look at that. Like if we start to make moves and we're right about those moves, we need to start looking at like pre-market levels and stuff like that to be able just to short and not worry about huge moves to the upside. Reddit I think is gonna be done for a while. When you get CEO, founders and all that selling, that, that's, not a good, that's not a good sign this early in the process. So they knew their shares weren't locked up. They took advantage of retail and that's what always is gonna happen. Classic. So classic, classic, honestly, classic. pump and dump. I mean. Well think about it. The, the market Market is a tool for companies to raise money. Yep. At yeah. the end of the day, you have I to don't understand have a the fundamental. Doing that. Like, okay. no, I mean, read that. No, honestly, like, read the prospectus and things like that. Like, Arm, we knew couldn't sell for ninety days. Like, you gotta, you gotta figure out that kind of stuff. And then, this is how owners, like you say, get liquid. Like, they're, they have to cash out, and I don't, I don't blame them for doing that. Just wish we cashed out. No mm. shorts for Reddit today, but that's fine. We've, uh, we've, we've got a pretty good day happening over here. All right, guys, there's a small cap gapper that just started going here up 114%, just started midday, goes by the ticker NXL. Uh, Nexel and technology shares are trading higher after the company announced results of a clinical study evaluating its Gen 2 tax device for reducing pain in veteran patients with mild traumatic brain injury. There you can see that big move up just came in. The volumes just started coming in at about five to two. So just keep eyes on that if you're interested in trading small cap gappers. But on the, uh, the re next on the watch list is Rumble as uh, they reported earnings yesterday as well. And it was a bit of a mixed bag. Let's be real about it. So uh, the revenue came in a little bit below expectations. They did turn a profit, but it was lower than the street expected. The good news News, though is that the users are there's more users on the platform the issue with that though is they're watching a little bit less and that doesn't spell well for advertising dollars currently down about 2.6 percent above the volume weighted average price did you guys have eyes on rumble today no. uh did not he comes to me with Reddit. It's like, nah, 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 Rumble. No, but we, we had talked about Rumble, and I think we had a good talk in the morning. And I was saying that we actually didn't mind Rumble at all, and the fact that they had come out and missed, we were actually thinking that it was a growth engine, and yeah, they're going to miss on sales. We kind of 
was hoping for a better sales number. They miss on that. They, they missed both sides. But the idea was they grew in their subscribers. So they lose on minutes watched, but then gained on subscriber growth. So that leads me to believe that whenever you can get a service business going, we like that. Obviously, I talked about the political implications this year of you know, a new media stepping in because there may be pushback to certain things that are posted by whomever um, that, that are politically, you know, it's like my wife just mentioned to me something about how Instagram, and this is to do with Rumble, like how Instagram, they released a new update where I think you can have political, it's something like political news checked off huh. versus on, and it's automatically checked off. Right, opt out. Yeah, there's something okay. about that. Anyways, it's kind of just a little bit. It's a little bit. I can't. I honestly can't hear you, Fabian. Unless it's you can't. The idea behind it is is not giving people the exact information, kind of hiding that political side of things. So what I was going to say is is that potentially a stock like Rumble fills some kind of a void there. That's all. Um, so a pushback in the trade that I thought we could get was a seven long back to nine. Uh, the lowest we got today off open was basically the open. So 775. So uh, I think we want to buy Rumble down here in and around 775 and 780. So maybe the word I'm looking for is free speech. You know, I mean, uh, you want you want to give people the, the right to choose to listen to and watch whatever media they so choose. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I kind of uh, missed out there on uh, on the Rumble trade uh, here. Just uh, looking looking back at it again in retrospect, right? Like what, wasn't really thinking about these levels in the morning, but uh, after that action has kind of panned out, it does seem a little bit clearer here. Uh, let's see how this looks on the 15. So uh, yeah, so um, you can see it. Not it's not to me. It's not really as clear on the 15 as it is on like a, as a smaller time frame there. Like I like to use the three. And uh, yeah, just looking left, you can see that a little bit of a level here at that 780-ish. Uh, uh, which kind of comes in on Friday, but take a look at this very strong day on Tuesday. We kind of talked about this going into earnings, and look at that base that kind of happens right there at that 780. And then look at this, look at this, uh, uh, cr uh, this, uh, this dump that happens off of the earnings, and where does it find a little bit of uh, a little bit of liquidity to hold it up right there at that 780? Coming in on the day, look at all the wick. Uh, wicks that happen back in. A lot of these candles just closing. Like I know a lot of people like to use the one minute. So let's take a look at the one minute as well. Yeah, so look, a little bit of a chop, but once you reclaim and then you cr claim VWAP, it seems like that 780 level uh, might have been interesting. So I definitely agree, that, uh, agree with Sean there. That 780, 775 seems like a pretty decent level that's being uh, held over the past uh, one, two, three days as support. And maybe it's a little bit of a resistance turn support as well on, on a shorter time frame, but uh, that 780 looking nice on Rumble. Palantir next on the docket, guys, and it is not a good look for it on the day. About 6% to the downside after Monet, Crespi, and Hart analyst Ben White predicted what he called a fall to reality for this name, saying that the price had gotten far too rich. He reduced uh, his uh, rating on the stock from a, uh, from a neutral to a sell and lowered the price target to about $20. And as you can see here, that precipitated a big move down on the name, breaking down well below that $24.5 that we started the day off in the pre-market, trying to hold above 23 here, guys. Did you guys trade Palantir today? Uh, yeah, we're in it right now, and it is a $1 winner. Uh, but, you know, we, we already gotten out of it. I talked about this trade with Big Patty Ice back there. Um, and, yeah, like, we shorted it off VWAP. So when there's a gap, play the retracement back to OB VWAP. So there it is right there. Um, you know, if I ever did a summit, this is what I would be saying. Boom, boom, trade that back. Nail that to the wall and uh, all the way down. I'm going to get out at 23.20 if this comes back. Now, the debate right here that I'm having with myself is, is this a long? Um, the market is now, we talked about Palantir. I mean, honestly, guys, not only do I have the hat over there, you can rewind when I said today, wouldn't be surprised if Palantir is down 6 or 7%. That was when it was down 1%. So we use DraftKings as an example here. 
Obviously, we should have held a little bit more, but Palantir just came in kind of as expected, honestly. Um, so let's just now see if we can hold this level. I am debating along right now against, we, we, we called it 22, I mean, we had 2280, right? Didn't we? Wasn't that what it was before? Uh, we were talking about into here. Yeah, 2280. So this could be a long right now, give it 20 cents the other way. So yeah, man, congratulations. If you had anything there on Palantir, it's a good trade. We're getting stopped out if it breaks 23.20 and that could be also a long take there as well. Yeah, that, uh, that Palantir fading fading off uh, quite nicely there. I think that's, uh, that's a solid short there by, uh, by Sean. Uh, kind of coming back in, retesting that VWAP kind of comes into that 24. And yeah, he's still holding to some till 23. I definitely have to ho learn some of that. Holding, holding a little, holding a piece uh, after taking some profits until it actually comes into fruition, right? And then you called out that 23 as well. And then look at the low, low 22.94. So been selling off pretty much all day underneath VWAP, quite heavy on the day as well. Look at that, uh, that Arvo, a little bit of Arvo there as well. 2x I'm seeing so this thing does about a 62 on uh, on average 30 day volume and then uh, uh, today's volume 51 but my R vol right now the reason why it's two is Nvidia's it's taking a five period so it's not taking a 14 day period uh, kind of thing but uh, yeah it's different different uh, different preferences but you can see it's a little bit of a continuation off of this sell-off that we've been having that tw 25 half kind of comes in can't doesn't really want it next day you kind of lick Wick, slam, consolidated all day sideways. Looking, reminding me of a little bit of, uh, of uh, NVIDIA, how NVIDIA was looking yesterday. But uh, sideways consolidation for the majority of the day, you come in, you just reject the low of that consolidation, and the, seller, <laughs> the sellers uh, turn on, and we just continue all day down. I'm curious to know when that next level, okay, so there you go, right there, 2292 is this kind of low right here. And uh, that's, is that what we hit? 2292 is this low? And then 22.92 is all, oh, 94 is today's low. So yeah. two penny difference from this previous kind of mm. level here. It came, comes right down into it. Good name. I think it's, a, I think it's worth buying uh, pretty soon. Pretty I soon. like Palantir. All right. Uh, back over. Ooh, Chinese EVs. Yeah, Sean. Another day, another red day for these Chinese EVs. Neo, XPEV, Li, or otherwise, it's negative territory for both. Neo came out with a headline yesterday that deliveries were not going to meet expectations, about 3,000 cars less than projected on the quarter, and that sent the stock reeling. Today, XPEV can't be spared from any negative news, uh, despite the fact that it's releasing its flagship SUV, the G9, as well as the uh, its P7 sedan. Uh, it's also looking at opening up um, new locations and expanding services. This is the car here, and I got to tell you, it's quite a looker. We've known about it for a while. It's got a lot of good features, but the starting price is going to be quite prohibitive and uh, unlikely to find its way into North American markets. So we'll have to see if the Europeans can pick up uh, this, the slack here and uh, help sales, guys. Any look on some of these Chinese EVs? All right. Um, yeah, thanks, Sharif. Uh, look, I mean, I think all the cars look pretty nice. I mean, you know, you can't really... The main problem with trying to do some of this stuff is it's hard to base your decision on how some of these vehicles look because, you know, we've seen some pretty wild, wild, wild lookers. And I actually thought the Fisker Ocean was pretty nice and we've seen that one go bankrupt. But look what's happened to Neo here. I mean, you tell me, Obi. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, add 13. I mean, this may be 13 straight down days. Why isn't my zooming in working? Oh my God. Oh, what just? That's the candle fattening button. <laughs> it's not F11. <coughs> oh man, excuse me. I'm getting angry. Alt F4? Here. No, I'm joking. No, no. I, you know, I think it's because I had the RSI. But anyways, the, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that out of there and figure that out. But the end of the day here, I mean, the trend is definitely your friend on a move like this. It just keeps on going to the downside. We're making lower lows uh, as we go. I think it's worth a break at, three, at 450. Honestly, I mean, if you're going to break 450, you might just be able to get five cents the rest of the afternoon, but it, it probably is worth a trade. Obviously, if you're sitting there trading at home or somewhere else, uh, five cents is not going to work for you. But if you are with real trading, then I do like that play. I always say, let's go back over to Tesla. Earlier on this today, we talked about Tesla down here at 176 and that we like that level. It did break through at about 10 o'clock and got as low as 175.80. You know, it's, it was a great move back up. We missed it. We're in an $8 winner here with NVIDIA. I mean, I'm debating covering if it doesn't break through 900. Uh, but right here, th this, this is probably another long. 
you know, as long as this day is going to sort of get us into the rest of the, because we have Easter, right? I mean, the market's closed tomorrow. We're back open on Monday. I, I'm not sure there's going to be much action here this afternoon. So if that's yeah. going to be the case, I feel like we buy Tesla down there at 176. So let's be patient. Stick out, stick out for that. If Tesla comes down to 176, I, I like that play. I'm going to remove RSI off here um, and then see if we can't get this uh, fixed. But any thoughts on any Chinese EVs over there, Obi? Yeah, I think I was just, uh, 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 XPEV was uh, one of the ones that uh, looked interesting in the morning. Didn't really look back at it uh, right there. But take a look at that, man. Straight fade off of the open, kind of a similar story there. And that pre-market uh, session quite flat, defining some de defining some interesting levels there. It's really weird. Uh, that eight and then the eight thirty as that high come out the, come off the open. Can't really even make it past that VWAP, that gray line that you guys are seeing. And look, a little bit of a similar behavior over the past uh, multiples of days. So yeah, okay. So when was this? This started. It was pretty choppy before, but then look at that. A little bit of a VWAP respect starting from last Thursday. Can't really get above it. Next day, gap down. Can't really get above it. Next day, sideways. Can't really get above it. The next day, more of the same. More of the same. And comes in today, more of the same. How much more do we need to see? Maybe it'll act different tomorrow, but doing it five, six times in a row, definitely a little bit of a, of a sell side pressure here on, uh, on specifically XPEV. And we saw how uh, uh, neo has been kind of trending down as well. And I think Tesla... Uh, Tesla with the pullback you were saying um, a little bit. Let's check it out on the daily chart here uh, Yeah, so a little bit of, uh, of reds for the past three days, but yeah kind of sideways it would seem so not as uh, not as uh, Downtrending as some of those Chinese EVs it would it would seem Yeah, there's been a couple names that we've wanted to look at on the China side of things Yeah, I mean one of them was Alibaba Alibaba. Thanks to uh, in the chat there. What's up Elon uh, mentioning Baba? You know, I like that name and we've been trading this name for a minute. So Let's look back. I, let me just, first of all, before we go over to Alibaba, I mean, Alibaba is a really nice move up today, just grinding higher. But again, these, these names get kind of sour. Like, now what is up with this daily chart? What? Uh, okay, hold on a second. Oh, no. See, now I can't even zoom in or anything. Oh, no. What, if, what has happened over here? This, is, this has been quite, quite the nice move uh, in my charts. All right, now I have to figure that out. But anyways, Alibaba here, am I able to zoom? Okay, I'm able to zoom out of this one. But not much movement coming into the end of the day here. We've seen that with some of these. I have to find out why some of the Chinese ADRs. I know the time, it's, it's not, you know, the best time. Isn't it 12 hours? No, 20. What time is it right now in Hong Kong? Uh, I will 26. Wait, you know, two seconds. 12 the other way. Isn't it in the morning now? Anyways, we'll find it out. But anyways, a lot. 2.26 a.m. Right, 2.26 a.m., right. So it's the other way. So, yeah, so that would Friday. make sense why you're, you get a lot of slowness maybe potentially in some of the Chinese ADRs in the afternoon. We see it every day. I mean, you can go over to some of the most uh, liquid names that we've seen with, oh, no, with Alibaba. Oh, my God, NY, there it is. Um, over the last couple of days, I'm still, see, it, in the afternoon, you get big moves in the morning, and then look at the afternoon. Right, like we're not, you know, these are the bigger moves. This was a nice one. The market crashed that day. That was Wednesday. Um, and then there's a nice move down again, I guess. Okay, I mean, there's been some moves, movement to the afternoon. Doesn't seem like it ever wants to go up though, maybe only down. We've been looking short in the afternoon and I'm thinking about that right now because the TQs are bouncing around some levels, but that's Alibaba. The reason why I'm not getting out of Nvidia is because I am thinking short in the market. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But we just bounced again off of 902. Is that not silly not to get out? I mean, we shorted up here. It's a green name for us. It wasn't before this trade. We talked about that. What about just putting a bid here at 902, calling it a day? That's 901 down there. Let's go to 901. Let's go to 901, get this out on NVIDIA, and be pretty happy with that. And then if it breaks lower, we can even hit the low then again. We can go lower with it. We can bring that trade back in. So, all right. So, let's do that. 90, you know, I, I'm okay with the 90150, 902 area. So, let's put that bid out now um, for NVIDIA, 90155 or so. We'll put that bid in there. If we're lucky enough to get it, great. That would basically be the low we've seen all afternoon. Well, let's go to 902. Um, all right, let's put a bid at 902 flat, whatever. Uh, we'll take that. I'm not going to fight for, seven, for 50 or 60 cents on this name. You know, when you're, when you're moving like this, when the spread is honestly 25 cents, you're lucky enough to get hit down here anyways. We've sat and got missed, and then we're like, oh, man, we got missed. But realistically, it has to print a whole lot. 
Like what, I don't mean a whole lot, like one lot, which is a hundred shares in order for it to break through that level. When you see this 51 up there, that means there's a hundred shares there at 60, there's a hundred shares at 90. So a lot of the time, if you're looking for real liquidity, as you know, Obi as well, there's so many dark pool prints that go in between those level ones that sometimes when you're, when you're charting, and this is the other thing about charting names that are higher price value, when they have big spreads, you'll look at it and you'll say, oh, if it breaks 909.50, I'm gonna get out. But realistically, that break of 909.50, if you're trying to punch out, yeah. you might have 50 cents plus yep. as a stop order there because of the liquidation. So um, anyways, that's something that we're dealing with. We should have Daniel Shea on the Market Recap Show today, so. Oh boy, okay. I'm gonna talk to her about brisket. You know, but she's from Kansas City, you know, she's down with that, lived in Texas and all that stuff. So we're going to find out all about brisket with Danielle Shea. And I'm going to talk to her about some plays that I have in mind. And we're going to go over the earnings board in a couple minutes as well. Yeah, nice. Um, I'll be uh, waiting for that one there. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Apple as well. Apple kind of distinctly different uh, than some of the rest of these names here. Sure, Alphabet's curling a little bit. NVIDIA sideways. Softy a little sideways as well. But uh, the curl uh, is definitely a little bit more prominent on Apple, it would seem. What's, actually, what's the opening price here on Apple? Let me just quickly uh, look that up. You, okay, so the opening price was 171.75, and we just just now broke that. So uh, yeah, so let me just take CCL off of uh, off of my uh, off my main screen here, and let's go take a look at the tape on Apple real quick, because um, I want to know what we do if we're going to continue this uh, little bit of strength here back to the upside here. So is Apple going to lead? Um, NQ is kind of uh, near, the, near the lows. And yeah, take a look at that nice little grind back up. So uh, breaking some of these intraday resistances, breaking back above VWAP, kind of pushing back. Uh, is that the opening price? 171.75. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so we, we did just kind of break that. So th I guess that dump was um, uh, kind of came in in the pre-market. So what is that level? That level is 172. I was thinking that's the open right there. The 172.20s, it would seem, is uh, where that selling kind of started to accelerate and then comes in through the open. A uh, little bit of uh, kind of a... I, I, I've noticed this a few times. Now, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. This is more of a question to you. Whereas, like... Um, if, if the price action in the morning, going right into the open, it kind of has like, it's almost like they can't wait to sell, right? Right. Or like the selling pressure is so, so great that it just happens like at 27 or off the imbalance and then you get that. How often is it that you get that continuation right off of the open yeah, that versus doesn't... like sometimes it, maybe it doesn't and doesn't? I feel like there's a counter move more often than not. Okay. Like there's a big sell pressure because we can see that. So if you see NVIDIA with like a sell of 500,000 shares often, right. That will just force it down sort of in the pre-market okay then that momentum can continue but then it dries up because eventually right. the people stop or the traders say you know what it's gone down too far that opening sort of push down mm -hmm. and you're going to see it remember at 350 when those imbalances come out right. and then they normally flip at 355 yeah. it's because they get worn down right and so um okay obviously one is market on close so those shares don't actually transact until four o'clock these ones transact immediately at 9 30 but obi a little market tidbit here for many people sometimes if there's a big imbalance on new york yeah, yeah. it won't print rate at 9 30. yeah so they'll hold it until they can find enough liquidity. Generally, those are the ones that Ooh. you'd like to look for. The ones that have been halted. The late at nicey ones. Yes, okay. late nicey ones. Well, we even know here on the floor, right? If there's a late print on a nicey uh, order, it's because it's probably going to be a significant uh, move. All right, I'm trying to find out what's going on with my daily chart. So in the meantime, uh, let's go over and find out. And I already know who's reporting tonight, and it's not the most fancy of names. Hmm. Um, what stands out right It's too there? bad Neil's not here because his favorite energy company is on the board. Semtech? Is that an energy? Semtech, yep, close. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Keep looking. Gamer, pine, pineapple. And, ah, yep. I see yep. what you did there. Pineapple energy. I didn't do anything. Okay. That's pineapple energy on there. Nice. That is, that is, you know what I'm saying? Nice. Right. That was, that was clean. 
That was that was pretty good. Yeah, pineapple <laughs> energy's on there, so we'll have to trade that, um, and we will all bring that up to Neil. He's gonna be so upset that he's not here for that. Um, and then uh, I, I'm just looking over here to try to find some no, some more names that we may or may like to talk about. So on that note, thank you so much for those um, earnings releases, and there's not much on there. You had Walgreens today, which was a big one. We'll find out if there's anything else kicking around, but again, we're going to have Daniel Shea on, and I'm going to talk to her about some plays that I have in mind myself. We had a nice move in Adobe off earnings, which we've talked about buying those dips. So far, so good on that one. We'll talk about some of the pullbacks here recently, maybe in NVIDIA, and how we can sort of cover some of the positions if you want to hedge against some of your longs. There's some people that will write options based on their current position, so you can hedge it that way. We'll find out if there's any magic there. All right, so we talked about Palantir possibly going long off that bottom there. Now my daily chart won't even load, so that's cool. Um, so th this could be it. We just might have broke that little level there on PLTR. If the market wants to hold, the problem is sitting here trying to play the market is going to be a tough sell for me because I'm of the belief right now that we're not going to be doing a whole heck of a lot into the close. We're well under VWAP. We're holding it. I do not see us we could drift up here, but I don't really see like a major drift happening. We'll be able to get out of any of our shorts, I feel like, if that happens. Um, but if we're going to play a name here, what about a retracement back for PLTR? Um, but again, does it have enough energy in it? Now I have that pineapple energy on my mind. <laughs> like, like, if we... What I'm trying to deal with here is if we're going to get out, maybe we have to get out if it comes all the way back to 23. That's 20 cents. That might be too much. Back into here is not bad, but then we don't want to fail off the 200. Let's just, let's just try this. If we can get something back here to 2015s or so, and then maybe even just use 95 there, the bottom of the day as our out, that could be something. But then we're going long on a, on a name that's been weak today in a market that's not doing anything. Okay, uh, I'm not going to trade Palantir. I'm not going to be in that name just because it's, it's, a, it's a show favorite. Um, the, what I was looking at again was the TQs. I saw Dara train this. I saw Sharif train this. We do have Frank coming on as well. Again, if we can get up to... I, I just don't know if the market's doing anything, Obi. Like, look at this. Sideways. You know, and, and you said this before, and I was like, nah, man, we really, you know, we'd like to find some trades, put some on, and you're like, well, why would we put something on if we don't see anything? And, and I wonder if that is the case. Does anybody have anything in, this, in the chat? All right, so I'm, I'm already in this NVIDIA trade. I'm still holding a third. If this comes back up and takes the 200 period, unfortunately, I think we may just have to tap that out. I mean, it's starting to turn down in. We would have already held the 50 period here. That means we would have taken VWAP. So I'm thinking about a 906 out, which still gives me four bucks. I mean, we gotta be happy with that if that's gonna be the play. We did max out. I'm not, not gonna take the bottom. I feel like the real play, if I was gonna be more conservative right now, I would probably take this out at 903, like right into here, 903.50 something like that and not wait for that bottom. So I feel like that's worth the risk. If I was flat right now and I was thinking about going short, this would be my stop. So let's think about that. So I'm now gonna cancel my NVIDIA uh, stop right now and put it right here at 906. That guy's, uh, that guy's getting excited over there. Uh, no, no, I like it, I like that, I like that. Um, all right. What? What, what was that? Okay, anyways. Okay. Uh, you could say, fine, Ramin. It's fine. I, but regardless if I didn't get it this time, I need now I may not, not get it I'm not hearing half of this conversation. Nah, she, whatever, whatever. She's so lucky I like her. It's crazy. Um, okay. Uh, no, Sharif. Getting some FOMO here. You're also not invited to the party, apparently. Oh, okay. No, they're having a good old time up there. And I was just like, oh, man, they're having a great time up there. And then she's like, oh, I'm not invited. And so it was just like, and then she said, yeah, she's 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 an evil one. See, I'm, I'm more a of a one. I'm more she's of a Grinch. More of a you know, stay at home. <laughs> more of a stay at home, chill out kind of guy. Don't often, I mean, go to parties, but uh, not as often as. Oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if you're gonna go to a party, it's good to come you know late, well dressed, you know, yeah. get in there, slip it in. Fashionably late. Figure that out. <laughs> um, okay. Oh my God, my kids have another. How many, how many school trips do my kids get? Like, where are they even going? Oh, my, the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, hello. Nice. Man, these guys are living the life. My kids are going to the, or the symphony. 
That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the market recap show, then I got to go home. My, my daughter's in a tournament in Brampton tonight, so she's going to go there, and I got to drive my kid to South Etobicoke, my son, because we're at double hockey tonight. Wow. Wife That's north, right. yeah. I'm south. Then tomorrow on Good Friday, the, the tournament continues. So we've got another two games tomorrow, one at 10, one at three. What's that? I'm not, maybe I'm not invited to the party again. Um, and then, uh, it's okay. We'll have our own party, Sean. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, then, and now, they're going to, now they're going to the Toronto Symphony here? These guys are going crazy, man. I remember, I thought when, when I was in school, man, I thought like our, my, our, our, our trips were like, and my kids are in elementary school. I thought our trips were like to the public library and stuff like that. You know, like I think when we ever went to the zoo, by the way, shout out to the Toronto Metropolitan Zoo. That place is solid, solid. Like, if you ever want to go take a date there, Obi, something like that, the zoo? No, I'm serious. The Toronto Zoo. Sick place. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I, I, it's been a while since What's I've been there. What's your favorite exhibit at the Toronto Zoo? It's been a while since I've been there. I, I honestly don't remember. I, maybe, I, I don't know. Okay, what would be your know. favorite animal then uh, to see? I, I, like, I, like, I like cats, so I'm going to go with okay. the lions oh, and the tigers, yeah, maybe yeah. the leopards. They have some yeah, yeah, sick, yeah. They have a sick leopard enclosure there. Nice. Mine is the polar bear. Ooh. They have a really great polar bear enclosure there, and there's a couple of them. They just had a baby, too, like a couple of years ago. It's so sweet. Oh, the and last time I went was in winter. They have, like, the winter thing. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. right in, and they're swimming, and they're lounging, and they're just nice. chilling. You might have saw me chilling earlier today <laughs> as well on that couch over there. Um, but, uh, okay, so let's get that trade on right now. Yes, Apple's man. gone back to the upside, so we're still in Apple, but it's just... You can see right here, it's not really, we had emptied this trade out. I was thinking about reshorting this into 172 now. So Apple down 0.8, it is starting to make the move up. We are creeping into here a pretty key level on the, uh, on the 20 minute here for Apple. I, I like this shelf right here for a short. So we broke it and we tanked. Now we're up here. This is about an hour straight to the upside, almost an hour and a half, running into the 50 period. There, look at my screen, Obi. Oh yeah, blanked. It just blanked. It was, blank yeah, 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 yeah. was blank for a while there. It was blank for a while. I looked over. Wait, 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 you got another garbage bag around here, <laughs> Fabian? I know, I know it's in the context. <laughs> That's how you know me and Ramina aren't friends anymore. She's sending, she's sending her henchmen. <laughs> she's like, yo, henchmen, go deal with this guy. Go get it done. This guy's on the loose. <laughs> Um, but anyways, yeah, great. I, I, I think this is worth a short here. So 172 coming in one more time. So, all right, 172, 80. Look, anybody Looking have any at... questions for Obi, man? You're going to be out of here soon. Oh, uh, damn, what time is it? Because okay, we got yeah, Frank coming hour. on, and then okay, I got okay, Randy okay, coming through. Right. As I'm about to punch into a position, potentially. That's okay. Explain the position you're looking for, maybe. I mean, I, I'm, looking at, uh, I'm looking at CCL here. CCL kind of keeps on. Look at, the, look at this wick dance that it's been doing over and over again. Like, there's clearly clearly a little bit, a little bit of a bid here. So uh, I'm just, just waiting. It is the end of the day. We've made lower highs off of VWAP. Like, is it going to crack? Is it, uh, it going to hold? Right, it's it's 20 minutes away from power hour right now. Time's right in front of me. Why am I looking over there? But uh, yeah, so a um, little bit uh, a little bit into power hour. So I'm just curious to know whether or not we hold or we kind of uh, continue to do this do more of the same there on CCL. I was watching Apple as well. Apple pushing into that 172. Can it get there? WBA as well. Uh, yeah, kind of kind of coming in. Got stopped out uh, of this position. I kind of added into VWAP. Made it higher higher high. I kind of added there, maybe not the best decision, and then added more, added more, and I'm like, well, take that off. Okay. That's, not, um, that's clearly not Just quickly, the, there's the right a super there. chat here, and um, you had mentioned yesterday, I saw someone in the chat, you were talking about MSTR, I think, yesterday in Bitcoin. Was yes. there someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we have a super chat right now about MSTR. Did you have any... Uh, looks at that right sure, now. We um, yeah, we'll, we'll, have Apple, we'll have Apple. I just saw Apple here. We'll have Obi talk about that. We just got into some Apple as well. So we'll let Obi. Thank you so much, Ron uh, Miller, there for the super chat. Uh, we'll look at MST. I'll have Obi look at that in a second. We just got into some more Apple. I am going to take that 172. I actually like that it's the 50 period. Normally when it's sloping up, I'll stay away. But we'll take a little small piece right now and see what happens, hopefully to the downside um, right now. So we'll, we'll see if that's going to hold out 
right now we just shorted 71s or what was it 71 so we just shorted 71s here on apple i feel like that 56 looks pretty good so let's put a bit here at 60 see if we can get that we'll take a quick 10 cents just real quick on this if if we're able to and then hold the rest so we'll get out of like whatever, a little piece here. And then if we continue to go down, then we'll have something uh, for when we get back. But okay, just real quick, Obi on MSTR. I see that looks like there's a nice little top there. Yes. Yeah, we so, got it uh, out of Apple, by I'm, the way. I'm curious, is, does this name have like a ticker like NVDL, like NVIDIA does? Because I would love to trade this ticker here, um, but a little bit uh, a little bit rich for my, my taste in terms of, uh, or my risk, uh, in terms right. of uh, how, the, how the spread and how it kind of moves there. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful kind of uh, consolidation flat in the pre-market. Look at previous day kind of a... Uh, uh, compression, maybe you want to call it a pennant, whatever it is, a bit of a price compression. There's CCL breaking down. There's my alert. Hey, yo. So CCL, fresh uh, fresh low on the day. 45 was the low. So uh, kind of uh, going to watch that continue there. But uh, yeah, that uh, VWAP is holding as a resistance off of the open there. So we did break uh, through yesterday's low. And is this week low? What's Monday? Okay, so Monday we had that strength coming up. So that consolidation, okay, boom, right there. So that that might be coming in as well. A little bit of a Tuesday low. We broke that Wednesday low. So we broke uh, 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 the previous two day lows and then still Monday was quite strong. So maybe this week is uh, is shaping up to be a little bit of a doji. Let's take a quick look at what that Frank looks is. like. But uh, yeah, so that's what I got on, uh, that's what I got okay. on MSTR. Good, thanks for that. Obi, great. so um, I think Randy's coming by. So if, if he does come through, I mean, he could always get busy with his... Real job. So Randy will be here most likely then. Yes. Um, and so I want to thank you, Obi. Thank you so much. I know you're going to be on the midday next week. Yeah. But uh, go enjoy, the, obviously. The uh, Adobe show all, all week next week. I heard week. about that one. I heard about that one. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Adara yeah. and Obi. Yeah. The Adobe mid show. There he is. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's here a bit early. Hey but yo. he's ready to go. What's up? Look at this guy. Are, are, are you all right from the uh, the brisket here? We'll, we'll, we'll talk a lot about that. Yeah, I'm in nap zone now as well. But let's go back over. Hey, Frank, you ever had any good brisket there in Chicago? It's Frank and Sharif. All right, guys, it's time for Frank. Frank Caberna, Director of Strategy at IGUS. Just before we go on, Frank, have you had good brisket lately or what? <laughs> um, not, not lately, I guess, uh, uh, in the U S Texas, good brisket. Um, I feel like North Carolina also oh, might do the, the brisket, right. But I've, I've not had that. I have it in Texas in Chicago. There's a couple of spots, but I, I get the feeling that, um, they don't stack up, uh, to some of these other places around the U S Chicago, more of a, it's, it's, it's more Italian pizza, pasta, Good Italian American cuisine, um, not so much on the barbecue front, but um, yeah, I guess I, I guess I need to get to Toronto. Yeah, another wrong with that. You should have seen Randy and Sean elbow deep in uh, that brisket today on the big desk right here while we were doing the show. Wasn't hungry at all, Frank. But no, let's get down to business. We're talking gold today, and uh, we've got PCE coming up tomorrow. A big event took place today. Gold hit an all-time high. It's been uh, aggressively pumping up here for the last three years, uh, propelled by a number of factors, Frank. Let's get to it. Unbelievable price action we're seeing here in gold uh, today, and to your point, the last uh, few years, you had the the huge rise um, leading into and after the pandemic gave back a little bit, uh, especially as the the U.S. and uh, global central banks hiked rates there in 2022. You see that dip, um, and and gold tends to be uh, inversely correlated to interest rates. It's a non-interest bearing flight to quality. And so if I'm going to flee to quality, I'd rather own a, a high interest bearing treasury than a non-interest bearing gold. But now it, it's interesting, Sharif, that the, the interest part of it is kind of being thrown out um, because if anything, we're getting some indicators uh, in recent months that the U.S. might not cut interest rates as much and, and globally, places like the ECB and, and other central banks, they're still talking about cuts, but they're not maybe talking about as many cuts as we were in November, December timeframe. And so a lot of this gold action, and yeah, you have here the, the Fed projections, which I wanted to bring up 
Not necessarily to say, oh, much has changed, although the odds have gone from around 75% chance of a cut in June uh, down to 64% chance. And, and this is in the same time that gold has gone from around 2100 to smashing 2200 And this is just to say that interest rates and Forex are doing their own thing right now. Stocks, obviously, it's doing its own thing. The gold and commodity uh, asset classes in general are going crazy right now, and it seems to all be geopolitical. Crude oil, as we speak, hitting another year-to-date high uh, of beyond $83 a barrel for WTI. I think Brent might be at $90 a barrel. And uh, yeah, gold, uh, not just getting through 2200 but now edging closer to $2,250. Um, it, it seems to be all geopolitical to me, and, and that's why I bring in that... Uh, that uh, interest rate piece, because gold, uh, as well as stocks, most asset classes, not really caring about interest rates right now. Frank, is it fair to say that gold has become less of an inflation hedge and more of a volatility, uh, geopolitical tension type hedge, a a general store of value, Frank? how How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, 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 these things are changing constantly, right? Like the, the context is constantly changing. The, the, the correlations are constantly changing. But I can't help but at this point in time, throw cryptocurrency and gold in the same bucket, to your point, as almost a, a hedge against um, either geopolitical strife or, or you know, govern, whatever you want to say, more so than a hedge against inflation or something that's maybe more structural or something that uh, you never know where interest rates or inflation are going. Um, but I, I feel comfortable saying that that's more of a known unknown as opposed to what's going on right now, what's pushing these markets around. Um, it, it feels like more of an unknown unknown of you know just how bad uh, or how far will the Russian-Ukrainian war or the Middle Eastern war, these things uh, escalate. That's really what feels like it is driving it. And and, you know, gold was moving off of interest rates almost entirely for the last couple of years. And so this switch can flip at any point that it can go from the geopolitical piece to the interest rate piece. And those correlations can kick back in. But right now, and I, I just crunched the numbers for us, I, I should have thrown it on one of the slides here. We're seeing some of the lowest, the weakest correlations between gold and and U.S. dollar and U.S. interest rates or or currencies and interest rates in general, um, because it seems like gold, and I I bring in crypto because it seems like crypto is also seeing um, almost like a flight to quality bid on some of these days where the unknown unknowns are popping up. Frank, a lot of has been made about this soft landing and wanting to be able to get interest rates right. But that's been a bit of a, you know, a, an elusive target with especially the economy being a little bit stronger than anticipated. We got another GDP print today. It was a little bit higher than expected. Uh, the American economy is far outperforming the Canadian economy. You guys are printing a three, a three figure. We have sub one, sadly. So how does GDP factor in? Yeah, and, and you saw the stronger than expected GDP here in the U.S. by two-tenths of a percentage point here today, staying consistently above that 2% marker here for the last couple of quarters, where, as to your point, and, and Canada shouldn't necessarily feel bad that when you compare to some parts of Europe and some parts of Asia that were doing super well, everybody globally had the really good rebound from the pandemic right in in 2021 and uh at parts 22 there that's why inflation ended up escalating and, and that's a story for a different day um but uh yeah the us is really outperforming a lot of these other global economies and and that's what's funny to me is is you had the hot gdp number today which would potentially correlate to and and has we just showed you the interest rate numbers there uh and uh, the gold price chart is perfect keep this up because i'll speak to this in just a second um but the gdp number that comes out should be indicative of 
interest rates staying higher for longer, right? A hot GDP number is essentially the same as a hot employment number or a hot inflation number, which is to say, hey, the US economy is still you know, rolling here and interest rates maybe shouldn't be moved lower until we know that the inflation and everything is, uh, is under control. And you saw gold and US dollar and all the asset classes move in that direction for about 30 minutes to an hour. Gold went and traded at its session lows right after that GDP number came out and then completely did away with it. You could see the climb all the way back to the highs and then new highs on the session right after. And, and we've been hanging on to those highs um, through the uh, the precious metals futures close. And, and uh, it's it's really interesting to see because the interest rate side of things did move off that number and actually keep that uh, in mind. Like, like I say, the, the the odds of a cut coming in June, which is the projected first cut for the Fed, went from 75% chance down to 64% chance in the last week. And, and, and interest rates are higher on the day in the U.S. off of that GDP number, but uh, markets like gold and crude oil uh, doing away with that. So you're seeing the the inflation and interest rate uh, and Forex story happening over here and the gold and crypto and crude oil story happening over here, but they are not correlated at this point in time. Interesting how that's happening. I've never seen that personally. Frank, we got the dot plot last time from the Fed, and it was still projecting three rate cuts. It was a little variance between the one that we got in December. But tomorrow we get another very important print, ironically, on a day off. We get PCE. So what is the... Uh, the factor here that we need to consider with especially having uh, heard uh, Jerome Powell's last speech where he said he didn't overlook the higher January number. He knows about uh, he tried to associate that with seasonality. The February number can't really do that. But um, it, should we be concerned here if we get a higher print tomorrow? Well, I, I think we should be concerned that, yeah, it's it's a day off a market holiday with a major data release. Man, that's weird. And, and it, it frankly kind of uh, it stinks uh, for traders of those markets, but it it, uh, it it maybe shouldn't be a worrisome number the way that it's projected. It's projected to come in at two point eight percent, which would be a great print. And and keep in mind that PCE this is the number that Powell really likes. And given the how the March FOMC went, which was definitely interpreted. Uh, as being a little bit more dovish than expected. To your point, the dot plot still saying, you know, three rate cuts, three to four rate cuts this year. And pa uh, Powell saying explicitly cuts coming at some point this year, confirming that. Um, and it might be uh, that he's more confident in that uh, because he's looking at this PCE that's been printing in the two handle. And uh, this is core PCE at 2.8%. The headline PCE number is, I believe, at 2.4%. So really, his favorite inflation metric is very close to 2%, which is where central banks want inflation. And so maybe that's why he's confident in the potential for rate cuts. That being said, if this number <laughs> prints 3% or higher, then it's a really fearful uh, uh, number. Then, then it's something to fear. But if it comes in as expected, um, it, it should be uh, a relatively uh, a bullish uh, for stocks and, and bearish for uh, interest rates and, and U.S. dollar coming off of that. But uh, it, it'll be a really interesting number for uh, both sides of that potential coin. I want to digress for a second, Frank, if I can, because you brought up a really good point. You made the comparator between the headline and the core PCE on how the headline came in a little bit, uh, a little bit higher than the core. So with respect to the core, are we seeing shelter inflation here cause a, a, a bit of a, I don't want to call it an artificial increase, but is it one of the lone uh, variables in there that's keeping it high? And my question to you is a bit, a bit loaded. The reason I ask that is because, well, shelter inflation is high because interest rates are high and it's keeping mortgage rates high, et cetera. Is this a bit of a vicious circle here, Frank, that the Fed finds itself in? And, and I think that's part of the reason why Powell is a little bit more um, 
strong in his conviction for their plan to move interest rates lower. I, I, I think you you nailed the fact that um, the the central bankers see the parts of inflation at this point that are remaining sticky, that are keeping, uh, like you said, that the certain parts of inflation that are higher than others have been over the course of the last uh, two years that are that are keeping us from that that two percent print that everybody uh, wants um, as as being parts that are potentially in their control a little bit. Um, to your point, it would be different if you know energy costs and and food costs. A lot of these other pieces that the Fed has a looser control of were still printing seven, eight, nine percent year over year. Uh, in, inflation, um, and, and I think uh, again, it goes back to that piece that um, he has been a, a little bit more confident than you would think. Especially if you're looking at CPI and you were looking at uh, employment for the first three months of the year here in the U.S., you would say, "How the hell can they cut rates at this point, given how much strength you're seeing in those parts of the economy?" But I, I think you're exactly right that at this point. The stickier pieces are ones that he feels that they can control, and, and thus he's still confident about moving interest rates lower. Now, again, uh, out of nowhere, uh, inflation can uh, reprise, and, and we'll watch for tomorrow to see if they get that 2.8% or lower print. Of course, they'd love an, an even lower print, but uh, anything uh, up north of expectations could cause a little bit of a freak out, especially when we come back to the market on Sunday night or Monday morning. All right, let's hope for an inline or lower print here. Otherwise, we're all going to pay for it in the long-term portfolio, I guess, in the short term. Frank, Director of Strategy at IGUS. Frank Cabernet, thank you very much for being on. Thanks so much. Have a good one. All right, so not too many good brisket places in Chicago and uh, some good talk on gold. We've actually talked about gold uh, a couple times here on the show, and obviously I don't like it as an investment, but, um, you know, there are, there are stores of value and there are reasons to do that, especially if you're hedging against, you know, potential uh, monetary moves and whatnot. And especially, I mean, I was actually on Tesla's website the other day, and their financing rate is 6.4%. I mean, it's probably been worse. I feel like, yeah. you know, it's not in the zero days. I don't know if Tesla, Tesla was probably never a zero. Uh, no. Because the, back in the day, you could resell them. So people were lining up to buy the Tesla, yeah. drive it around a bit, and then eventually, you know, resell them. Um, someone asked me in the chat if we are short. Thanks, Frank, by the way. Um, Thanks, Frank. What the... Okay, so NVIDIA, unfortunately it just happened right now. Darn it. Um, all right, so we'll take that money and run. So we're now out of NVIDIA. You know, we did give it up. Like I said, a more responsible out could have been 903. We'll take a 906 break right now. Just happening. That sucks that we're out of it. But, you know, it didn't break lower where we thought it would have. So that's too bad. Right before we got on with Frank, we were down at 902. So that kind of sucks to be a part of that, but we are. Um, all right, now... That trade's done. I mean, NVIDIA is a good trade. I'm not, not disappointed with the way, disappointed with the end result, but not disappointed with the way we traded it. Um, Cause I feel like we got some really good trades in there. And again, uh, we didn't, we already got out of the majority of that trade. All right. Um, Apple is a new one here against 173. We talked about, or 172, sorry. We talked about it coming back into this level. We also talked about, we probably should have got out of NVIDIA because I was, thinking that this market was pretty dead. Remember, I'm like, I don't see any reason to go back to VWAP, but I still don't. Like, I don't know what that move was about right there. If anybody knows how the biggest move all day happens randomly when Frank comes on. Like, I, I just, I don't know what's up with that. Um, nice move to the upside. Apple's still a very negative name here. I'll short it. So we're short. So we shorted Apple up there. Maybe we should have got back into NVIDIA, but it's okay. NVIDIA is still where we are right now. I still feel like we want to reshort this at 910 if we can get there. So let's just stay focused on that as a play. Okay. Um, okay. So there's that. Um, okay. Hey, Randy. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. I mean, we just, I just wanted to tell everybody that we, I didn't actually realize we we're that close to getting stopped out of um, NVIDIA, but I'm happy with it. And new position there in Apple. And I, I forgot. You know, we were, we were talking about um, 
Adobe, the, 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 the midday show, but we forgot, obviously, to say Shreve's still here, so safe travels and best of luck, and I hope the experience um, you, you know, sir. is Thank everything you. That, it, that you deserve it to be. So shout out to my guy Sharif there, and we'll wish him a uh, fun time when he's uh, running around the safari <laughs> trying to find those gorillas <laughs> to fight. So um, no, but that's what I mean. He's done Take a lot of research of on this, so we hope that he has a photos. big successful trip. So yeah. shout out to Sharif. Taking off tomorrow. Kenya, I believe, and then landing, and then, yeah. Wow. Doing like a whole safari. It's crazy. Yeah, I'd have to bring my whole, like, I was saying, like, I think he's going by himself, but, you know, to bring my whole family, like, I, I, my kids, I don't know, I, I don't. I think the wife and I could go to the safari. But you've already ridden an elephant. Yeah, that's right. You remember that in Bush remember Gardens. remember that, yes. Imagine when you could ride in Africa. The funny joke in my house is I called it an elefante or something like that when I was, I was so <laughs> small then. <laughs> It's not even that funny. Mm. Um, all right, so wow. all right, yeah, safe travels to my guy back there. That is that is for sure. Um, okay, so uh, all right, let's go do the uh, IG ad read quickly. Get as this part of the show is brought to you by IG. Get as much as fifty to one leverage when trading forex at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as two percent margin rates and offer zero dollar commissions trading using a forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to $10,000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, the chat, just, just so Sharif knows, the chat is still saying, like, good luck to Sharif and best oh, Hey, make, safe sure, make sure you ride an elephant while you're have there. A, have a wild trip. Yeah, so it's Kenya. So I just confirmed all that. <laughs> I the heard him mention Kenya. that. So yeah, shout out, shout out to the big that's, man that's over crazy. there. All right, uh, see you, dude. See you, dude. He out of here. He gone. Uh, all right. Thanks a lot, Sharif. Uh, we'll do our best to fill in. Um, all right. So, hmm. Let's go. Uh, it's whether or not. Yeah, exactly. That's what we were talking about. He, well, he was talking about how some of the gorillas in the wild there, you can actually interact with them. I'm not petting a gorilla. That's what I said. No. No. No, nope. thanks. Uh, we but, were talking about the Chinese EVs and yeah, how they've had what do you such think? a struggle because, you know, there's over 100, 100 Chinese EV makers. What? Um, 100. Hmm. So, I did not know that. I, 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 I struggle to see how they, they can make profits when there's so much competition. But, you know, Xiaomi. Yep, yeah. They make phones and all phones. kinds of really good stuff. I almost bought a Xiaomi check, phone check, and then I realized the out. Chinese government would be listening to everything I said. They announced this. Shout out to TikTok. It's called the SU7. Tell me what that looks like. It looks like a marriage Porsche. between Porsche or a, maybe a bit of Tesla Model S. I like the I like the slope. This is down. a good look at, look looking at that. car. Yeah, the hood looks nice. Um, seventy thousand US. I know. Remember, me and you talked about that. I just wonder about the tariffs that are going to get slammed on that. That thing's still got to come across, and it's not about it being built in China. I know I, I mentioned that, and you said, "Well, the iPhones are built in China." The brisket's not built in China. You're okay with your stomach over there? I just noticed oh, you get, yeah, I know. It's still, that's good. Yeah, it's still settling. It's digesting. Um, but uh, anyways, the idea behind that, I guess, is if, if these is guys, the import tax or the tariffs. If these guys just start, decide to start building here, though, mm. you know, then what? Look, um, you see my screen go black? There? Another, a brand new one went black. Rob's not here. Oh, well, would that matter? But the thing is, is that screen <laughs> just went completely black. It's, it's, a, it's a driver. All right, someone actually, Sebastian just said, ask Randy about the Xiaomi car, and then you just brought it right So I, I haven't read much, Sebastian, on this. It, it's called the SU7. I don't know how many horsepower it's got. I love the look of it. Now, has Xiaomi built a car before? Mm, I don't think so. Um, it, it's a good looking, like, look at that. Chinese That's batteries sexy. catch fire for no reason. Have you heard of anything like okay, that? Okay, but, but there's Chinese batteries in, in, in your phone and in your watch and in your car and in your, your everything yeah, you own. I'm okay with it. CATL, all these battery companies. I, I think the difference made. is, Randy, is, is that when you're buying something like an iWatch, it's a couple hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more than that nowadays. Uh, or your phone is a, a grand, 1600 You get subsidized by AT&T, mm -hmm. Rogers, whomever. When you're putting down 80 grand for a car... It's kind of like, so my question to you is this, and I know we've done this before, is that where, where would you get that? Would they then have to set up a service base? They absolutely would have, okay. you know, a service and support network here in North America. Oh, Nvidia back down. For every, you know, everything they sell. You have to. You can't, you, can't, you know, they're not going to Amazon it to your door and expect you to install it. Covering yourself. some Apple here just to everybody. Yep, keep going. Yep. So, you know, the Chinese have really come around in the last couple of years. And look at, look, look at this thing. 
Like I wow. I think it's pretty nice. I mean, I like That's the blue hot. there. Shout out to that Pepsi blue that Sharif always talks about. Yeah. So I mean, or Miami blue like Porsche does. I, I just I think you know if these start showing up on mass to our shores, uh, <laughs> isn't that a problem? But no, it's it's, it's good and bad. But it's would good that for be, consumers because prices are lower? Then? Like, what do we think? So this is it. This gives the big three a whole lot of stiff competition in terms of Because there's no price. more net advantage then for them to be production mm -hmm. in the United States if we let these guys. I mean, look at Tesla. They've re, you know reinvented the but electric game here in the I United States. I think Tesla States. showed you know how many years ago now showed the rest of the world how it could be done, how it could be built, and now they're building them. Are they going to beat them at their own game for, you know, for a, a lower cost? And is it an equally uh, quality product? And uh, time will tell, but this is a good looking car. I mean, again, you've looked at VinFast and some of the other uh, automakers that are not in North America, and they're building really good things. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. I, I was also looking at the commercial EV space because we don't ever talk about, we always talk about EVs. We talk about... Oh, right. I mean, you talked about this. You're, you're going to the vans? Well, because the vans, everything we own yep. is delivered by a truck. Truck. The hat on your head, the groceries in your fridge, everything comes, you know, either if to your door or the last mile or the big box store yep. yeah, or your right. grocery yeah, store yeah, 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 yeah. in That's a truck. That's why I still like energy. I still like oil. Actually. Right. And now we've got oh, uh, vans. We've got... Uh, electric FedEx vans, we've got the Amazon vans, Ford has an e-transit, you can see it on my screen here, and then there's the e-sprinter from Mercedes-Benz, and we never talk about commercial vehicle deliveries. And does anybody care? No, Meh. Not as much. But you should. Because I think, I think it's a big, I think it's a big uh, margin business, no? Because it's a big margin business, number one. And number two, if, they, if the couriers or the Amazon or FedEx, if they can lower, we just talked about the FedEx report uh, this past quarter, if they can lower their costs by not buying diesel fuel and oil changes and all the other expensive things and end up with one of these electric vans, mm -hmm. would they potentially pass on those savings to you and I? Potentially. So, I mean, the thing is, is that, these are Mercedes. There's Mercedes. Where does that come there's in? Ford. Uh, Where does that come in with Rivian? Because there's a lot of traders that here are looking at, um, and first of all, okay, I'm going to short again NVIDIA, by the way, at 906 because I, I want to I wanna get, get back on that train real quick. Uh, right now, we did take some Apple profit, and I um, interrupted a little bit there to tell everybody that we did cover some down here at 86, 87, and then we put another bid here at 83 because the 50-period moving average, we're short at O's. So that just went 17 cents right back down. So yeah, we're, you know, we did take a bid there. Now Apple's trying to go back up to the upside here, as you can clearly see. And then there's our NVIDIA trade just coming in right now at 905.50. We are also waiting for 905, uh, sorry, 906. And then I just want to see if we take that. Let's see if we take 90730, honestly. All right, NVIDIA, I'll, I'll dance with you for a couple dollars here because, you know, we've hit it here. We only screwed up here, which was fine. Um, we wound up losing $3, but I, I'm fine with this. We hit this back short at 9.11. There's that Porsche number again, Randy. We hit that all the way down to 9.07. That's $5. We shorted again. We took another $5. Then we took another 5 and now we're back short again right now. So basically, NVIDIA has been a good trade for us. Let's wait till this level, 9.08 and a quarter. If we break 9.08 and a quarter, so what I do now is just so everybody can get in my mentality, which is not necessarily a good thing, I, I go short here and I figure out if I'm wrong, what's the damage? And I, I try to look at my net and figure out, am I willing to do that on this kind of a trade? So I like NVIDIA today. We've talked about it getting hit the last couple days. It has big moves to the downside. So now we're short. We're a dollar in the money on this short already right now. But we're going to hold for a little bit more, playing off this 908.25. And by the way, Randy's also has full charts open. Uh, he's in TMS, though. So Randy won't be putting on any trades. But if you do have any questions or comments, Randy's in the chat for any specific stock uh, talk. Uh, just quickly, Randy, I'll give you a name to look at. RIVN, if we look at the chart here. Right, um, yeah. You've been mentioning there's a, there's a case to maybe buy this on dips. Now, unfortunately, my day chart looks like bad word. A with some maybe squiggly lines in there, uh, letters. Uh, but right here, this is what Rivian looks like, man. We are, we're, I mean, the all-time low is 10 yeah. bucks made back in early to late February, early March. Um, but we are bouncing off. I mean, this chart doesn't look that good, unfortunately, but down at 11 bucks. You just mentioned Vans. So Vans. Rivian has that. Rivian has the van right? contract with Amazon. However, 
you can buy a Rivian van. It's not just Amazon. It's not exclusive to Amazon. Oh, really? Not on their website. They want to. No, can it's you? a commercial vehicle. Okay, right. Okay. So you'll you'll be as you know a fleet manager or a, if you own a courier company, you'll be able to get your hands on an electric, mean, um, an electric okay. Rivian van for yourself. You know, and if you if if you're a smaller than Amazon company, if you're a local courier and you can get one of these vans, no oil changes, you know, no cost of fuel, diesel, whatever the the normal vans run. Now. You can deliver these packages possibly cheaper. Would that? Would you pass that on to your customers? Maybe. I mean, but I'm even thinking though, even for like you know our caterer, like you see the yeah. van that he rolls yes. in. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's one of these. It's exactly. like a box van. He comes in a cube van. There. Yeah. There they are on on your screen. Like, is it, one of those the Rivian model or no? Well, what? that's the, there's the. They're all the Rivian model. The Rivian, but again, they're not just solely. I mean, for that's Amazon. an ugly van. No? That's an ugly van. I mean, you're not going to. Well, you know what? With the Amazon thing on it, I guess if you're noticing it as a. As a delivery vehicle, I think it's okay. No, I've actually yeah, changed my opinion. But it, it, it's not, look at that windshield. Like that's that's. It's like a fish tank. That's yeah. It's, it's not. It's not about style. But it's about yeah, functionality and reliability. And again, they're not just selling them to so Amazon. What do you think those go for? Have they had a price point on them yet? I have not seen the price on that, but I imagine they're pretty reasonable. Again, they're not feature laden, but you know they've got a, you know enough toys in them to help. The drivers get around to addresses and so forth. Someone but said 90k. Because everything you own is delivered by a truck. The coffee in your cup, the hat on your head, everything. You know, if if all these companies that own these fleets can get an electric, yeah, right. especially the inner city fleets, right, to lower the costs. I mean, it's all about costs. I yes, think. and you know, would they pass those costs on to consumers? Maybe not. But you know, it, it, it's a huge. Um, potential to the market, and we don't talk about them lots because, again, they fly under the radar. They're not a, you know, a, a thing you see on the news. I mean, you might see. We're kind of excited here when we saw the FedEx ones, but what are you doing? Disaster strikes. Microphone issues. Well, you know. Yeah. Our lady friend over there always Uh-oh. has something to say. Ram ram. So she sends henchmen over here, and then he's like, <laughs> he's too She's scared. Back him over here. Look out. There, no, it's fixed. See what happens? Yeah, just a to do. friendship situation happening here again. <laughs> I'm never wearing this sweater again because this seems to be a problem. Oh. I'm trying to promote a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. The heck was that? Jeez. You're in trouble now. Oh, boy. I am net. Okay, next time, Randy, we have to get like multiple briskets because, like, oh, boy. I've noticed what happens I'll- if we forget to get. Things for other big, I'm a big brisket uh, guy. I, I can eat brisket. Oh day man, night. I'm yeah. still feeling ways from that. <laughs> it feels like a Friday. Okay, uh, yeah, it does. Well, that's why we're here, right? We're having a good time. Having All right, so time. we, um, you know, we're 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 back into this name. We can take pieces out. I mean, we have enough on board here to get this out at the 50 period moving average. Do we want to take this or not? I mean, the market is at VWAP. If we continue to go higher, we don't want to put an L on the board here for NVIDIA. So I'm, I'm thinking about taking that. Where, what is that? I'll just take a piece, that's all. Uh, ah, now it's starting to go back up to the upside here. All right. Let's sit at 50, uh, and we'll see if we can get a piece there on NVIDIA. I mean, it's, it would, dad, literally... Uh, be a dollar. So we'll see if we can get that right there uh, for a dollar on that. Um, and, then, and then we'll hold the rest. So, you know, let's, let's party, right? Let's party like it's 2023. So you have any Easter plans? Yeah, I'm going to go 2024, see my... 2024, my bad? <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm going to go see my folks on the weekend and, yeah, family visits, Easter things. Uh, tomorrow is a, a holiday? Yep. Uh, a day off, day to sleep in. Yeah, that's Get nice. some chores must done be, around the that house. Must be, that must be real nice. Um, it's not yeah. snowing. Well, you, know, you got hockey and all that good stuff, but yeah. you're on the road. I kid about it because I, I love going to their hockey games. Hockey's amazing. It's so much fun. The hockey parents are absolute maniacs. It's great. Yes, you are. Um, you are. Uh, I'm not one of them, of course. You're not? Not the average Potentially hockey I am. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is really, really into it. She volunteers in the... Um, in the change room to get all the girls ready and everything. So it's, she's been having a blast. That's awesome. Uh, in there. It's been such a, I'm just I mean, walking. I still have, I mean, I still have, I mean, this is her right there. She plays tonight and then two games tomorrow. Then here's my son on the other side. Superstar. So there's my guy right there. That's all. Oh, nice. Yeah. So he's, that's he's awesome. going to the game. I love it. I'm just watching Ford bounce around here because you know what Ford did this week? Uh, had a recall. No, they did not announce a recall this Bang! week. Bang! They did not announce. Why do I own that? A stock, recall man? this week. I, I was looking for one and I didn't see one. I, I might have missed it. 
Um, but Ford's up uh, just a percent. Yo, what's up, there. rational so it was, analysis? It was a little this guy bit. works at well, Young and Wellesley. Yeah, wonder wow. where. That's. I mean, you can Google where we are. We're right there, so you can come see us. Rational analysis. Come on, come come through. You want to come through tonight? That's crazy. Come through. Bring brisket. Yeah, just don't, don't, no, just bring me a coffee, one milk. Or a coffee. Yeah, that works. Yeah, bring Ramin whatever the hell she wants. You tell me, you're, you don't bring Ramin something, this guy's not getting in the building, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so what's up, rational analysis? No. You, 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 you let me know if you want to swing by and ring the bell tonight. See, you see what, I, you see what we do here at yep. Trader TV Live? We are for the damn people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You're around here, you come and ring that bell if you want. Uh, okay, um, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Uh, NVIDIA is becoming, it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, starting to go up to the upside. Of course, we are just flat right now on this trade. I'm going to put another bid down here at 9.05 now because now we've got, a little bit, uh, we've got a little bit of equity in the game right now, so a little bit of skin in here um, as we go. If we take this out, though, sorry, it's not even that level. So I'm not putting on, we're not, we're not about to ruin any days here or anything like that, okay? So this is just... I feel like NVIDIA falls. We'll put on one more piece here at like 908 flat. And then I have the stop up here at 90850. That's 909. I don't even want to give it to all the way up here. We'll try something in and around here, 907. Then if we break higher, we break higher. I'm just, it's not, and, and Obi had said this before too. It's like, if something doesn't set up, maybe we shouldn't be involved. Yeah. And, and we had just talked about the futures kind of making this move out of nowhere. We got Apple back in. Apple's still fine. Apple's seven cents in the money. But NVIDIA is a completely different beast. I mean, we're out of the money a dollar right now, but it's still fine. I, I'm not, this is not a stressful situation. Uh, but, you know, we'd like to, every time you lose, you do lose. I was on a Reddit forum, a Reddit, a subreddit. Uh, a yep. subreddit. You read it, yep. Um, and it, not one that I'm normally in, and they were talking about NVIDIA deliveries and that there were some delivery... There's so much demand for well, now we're getting every, everything they make, from cars to, you know, Bitcoin miners to whatever, uh, for their GPUs and their chipsets, and they, they were having, you know, delivery issues on certain models because they just couldn't get them out the door fast enough. So I'm wondering if that's going to affect their, their not long-term, but short-term... Um, outlook. So I'm going to try and dig into that some more over the weekend. Another little weekend reading task uh, to take a look at. For them. Yes, a there's, there's absolutely crazy demand for their GPUs. I, and then the other one I'm looking at, of course, is good old XOM. Oh, good old. Good look at old this. They're up, look at this. They're up 10 percent this month. And I'm going to walk back some of the comments I made on Friday because I thought the outlook for oil maybe wasn't that. Um, that rosy again, turbulence in the Middle East and and you know uh, issues here and there, but they've managed to get their costs down and their rig count up. And look at this climb in the last in the last month. Like this is fantastic. We're up we're almost a percent and a half on the day. Um, I'm going to change my my thoughts on this just a little bit. This has been uh, a good play, not only on the daily chart, but again, just even short term in the last month. This is this has been a fantastic run. I think. I think, and I got some more research to do on this, I think they're going to be able to hold this trend for a while. So I like the look of, uh, of XOM Chevron. They're kind of tailing behind, but um, I really do like this. And uh, we're, as the summer driving season comes up and right. you know people get the toys out, the boats and all the other good stuff, especially up here because we have winter, um, you know, the demand for gasoline and refined products goes up. With that, you've got uh, refined product demand on their side. That's a profit maker for them. So I, I really like the the short term next uh, call it quarter outlook for XOM. So by the way, I just I just bring this to everyone's attention. So we shorted more Nvidia, and we just covered some uh, right here to take out some some risk. We are now starting to head back down in. So let's go. Um, we are now short at a 906.70. Uh, but again, th this was an average out. So it's, you could see the average price is at the bottom. We just got out there at 906.47. We did get that top short right there. So um, we're, we're, now, we're now doing pretty good uh, on this position, but we do have an out down here right now. It's actually at 905, pretty much 905 flat. Maybe we'll, we'll change that to 905.40. I don't know if that's going to, 
if that really matters at this point. If it, com if it comes in good enough, we'll take it. Uh, okay, so 9.05. By the way, Apple's coming back in right now, which is real damn nice for us over here as well. Let's go Apple, a nice move in let's go uh, right now. Yeah, let's go charts, let's go Apple. You probably put in the wrong code there. Uh, Tilray is NY, I know That's it's, it's weird. Um, okay, there's a nice move down into 171 and change uh, right now. Let's put another bid at, at, at 86 here for Apple. We have another bid down, down lower as well. Let's see if Apple can, can get going down mm, to the no. downside. We have 30 cents in the money. Uh, just hit enter again, TLRY. I did. Uh, NY. Oh no, it's NQ. What am I telling? What am I telling well, you? It was NQ, but yeah, it is NQ. Doesn't matter. It won't load on. Hit it again. It just won't load at all. T L R Y. I had it. Oh, that's why. Uh, okay, so here here comes uh, yeah, Nvidia. Good. So Rainy's going to obviously talk about some. Uh, cannabis names in just a second. Uh, right now, there it goes. We just wicked down to 90570. All right, so that's okay. We have enough pressure now to come back in. It's nice to see that this is a um, nice buy candle at the top with that wick. Generally speaking, when you see a wick top like that, you're going to want to see it with some kind of volume. So hopefully this pushes back down into the downside right now. Come on down, Apple. You're the next contestant on what's hopefully going to make Sean some money um, down into the downside. So we just get some fills down there. Still only a dime piece. Come on now. All right, come on, NVIDIA. Here we go. We're now a dollar in. This position was against us, so obviously we're getting a little more excited uh, right now about it. But we are bidding uh, 905.55 right now. Randy, give me your lucky number. 14. Okay. I'll remember that. <laughs> we talked on Friday, Tilray versus CGC. I might just get out. This is, yeah, keep going. <laughs> You're going to get out? No, no, because it's coming into my price. I just don't want to miss it. Okay, go ahead. Yep. And Tilray's been weak or weaker than Canopy. You had a comment to make that I don't think we finished on Friday. Yep. About U.S. I mean, they have a bigger presence in the U.S. Um, is is it inflation? Is it the you know the weaker economy overall affecting people's disposable income that can't afford to buy or are buying less of Tilray's products versus CGC? Or why is that? Why are they weaker in your opinion? Um, well, we we had talked about. Oh, man. Damn you, NVIDIA. How did that miss me at 906.50 there? I feel like we did. It printed through. I don't... Maybe we were just at the wrong penny. We just, we just put the bit up there into the... Uh. All right, we're at 905.56. Hopefully that comes back in. Damn you. Uh, okay, so the question was CGC versus Tilray. So um, let me just look at the market cap real quickly here because I know they're both really bad. Uh, all right, so CGC's market cap right here, only 700 million uh, versus Tilray. Get down, NVIDIA. I don't know how we got missed there. I hope you guys took some of that out. I don't know. Sometimes our trades get... I don't know. Uh, 1.86 billion. Okay, so that, so that was the answer that I was going to give you. So looking here is, is that... Tilray is just a larger market cap. Just, right. It's double the size. Okay, there it is. We got it. Oh, yeah. There's a nice move downside there for NVIDIA. That's, that's trading there, Ramin. Right there. Nice move to the upside. No way. Nice move to the downside right there. So we'll take that and we'll see what happens now as we go. I have no idea why I just like called out Ramin there. She clearly is not a trader. Um, but all right. So we just have fun. All right. All um, right. Yeah, so I just think CGC, a little more debt under there, a um, little more levered company. They've already uh, reverse split. Um, I, I, I think Tilray versus CGC, I would pr prefer to trade and hold Tilray. Yeah. I think they're more diversified as a company, but CGC is pretty good too. Uh, I'm just a little bit distracted here, Randy, because we no are worries. starting to get down to the downside right now. We're Look, we have multiple shares here, and now we're starting to cook. So this is a good position for us. We are bidding down here at a 9.04.50, um, and we just stopped at 9.04.75. So let's see if we get a push back in right now into the bottom area here, in and around 9.04.50. That's where I'm bidding uh, this, this monster that is known as NVIDIA. So, um, yeah, well, what do the charts look like for you, CG? I'm just, I'm just looking at Tilray here. Look at the week they've had. Like, come on. Like, there's, it's their, but do they have more exposure because of the broader U.S. market and, you know, CPI and things going against them? Do they have, you said, more leverage or less leverage based on debt? You know, about, yeah. is, is, this, uh, is this kind of a fake ride or are we looking at something bigger, you know, as... Uh, I, mean, I as just saw people carried. in the chat even said, I mean, maybe it's, again, not having, you know, like, you know, experimented with individual companies there. Is it possible that maybe CGC 
with the move higher just has better products. Possibly. You know, Possibly. I mean, it's kind of like when we look at a chart of XYZ oil company versus the other, the underlying product is oil. Yes. But are you manufacturing it better? Are you more efficient with your operations? Um, this is what I'm trying to find. Because again, Tillery's had an incredible week, Apple even a month. Up, so I, I'm just curious as to the backstory behind them. Because they've, they've had a great run here for, for quite a while. So just, just curious. Okay, yeah, some people saying Tilray. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should put up, you know, why don't we put up a poll if we can do that? I have actually no idea how to do it because my account is Me restricted, either. probably something Ramin did. Uh, but um, we can just put it up. What do, you, what do they like as an investment for the next yeah, six months? That's, that's my or, question or to all of you year. on the show is, is you know, why, why would I choose Tilray over, over Canopy? And, um, you know, what are the factors involved here? Because, again, Tilray's had an amazing week, if not month, and quite a run here, but you know, is there exposure to again consumer confidence and, and CPI and all the other factors that are sort of affecting their their product sales? But it, it, it's been an, it's been quite a story. Apple just got run. Uh, um, better investment next six months. CGC, really, or TLRY? Yeah, just two. That's fine. We'll, just, we'll, we'll try that. Okay, um, so for some reason there, and honestly, we'll slap a fail. We actually don't wind up losing money. We actually wind up making money. Uh, but Apple does start to go back up to the upside. The reason why I can tell you is we didn't average back in. So when this started to come in, I mean, the 50 period is our juice. Like, that was good, man. We took it out there on the dip. We took it out. We took it out. And then eventually it breaks. That's why you want to delever sometimes and de-risk your position. So, um, yeah, we did that on Apple. Uh, I still have the complaint in about this. Apparently, this is starting to happen to other people's charts as well. So I was just told, oh, you know what I could do, actually? I forgot about this. You can reset them. You can actually clear the cache here uh, somewhere. Uh, display, it's in here. Chart data. It cause trouble. Uh, where is it? Clear data right here. Okay. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. No, we it's fine. I go. actually don't mind. Yeah, I'm actually going to close it now. This is how much confidence I have in this software. Like um, all right. We're, your browser we're open it back up and now, kaboom. Sort of all right, let's see what happens here. If I can zoom in and back, no, see, darn no. it. Yeah, see, I can't, see, I see how I can zoom in? I think the, the charting software is already on the weekend. Yeah, okay, so hear me, let me see. I'm going to say uh, CGC. Let's see, Fifth, see, this is how, look, you're, you're asking the exact right question. Oh, it's flat. Really? And so no one can really make up their mind right there. Yet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, all right, so that, that's a good one there. All right, what's everybody else, um, what's everybody else trading there? Um, oh, someone asked about Nikola there. Have you heard anything about those guys? Are, are they Not, even still a symbol? They there? are out there. A dollar, I've, ooh. I haven't heard much, if, if, if anything. I mean, they're, I, I, you know what, they, they should be more on my radar, and I, that's my own fault. But uh, no, I haven't heard a lot of news or, or anything good or bad. Um, they're still around, which is, I guess, a good thing. But no, I, I haven't followed Nicola, and, and Sharif asked me on... Oh, did he? Okay. On Wednesday of last... No, this week. So I need to do some digging into them and see what, uh, what's going on in their world. But yeah, they've kind of fallen off my radar. Again, they don't get the attention of... Well, nobody gets the attention of Elon, but, um, of, of, or this week, Fisker, because of all their, their mayhem, um, or, or even some of the Chinese EVs. They're, they're a smaller uh, version of the big guys, but I will, I will promise you, I will dig into them and report back next week. Does it sound good? That sounds fantastic. Fantastic. Right. We got Neil back. I actually messaged, actually, yeah, let me check. When's he back? back? I messaged him. He mentioned me back. Uh, maybe he's traveling or whatnot. Actually, oh, wow. hold on. My WhatsApp's not loading. Oh, he did message me back. Oh, they're back. He's back. He's back? Yes, he's back. Back again. Neil's chilling out. Not in Florida. Uh, we're back <laughs> now. Um, yeah. So he's saying in hindsight, because I, I had asked him, I was like, dude, the game's in, in St. Pete's. Like, you're in Florida. You're there for um, spring training. Are you going to the game tonight? Because it's home opener, uh, season opener for the Blue Jays, home opener for Tampa Bay. Right. And he's down there. He was a half hour away. Love to be. Uh, would have been, I think, it would have been nice for him to stay. He said he's back. So, okay, all right, all right. Uh, I was hoping to welcome see. Welcome back, Neil. Yeah, welcome back. And uh, we'll he'll be back sitting in this exact spot on Monday, as, of course, we are closed tomorrow uh, for Good Friday. So, Good Friday, 
to everyone out there. Sleep in, dude. In, uh, yeah, sleep in. Are you, tro are you trolling me now, too, or what? Uh, all right, nice move to the downside right here, 9.03. Yeah, first game tomorrow is 10 a.m., which isn't bad, but it's in Brampton, which I got to get to. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, bad. Neil's in Brandon. Maybe I'll go say what's up to him. It's not that bad. Um, no, it's not that bad. It's 40 it's, minutes. It, we know 30 minutes. Tomorrow's a holiday. That's right. The no traffic. All right. No speeding. Thank you, Randy. No speeding you kind tickets. of made my day. Tonight on the Market Recap Show, special guest Randy. No. I mean, you, I mean you're welcome to stay. But we will have Danielle Shea. I know you got to go. So we got, yeah, we got, I got a Danielle Shea go. on. Um, and we had, Randy, you are going to be a guest on our podcast at some point. Absolutely. But we had an absolutely banger. Uh, do we have a graphic for that? I, I can show a graphic for our podcast if we have one. Or, I don't have a podcast. It's okay. But we had Kunal on yesterday. Oh, we have this one. Uh, did you just hit it? No. Okay, I'll, I'll hit it. We ha That's Travolta. We have this. We have this. Scan it. Y'all get the best podcast of the weekend happening Saturday morning, but we had Kunal Desai come through. I could go, I mean, I tweeted something out with him on it. You can look at that. No, that's the market recap show. Oh, yeah, I forgot to send it to you. Okay. No problem. Yeah, Ramin forgot to send me something. You know, the only day she forgets to send me something is the day that we're going, we're having our spat here, which we are not, by the way. <laughs> That brisket, stop. <laughs> Why are you calling up pictures of brisket? Oh, like, I'm looking over to you. We're going to have to, um, we're going to have to reconvene and, and have a second round of, of brisket. Yeah, we are. We're going to go. We're going to go. I haven't done it at home in, in quite a while. We're going, we are, so, yeah, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take orders. I will, um, I will do connected. some on my smoker and oh, I'll bring some in. I do a Texas style, salt and pepper, a little bit of mustard. Yeah, you, you added some salt to today's, correct? A little bit, not too much. Um, but it's an hour per pound on my smoker. So if you buy a 14-pound brisket, and you get the yeah, fire going yeah. in the morning, and you got to let it rest out. It's an all-day adventure. It's 16 hours. Yeah, so you get up at 4 in the man? morning, you and back, you, you don't eat till 7 at night. Oh, it's, it's, and you know you've got, at the end of the day, you've got that good stuff coming Oh, away. the burnt ends. and I, I enjoy the whole process, but again, it's a commitment. It's, like I said, Dude, now you're talking about burnt ends and stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Randy, oh. point, flat, or packer? Uh, point. And then, I mean, I, I'll trim, and I'll separate the point from the flat, but oh, I, I love the burn ends. Oh, man, you got to have know. a good butcher, I right? I mean, it's... I do. I have a fantastic right. butcher. He's awesome. Triple A Angus. Um, it's not that expensive, but Thank it's... Thank you, Chef Joe. Matt, I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. I, 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 I love the point. It's just a, a little more crispiness. And you're telling little... me that you're all about... Um, Putting in the, uh, I was well, and Nvidia's trying to break 905, which is pretty nice right now to the downside. So here we go. Oh, sorry, I have it up on the screen too. Uh, here, look at Nvidia. I just want to talk about it because I feel like I should put a bid here. But do we want to dance and see if this breaks tonight? Yeesh. Into this 90900, a little 900 action. Hundy. You want to see a 900? Want to see a 911? You guys want to see an eight dollar winner here? We're already five in the money. Do we want to? Do we want to put? Do we want to put a stamp on this day? Right now? So you're buying the next round of brisket, though? Yes, I, I already told you, 100%. I mean, the best part about going to lunch with Randy is apparently you try to pay, and this guy just pays. So thank you, Randy. Yeah, damn it, we should have got it for Ramin and all that. You know, then it would have been, you know. Yeah, next round, obviously. The reason why, we're going back 100%. Oof. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, uh, like Neil has to go. Oh, yeah, we'll take Neil. Yeah, like, Sharif's going to go when he gets back. From, yeah, Sharif's going to go. He yeah, won't be, Sharif, he'll be gone for a while. We're, so. going, we're all going. Yeah, we're all we're going. going. Except for the guys that have to run the board over there. You know, they've got to run the show. We'll, we'll, we'll just take everybody and close the so show. Unfortunately, for, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, if you can't go, you can't get any, I guess. Yeah. You know, we'll have to we'll figure that out. Um, all right, let's dance. Let's dance with no show that day. No show that day. No show? Yeah. Well, you know, we'll get it for the podcast. Maybe one podcast. We'll get it. We'll just have the brisket right there. It'll be like... Little late afternoons. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have a lot of fun today and all day. So thank you everybody for watching. And by the way, Randy, we hit four 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 today. Four hundred and forty four thousand. That. That's thank subs. you everyone. That's that's a fantastic goal. I love it. Let's I love go. It. We're um, trying. Okay, we're gonna go over the desk. Brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for twenty percent off. Thank you, Tiger Miss, on our screen. Miss Adara. Randy just asked if I wanted coffee, and no better of a offer have I heard. Unless you're going to go get brisket. You're going to get more brisket. Uh, all right. Oh, I, um, I took my, I got my kid's screen repaired. I was telling you about that. 70 bucks. So th this is the whole right to repair thing. We've been buying 
phones from Apple or Samsung. Go get the coffee. Or, we'll talk about it after because yeah. your mic I mean, is on. I, why I not fix it? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, afterwards. Okay, let's go. Um, all right, guys, we are now only, and again, thank you so much. I mean, it does mean a lot to all of us. Where's that YouTube plaque? I, I'm, I'm on one right now. We got, I want to show that. Um, all right, so uh, I want to thank everybody for joining and thank you for being a part of our family because we're just getting started and you definitely have found the right place. That is for sure. Uh, thank you, Fabian, for that. I mean, this is what it's all about for us. You know, we should get like, um, there you go. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, we should get like a little holder here. We just put it on here, and then I knock it over. There it is. Oh, look, you can see. Oh, look at that. You see, in, uh, you see in my reflection right there. Where's Fabian? Can't see him. Where is he? There he is. Hey, yo, yo, what up? We can make TikToks here, bro. Look at this. Look at this. What am I doing? Okay, anyway, shout out to everybody right there. Um, thank you so much. No love for arm. Okay, you want to see some love for arm, Matt Carnes? All right, let's go. Uh, all right, let's go see some arm right now. Ooh, la la. Oh, earlier on in the day, thank you, Matt, again. I, I always feel like we talked about 128. We talked, I can't believe what's going on with my daily charts right now. Uh, but we talked about 128, didn't we, earlier this morning? Coming into right there with Obi when we were battling with these NVIDIA demons, which right now, let's go, NVIDIA. You are close to making this a Good afternoon again. Uh, 128 coming in. That just bounced off there right away. Nice downside move. If you're going to play short off 128, Matt, I feel like you got to cover right now too. So you're coming back in, into some support right now. But again, I don't want to give advice to cover when I'm the one holding NVIDIA um, when it's clearly at a level of support as well. So um, yeah, here we go. You know what? 9 -oh, I Okay, we still have, we can cover. We can cover a part of what we have. So why don't we do that? Let's just do that. 902.75, so we don't, oopsies. Oh yeah, we'll take that one out right now. Let's go. Yes, sir. All right, that one right there, 907.80 out 902.60. So that right there is 907 to 902. That's a $5, put it on the board. Yes, so right there, that's an NVIDIA short. Bang, NVIDIA now going number one. So my number one stock traded today, P&L wise, is PLTR. So Palantir, we got out right there. That was I. Uh, number two stock on the board today is NVIDIA. And, oh my, oh my. We had a nice trade by, uh, unfortunately, I am not sure of this individual's name. Jag, the, my guy over there? My guy over there! Trophy time! Jag over there. Okay, I see you now, though. Now you're on my radar, my guy. Okay, so I don't take second place lightly. No, but I'm just joking. Good job, Jag, there. Nice. I won't talk, unless you want me to tell them what you traded, but good trade there. Uh, I feel like hopefully the office starts trading uh, more aggressively like that. Great trade, my guy over there. Uh, perfect. Trade the setup. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Um, all right. Good trade over there, guy. All right. Uh, what's up? Oh, Adair's over there. Okay. Uh, Randy, make it through, my guy. We got, I got to throw it over there. Randy's back in the building, and so is Adara at the desk. Yeah, not as many massive movers here on the S&P 500 heading into this shortened, heading out of this holiday shortened week and into this long weekend. But a couple of movers to talk about. A lot of these going to be analyst names here. Estee Lauder getting a price target increase here and an upgrade from BVA Securities up about 6% right now. So nice move up for EL. Another analyst move here uh, for Capital One Financial, COF, up about 2.5% after getting a price target increase here from Evercore ISI. This last one we mentioned a little bit earlier, but Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA, still pretty strong here, up about uh, 3%. They did narrow their financial guidance for 2024, specifically for earnings per share, but they had a beat across the board this morning for Q2, so nice look here for WBA, and nice look for, for a couple of these S&P 500 names heading into this long weekend, guys. I can't win around here. I show this to Randy. He's like, yeah, it's a nice move. I'm like, bro, it's the high and the low. That's, yeah. On NVIDIA. I'm on mute. Oh. All right, Randy. Um, yeah, what I was getting at there. I, Is that my, better? My, well, if it's off mute, it's better. Um, my, uh, my son has an iPhone 10, So it's not, it got a couple hundred bucks off Marketplace or whatever it was or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, the left side of his screen stopped working, but the screen wasn't cracked or anything like that. So I brought it into the same guy that repaired my, my iPad screen, and uh, 
you know, I worked, worked a little cash price, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, got it repaired and like, I dropped it off immediately after the show. We walked down, got that done, and um, yeah, went back after the brisket. Got those steps in again after the brisket. <laughs> I was on the Peloton this morning, man. Surprised I was, you up, made I was it there. up. I was up putting in some work this morning, boy. I'm not. I'm not uh, my guy back there. Shout out to Brendan. This guy's training. Uh, is it a half marathon or full marathon? Half marathon. So wow. shout out to Brendan, man. That guy. That guy's in great shape. Um, but anyways, let's move on. Um, yeah, so we went and got that repaired, and yeah, quick, easy, but, cost me 70 bucks right, so, with the screen protector on it, brand new screen, working fine, hopefully it works in two days. And, and given, again, the economy and inflation and all the things, people can't afford to go and buy a brand new, your kid drops your phone, steps on it, the dog eats it, whatever, you can't run out and afford to buy a new one. So I think the right to repair, which has been a, you know, a governmental thing worldwide for you know, a while now. Um, is is a good idea, you know. I, you own a phone for what three, four, five years or more, right? And more, exactly. And if it still works, or you, if you break something that's you know insignificant, um, why not get it fixed? Like, why not? Wait a second. Someone to put something in the chat. weren't you wearing a hoodie this morning? I thought we were supposed to be the hoodie gang. Oh, or was shit. that yesterday? Were you wearing a hoodie this morning? I was. Okay. No, it's, it doesn't matter you're not wearing one. I was just well, like, somebody where, said where am my I hoodie? right now? I thought, yeah, I thought we were like, oh, someone said, where's the hoodie? I was getting warm. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. All good. I, I don't know. All good. I was just thinking to myself, like, I remember we talked about it. And then all yeah, I was I was chilly this morning. No, and, no, and no, 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 no worries. Now no, it's I'm like, wondering if I, if I it's warmed up. It's all that brisket. There you go. I get, I get an email from the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are back. <sighs> Oh, oh hope, season tickets for you. I hope they do well this year. Oh, I'm going to find out. I wonder if Neil has uh, four or two season tickets, because if he has four, yeah. I mean, why don't mm. we just go? Me, mm -hmm. you, Brendan, yep. not Ramin, and Neil. <laughs> ram, ram. I love... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to be careful there. I No, I would love to go with Ramin. That is for sure, but... You better be we careful. We only have four tickets. I'll just give her mine. I'm giving her mine. Okay. Okay. You better, um, you better watch yourself. All right, let's go. Uh, hoodie gang. See, people like the hoodie gang. I could go get it, but yeah, I'm too warm. It's no, we should do that. So I know Neil's talked about organizing a get-together for everybody, so yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call him out on that. I'm when in. he's back here, I'm going to call him out because I'm I think in. that's something that's really cool. But what I think we should do, honestly, and I've organized this myself before, where well, you weren't there. We went bowling. So a whole bunch yeah, of us, Bar Fraud, Fahad was there. I missed the bowling. Katrine yet. was there. Yes. Mark was there. Uh, Hokima. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, everybody, we were all there. We had a great time. Uh, bowling. I love bowling. We were doing the double drink. Oh, yeah, that's where it was. Um, Five pin or uh, ten? Fahad, it was ten. And Fahad claimed to be one of the greatest bowlers of all time, which, which he was definitely not. And he was facing <laughs> Lucas, and there was a big battle there. Oh, yeah? And I remember that was a lot of fun. Let's do that again. Let's either go. I'm going to organize it. I'm, you guys want to do bowling or like a Blue Jays game? Are you coming back? I would do, um, uh-oh. Little love notes? What's going yeah, on here? This means a lot to me. No, you can't. What do you mean? Yeah, it is, it is kind of. It is kind of a love note. It is kind of a love note. Oh, yeah. I'll put it this way: there's a heart on this. You know, I don't need Ramin's boyfriend or whatever getting involved here. I have enough problems. Good for you. That's right. That's right. <sighs> I'm not bad at ten pin. See, now, um, now I'm all smooth and shit. You know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Secret uh, no friend. Secret. All right. Love you, Marissa. Not much of a secret. All anymore. right. Yeah, it's not much of a secret. Yeah, especially when you call out your wife after you say that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, what are we talking about? I haven't got a clue. I'm just All right. Uh, we're five dollars in the. We're five dollars right now in the money. Uh, right here on a good trade for us on Nvidia. So we went top to bottom there. So that was a really good one. We'll see what happens here moving forward. Um, but yeah, really, really, everyone's dying on the chat. So we're just having a great time here this afternoon. And this is really what it's all about, man. It's about <laughs> these random fun type of things. That's you what know? it's all about. Um, and yeah, that's it. I guess why. Fun, we're not I here. guess this is why we can never get time off. No. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and with that said. We only have four minutes until the imbalances, and then, you know, unfortunately, everyone's got me again for another half hour, but we will be joined by Miss Danielle Shea, one of the finest um, options and, you know, and 
analysts you'll find uh, out there, period. Me and Danielle Shea right here coming through uh, very, very soon. Follow Miss Danielle Shea. Great YouTube page and all of that uh, coming out. Oh, I wanted, so we always talk about Sean's tweets, but someone mentioned about NVIDIA and about pushing forward um, and, and, and that the sky's the limit for this company. Hard to disagree. This is SMCI, what they're projecting right now. Current right now, seven billion. So by 2026, more than triple the seven billion recorded all of last year. So, wow. I mean, I don't know if this is just SMCI revenue. They make the, the server racks and yep. stuff like that um, for all this, the, the, the high power, high energy. They make energy. servers. They've been around a long, long, long. Now, what is your opinion 30, on SMCI? So we actually owned SMC servers when we got started way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. They've been around back. forever. Yeah. And, I mean, servers are commodity things. They're boxes with chips on them. That's all they are. But they, fri they primarily focused on the data centers of which we have, and I help manage them. And uh, over the years, I mean, you've got HP and Dell and all, and Lenovo and IBM and everybody else that, that makes server gear, but they diversified. And they made a lot of custom uh, platforms for, for video and for broadcast, like ourselves. And, and, and they really catered to niche industries, and they did it well. And they're still going. So I really yeah. like SMC. Um, again, they've been around a long time. They, they had some strength last fall. I forget what the announcement was. I remember they had a, they had a good run last fall. Oh, so yeah. I really oh, like they SMC. Have, um, they, so they just got um, included into the S&P 500. So that was a big bump up there that I believe happened in the fall. Right. And just added now on the January rebalance, I believe. I, I mean, I can't even believe it's almost April. No, I feel like it was added in March. It was just wow, just now. So SMCI, nice move to the upside. There are rebalances today, I believe. I think it's SMCI. Is it? Is it SM? Uh, not SMCI. Is it MSCI rebalances today? Oh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, Lots of buzz, should just it? yell to Brankles right now and find out if it, if it is. Um, I'm going to find out what, what the imbalances are today. Someone in the chat will probably know. I should know this. I can't even get to our Wikipedia. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, all right, so these are, this is what's showing right now. We only have a couple minutes left Lots of buy. Uh, right now. So New York Community Bank. So I feel like there's rebalances today, and I'm just blanking on it right now. But um, all right, so we'll see. NYCB coming through. We only have a couple minutes. This is a very risky spot to be you know, trading in right now uh, because the imbalances are coming out. We'll, we'll wait to see if anything hits. We do have NASDAQ in 30 seconds going to send these stocks somewhere. Let's find out where uh, right now. But we've had a great end to our day, man. I mean, this, this trade was really big for us. We did go flat on Apple. We hadn't had much else going on for us right now. Apple's back in. I think that's fine. Softy's With only 20 on seconds there. to go. We can look at Softy in a minute. We got out of our Palantir. Our Palantir was a banger, man. Boom. And then boom. We're happy with that. I'm glad we didn't go back long. We were sort of talking about that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get rid of Broker. We only have 10 seconds to go, Randy. Then we can find out if Softy's on here. Three, two, and one. Bang. So let's go find out. We will wait to see from Adara if and when or what this number is. So here we go. A whole bunch of NASDAQ names. Do we see anything that we like? We see sound. There's your softy. There it wow, is. one million to buy. This is probably there shooting this name up. Yeah, look at that. A gap higher. 50 to 70 cents higher Cisco. on that oh, gap. Cisco, you're talking about some old technology right here, Randy. Cisco with the move down. Um, there's New York Community Bank with a big buy. So that was already pre-known, but look at that. Still bumps up. We showed you this name down here at 320. Now it's up to 326 with a big buy behind it as well. Adara gives me a small number, which is kind of funny. 385 to buy. So I thought it would have been a little bit bigger, but I guess there's just as many sells as buys out here, and that kind of turns it, right? So I thought the Microsoft one being a five, $400 name um, would have sent that number a little bit higher. But remember, the numbers that we get and we give to you are New York only, okay? So um, that is not included. Microsoft's not included in there, so a little bit bigger of a move up there for Softy. But look, um, I, um, I almost said Adobe again because of the midday show. But Obi asked about um, the, the rebalances and whatnot. And there you can see, even though Microsoft comes out a million, it still goes up initially. And then once everyone digests, it then it 
comes back yep. in and starts floating around exactly, Randy. So uh, that is that. Okay. Yes, end of quarter. Well, I know it's the end of quarter, but I did. I still think there are some kind of rebalances. So uh, we'll get that all figured out there, as you can see. Let's go check out Reddit quickly, Randy. Sure. Um, and then I'll pass it over to you. Yeah. yeah Reddit is puking right now. Um, nice move down on RDDT. Uh, wow. Now, now lower. So everybody that had FOMO, shout out to Danielle Shea again, man. We talked about this. I'm going to talk to Reddit with Reddit, on Reddit about her, on Reddit, Reddit with her. I'm going to talk to Reddit. On, what? I'm going to talk about Reddit with her. <laughs> uh, and, you know, coming back in, a lot of us get FOMO. Come over to the chart right here. A lot of traders get FOMO because they miss the move up. And then they're like, oh my God, I want to buy Reddit. Well, it just opened. It's here now. Where is it going? Well, you have to let that FOMO die down. So Reddit IPO down here at 46.50, I believe, or I mean, it actually looks like it was 47 flat, 47 flat, making a bottom of 46.50 on day one. This is a 20 minute chart, then making a move back, ending that day down here at 46. So I feel like right now, you're right back into a level where you'd be pretty happy buying some Reddit against this bottom of 44, 45 bucks. If you like the name, no more FOMO on Reddit. Hey, Randy. Hey, Sean. Thank you for joining today. Anytime, pal. I want to say Reddit shout out. and forget it. Right. Go ahead, yeah. Shout out to Lava in the chat who's asking about AI in data centers. Good, good question. Long topic. I could talk about this for hours, but honestly, um, the AI is eating up data center space and power and platforms like crazy. Look at these new GPUs that are out from uh, the likes of NVIDIA. There's acres upon acres of chassis going into data centers. Data, data centers are, are just being consumed by AI. It's a big thing. So I only see positives for the big guys like Equinix and some of these other uh, data centers where they're consolidating AI to a, to a regional platform Latency is better. Again, power efficiencies, not so much. GPUs are pretty power hungry, ask the Bitcoin miners. But honestly, it's a great play. I really like the, uh, the AI move into data centers. How long it'll last? You know, again, there's consolidation happening. Um, a lot of AI players out there who are doing cloud-based stuff, but clouds are in the data center. So great question. I see nothing but positive, um, for, a, a positive forecast for the data center providers who have to be able to deal with this. Some of them are gonna have some trouble, I think, in terms of the overall uh, amount of power and the amount of space they need to, to be able to provide all this, this, these AI services. We're talking the likes of Google and Apple and everybody else. Yes, Google has their own, but there's a lot of third party companies out there who are trying, like Reddit, trying to put their own AI in place and it's gotta be housed somewhere. And it's gotta be powered by somebody. So I, I see a great play there, I really do. All right, thanks Lava and thanks Randy. Yeah, uh, great question. For that, okay. Um, stop order going in immediately uh, for Reddit. But we, we, we don't, or for uh, NVIDIA, it's the only position we have on board. Um, yeah, good, good, good one to end the day, man. I mean, honestly, um, I, again, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Are you a Cadbury cream egg guy or a mini egg guy? Did I mini. ask you this? Okay, mini, mini eggs. Yeah, I think we talked about this. Mm -hmm. We talked about you getting a whole crap load of Maltesers too the other day. Yes. Um, okay, here we come into the downside right now for NVIDIA. Uh, it's 9 it, it's 9.05. Is it? It's 3.55. I'm a little bit late. It's 3.55 uh, right now. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for a little bit lower here as well. So we'll watch out to see if we can get a bid here for NVIDIA. If not, we're out at 9.05. It looks like that's what it was. That's what it was, Randy. So I'm, I'm, still, I'm still here. The price I'm going to get out at is 9.05, not what time uh, it is, okay. is 9.05. So that's what I meant. Um, and there we go. So we will get out if it does break that. It looks like it's going to happen pretty soon. So let's put a bid down here in and around 9.02 in case we do get that flush. I mean, well worth it. We, we got th This was the big out for me right there. So whatever, we'll hold it on. It's going to be the number two PL stock here on the show. All shows you check on Softy? The number one is going to be Palantir. Actually... NVIDIA and Palantir, depending on where I get out, will be very, very similar. You want to look at Softy? Yeah. All right. Curious as to what the rebalance did to that. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing, nothing, Randy, and that's Flat. the problem sometimes. And look at that. This is what the imbalance did. Can you tell where that number yep, came out? the big spike. So you get a 2 million, 
two hundred two million uh two hundred thousand <laughs> share print all the way to the upside but it was a million in balance right so let's just check back to see if it's still anything there for microsoft so no i don't see any imbalances here for msft it's too bad you can't actually you know what would be cool if there's a little search you button up here? you could sort it but you can only sort it by alphabetical oh, you, can't search. you can just okay. sort by one of these you can't search so there's amazon right there with a bid so that's not doing too much intel to do anything yeah i saw intel where was that right below amazon yeah okay or dancing was. around intel's with a bid there as well all right neo oh sell all right you know what Forget the imbalances, there's nothing going on. All right, um, let's just go over to Tesla real quick. So it looks like Tesla will end the day in and around 175. Pretty bad day for them, to be honest with you, considering that the market is flat. Um, all of us would have liked to see that Tesla uh, take off a little bit there. And unfortunately, I'll hopefully get my daily charts working again. But Tesla's had a nice move off that bottom of 170. It got as high as almost back. Didn't we get almost back to 200 two weeks ago, I feel like? Uh, we got to right here. Well, not 200. Oh, yeah, right into here. Yeah, that was. Yeah, end of February. So we got over 200. We got back to 205. So again, like holding this 180 level, but then we broke it. Now we're touching down here. We have past support back to May. Randy, I know we've talked about buying some Rivian on dips. I'm going to stay away from Tesla because this scares me a little bit. We went from right here back in 2022 of December, we went from 170 down to $100 mm -hmm. in yep. a month. Yep. We were cut down by 60% or more in one month, or a little bit less, in one month. So we talked about it on Friday. There's headwinds coming for Tesla with, with competition, number one, uh, reduced demand, number two. And then we have expenditures in both Mexico for the new Remainer Giga plant. Fabian. And uh, we have uh, the expenditures on the Model 2. Those are capital investments. Those are going to eat into their cash pile. Yes, Tesla has cash. But overall profits, again, demand down, the Berlin fire. Lots of negativity here. Positive stuff coming. Would you still buy the dips? Yes, I would. But, I guess, Sam, we're waiting for positivity from, uh, from the company as a whole, not from Elon. And then as far as Rivian goes, same thing. We're going to have interim production numbers in just... Uh, Three and a half weeks ish. Yeah, so we're waiting. So R two is not on the menu, but the R one T, the R one S, and the vans are on the menu. News about the R two? I'm not expecting much. It, it's in the works, but I'm not expecting a miracle right now. And yes, it's Happy Easter, not Thanksgiving. I don't know why we're talking about Thanksgiving in the chat, but um, okay. So anyway, Easter in my house generally is kind of like a mix of um, the ham, ham, and. Actually, yeah. I think it's always ham. No I, I, is, is turkey an Easter thing? No. Well, not in my... I, I mean, we got the lasagna. I mean, you got, you got, you know... You I got prefer ham. Stuff. Fish. Much prefer ham. Fish, yeah. Fish? Yeah, the Italian side's got some fish going on there. Really? Uh, yeah, because you don't eat the meat on Good Friday. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, uh, ham or... You know, for as, as, as strong an athlete as I am, of course. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep on watching that. But no, a happy Easter to everybody. Absolutely. To you and happy yours, Easter, Randy. Buddy. Enjoy the holiday. Um, oh, shoot. All right, I got to go. I, I mean, I have another show in a couple, min a couple minutes. 30 Sm seconds. Smell you later. Uh, see ya. Happy Easter. Well, I have to press, press a button, button here or anything, or what? You hit the countdown button, but... Where's the I countdown button? Out. I mean, this is a... Oh, there's the countdown button. Uh, when do I hit it? I, I muted myself, and I'm still talking, so I'm going to mute myself now. So to hit the button? You can do whatever you want. I'm I can do whatever I want. Okay, everybody, enjoy the weekend. Countdown. I don't know when it is. I just hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> it's way early. <laughs> is it close? It is. Two. One. We got it. I think. Anyway, yeah. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Happy Easter. And we'll see you on Monday. And now we have Sean with the podcast. And he's, he's getting ready, sort of. Anyway, see ya. All right, what's up, everybody? Thank you to, or welcome to the recap show. You know what? I don't have Stream Deck open again, but last time I tried to open this, it was a complete nightmare. Uh, all right, so yeah, I opened it again, and it was a nightmare again uh, here for Stream Deck. How do I get my windows over here? Oh, no. Alt. Uh, okay, come over here, Fabian. Uh, welcome to the recap show. I don't have the right screens on here, Ramin, uh, by the way. Fabian. I don't, how do I, how do I flip this over? Alt, print screen, oh no, I need, I need to get to my other. 
Maybe I don't have a problem after all. Thank you, Ramin. <laughs> but you see how Stream Deck's not loaded on this profile? That's the problem. Okay, we'll figure it out after. Just when, when Danielle comes, we got to go to her. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody. We are now organized. Wow, what a day. We covered that NVIDIA there at the end. I can, don't have, need to have this in my ear. We don't have a whole bunch of earnings uh, laid out for you to do, but we do have uh, Miss Danielle Shea coming through. We did have uh, Walgreens today. We'll talk a little bit about that. And if you want to put up the uh, topics, we'll get that going as well uh, right now immediately. There it is. It's the sector recap, so let's get going on that right now. All right, um, again, thank you so much for watching. I'll get the chat loaded up in just a couple minutes. We had some big moves today in UNG. I mean, up 1.5%. That's going to be the largest take today. On the sell side of things, not too many down here. XLY, the consumer discretionary leading to the downside. We talked about a big part of that is, is Tesla. So a nice move down today for Tesla. And I mean, as far as indexes are concerned, China with a little bit of a better day today, up that 1.05%. Again, some good talk about some of the AI availabilities there in China. We know that Apple was going to use was it Ernie uh, Baidu's uh, AI there? So that could be something that, you know, helps China get going a little bit. Just on the daily chart though, FXI still above a decent level. Um, XLU, XLF with a nice move today, up 0.55. Look at this, man. I remember at the beginning of the year um, and Sharif was involved and talked about trying to find something that was breaking out. The financials, a little bit of a different light. The financials have been, I don't even have to wear this hat maybe, have been hot fire um, you know, this year. So nice move to the upside. I mean, a lot of people want to talk about crypto, so let's do that right now as well. I mean, Bitcoin today, really on fire. Uh, nice move to the upside again today. Trying to hold out for this 71 and change. I mean, I like crypto here. Just quoting in an hour chart, we did bounce off again 68, 69. So we did break through 70. Be interesting to see how this does trade into the weekend again. For anybody that's on those ETFs like I am, the problem with that is now you can't get out of these trades for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You got to wait early Monday when the Nasdaq opens up or you get out now in the pre in the aftermarket. But that's the one downside for me anyways, when we talk about crypto and that is with the ETFs is the fact that you have to unfortunately hold them over the weekend if you are in the stock. All right. I've got this all loaded up right now. Um, thank you to everybody for joining. Hey, we still have this up here. CGC or Tilray. We'll vote CGC again on that one. So thank you to everybody. I'm going to dismiss this. So thank you to everybody that's here with us right now. Over 2,600 watching on this early weekend. So traders, stay late. I want to thank all of you for staying with me again. We'll do roll call very, very soon as we get ready to have Danielle Shea come through. So not too many earnings today uh, to talk about. We did have Walgreens Boots Alliance come through. Um, and we're, we'll talk more about some of the sectors. There wasn't too much going on. The cannabis sector took a little bit of a breather today. We can check out MSOS before we go over that. So there you go down 1.4%. Again, a nice move to the upside. And, and again, it sort of goes to talking about CGC versus Tilray. Huge move up uh, for CGC lately. But we talked about this yesterday when someone asked me and they gave a super chat or something about what are we doing with CGC? Well, honestly, you're just right back into this $10 level. And we indicated that that was probably an out for many of us. So coming right back in, let's close this for a little bit. That's the one minute chart. Right into there, 10 bucks. When you get a push like this in one month, like one month, two weeks, from $3 to $10, honestly, on nothing other than, I mean, let's call it what it is. It's really just a rumor until something goes through. They're trying to get it converted over a different schedule for narcotic on marijuana versus the rest. So we'll see if that can come in. I believe it will happen. There are more states starting to legalize as we speak. And then we did get a big push in Germany as well. Oh, no. Um, I was going to I was going to try to grab a water but I did forget about that. So, uh maybe we'll grab that. Uh cuz the lights shine bright over here. Appreciated, Fabian. Uh, all right, so there we go. Nice little move to the upside there. 10 bucks and change for CGC. Let's have a quick look at Tilray today. And again, the similar move, right? A dollar sixty up to two forty. So it's a double, but still a beautiful move. Not even a double, my bad. Dollar sixty up to two sixty. So Tilray not as exciting as CGC. Maybe a more solid company. As you see, it doesn't have the huge swings. Nice move up for Tilray. Either way, you're right back to September highs. No pun 
intended on that one. We had a good trade on NVIDIA uh, at the end of the day. I don't know if this name's rolling over or not. I actually get the feeling that technically we are not rolling over uh, at all on NVIDIA. I want to buy the dips. I still feel like this name is pretty strong to come in here on NVIDIA. So, oops, that's Prosper Pro. We don't need to, I'm going to try to log into this. Uh, but I don't know if NVIDIA is, and should we be buying NVIDIA down here, Amin, or what? What do you think? You like these levels down here? Yeah. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, therefore, NVIDIA. So we'll have a look at that, a very interesting level. Sorry, I'm trying to log in now so I can show you some of the hot fire trades uh, that we had on NVIDIA. We could have done better on NVIDIA, by the way, today, but it was the PL number one stock uh, on the show here. This is the problem. We had Randy filling in. I want to thank Randy, but I didn't give myself enough time to run over here and start to log in everywhere. Um, let's check in to see. We don't do this enough, I feel like. Do whatever I want to do. Let's go compare profits. Let's see who made the most money yesterday here at Real Trading. Mm. Ah, shout out to Hydration Nation and all my people out there. That's rocking with us. Look, we're doing this, man. CNBC has some old guy on talking about something. Oh, we have an old guy on too. What's up? Uh, all right, so here we go. Yesterday, actually not too exciting, actually. We're expecting bigger numbers. I don't know. This is not that good. Uh, T well, it's okay. Six grand yesterday for the TSX is the number one trader. We're normally in like five digits here. So a little disappointed in these numbers. Uh, again, this is from Real Trading. And then we had one trader yesterday somewhere in the, in, the, in the company make five grand on both Amex, NASDAQ, and New York. Three grand, three grand, three grand, all the way down. Then some random markets. Oh, shout out to CSE right there um, coming through with 1,400. And then someone in Hong Kong at, at, at a grand. So we talked about this on the podcast. And this is not just because those numbers aren't that huge. You got to trade whatever the day gives you. And, and honestly, it's like instead of posting every day, I made 10 grand, I made five grand. Then you don't hear from the guy in a week. It's probably because he put up horrible numbers. That's not what we're about. We publish these numbers for anybody to see. So if you're part of real trading, you can go in and see those numbers and talk to your trading development team um, and to, in order to get uh, those numbers and find out where those are. I'm going to call up realtrading.com right now because we don't, quite frankly, we do not do that enough on this show. So here we go right now. This is, this is the prop firm uh, that I'm working for. It's real trading, over $3 billion worth of trades, 400 million shares, 50 plus markets, and over 3,000 traders, both in Included in that would be sim mode and real mode. So shout out to Real Trading if you are located, unfortunately, anywhere other than the United States, you can become a member of that team uh, right there and scan the QR code uh, on your screen right now to become a part of that and get some more information. And hey, even if you are in the United States, just say, hey, what's up? I saw this on Trader TV Live and I'm interested. Potentially, change is coming. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what's going on. All right. So I did want to talk about something because we did have an earnings play today and it's Walgreens. I'm going to throw over to another chart here and go to a one minute chart. I'm going to throw this into a five minute so we can have another quick look at this. So um, today we had Walgreens come out and again, it was on our watch list. So a big, a big note today was that they actually, I'm just double checking because I thought they beat on top and the bottom right here on Walgreens. So let's just pull this over here and have a quick look. So here's Walgreens Boots Alliance, trading lower in the pre-market, adjusted forecast 2024 downwards. Right, so that's what it was. So they did beat top and bottom line on Walgreens. But I, the reason why I want to talk about this is because of how messed up trading earnings can be. All right, so let me actually go into now, let's go into a two minute chart, just so we can even show you how more, you know, how dramatic this is. So here's the market open up. We're all the way down, we're near the bottom, right? So they guide a little bit lower, um, but they had a good quarter. So that's kind of like, we've been playing off the guide more than the actual quarter. Look at Pan W, look at some of these big growth names, right? We'll give Walgreens Boots Alliance a what's up with that? Because it goes from $20 immediately to the upside in the 22 here for Walgreens, basically back to the pre-market highs. And then within the first four minutes, it retraces all the way back down into the, into the pre-market levels again, and then just starts to trend all the way back up. So for me, when you're looking at a play like this, 
unless you have some sort of levels that you're looking at, and we can go back over to a daily chart, like, I mean, you know, playing the bottom here in Walgreens, maybe something $20, $21, um, fine. But I don't know how you know that that's going to be the top up there at 23 or whatever that number is. So you play that, a little bit of a tricky play rate off the open, which just leads me to tell you guys, that's why on earnings, I don't actually like to play them right off the jump. You got to wait for a pullback into VWAP, wait for a pullback somewhere. But right now, Walgreens, nice move up and then a fade right back down in. So unfortunately for next week, we don't have um, too many big earnings reports at all next week. The big one that's on my mind, though, we have Levi's coming through next Wednesday after the bell. So if Danielle's here uh, right now, I know she's going to have some other ideas on her mind and we'll get to those, but I'm going to ask very nicely her to look at Levi because look at the name, this name here from the beginning of the year. What an absolute monster. We can drop an anchor down here from the beginning of, let's go from this bottom. Let's go from right, let's go from, yeah, let's go from this bottom. So, I mean, you're nowhere near the anchored view up. That pullback is 17.25, but Levi Strauss coming out next quarter, next, next week, could be a big one. Consensus EPS of 20 cents um, looks to be in line. Um, they should be able to beat 44 cents versus 42 cents. I'm just reading some of their last reports. A couple upgrades coming through on Levi's. Nice move up here. Let me just look at a weekly chart for these uh, for this name. Again, this is why we look at this, right? 12% short float. Levi looking to break out. So I think this is a name that should be on everybody's radar. We did the podcast last night. We talked about a name like Wayfair, possibly breaking out again. Kunal gave us that. So Kunal Desai on our podcast uh, last night. That was a great, great opportunity uh, to hear more about him. He talked about Wayfair possibly breaking out. We like IWM breaking higher as well. So this is a play here, trying to break higher. Well, guess what? I'm adding right now Levi Strauss. Uh, to the game. I think this is about to break. Looks like if we can get a good quarter, $30 is not out of the question. A short float involved here. More people wearing jeans, I feel like. Why not? Ramin showing me that she is wearing two pairs of Levi, both pant and shirt. Better, better known as, see you Adara, have a great weekend and happy Easter uh, to you. Uh, better known as a Canadian tuxedo. Did you know that, Ramin? Yeah. yeah, she knows that. Uh, but there you go, Levi. So, hey, look, if someone as cool as Ramin is wearing Levi, and I say that actually being the truth because it's these kids these days, you know. It's whatever's hot. Like, you can really see that we've had a big move up in a lot of different things that have been sort of um, trendy as of late, as, as you guys know. Um, you can even just look at something like Bitcoin um, that starts going. Look at Reddit, the hype behind that when they get behind it. We've seen GameStop and AMC that get behind those kind of names. Um, recent IBOs like Kava, um, um, Birkenstock, uh, whatever. Let me, you know what, let me check out Birkenstock. That was one that was holding well, right? Um, and then Birkenstock right now, is Birkenstock's not cool anymore? And she's wearing Burks. Hello. Uh, but yeah, look at this, man. Another good, good report for Birkenstock up on the IPO. So there you go. So another good one. Levi's with Birkenstock, the spring attire around here for Toronto. So I do not have my, my trader talk thing. If Danielle is ready, then I am ready to speak with her. Hello, Miss Danielle Shea. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Hey, we're doing pretty good. We had a great day. I had, by the way, oh my God, I got a, I don't know if you saw my Twitter, uh, but I immediately thought of you and where you're from and various aspects like that. Me and Randy today went and got brisket. And the brisket, it was a very popular place here in Toronto. This is what it looked like. It's onions, it's brisket, and it was absolutely fabulous. You being Kansas City, Texas, I guess I don't have to talk about barbecue with you. You know, I love barbecue, and during the pandemic, uh, my number one hobby that I took up was learning how to smoke meat. And so uh, I love making brisket, ribs, pork shoulder, all of the above. Damn, you know what my wife got involved with? I think everybody had this sourdough. Like everybody was making loaves of bread. 
I wish she would have learned about smoking as well, but that would have been really cool. So what's your favorite uh, smoked meat? I love brisket. Okay, there we go. Bang. We like that as well. All right, Miss Shea, what a great day it is around here. Happy Easter to you and yours. Um, I always, I don't like when we get a day off, but we'll take a day off tomorrow. I'm pretty exhausted. How's your schedule been lately? Oh, it's been crazy. And you know what? I'm going to have to miss you guys next week because I'm having some uh, construction done at my house. So I'm going to miss you for maybe a week or two, but I'll be back. I mean, I'm in a good mood and everything, and everything's good. Me and Ramin made up. I mean, we got lots of good stuff happening. And then you drop in this bomb on me. It's probably in the schedule. You probably already told me, but uh, shout out to you, Danielle Shea. So let's kill it then today. Why don't we do that as we'll be missing you next week? Okay, I was talking about Levi Strauss there. I don't know if you had any information on that, but we always talk about plays leading into earnings. So I'm giving you one here for next week. It looks like it's on fire and looking to break some of those levels. What does it look like on your screens? So, you know, I love that you picked this one out. I like the chart. I think that it looks great. You know, you had this big move higher post earnings, even though it initially gapped down. So I like to see that. Um, I like to see the high volume coming in. I love how, how it closed out on the highs. It has a daily squeeze and it also has short floats. So anytime you have something that is closing out on the highs like this um, and also has short float. Let me just get the number there for you. It's about 12%. So yep. that's enough to get a little bit of a short squeeze. Um, and, and because it's broken up through recent highs, you know, that's where you have those short sellers that are buying to cover. So I like it. It makes sense for a long into earnings, whether or not it's actually going to do well on earnings is yeah. another thing because it's gapped down the last four quarters in a row. You know, it reminds me of this trade that, that you and I had as well. We had this Affirm trade come over to my screen right here. And we had, you know, these kind of breakouts where we had, you know, bluer skies or, you know, ahead, greener pastures. And that, with a similar short float, took that level out and went all the way to 50. So I'm seeing things like that um, in, in, our, in our sites for Affirm. Okay, um, I saw you post up. And again, I got to give you a big shout out because at Trader Danielle, both on YouTube and on X, you've had some great videos. And did I see some something on Reddit um, or some IPOs that you might have posted up? Yeah, I did. So this is my YouTube channel right here at Trader Danielle. Um, I posted the YouTube video on uh, Twitter, actually, though. So I was talking about IPOs, Reddit. You know, everybody wants to know how to trade these IPOs. And um, so I did a session covering that today. And I also talked about ARM because I think there's a pretty good setup in that one right now. All right, yeah, actually, I was a little bit upset just as a day trader today that we talked about this 128 level for a short on ARM, um, and it was just because if, you, if we sort of scroll back out here, if and when, I, I, I've had a very much of a love-hate relationship with charts today. I don't know if you've ever had uh, those situations where it's like some days everything's working great and other days is like, where am I? And I feel like I just switched desks and I still can't figure things out. But okay, come back over here quickly. Um, I like this 128 level and I just feel like Who's over there, Fabian? Hey, what's up, my guy? Uh, I feel like this 128 level, I should have been short right there. So are you going to tell me that that was a missed opportunity? Are we going to get 128 again? You like the long or short, Miss Danielle? So for me as a swing trader, I like the long here. I mean, you know, obviously you could have shorted it on that little bit of a pullback, but I like the strength. I like the way that it's traded really well post earnings, two quarters in a row. You know, with an IPO, you really need to have a couple months of data. And now we have that, right? And at this point, you can see that there was a lot of hype. It's pulled back. It's consolidating yeah. again. We've got a squeeze. Um, and so I think that it's setting up. Uh, for the next run higher. So I think you're going to be able to trade it up into 150, 160 when this consolidation breaks out. Um, okay, so there's been some questions in the chat. Maybe we'll go over those, but I want to get to anything that you may uh, have as well. No, I really like that arm trade uh, building up down here at 125. I, I think that looks fantastic. And again, is May 8th too far uh, to start worrying about their earnings now? Or do you, would you would like to get positioned maybe for a long now? Or is May 8th just too far out? So it's not too far. It, I mean, it's a little far out, but it's not too far out. So this is my tool. It's called the earnings hot zone. It basically draws levels on here. So you can see once you're getting closer to that earnings report. Okay. And so this has basically drawn a level on April 9th. So it's showing you that that's when you're about 21 bars away from that earnings report. And so I generally try to take entries 
you know, it doesn't, it's not that exact day, right? It's around this zone, but I like to do it when they're pulled back and when they're consolidating. So sometimes it's a little bit earlier. Um, I think Microsoft is a great example because this one is one where you might've thought, well, you know, it's, it's a little bit early before the earnings report, you know, you have the earnings report here, but when it's pulling back and when it's consolidating, even if it's a little bit earlier, you're, you're going to get a much better entry than waiting until you're closer to earnings if it's already made a high. Yeah, for for me, I mean that makes I mean look, all that makes a lot of sense. So we'll 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 mark that 21 days. Just the market's been so volatile. I just wonder if you put something on and it starts to go against you, but you still don't mind the position. You could always average in. Is there a time where potentially it's too late? Um, is there a spot where you say, you know what, I, I'm now just just gambling really and potentially I don't want to average into any of those positions. I know options can be very binary, right? I mean, you could lose it all if, if, if you get in too early and potentially cover. Um, have you ever covered before an earnings report because it just kind of fell apart? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, that, that'll happen sometimes where, you know, you have a strong stock and for whatever reason, maybe news hits or sometimes you know, with the recent bear market, the market will just turn on you and everything rolls over. And so that that can definitely happen. But it's just important to have your stop zones in mind. So I think with ARM, you have a pretty critical area of support that comes in really between 120, 125. I, depending on where I got in, I may give it down into the 50 simple All right. at 115. Um, but I think if you got in here, you could have a pretty tight stop at, at 120 for a swing trade. Um, and then if you wanted to wait for a deeper pullback, you know, the 50 simple, if you get that. A lot of people, um, you know, really, really loving all this content. I want to thank you, Ms. Danielle Shea. But before we go on about stocks, because, you know, stocks are fun and everything. Uh, I want to know, did you plant anything yet? You got any animals running around? What's going on over there? Man, I have a lot of work with my two kids right now. And so I haven't even had time to get the animals going. Put the, I uh, did. Put your... <laughs> Put, put put your worst half to work over there. You know, you know, he's got to, you got to, you got to start planning for you. You know what I mean? Get some plants out there, get some trees. Promise me you put a fig tree at some point when you get some time. So we have some apple trees and I have blueberries and I just got a bunch of lettuce and that's what I'm going to plant first. Um, lettuce. But that's all, right. all the progress that I've made so far. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a romaine lettuce kind of guy. I like romaine lettuce, so I think you yeah, you put that in there. Watch out, man. That stuff grows like weeds. Uh, if you you, you got to watch. You know what thing about lettuce is you get those little... Um, uh, no, 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 no. Not the heart. Yeah, that was the best part. Those little worms or the grubs or whatever in there. We get them here anyways. I don't Maybe you don't get them there. Be careful with those. Okay. Um, what name do you want to talk about? I, th I thought I saw Eli Lilly on your screen. Is there something um, you want to go? I'm going to see if the audience has a question though, but anything you want to talk about before I maybe open it up? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys my Eli Lilly setup. So when you're looking at tickers that are trading into earnings, you know, I'll get this criticism sometimes when people say, well, that's crazy. It's already moved so much. And that is true. So I'm not going to tell you this isn't an aggressive setup because it is. But as a short-term trader, when you're looking for something that has momentum, like this fits the bill. And that's because you have a stock that's gapped up four quarters in a row after earnings. And now that you're getting right into that pre-earnings time frame, I mean, that's the time where people are looking at it and they're saying, oh, man, you know, it's gapped up four quarters in a row and it's consolidating and it's right near that previous high. And so all it needs is just a little bit of a catalyst and especially something like Eli Lilly. It has news coming out all the time. So, I mean, you never know when it's going to happen, but you know that there's a setup there and you know there's decent upside potential, too, because it's trading at 777. And I think you could pretty easily trade it back up into 800. But above that, you have higher price targets at 820 and 850. So I like this one. Um, you know, it's got earnings coming up. It's also yep. separate from the whole tech AI thing. So, yeah. you know, we're seeing a little bit of weakness in the NASDAQ right now. And I believe Eli Lilly now. I doubt it's going to stay, but. It's a little bit separate, you know? No, I think, I mean, it has it has that momentum behind it. I mean, all you're looking for is catalyst. We have those GLP-1 drugs. And honestly, I feel like that's a great call because in their conference call, they may um, increase their total addressable market because they have a couple other drugs that they're looking for as well. Okay, so the question I have for you that does come from the chat, and this is going to be right up your alley, 
I mean, I think all stocks you could probably handle pretty good here. What about Reddit? So, I mean, um, this is going to be a name that's well traded in, in our community here because, again, because of the moves, um, it's pretty aggressive. It's only now a $50 name. That hype, I mean, you and I on the show, we always talk about this. You're always going to get a chance to buy IPOs. You don't have to run into anything. I think you and I gave that advice last week. Um, I think it was when Reddit, did I, Reddit might have IPO'd when you were with me last week on the 21st, potentially. Um, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So we talked about not getting too carried away with names like that. Now Reddit pushes back into some of these levels. Um, from an option standpoint, I know the interesting thing about Reddit is they did something like they were 30th on the Russell 1000 on their very first day of optionality. That was monstrous, created some nice volume spikes uh, in Reddit, really got the retail community back going. So my question to you is, what are we doing with Reddit? Is there a specific trade that maybe you like with, with it basically pulling back into right now IPO levels? They IPO'd at 46. We're looking at 49 right now. Yeah, so I mean, like we talked about last week, it's important, I think, to not buy it the very first week. I mean, you know, you can see that it it rallied all the way up into 75 and that, you know, if you bought it there, you're already down quite a bit. So um, you have to keep in mind that that, that always happens, right? And so yeah. if you want to buy the shares, it's generally better to wait a couple weeks. Um, but, you know, one thing that you can do specifically in the options market, because I always have people that say, you know what, I don't care. I know it's moving. This is a long term hold. I want to buy it. How can I do it? So instead of just buying the shares, I mean, if you want to come in and use options, you can sell the premium in here because the thing about this is, is that it has 115% implied volatility. This is pretty similar to um, DJT also, actually that one's even better, but you can come in here and you can sell, for example, the 45 puts and right. you can sell those for $2.20. And, you know, if Reddit does go down below 45, right. you may get put the shares, uh, but you collected $2. So it reduced your cost basis. Okay. Um, and if it doesn't go down below that, then you collected, you know, two bucks per contract. So that's something that I used to do on DWAC. Uh, I was just selling those puts on it every week. And then, I don't know, I think maybe after like four or five weeks, I finally got assigned the shares. And then once I had the shares, then I started selling covered calls against right. it. So, so never ending loop. Yeah. So for something like this, I do think that it's pretty hard to determine the direction because, you know, it's brand new. And so I would prefer to have more time before I can make a directional determination on it. But with these kind of IPO stocks, um, and especially DJT, I was actually looking at this one today for that strategy. Um, it just has so much premium in it in the options right, yeah. market. And so that's definitely a strategy that you can employ. Like if you sold DJT, you could sell, you get like 500 bucks of premium on this. Yeah, and all you'd have to worry is that it doesn't hit that 58. But and, and what is that? So that's next week, April 5th. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah you're and right. so the thing with it is, is you would only want to do that if you were comfortable taking assignment on the right, shares right. because it's such a crazy name that, you know, it could hit it. So, but I mean, even something like this, you know, you could sell the 58 puts for about $5 and let's say it fell a little bit or it stayed exactly where it was. You could buy those back for a 50% gain and then just right. do it again the next week. Right. Do you it again almost, the next week. You could, yeah, you could go both ways with it. I mean, depending on which way, whichever way you wanted to. So um, the last question I have for you, Danielle, before I let you go live, I mean, we could talk forever. First of all, we're going to have to go on a brisket date at some point, so that's going to happen. The second point is here, I have a great question from my guy, uh, or from Samir here in the chat. Please ask Danielle Shea how we can sign up for her classes. So I don't know what you have available or what's going on. So I'm going to open the floor up to you. We always promote your different channels. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I don't teach classes very frequently. I don't know if I'm going to teach one this year or not. Uh, but you can find all of my classes that I've taught in the past on my free newsletter. So if you go to fivestartrader.com, oh, yeah. this is my free newsletter. It's my blog. I write twice a week. This is where I send out my, um, this is where I send out my YouTube videos. 
And okay. on here, actually, if you sign up, you get a free options 101 class. Boom. So that's something you, yeah, you can get for free. So if you sign up right here, you subscribe. Um, and then all my paid classes, they're right in this education section. So I have all kinds of classes. I've taught, um, you know, introduction to options. I've taught just overall, you know, selling put credit spreads. I have classes on butterflies classes on earnings. So you can find all this right here at fivestartrader.com. Amazing, Ms. Danielle Shea. And I also want to come over to my screen. I want to show you something. I want to thank you for this as well. Uh, look at this, everybody watching. Over 2,000 people watching right now. Ms. Danielle, we hit four, four, four. 444,000 subscribers, and you've been here for quite a while. So I want to thank you uh, for helping us get to that level for sure. Miss Danielle Shea, go find her. Happy Easter to you and yours, and thank you for putting up with me from all this time. Thank you. You guys are the best. I always look forward to joining the show, and I'll miss you next week. Thank you, Miss Shea. Take care. All right. I should have asked her to stay in the chat, but if we're lucky enough, maybe she'll stay in there and you guys can ask her questions. But the one thing I have to tell you all is, which camera? I'm out of here. It's 4.32, baby. We're on a long weekend mode. We've been on a long weekend mode pretty much all day. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple things uh, here today. The one thing that we did have on board uh, at the end of the day was a banger NVIDIA trade. Um, we trade that a lot today. It's going to be the number one stock uh, that we did trade today. Oh, man. Oh man, oh man, uh, that brisket right now. Yo, what up Sam Bankman right there? 25 years for Mr. Sam Bankman Freed. What else did I tweet today? We tweeted, oh yeah, actually, you know, in the most, forget about NVIDIA trade. Yeah, yada, 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 we took, I think, $12 net on that today. Bang, I don't have my thing up. All right, look at this. Apparently, I mean, we have OK Boomer all the time. Thanks to these two guys over here. But you, know, but you know what I'm noticing here is this. Shout out to Heineken. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I know. I'll wrap the show up. We're two minutes over. But look at this. I wonder what everybody was thinking about this. This is on my uh, Twitter account right now. I like Modelo. So I, I wonder if this is, um, you know, Modelo, Modelo, a lot, a lot of, I know, yeah, pricey. Well, you got a lot of Coronas in here as well. I'm wondering if this is more of like a down south um, survey here. This is American's favorite beer brand by generation. So I'm Gen X, by the way. So we're going to see what's happening right here. I said out of this whole list here, I mean, if I'm at a bar, I know my guy Brendan over there loves his Guinness. So that's a win right there. I'm like a Heineken or a Stella uh, kind of guy, but I do love Coronas with baseball season starting. You know, I said already today, what better, what's going on over here? Yeah, yeah right. Uh, what is... Have a beer, man. Enjoy the game. Have any beverage you want, but it's baseball season. There's nothing better than sitting in those bleachers with some friends or family, enjoying a beer and trying to sit through a baseball game. There is no Molson on here. This is American's favorite beer company. So you're going to have Budweiser. Yo, dude, pass me a Bud uh, right now. Yo, this Bud's for you, dude. Uh, right there. So right there, that Miller highlight and all that. I better go before somehow I get canceled. All right. Thank you to everybody, man. I'm Sean Catina. Go follow me at Trader TV, Sean. And thank you for making this one of the best shows on YouTube. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Bears vs. Bulls. Happy Easter to you and yours. Give your family the biggest hug when you see them. I'm Sean Catina. I'll catch you guys Monday.